Hi guys, if you value my work and want to help me, consider making a donation. Every donation small or big is important to me. Links in the description. Chapter 21 Flashback Your strength is truly impressive, Naruto, Hiruzen said as he walked towards a ten-year-old Naruto. They were within the forest of death at a secluded place marked with chakra barriers. This was the place that Naruto used to train without anyone seeing him or even noticing. Naruto stopped what he was doing, stood up straight and glanced at the old man for a moment. Coming from the god of shinobi, I will take the compliment, Naruto said calmly. But it isn't really coming well. I can always offer help if you want, Hiruzen said to Naruto with a smile. Naruto raised an eyebrow. You confuse me, old man. Despite knowing that I am for Yuzushio Gakure, you would still wish to help me? Isn't that counterproductive? Hiruzen shook his head. Naturally, my help doesn't come for free. Although I know you are for Yuzushio, you still Minato's son and this village continues to be hard on you. You know that I have always cared for you, Naruto Kuen. I didn't tell you about your mother because of any reason other than to give you an identity. And you did. Yes, but it turned out in some ways I had not expected, Hiruzen said in a bitter tone. Why do you hide your strength though? You're smart, stronger than your some people and I know that your chakra levels are beyond what many jonin have but yet, you don't display that strength, not even flashes of it. Naruto sat on the ground and folded his feet, taking a meditative pose. To be honest, old man, I am a little afraid. I am afraid that if I displayed that I am strong, people will hate me more. They will start thinking some fear-induced thoughts that will make them do something stupid. But I don't want things to get that far. Such a thing would force me to leave this village. But I am still learning. I want to know more about the shinobi world, about the heart of men and how he deals with his anger and hatred. I don't want my life to turn out like these people. The Kyubi killed their loved ones and it lives within me, but do they really have to turn sour every time they see me? I have anger in me. It frightens me. He smiled bitterly. My chakra has already been diluted because of anger. Sometimes I confuse my chakra for the Kyubis. I don't want my mind to be corrupted with anger and hatred. If I can survive this madness while being surrounded by people who loathe my existence, I think I can survive the future. What kind of future are you bracing yourself for, Naruto? A future that compels me to be calm for the greater good despite raging emotions that want me to destroy everything that stands before me, Naruto said. When those kids sent me to the forest of death to be killed, I was angry when I realized that it was their very intention to get me killed. The abuse at the orphanage and the voice of the QB whispering darkly, hate them, repeatedly nearly made me plot something sinister. But I stopped myself. The world rejects me. Do I also reject it? Do I become what it calls me? The Sandame Hokage just smiled. There are many ways to look at things, Naruto Kuen. You must always be open to look at things in all angles if you are going to try to understand how people work. How you think is not the same as how I think. The outcome of the thinking towards you is the same, hatred, but reasons are not similar. You will find that many people know that you're not the Kyubi but just a child, but because they are not willing to let go of that hatred, they refuse the truth. I am not going to push you into anything, but know this, the moment they let go of their hatred they will stop rejecting your existence. Whether you reject them or become what they call you is entirely up to you. However, you must know what you want in life. Do you think what they are doing is wrong? Are you just going to become like them? Because of them, I learned to throw away my hatred. I don't want to end up becoming like these people, Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. You are the god of shinobi, what do you say to a sparring session? With you? I think you are a little too young and I am too old, Hiruzen said. Naruto smiled. Old man, one thing I have realized despite everything it has been that you care for me. You know me and the Uzumaki, I have no problem in revealing how far my training has taken me through the secrets of the Kage Bunshin. I will show this to you, but I am likely to keep my portions of my memory of the skills I have gained so far sealed away until the day I leave Kanoha. Did you just say secrets of the Kage Bunshin? Hiruzen asked with a stare. Who taught you that jutsu? Nobody, Naruto said with a wave of his right hand. 
I'm not a genius like some people, but I am not just thinking about seals when I sit motionlessly. I also think that the hand signs I saw, I think about what makes a jutsu, I think about the chakra concentration in my system when I release a jutsu. This helps me see things clearly. Time I have, chakra I have, so learning all basic elements will not be impossible for me as it was not for you. End. When Mei entered Naruto's office, her eyes went straight towards the redhead sitting behind the desk the desk faced the entrance. It was the first thing you saw once stepping inside. She turned her eyes towards the right the emperor was sitting on a sofa, reading something. He didn't seem bothered to even glance towards them. But she knew he was aware of their presence. Mizukich-sama, Haku said, drawing Mei's attention away from her thoughts. This is Karen Uzumaki Naruto's wife. Mei was surprised. She didn't hide it. This was the first time she was hearing something like that. She has had multiple conversations about Naruto and Yuzushiogakure but it had never been mentioned that Naruto was actually married. So, he was a husband. It was indeed a surprise. She walked towards the redhead woman and held out her right hand. Mei Terumi, she didn't want anyone to introduce her. A pleasure to meet you, she said with a warm smile. Karen's smile was not so warm, but it was not cold either. The pleasure is mine, Mei-san. Finally I get to meet the woman who has my husband showing consideration for what other people think to the consequences of merciless actions. Mei raised both her brows in surprise. She turned towards Naruto he still had yet to move. I don't understand, she said. There are reasons why Kirigakure should be Yuzushio's enemy reasons even I can understand. But one thing is certain and with the inclusion of Haku, that man is impressed about your efforts in Kirigakure. And although he will never admit it, he does not want to destroy what you have worked hard to achieve. Considering that he can be careless and indifferent, I think that is something, she said calmly. That is the first time I hear something like that, May said calmly. It is very considerate of him. Karen wondered about that. It could have been done purposefully. Besides, she had her intentions for saying those words. She stood up and walked towards Naruto. I'm going to talk to Yoshino about the money you refused to give me. I'll go do other things thereafter. When I return, we will talk about me leaving, she said taking the scroll on Naruto's hand. You are not going to join us. May asked. Diplomatic talks are not my cup of tea, Karen said with a shake of her head. She then decided to step out of the office through the back door. May walked towards the sofas and sat on the one beside where Haku sat. She stared at the emperor for a moment before speaking. I didn't take you for the kind of person who'd actually settle down and marry. Naruto smiled before turning to face Haku. What things have you been telling her that gave her an unfavorable image of me? I have only said pleasant things about you, Haku said. I just formed my thoughts based on our interactions and your appearance. Mei said. This is a quiet lovely home you have here. The village itself is very peaceful. It is pity that its emperor is not so peaceful. That wounds me, Naruto said. What are you seeing when looking at me now, Mei? Do you see a man who is full of violence and bad intentions for everyone? Mei shook her head. You look calm and quiet right here. This Naruto is see now is different from what you have presented whenever you came to Kirigakure. There is always time for everything. I have my moments. Right now, I am at home, enjoying the peace while it lasts for very soon, I will be gracing the battlefield, Naruto said. He hid his excitement very well. Then again, he was used to hiding things from people. The war had already started. It was really a surprise to see that this village didn't seem like it was preparing for war. Although battles occurred outside the villages, the atmosphere did tell from within. But here, everything looked normal. It was even strange since there was a chance of an invasion. Kyumo and IWA wanted one thing only and that was the destruction of the Uzumaki clan. These people should be worried but they didn't show any concerns. You don't look worried. This village doesn't look worried. It is hard to tell if you are really going to war with forces even Kirigakure could not face alone, May stated in a serious tone. Not worried? Naruto smiled it was not a happy smile. When I first came here, these people were living in hiding. 
they didn't want the outside world to know of their survival. Every day they slept fearing the worst. They were surrounded by powerful enemies who could destroy them and there was no one to help them. I told them there was a way to get rid of the fear. There was a way to come out of hiding and still be protected. I just wanted to see the Uzumaki rise again. But they would not listen. They were too afraid. And so I warned them. Someone was eventually going to find them and when that happens, they would be crushed in their fear. The only way to avoid the disaster was to become strong. The elders refused to listen to a child but the shinobi led by Yoshino listened. They came to me. Their biggest concern was being invaded while they were not ready. There was no question, the moment the enemy heard of their survival, they were going to attack to finish what they started. I told Yoshino and his men my background about how every day I was surrounded by people who wanted to murder me but could not because of fear. I knew how to survive. I told Yoshino and his men that even though they faced monsters, they could still survive. I was small, fragile, but people hated me so much that they secluded me and murdered me with their eyes. But no one could lift a finger against me. Yoshino listened and was convinced of my words. Of course I was still weak. But I made the vow to become the strongest. I already held the strongest bijou within me anyway. It took some time, but Yoshino convinced the older generation. And we worked on their fears. Their worries. We worked on it so hard and practiced methods of complete survival even if the village is invaded. What you see now is the result of our hard work to make our people feel safe again. Mei fell silent. She could feel sorry for the Uzumaki. To live in fear in your own village it must have been a horrible experience. Worse, there was nothing they had done to deserve being targeted. Was it really certain that you would be attacked again? When I went to Iwagakure, Anoki said if we were a threat, he would destroy us. What is his definition of a threat? You'd have to go back to the reason we were attacked in the first place. Kumogakure once attempted to kidnap my mother when she was younger. A couple of years ago when the current Rakage was in charge, they devised a sinister plot to get their hands on the Byakugan. When their plans failed, they threatened war with Kanoha, even though they were completely wrong. May frowned deeply. Those two villages, Kyumo has always been known for being power hungry. Was this the only way? We could have sealed off our special chakra and become farmers for both Kyumo and IWA, Naruto said sarcastically. In a world that rejects your very existence, what do you do? Do you wish you were never born? You did nothing wrong. Someone is just rejecting your existence because of a flawed thinking. You know this because you are not the only one who says this. Other people say it as well, but they can't do anything because they are either too weak to do anything or just afraid. What do you do, May? At some point, bloodline welders were hated in Kirigakure and it resulted in us being targeted. Some fled, and we stayed behind to fight. Our response is the same, we will fight. And we will change this world so that it can accommodate us. You were not wrong to fight for the right to your existence. No village has the right to say this village is too dangerous it must be destroyed, especially when the very village lives in isolation, doesn't involve itself in shinobi wars but lives peacefully. Our fight is against tyranny and the right for our existence. Naruto explained in a hardened tone. You decide Mei, do you want to trust us? Do you think we are wrong? I don't think you are wrong, Mei said after a couple of moments. I will work with Haku to resolve your issues with the feudal lord. But I will wait to see your actions until after the war to see whether I can call you friends. That is disappointing, Naruto said with a smile. I was sharing because I thought we were friends. How long do you have before you return home? Maybe two days. This is not the best time to be away from home. Indeed, Naruto said. You will discuss further details with Haku. But if you need anything directly from me, shout. For now, my throne is calling me I must go warm it. Mei shook her head and sat in silence for a couple of moments. The Yoshino he was talking about is the same as the one who leads this village, right? Haku nodded. How does that even work? Don't they fight? Naruto is the emperor yet he is living in land he does not control. He does not live on land he does not control, Haku said with a shake of his head. He is the emperor. 
Although Yoshino leads this village, Naruto is ultimately his boss. Besides that, they understand each other. Yoshino knows how Naruto thinks. And they both respect each other well enough they don't interfere in each's duties. But before, Naruto would have Yoshino carry out duties he otherwise should carry. It is a very interesting system you have here. It is one made of rules that we all obey, even the emperor. It might be hard to believe, but Naruto follows rules. Isn't it because he made them? Haku shook his head. Village and clan politics are two different things. There are clan rules and Naruto must play by them. Mind you, he is not the leader of the clan. Why? Haku shrugged. He has never displayed interest for as much as I can tell. Besides, Yoshino was being groomed lead the clan before Naruto came to the picture. Either way, Naruto loves his clan and the only thing that matters to him is its survival and being great again. If he can do it without being clan head, no problem. That is the logical part of his thinking that he often uses, May said in thought. Now I am at least starting to understand the kind of person he is. Haku just smiled. Then I hope for a more peaceful relationship with Kirigakure. He said. But we must first resolve the situation with the Wind Lord. May said. You are also not worried about this war. The wave will be the first target, are you sure you can defend it from the combined forces of IWA and Kimo? Perhaps I should worry a bit, Haku said in thought. You did hear about what happened in the rain, right? That was done by another Uzumaki. His name is Nagato. Nagato can destroy even one of the five great nations by himself. If he wanted to invade IWA, he'd do it himself and still come back alive. Nagato can destroy an army, and Naruto is an army by himself. He fools around a lot, but let him put on his armor, he will show you power no human should possess. Mei frowned. This was coming from the gentle and kind Haku. It bothered her. He is that powerful, huh? She smiled wryly. What about you? Haku smiled. I am capable Naruto made me train harder and control my bloodline in some ways I never even dreamt of but I am not like those two monsters. I'm not too sure his majesty will be pleased learning that you call him a monster behind his back, Haku, Naoki said as he walked into the office. Haku shrugged. It's not like it isn't the truth you know it well what it is like to be in a room with him when his chakra is leaking. Naoki shuddered at the thought. Those are emotional scars I wish not to relive, he said. Mizukage sama this man is being modest. But he is the second most powerful person in this village. But that is not the reason I came here he said. When you are free, Yoshino said he'd like to have a word with you about certain things, Mizukage sama Outskirts of Kumogakure. Everyone else was on the move, but AI still worried about taking B with him to the battlefield. He was not worried that Naruto would attack his village and he was not worried about Anoki. With the losses there suffered in the hands on Amage Cure, he doubted Anoki would be making any reckless moves. He too would have to be careful of course. He didn't want to go through the same thing. But still, AI wouldn't allow just two shinobi to do that much damage. He shook his head. What was he saying? Minato had done it before. Someone could do it again. AI was worried about B because he didn't want what happened to Yujito happening to his beloved brother. It didn't matter just how powerful B was, those people had the ability to subjugate a Bijou and that was a massive threat to a Jinchuriki. If he was going to take B, he would have to move with him. It'll be fine brother. You worry too much, yo. AI glared at B for his careless attitude. I need you to be serious. He shouted before calming himself. We will have to be watchful for any Uzumaki we see. I can't let you face one of them. Even if you come across one of them, don't ever transform, do you understand me, B? Understood, brother. Somehow AI felt B was just saying this to get him to quiet down. If it wasn't because I need you when facing Naruto, I wouldn't even be bringing you along he said with a shake of his head. He is that powerful. Admittedly, yes I'm not sure I alone will be enough, AI said. B was surprised that his brother would openly admit that. His brother almost never made such an admission. This Naruto was seriously strong. 
he turned toward C and gave a questioning look. Well consider this he played with both A.I. Sama and the Tsuchikage without actually being serious. Not even a little. His chakra pool is humanly impossible. I got sickened just by trying to measure it because it is also very sinister. I swear you'd think you are experiencing the power of the Kyubi itself. And, he didn't use his Biju's power. I'm sure he doesn't need it given the amount of chakra he has. The blonde didn't even blink when facing up to AI's speed. It was going to be a massive challenge for them. B only smiled. It looked like it was going to be a challenge and he would be tag teaming with his brother. What more could he ask for? His partnership with his brother was perfect. Who could stand against them? But of course, he would still have to stand before the emperor to tell. Let us move out, AI said. But we must still be considerate of Amage Cure. No doubt they will enter the battlefield. If that happens, we will be working with the Tsuchikage forces to engage them. But we might decide to go after them first if they prove to be a problem. They will be a problem to Iwa's forces, C corrected. AI could tell where C was going with his choice of words. This was war all right. He was thinking about having Iwa's forces weakened in this war while they preserved their strength. It was such a cold move to the people they were heading into war with as partners. But it was still war. Later. Naori appeared beside Naruto, who was resting on the throne, and then leaned over to whisper. Kumogakure has started moving. There are eight thousand of them coming through land, your majesty. You also have the nine thousand strong from Iwabakure. The numbers were truly something frightening. Naruto had to sit up straight as everything finally settled down. It was now a reality. They were truly going to face those numbers. This was the war he had so dearly prepared himself to fight. The airship was not to be used for now, it was for later times in case there was an emergency. What he was staring at was a massive tsunami in history has always been written by the giant force of nature. Would things change this time? Would be able to withstand its mighty strength? Yuzushi Ogakure depended on him to succeed. If the wave defeated him, it was over for his people, he would have brought them out of the hiding place just so they could be killed. History would judge him. Naruto would never forgive himself if caused something like that happened to his people. How many attacks have we planned so far? Naruto asked. You have a solo one, and another one that is proposed for you and Nagato. We have also planned to lay the traps once we learn of their path, Naori said. You were supposed to attack the first time the moment they cross into the land of water, where Kumo Shinobi will no doubt stop there to wait for IWA. They will also not easily move into the Fire Nation because Kanoha is waiting. But if we attack right, they may surrender before reaching the Fire Nation, Naruto started in a thoughtful tone. Go get Haku for me I don't want to summon him in case he is busy with something but we are going launch a surprise attack. We can be as barbaric as we can be. It works better to have them think we have no strategy, he said before closing his eyes. Five minutes later, Haku appeared along with Naori in the throne room. Naruto stood up, we are going to battle, Haku, he said. Haku blinked. Now. He was not expecting to fight any battle now. Yes, now, Naruto said. Why does it seem like you are afraid of battle? You are the strongest person in this village aside from me if you get nervous, everyone gets nervous. I think he is more concerned about killing, your majesty, Naori intervened. We are going to war to fight people who will rape and butcher innocent lives in this village, and you are concerned about their lives. Naruto asked in a cold tone. Your conscious and moral values are what make you attractive, but I have already gone through this with you, when we go to war, you will not hesitate. Haku was silent for a couple of moments before finally nodding. Is it an all-out attack? Naruto shook his head. We are just going to greet them. We simply can't let them think they will be allowed to move freely. We must show them our power. I am also very interested in seeing your training at work. Thirty minutes later. From where he stood, the thousands of shinobi seemed like ants, but they were humans, people he had to face. People he had to fight. This was war. He'd left Kiri before the civil war, but he bad seen the brutality of men. Haku's clan had been murdered because of their bloodline, 
because they were born with special abilities that others did not have yet, here he was, ready to use those abilities to kill other people. He had been mentally preparing for this. He had been brought from the dead to be of use to Yuzushiogakure in its ambitions. They were floating high up in the sky. The air was strong, breathing was not easy. Naruto was using his control over the air currents to keep them suspended in the air. Couldn't we have chosen a different side to view things? I'm becoming uncomfortable with being up so high. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders a bit carelessly. You seemed fine on the ship. This is not a ship and if you lose control, we are going to fall in the hands of the enemy, Haku said. It won't happen Naruto said. They might have sensors. I didn't want anyone sensing us. That aside, the wind here is very strong and there is something I want to try. Haku had an uneasy feeling about things the moment Naruto said those words. What exactly are you going to try, Naruto? A natural disaster, Naruto responded calmly. Stay on my back, if you don't, you might surely die. He said those words and began going through fast hand seals. Kiss of the Wind God. Once done, he held out both his hands and ordered Haku press his back against his. He then began releasing large amounts of chakra into the atmosphere. Release your ice storm Naruto said to Haku. Samui halted as she felt a spike of chakra. She looked around but could not see anything. Where is this coming from? She asked of the massive dose of chakra. She was not the only one feeling it the whole unit had come to a halt as they felt the overwhelming force. It's coming from above, Karui said, looking up into the sky. When Samui looked up, she frowned seeing a dark cloud gathering. She had an uneasy feeling seeing such a formation in the sky. They were not supposed to be coming across any enemies as things stood. She didn't even think anyone in Yuzushio had such an attack. There has never been any rumor of a jutsu like that. She told herself, but the uneasy feeling made her want to take a step back. What do you think it is? It's not natural, Samui responded to Karui's question. Just be on guard. We don't know what is happening now. Snow. There was that shout. Samui held out her right hand, and it was indeed snow. But it was ridiculously cold. She had been in snowy conditions before, a drop of snow did not produce this much cold. The air became thick as a cold breeze washed over the unit along with drops of snow. It took only a moment for something to warn her heart when the breeze started to rotate. Everyone, get out of here. She gave the order, but only those close to her heard her. The winds were starting to make a blowing sound. Even though she called for people to get out, she remained rooted to her spot, eyes above her as she watched something form. It was a tornado. It had started slowly but the moment the winds above started spinning, everything just went out of order. The dark cloud was spinning in speeds her eyes could not track. It was pipeline that started to form from below the surface towards the cloud. It turned everything into chaos when the blowing winds started rotating in furious speeds. The speeds were so powerful and fast that the dust it picked up was moving in such speed that it was able to hit some man and pierce through their flesh. When this started happening, the others began to run away. The tornado finally took its form, violently twisting as it kissed the ground. As it twisted, it did not pull things towards it as a tornado would normally do, it was spitting snow. The ground where it touched was white. Just when they thought they had escaped the danger, the tornado started moving violently. It was violent because it tore through the very ground, lifting up chunks of earth before spitting them out as ice stones in all directions with speeds that made them almost impossible to dodge. Some of the men were unfortunate as the moving tornado swallowed them. It was hundred who were swallowed and were spat out as frozen corpses. The tornado finally stopped, moving, and the winds began to slow down before finally dispersing. The moment it did, a cloud of snow began to fall from the sky before slamming into the ground like a huge wave the atmosphere was very cold. They could not stay here and be healthy. Boom! There was a crash of something that fell from the sky. Samui was quick to move. She sensed something familiar. Her men quickly surrounded the area as well. She found Naruto on one knee, inside a large crater with a black-haired person standing behind him. He seemed to have having some difficulty breathing. 
Samui, Naruto said, recognizing the woman had met when he visited the cloud a couple of years ago. I didn't think that you would be one of the leaders. The movements of the enemy forces were hard to ignore. They were not staying in one position, waiting to be attacked. They knew he was a Jinchuriki and if he transformed, it would just be a massacre. Would everyone react in the same way though? No everyone was going to charge in all at once. They had just surrounded them, forming seven groups, no matter what happened to the other, they would not attack until the other was finished a curious formation. But it would only delay the inevitable. Still, they had recovered from his attack very quickly. Samui looked cautiously at the emperor. Her eyes moved around the remaining shinobi. What was that? Just a welcome jutsu to separate her men? This was dangerous but could they outrun them? A.I. had not issued any instruction to flee from the emperor as that Suchikage has for his forces to flee from the Amagekure group that destroyed the first group he had called out to war. Are you going to stop because it is me? She asked, her tone flat, yet still ridiculously hoping that he would say yes. He was keeping Yujito alive, maybe he wanted her and as her friend, her status would factor into that conversation. You are not good at jokes, Naruto said. Say I depart from here, would you go back to the cloud? I don't give the instructions. Naruto did not offer a response, he simply darted toward Samui. There were several men behind her Naruto did not mind them. As he grew closer, he jumped up slightly about the ground and stretched out his right hand, attempting to grab Samui by her face. His hand never reached her she leaned back slightly. And two shinobi flashed below the emperor. They did quick hand seals and released a powerful burst of lightning towards him but it never reached him a mirror of ice formed between him and the jutsu. The mirror completely halted the jutsu. Simultaneously, Omoi flashed to the emperor's right side. He was holding a sword with both hands and swung it in a downward slash, trying to cut the outstretched hand. Haku appeared behind the cloud Nin, his right leg flashing through the air before his foot connected with the man's head from the left side. The kick sent him flying to the side. Both Naruto and Haku retreated quickly before landing a distant away. I wish you wouldn't lunge to the enemy so stupidly. You are insulting me, Naruto said, eyeing Haku with a look. The ice user shrugged. You are needlessly putting yourself at risk and making me work hard to protect you. It is training. There is nothing that trains a shinobi's instincts better than real battle, Naruto responded calmly. This doesn't look like it is going to be easy, Omoi said, massaging his temple after being kicked by Haku. I could have been hit hard and then he would have moved closer it would have been the end of me. I wouldn't have cried if you ended, Karui was quick to respond. No one would miss you either, Omoi was quick to say in a flat tone. That's enough you too, Samui interrupted the banter. We are dealing with a Jinchuriki, one hosting a bijou more powerful than the Hachibi. So it is hopeless Omoi summed it up. We can't afford to fight here. We need to back away. A. Isama will understand. I have seen him fight before fighting here would just result in massive casualties. Samui didn't want that under her watch. She was going to get things ready. She was going to make sure that people live. If Naruto transformed, there would be nothing she could do. They are not just going to let us leave like that, Karui said. Samui nodded. You two lead the others to retreat back into the lightning. We will regroup there, she said. I should be the one to stay behind. There is no need on playing hero Samui was quick to stay. If you stay behind, they will surely kill you. I have no intentions of dying. But we need a plan. She said before turning around to look for someone. Haku looked towards his right side sensing movement. A large boulder was rooted from the ground and started to charge towards him. The same was happening on Naruto's side. While he created a mirror to block the boulder, Naruto lunged towards it and slammed his right fist into it, shattering it within a second of his fist connecting with it. Haku pushed the boulder away and it slammed onto the ground. Before he could even blink, multiple smoke screens exploded covering them in smoke. They could still locate each other. And regrouped. His back was pressed against Naruto's as he spoke. You feel that? Yes, the groups are moving, Naruto responded. A retreat. Should we chase them? 
Naruto shook his head. That first attack killed enough. Besides, we were not here to kill them but to welcome them. If we got them to retreat back into the lightning, this is a bonus, he said. Haku did not say anything but just waited for the smoke to clear. There were only two men remaining in sight. The others were mere shadows. How caring of you, Naruto said to Samui. I will give Yujito a message. I am sure she will be happy that her friend is in good health. What do you plan to do with her? You didn't come to the cloud that day to fight against a fellow Jinchuriki. There would have never been a need to even take us out, Samui said with a stare. Naruto smiled. Speculation, he said. Haku, we leave. Well that went well, Naruto said as he walked towards his throne. Haku stared at Naruto for a long minute before speaking. I knew your control over wind was majestic but that was just unnatural. Naruto waved his right hand. I'm not doing it again. It consumes too much chakra for my liking. If I am using natural energy it could be fine, but it also drains my stamina. I have no need for jutsu that leaves me vulnerable like that. You know how long it takes for me to replenish chakra. And I thought you had us leave before I could fight because you did not want to end up killing Samui. She is Yujito's friend, is she not? If you ended up killing her, you would have failed with her, Haku said. That factored in the decision, Naruto said. But you are not complaining, are you? Of course not, Haku said. For a welcome message, I think they received it. We just have to think about how we handle them for real next time when you fight, he added. In two days, I shall leave for battle, Naruto said. It will be then that we will lay our traps begin our true assault on their forces. If the assaults fail to get them to surrender, we would not complain if by the time they try to cross the fire border the combined army is a little over 3,000, we would have done well. It would still require a lot of effort and Naruto unleashing the power of the Kyubi to make things happen. But if they did manage to keep this up, they could hold on things. Even if it is only the 3,000, we have to assume that the Kages will no doubt try to hold you back while the army moves. If that happens, the wave will be in trouble. No doubt. That was they had to be careful. He also had to move with care because if something happened to him, Yuzu would not have the confidence to survive. Just in case, the airship must be prepared. And you must deal with the unit moving through the sea. If any army moves towards the wave, no matter how brutally, the ship must be used. We will summon Gurin and the other Uzumaki. You will lead this group to act as the last line of defense. If the worst occurs, destroy the bridge, unleash the Sanbai. This will make it easier to pick them apart. If we remove Gurin from sound, what happens to it? There is that chance that the Iwa's forces will destroy it as they move. I will call Deidara and Sasori, Naruto said in thought. For destruction, they are best suited. Following day. Throne room. Karen stared at the expressionless look on Naruto's face. His eyes were sharp, not fully opened. He looked a different person when sitting on the throne. Everything you say you know about him can be thrown out of the window. That is what just made dealing with him a bothersome task. Karen really preferred being away than playing wife but she could not avoid this situation forever. She had known what she was getting herself into when she agreed to marry this person. She sighed before asking. What has gotten you lost in thought this time? She asked while standing in front of him. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he responded. Just thinking about my younger days in the hidden leaf. He said. It always unnerved her when he looked at her like that. But Karen didn't show it. The younger days? Well, he has often admitted that he was a very sentimental person. But still, what a disturbing childhood he had in the leaf. Which part specifically? Their part where I was always alone. I am surrounded by people who don't hate me but actually love me, and yet, if I am around the village, I spend most of my time alone, staring into nothing and cut off from the rest of the village. I am feeling a little unfulfilled. You can always go to the bar, Karen suggested. Be serious, Karen. She sighed. Can't take a joke, she mumbled. I will return soon. But you still have people you can be with. You just choose not to be with them. A choice yes, 
perhaps this feeling is just a lone part of me that is misbehaving. I have gotten used to the silence that I prefer it over spending time in a crowd of people, Naruto said with a shake of his head. Did you get what you wanted from Yoshino? Of course and he even offered to buy the tools for me, Karen said. He and I have an understanding and he isn't stingy like you. I think I married the wrong Uzumaki. I would be willing to release you. I'd even officiate your wedding if you want to get married to Yoshino, Naruto said with a smile. Karen stared at Naruto. Don't even joke about that, she said. That guy probably has weird tastes in bed. Just thinking about waking up to see his face makes me cringe. Naruto laughed. You started it. But you do him no good, dear. Yoshino isn't that bad, Naruto said with a smile. That is because you don't care for his schemes and have no problem with his twisted smile, Karen said with a shake of her head. In any case, he has provided for me. And now I can leave and go back to work. Remember, once the war is over, you return home. I don't have to come to fetch you, Naruto said in a hardened tone. So you are just going to leave just like that? Yes, Karen said. You are not touching me. I think you might be having an affair with Kabuto. Ha ha ha, Karen laughed with sarcasm. That guy probably gets turned on by his experiments. Naruto smiled. He blinked for a moment. We have a guest. Or at least I have a guest. It is good she is coming here while you are still around, he said before responding to Karen. Well, he has twisted urges to cut things and study them. Who is coming? Count from 1 to 20. You know I can't sense anything with the barriers around the throne room and don't treat me like a child, Karen said before turning to face the entrance. It was not the Mizukich. She was still around but if it was her, Naruto would not have said those words. After two minutes, Naoki walked into the throne room with Temari. The blonde stared towards the throne. There he was, sitting on the throne, head resting on the palm of his right left hand. A smile on his lips. But there was someone standing beside him. A woman. Redhead, glasses, hands on her waist. She seemed to have been waiting impatiently. Temari's heart raced a bit. Your Majesty, I have brought Temari. She has a message from the Godame Kazakage, Naoki said in a measured tone. While his face was directed towards Temari, Naruto's eyes moved towards Naoki. No doubt you brought her without saying anything so that she can see Karen. He said without a smile. But you did well his eyes narrowed towards Karen. Because we are going to war, he will be your guard from today. When you leave, go with him. Naoki blinked. Your Majesty, you want me spend my time in that island? What will I do there? You'll be protecting me you think that is not worth your efforts. Of course not, Naoki was quick to say. You have just never needed protection before. Of course, he is just playing with you because of your need to do things for your amusement, Karen said while moving towards Temari. She stopped beside Naoki and spoke once more. On a serious note, you have been chosen to be my guard when I return. Husband wants me to play an active role in the Empire. I will be moving around, you will be with me. Got a problem with it? No, Naoki said with a shake of his head. Who will take my position? No one. Karen said. Haku and Naori will do just fine. If you want to complain to someone, go speak to your elders. They are the ones who requested your services and husband approved. Karen then stopped in front of Tamari. She smiled. Karen Uzumaki, this is my house and that person sitting on that throne is my husband. She said. I would like to have a chat with you, but I must run before that man forces me to stay. But hopefully, I will see you again, soon, she turned to Naoki. You are taking me to the island. Temari waited until the two had left before giving Naruto a questioning look. He just stood up silently and walked down towards her. Follow me, he said in quiet tone. Temari just followed the blonde in silence. They walked for a minute until they reached what she assumed was his office. He sat on the sofa and motioned for her to sit across him. You need anything? She shook her head. No, she said. Not even once you bothered telling me that you are married. And that was some way if letting the cat of the bag. 
There was anger in Tamari's tone. But that was to be expected. He probably would not have told her if she had come when Karen was away. But Naoki had forced things. Does it bother you that I am married? Tamari glared at the blonde. Was he seriously asking her that question? He was married. He had a wife and he was still making moves on her. The cheating bastard. Had he no shame at all? But what was that reaction from his wife? It looked like she knew about things and was reminding her of her place. Had she not been shocked at the husband part, she would have said something to that woman. Of course I have a problem. But you and I are not doing anything. And when we were doing something, I was not married. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Temari demanded. No, Naruto said with a wave of his right hand. I was just telling you the situation as it is and as it was. Yes, I am married. I had never mentioned it because it never came to mind. Temari was angry. You are married and you would forget your wife. Is that the kind of person you are? Well, it should not be a surprise since you are the same person who used to go to a bar to pick up on women, even older ones. Naruto tilted his head to the side before speaking. Now you are just insulting me, he said in a flat tone. Karen is not usually around. I can go for months without seeing her. And how many times have we spoken, Tamari? Two times it was personal. The first was not civil and the last was civil but how do I suddenly say, hey I am married, when we can't even sit down and talk. Not my fault, Tamari said with a shrug of her shoulders. Regardless, that is the situation. Naruto was firm about it. When I sensed your presence, I was happy thinking you'd come to specifically see me because of our last conversation. Sorry to disappoint you but admittedly, I also thought it would be nice to see you again. To be honest I had missed that. But I did not expect to come here and be greeted by your wife. Don't let it bother you. Don't think too much about it. Naruto said. How can I not? It doesn't change that you are married. You are being difficult, Tamari, Naruto said. I'm not. But you don't help things. Tamari said sharply. Is there anything I should know? Any children I should know about? This was not going too well. You really sound displeased. What gave me away? Naruto shook his head. I am also married to Princess Koyuki. The marriage was done to unify our nations and I also needed her technology. We also helped her get her country to a sound financial position. Children? No, I don't have any children. He smiled. At least not that I know of. You should check on that, Tamari said. Are you happy now? No, Tamari said. I have mixed feelings about this. I don't know what to think about it. We can just get to business. I will think about this later when I am calm. Naruto nodded. Best it be so, he said. Naoki said you have a message from your brother can I have it? Tamari took out a scroll and handed it to the emperor. Naruto took it gently and unfolded it before reading it. Emperor Naruto, I want to believe that we are still friends as you have said. But there are many things happening in this world that makes me question your motives. Why this war? What do you hope to achieve by it? I sense that something big will come after this war. Even then, I still want to consider you a friend. You are a leader of people and so am I. We are friends I would like that friendship to exist even between our two nations. I know what you said to Shikamaru and to my sister, but this is a plea from a friend. I can understand your reasoning with Kanoha, but we have done nothing. As a friend, if you still cannot change your mind, please tell me why. I would also like to know the reasons for your actions. In this case, I ask not as Kazakage but as a friend. I have also sent my sister because I want you to resolve your issues with her. I love my sister and wish her happiness. If her happiness is with you, I can accept that. But even if you are a friend, I will not forgive you if you are purposefully hurting her. I do not believe you are that cruel nevertheless. Even so, please resolve it. Sabaku no Gara. Naruto had an amused look on his face. Gara would probably try to kill him if Tamari returned home crying. How nice it is that you have a caring brother, he said. 
I will write my response to him. Is it going to be any favorable? Temari asked cautiously. I will give a response I gave the Mizukage, Naruto said before handing Temari the scroll. Your brother threatens me if my intentions with you are to hurt you. Then again, I had the feeling he wanted to attack me when I made my survival known to Sunagakir. He is very protective of his family, Temari said with a smile. How envious, Naruto said. Then again, my family is the Uzumaki. I will rip to shreds anyone who threatens their existence. Yet, yours is brotherly love, isn't it? Logic doesn't usually work there. Love can be illogical at times. It can make you do things that seem unreasonable, Tamari said in quiet tone. She shook her head. She didn't want to talk with Naruto about this now. She needed to clear her head. So, are you prepared for the war? She changed the subject. Naruto stood up and walked over to Temari. He leaned towards her and placed a gentle kiss on her forehead. Let me not indulge that tactic of changing the subject. You'll talk to me when you feel you can talk. This time, I am willing to answer your personal questions so we can resolve this thing. He took Gara's message once more and walked toward his desk. Am I being dismissed? Don't say it like that, Naruto said with a smile. Naori, he called. The man appeared in a flash. Kage Bunshin. Original has gone to the sound. Naruto nodded. Where is Haku? He is with the Mizukage. They appear to be engaged with Yoshino about something. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment. What do you want to? He asked Tamari. Can I just take a walk around the village, alone? I want to clear my head and then get some rest afterwards. Haku usually handles such matters Naruto said. Go get someone from Yoshino's tower to see to Temari's needs. Just walk her out of the compound before you do that. Hi, Naori said. Later. Temari stared at Naruto with an expressionless look on her face. It was more of a mask to hide her mixed feelings over their situation. She could not get out of her mind that Naruto just revealed that he was married to two women. It was not news she came here expecting to hear. Yet, it was the reality and she had to face it before leaving this village. She certainly could not stay here forever. Not when there was war knocking at the door. She had to leave, and of course with the protection of Yuzushio. Both Kyomo and IWA were probably on the move. It was going to make traveling dangerous. There was no doubt in her heart that she did like Naruto. He was her first and only but he had hurt her. She could not forget that. Yet, that didn't mean that she had to stop living. Besides, she could make a decision that would not only be rewarding for her personally, but it would also help her village. Perhaps she would even leave this village without any worries and concerns over her relationship with Naruto. That kind of look does not suit you, Tamari, Naruto said, holding a cup of sake. He didn't usually drink these days but today was a special occasion. It was the kind of night that deserved a drink. Temari shrugged. I think I know what suits me better than you, she said before falling silent. I really came here thinking maybe we could start over. Your marriage revelation just stunned me and really does complicate things. Naruto smiled. The first part makes me happy. But nothing is complicated. If you are concerned about having Karen glare at you whenever you are around, you should not worry about it. If it is about the fact that you'd have to share me with another woman, you need not panic. It is a situation that we can all learn to manage. The important part is whether you will be happy or not with the decision you'll be forced to make. If you cannot be happy with it, then although it pains to me say it, you should not decide to be around me. Temari shook her head. If it is about happiness, I don't think I will be miserable. But we are just speaking now and it would honestly sadden me if I don't give it a try. I don't want to have regrets in my life. So yes, I am willing to have a relationship with you despite your situation. What kind of relationship? Canal for the physical pleasures? Romance for all that love offers? Temari stared. Are you trying to make beg? Because if you are, I don't have a problem walking out of that door right now, she said in a flat tone. Eh you won't be able to leave the compound. All exits are locked. No one gets in or out. 
Ignoring you isn't a problem. Naruto smiled. Are you sure about that dear? He said standing up from where he sat. He placed his cup on the table in front of him and walked over to Temari. He placed both hands on her shoulders and smelled her hair. You smell good. You have that smell of someone who came here expecting something he said. Temari folded her hands across her chest, from who, you? You can be such a disappointment she said. Naruto chuckled lightly. He bit Temari's left ear and licked it at the edges before whispering. We both know that's not true. Last time I had you atop of me, you were squirming with ecstasy and I remember you asking for more after you got used to the feeling of my thrusts. He then kissed her around her neck as he spoke. You have a wild imagination. I remember a quite disappointed look and I asked you if that was all you could do. You have been learning words, Tamari, Naruto said with a smile. Both his hands grabbed her around her waist before he picked her up. He pressed her against him and Tamari wrapped both her legs around him. I truly missed you, Tamari. She was quiet for a couple of moments as she wrapped her hands around him. She grabbed him firmly, not wanting to let go. Me too, she said. Okay, now get off me. I had a long day and want to rest. Naruto said while letting go of Temari. She stared at him, unamused. That's not funny, she said. I was not trying to be funny. You brother said I can't touch you unless we are married. There was no such message and I don't remember you having such problems when you touched me for the first time, Temari said. Are you really going to try to make me beg? Well not if you excite me. Let me go, Tamari said before she was allowed to stand on her own. She closed the distance between her and Naruto. The emperor flinched when he felt a firm hand gripping his balls. Is this excitement, enough? That is just unattractive. I don't remember telling you I was a masochist, Naruto said. Now, please let me go. You don't play like that. A child needs to be born in this world. First tell me you are excited. You cruel woman, Naruto said. I will make you regret such boldness. The following day. Temari stared at Naruto with a questioning look on her face. She was standing inside his office with one of his guards standing behind him. He was writing something silently. She had been called here but he had been silent ever since. Am I being kicked out of the village? Because if so, I feel very used. Naruto looked up at the woman for a moment before shaking his head. You do need to leave now, Temari. Iwagakure and Kumo are already moving towards this village. We must prepare things on our part and I must head out for some destruction. I won't be in this village for most of the time. I need to finish things here today and then leave that is why I must also make sure you leave before I do. Where are you going? To war obviously, but I first have to make a stop somewhere to see certain things, Naruto said before folding the letter he was writing. He gave it to Naori. This is my response to Gara, he said. You are not going to take me. Naruto shook his head. No, there are things I must deal with and you cannot be there with me. Naori will speedily take you towards the border of the wind country. You should be safe there, is it not? There shouldn't be any problem if she were to be dropped within the wind. The desert was her country and there was no one there. It was safe but not what she had expected. She wanted to get on that airship and get on home. But she could understand why they would not want to needlessly use it now their enemies were already watching. A weapon of war could not be used for transport while the enemy is charging towards them. A move like that would certainly be a reckless step. I can live with that, Tamari said with a nod. I will try to get to you when I can. But since the war has started, I will be quite busy running loose. Naruto said. Naori will take you home when you are ready you will follow me once you are done with her, he said to Naori before standing up from his desk. He walked towards Tamari and kissed her on her forehead. I'll try not to die this time around, he said. I'm sure if you die this time around, it will be because someone killed you, Tamari said. He was going to war there was that chance that he would be killed. Anything could happen in war. Naruto smiled. Well, you can't disregard any possibility, he said before turning away from her. Try not to move around too much once you arrive home. 
those people will do anything to win, especially Anoki he disappeared in a blur. Temari turned her eyes towards Naori and asked. Where exactly is he going? Naori just handed Temari the scroll Naruto had given him and spoke. You should get ready to leave, Temari. I won't hurry you. If you want to leave tomorrow, you can do so. But I will not be the one to take you straight to Suna because I must follow his majesty. He will not engage the enemy until I go to his side. Wind Country Kuratsuchi didn't think that things would work in this way. Hell, they had been waiting in the borders with the river country waiting for something to happen and then one of the scouts informed them that they saw the Kazakage sister. It was just her luck. Tsuna was regularly sending people to Kanoha for diplomatic talks and such time someone important was bound to cross the border. Even if it was the Kazakage himself, they would have tried to catch him, but not within the desert such a move would have been disastrous for them. But seeing the Kazakage's sister at this place, alone, it was her luck. There was no way Kuratsuchi was going to fail this mission. There was just no way. She had run with her men and they had managed to catch up to the blonde woman. She was an even bigger bonus since she was truly loved by her brother and seemed to have some connection with that bastard emperor. If possible, we would like to get this over without a struggle, Kuratsuchi said with a smile on her lips. We don't want to harm you we just want you to come to us. Temari held out her fan with narrowed eyes. Who could have thought that things would turn out like this? She should have insisted that Naori take her to Suna, but he had said that Naruto was going straight to battle and he wanted to be closer to the Emperor to perform his duties. She understood that much but to think this would be waiting for her. If she thought that Naruto was a cold-hearted bastard who really did not care for her, she would think that he knew this was going to happen and yet let her go through this situation. Iwagakure, she said. Suna has no war with IWA, why are you doing this? We cannot talk unless you surrender to us, Kuratsuchi said. If you insist on fighting us, I am afraid you will get hurt. You will have to hurt me to take me. Temari said in a hardened tone. I will not be surrendering to you. Chapter 22 Naruto was sitting on a large boulder, observing the movements of Shinobi from Kumogakure. They were moving in similar fashion to Iwa's forces. There were two thousand of them in front of him, traveling in a clear terrain. Because the numbers were too big, they were moving at an open area or perhaps he was standing a good distance from the force. Perhaps they were avoiding a place with threes because they didn't want to face an ambush or set off traps. He would have set some up if their movement had been clear from the beginning. Still, there were still many of them. This was just one unit, there were still four more units. Well, the one in the ocean would be easy to pick apart. He was not here to observe them. There was a war happening. This was war. He had no time for mercy here. He had come here to slaughter some men. If he said he come for a battle, he would have been lying. There would be no real battle. He was just going to release his weapons. The enemy was too big to fight. Even if the rakage was killed, they would not stop. Wars did not stop because a Kage died. It stopped because those in charge moved to end things or because the other party could no longer move. Naruto's eyes flashed behind him for a moment. Naori, he said. You are late. Something occurred on my way back and I was forced to observe, Naori responded. But I came as quickly as I could. What happened? Naruto asked. If it isn't important, we can forget it. There is much to be done here. He had two thousand enemy forces to get rid of. Naori pondered for a moment before responding. Iwagakure took Temari. Kuratsuchi was leading the charge. Although her chakra is sealed, she is still capable with taijutsu. Naruto didn't express any emotion. It was a move he was not expecting from the stone. It was a dirty move meant to spur Suna into action. Gara was probably going to declare war on Suna but because they have his sister, his movements would be restricted. Damn that Anoki. Naruto would not have thought Kuratsuchi would end up taking such a mission. Then again, she probably ran towards the wind to complete the job over her past failure. She was also willing to do anything to save Iwagakure. It was a pity that she had decided to make such a move. And he had thought that she could live a long life. Maybe she could still do so, albeit miserably. 
what was he to do about this? He could just storm into IWA and lay siege on the village. It was not part of the plan. But so was Iwa's action. They were probably trying to guard against Suna entering the fray. Kanoha was already moving. If something happened, Suna would be the first to attack Iwa's rear. Still, the village had done nothing to threaten this move. Then again, when did you need to do anything for Anoki to make a move against you? You just watched. Naruto asked silently. Naori considered his options carefully before responding. Yes he said. At that point, I didn't want to risk anything. I would have gotten involved if there was a chance that they would kill her. But it is highly unlikely. They probably won't even do any harm to her. Naruto nodded and fell silent for more than a minute. What do they hope to achieve? I do not know your majesty. We will move to secure her. I won't mind leveling the village if it is what it takes to get her. Naruto said in a calm tone. Naruto was way too calm for Naori's liking. He knew the emperor cared for Temari. He should have reacted in anger. No, he was most pissed off. The shinobi he was going to face would be at the receiving end of that anger or maybe not. He was not going to step closer to the battlefield. He would observe from a good distance. He did not want to get hit by friendly fire. I did take measures to ensure that the Kazakage knows about this. He most probably will be head to Kanoha, Naori said. Naruto nodded before standing up. We will discuss this and our cause of action when we return to Yuzu. For now, I must deal with this situation. He said. Which strategy should we use here? Recklessness or play it safe? He shook his head. I don't feel like playing it safe. Watch my back. Yes, your majesty. And then the blonde emperor was gone. He appeared above the moving army from Kumogakure. He was floating above the sky, seemingly standing stop of a small tornado that was spinning quietly in the air. Hey, the air just got a little heavy. It feels strange. There is something up there. A shinobi shouted as the army came to a halt, seeing the form of the emperor. It's the emperor. The moment those words were said, the small tornado started to turn into a violent rotation of wind. Within minute, surrounded Naruto and spinning furiously in the air. The tornado then started falling downwards in speed. Boom! The furious winds crashed at the heart of the army in speed. When it crashed into the ground, it picked up massive amounts of debris. The spinning winds pulled in a number of shinobi before hurling them around. Some were unfortunate as the winds tore them apart before dying down after a few minutes. When it cleared, Naruto was standing still inside a large crater, a number of shinobi lying dead around him. Come, Naruto said to the shinobi closest to him. And they did come. He bent backward slightly to avoid a lightning encased sword that flashed just above his face. While still in that motion, Naruto gathered chakra around his fingertip. Wind bullet, he released a powerful bullet that slammed into the chest of the man above him. The man yelped painfully when the jutsu connected with his chest. There was so much force that there was the sound of bones breaking before the man was sent flying upwards. Lightning style, thunder serpent. It was not just a serpent in name. Lightning took the shape of a large snake running through the ground towards him. Naruto didn't stay still he jumped into the air to avoiding the jutsu. But when I took the air, the jutsu raised its head, following him. He twisted in midair along with gusts of wind and then he was gone. He flashed just above the shinobi who had released the lightning jutsu, his body was upside down. He slapped two explosive tags on the man's shoulders before grabbing hold of them as balance. Wind tornado. Naruto twisted around while still in that position. A small tornado started to pick up as he twisted around. The shinobi around them cleared the way to avoid getting caught. When an explosion occurred within the rising tornado, it suddenly disappeared, but there was no sign of Naruto. Where he go? Behind you. Before the shinobi could react, Naruto slapped an explosive tag on the man's back while pushing him forward slightly to get him off balance. He then jumped up slightly while twisted around before slamming his foot through the man's back. When the kick connected, the man rocked off like bullet, being sent flying towards a group of shinobi. 
They managed to catch him but the moment they did so, the explosive tag on the man's back went off. It turned into resounding explosion of flames formed a large mushroom. These elemental explosive tags are quite effective, Naruto said in a calm tone, watching the flames. Five shinobi lunged towards him from all directions all holding lightning encased swords. If he got stabbed, I would certainly be more than pain. One of those would actually manage to pierce through his heart. He glanced towards his target and closed his eyes. He performed a replacement jutsu with another shinobi. The five couldn't stop their movements and all five stabbed their comrade and suddenly, a lightning tag went off, hitting all six with lightning currents that left them with severe burns. Meanwhile, Naruto held his hands together while being shinobi lunged towards him. Futon, decapitating wind. In a flash, Naruto released hundreds of wind-twisting wind blades. The speeds of the blades made it difficult for the shinobi to catch avoid them they couldn't even see them. When the blades hit their targets, they didn't just leave them with cuts they cut through them. Lightning style, thunder flash. A flash of lightning from the sky rushed towards Naruto from above. The blonde didn't even look up. He just closed his eyes before disappearing along gusts of winds. The lightning jutsu hit where he stood, causing the ground to explode. Did you get him? No, he escaped before the J. The shinobi was cut off from finishing speaking Naruto suddenly appeared in front of him. The blonde grabbed the man his throat and picked him up. That was your jutsu? He asked. Before the man could respond, for shinobi charged towards Naruto's back with their sword stabbing forward. They intended to stab him through his back. Naruto responded by twisting around, using the man he held as a shield. The four swords stabbed through the man he held, piercing through his body. Naruto's right hand moved in speed as he removed his wind sword his back. He held it just behind him. Two shinobi flashed just behind him, crashing their swords towards his back. The swords clashed with his sword. Too crowded, Naruto said to himself before wind started gathering around him. The shinobi jumped away from him. Naruto grabbed his sword firmly and bent down slightly. Emperor's Cutter. He twisted around in speed while holding out his sword. The invisible wind sword stretched out in length as he twisted around. His spin was only in the blink of an eye. When he stopped, the shinobi didn't know what happened, but seconds later, their guts burst open before the upper part of the body started being separated from the lower half. It was chaos. Around 70 men started shouting in fear as they tried to get in grips of what just occurred. Naruto became surrounded by a tornado once more. It rose high up in the sky. At the heart of it, Naruto stood still, holding out his sword. Once more he twisted around. The tornado started moving around in speed, heading towards the groups of shinobi. Naruto's extended sword was stretched out. As the tornado moved, he cut through anything in the path. Stay away from the tornado. There is some kind of invisible wind sword. One adept sensor shouted after seeing some of his fellow shinobi being cut in half without even noticing it. When the shinobi decided to run away from him, Naruto stopped moving around. He came to an abrupt halt and held a single hand seal. He put away his wind sword and took out the lightning one. He waited for a moment until he was once more surrounded but they did not want to get close to him because of what happened last time. Naruto did not mind it. He didn't need them to get close. He released a burst of his chakra. The chakra was clearly visible as it washed over a large area. The man could clearly see chakra floating in the atmosphere. It formed like small clouds. He stabbed the lightning sword on the ground. Lightning burst. Nothing happened at first. But static started to form around the air. Everyone, get out of here too late. Another wave of Naruto's chakra released a huge amount of lightning. The entire around surrounding became an electrical field. Everyone caught within the vicinity of the field screamed in pain as electricity coursed through their bodies. One by one, they started falling down the ground. It took about two minutes for the electricity to completely disappear. When it did, Naruto pulled out his sword from the ground and put it back on its sheath once more. He pulled out his wind sword. You bastard. He ducked under a swing from a huge sword that came from behind. 
As he was going down, another shinobi flashed just below him, a kunai pointed towards his chest. Naruto blocked the kunai by putting his sword just in front of him. He then disappeared in a blur. When he landed down the ground, five men jumped from behind him. He only did a single twist, and they all fell down the ground, in halves. Naruto was forced to jump into the air when lightning burst from the ground below him. A man flashed above him as he was still airborne. The man slammed a punch towards his chest, but Naruto blocked it with his sword. He was however, sent crashing into the ground because he had no balance. Naruto crashed on both feet and was quick to stand up. A kunoichi flashed in front of him, stabbing a kunai with an explosive tag towards his chest. Naruto's feet moved graciously as he took a single step backwards before twisting around anti-clockwise. He avoided the kunai while also stabbing the woman through her chest. He grabbed the kunai with his free hand and threw it into sky. The woman grabbed his sword with both hands. The moment she did so, Naruto felt multiple projectiles flying his way. How noble! To sacrifice yourself for the greater good of everyone, Naruto said calmly. Gusts if wind just picked up around him and repelled the projectiles. Naruto turned around to face the kunoichi. Without even saying anything, he slammed his right foot into her gut so brutally she was sent flying upwards like a bullet. He swiped his sword, removing the blood on it before sheathing it. Naruto jumped up to the ground, legs folded as someone burst from below. Simultaneously, two shinobi jumped with him as if they had been expecting him to make the movement. Both flanked his sides, flashing kicks towards his upper body. Naruto avoided the kicks falling back, his body falling into a horizontal position while he stretched out both his legs. His eyes watched the two kicks collided in just above his face. Water style, water gun. A shinobi below him, released a stream of water from his mouth. The water jutsu blasted towards Naruto's back. The moment it collided with the emperor, the two flanking his sides, with the jutsu pushing him into the air. The two held out their hands and grabbed him by the shoulders, both releasing lightning that shocked Naruto with so much power that the water on his body produced steam. They then tried to push him down in speed. But the moment they let him go, Naruto flipped before he could hit the ground. He was not able to fully regain his balance had literally crashed down, on his knees. He was forced to once more go on the defensive by folding his hands across his face when someone landed in front of him with just their left foot, the right picking up wind as it sped toward his face. The kick slammed into his defense, and forced him to slide backwards while still on his knees due to the power behind the kick. When the momentum stopped, small amount of debris still floating around the sides, Naruto fell back once more while stretching out both his hands. A second later, two shinobi appeared on sides, twisting around, they tried to kick him on the sides of his chest. But Naruto's outstretched hands caught both kicks. Before they could try to do anything, Naruto quickly stood up, taking the man along with him. He spun around clockwise before hurling both shinobi towards their friends. Six shinobi jumped in to catch the two men, and the moment they did, two massive explosions of flames tore through the ground, enveloping the eight men while others jumped to safety. The flames that were formed by the explosion created a large ball of flames that continued to burn for a couple of moments. When it finally died down, there were no remains of the shinobi caught within it. The Kumo shinobi charged towards the emperor once more. Naruto handled both his swords the wind with his right hand and the lightning with his left. When it came to being sharp, wind was much sharper and then darted towards the incoming enemy. Two moved ahead of the group, holding lightning encased swords, they flanked his sides. Naruto tried to speed past them, but a wall of rock burst forth in front of him, stopping his movements. He twisted around swiftly as an incoming downward swing moved towards his right shoulder. He held his right sword just above him, blocking the swing. There was spark of electricity when the swords collided. The other man flashed on Naruto's left and swung his sword in a horizontal swing aimed just above his waist. Naruto bent his knees slightly and took a step forward while pushing the other man away from him. He then positioned his other sword in a vertical position on his left sword. Within a second, there was a small explosion of lightning as the sword was hit by another lightning sword. With his right free, Naruto took a step forward, 
moving away from the opponent before he spun anti-clockwise, bringing up his wind sword as he did. Emperor's Cutter The sword cut through the man cleanly across his chest before cutting through the rock wall that had been erected to stop his march. A shinobi jumped up from the wall as Naruto felt a massive spike of chakra from multiple shinobi. He blocked a downward swing with just his left sword and held firmly when another shinobi appeared from behind. The emperor pointed his wind sword towards the man, holding it in a reverse grip. The sword extended, and pierced through the man's throat, halting his movements before he dropped down. Naruto pushed the man just above him away and leapt backwards quickly. His eyes snapped up into the sky as he saw clouds gathering. Thunder God Strike An immense lightning strike flashed down towards the emperor in lightning speed. When it seemingly hit him, there was a loud boom on the ground that caused large amount of debris to pick up in the surrounding. Did we get him? I can't feel anything. Be ready for a second right just in case. When the dust cleared, Naruto was standing still in a large crater with Naori kneeling in front of him. There was a chakra chain barrier surrounding them. That nearly got me, Naruto said while looking up in the sky. They are preparing another one will you manage? I erected a chakra barrier. The seals absorb the chakra and transfer to the ground, Naori said. But I don't think I can handle repeated attempts. The jutsu consumes too much chakra, they can't afford too many uses, Naruto responded calmly. Here I, the jutsu hit Naori's barrier before Naruto could even finish speaking. Once more, the barrier withstood the powerful lightning attack but the ground beside them did not. It was turned into dust the moment the jutsu struck. Thank you, Naori, you may hold your position, I will go wild, Naruto stated before handing Naori both his swords. The man cancelled his barrier and then took the swords. A second later, he was gone in a flash. Crimson chakra started surrounding him like bubbles before he dropped into all fours as the chakra surrounded him. The chakra then formed five tails behind him. His form completely disappeared as he turned into a five-tailed miniature beast. A small grow was accompanied by a small shockwave that had the shinobi scrambling backwards in fear. The five tails pierced through the ground. Multiple chakra tails burst from the ground in front of the retreating shinobi, stopping them from going anywhere. He opened his mouth and faced up as he began to gather chakra just above him. After a few moments, the chakra formed into a small orb of condensed chakra. He then swallowed it whole. The moment he did, his stomach enlarged and the ground below him shattered. Once more, he opened his mouth and released a powerful blast of energy that spread out wide towards the Kumo Shinobi in lightning speed. The Jutsu turned everything it touched into ashes, and chunks of earth into dust. Multiple shinobi were caught within the beam before it set off an alarming explosion. The explosion caused chunks of earth to pick up from the ground, while creating a large mushroom of debris. The five-tailed miniature beast watched for a moment as the explosion died down. But before it completely died down, it started darting towards enemy forces in speed. The claws swiped across a man's chest, leaving gashes that drew blood. When seven shinobi jumped in from behind, the five tails extended, piercing five through their chest. They were hurled away by the tails before the remaining two tried stabbing the beast from behind, but their swords could not break through its skin. They were stunned for a moment but never got the chance to make an escape as they were caught by two chakra hands that burst from the ground. The chakra hands held them firmly before an audible sound of bones snapping hit the men closer. The two being crushed spat out blood from their mouths before being dropped to the ground. Let us retreat. We can't fight this thing. It is just going to chase us if we all run. Naruto would not allow them to escape like that. Not when he had bothered transforming. A massive explosion of chakra occurred before a large cloud of smoke filled the area. The Kumo shinobi halted in their movements. No one moved or said anything as they were gripped by fear. When the smoke cleared, the fearsome form of the QB stood still, its tail swinging menacingly behind. Ah, it feels good to breathe some fresh air, the bijou said. Inside the mindscape, Naruto was sitting in a meditative position, holding his hands together. He was not within the familiar cell in a clear surrounding that seemed like an empty space. I have only permitted this because it is the only way your form can get out. 
If you do anything I don't approve, I will suppress you and then separate you from your chakra before getting a more cruel seal to hold you. Kurama didn't respond to this. It took a giant step forward before lunging towards the many shinobi who by now were trying to escape. The bijou swatted its right paw, slamming into the ground. Multiple shinobi screamed as the bijou's paw peeled chunks of earth from the ground, hitting many shinobi. Those who flew into the air took an unfortunate turn as the bijou raised its right paw and slammed them away. The bijou then took more steps forward and then waved its tails in one powerful swing that caused violent winds to pick up. It was like a crushing storm that hit behind it, moving in speed before slamming into hundreds of kumo shinobi. Despite its massive size, it leapt into the air, jumping backwards before beginning to charge a bijudama. Scatter! One shinobi shouted knowing if they moved in one group, they would only get killed. Kurama did not mind that they scattered. He only condensed his bijudama and then swallowed it as Naruto had done earlier. His paws burrowed into the ground and he released a powerful beam of destructive energy. But unlike Naruto's, his was not just once off. He did a 180 degree spin while releasing the jutsu, targeting the scattered shinobi. All around the bijou, there was just chaos, debris flying over into the air. It did not get to enjoy the view as Naruto forced it back. The blonde landed down and looked around for a moment. Not attractive but it will do, he said before disappearing. He appeared a distance away from the battleground that had left nature needing some reorganization due to the Kyuubi's power. Naori appeared beside him as they walked within the trees of the land of hot waters. That was quite the battle, your majesty, he said. Not quite, Naruto said with a slight frown. Because the enemy overwhelms us, we are forced to play this cruel game. I don't enjoy it but we must crush as many as we can before we face the leaders. With many losses behind and the loss of leaders, the remaining would be most likely to surrender, Naori said in thought. Naruto nodded. If we tried to face them head on as they are, we would get crushed. But we must work this method and ensure that we make things slightly even he explained lightly. Do you have everything? Yes, Naori said. The country is big though. We will still need to cover the Fire Nation as well. That means we will probably spend the whole day on this. We would not be able to move quickly to help Temari. I did not come this far by making irrational decisions. I care for her but what we are about to do is an important part for our survival. We cannot deviate from this plan. Naruto stated in a hardened tone. We may still not use this if they end up surrendering but we must be ready for anything. Iwagakure. Temari was defiant. She was not going to say anything she didn't have to say. She was not going to betray Suna or Yuzushio. Even if they asked Kanoha, there would be nothing coming out of her mouth that would please them. This was a stupid decision to make though. Naruto could do such things. But then again, when Naruto took Kuratsuchi prisoner, she had been trying to kill him. He was well within his rights to do so. But this, they had ambushed her and then took her by force when Suna had done nothing against them. Her brother was not going to be pleased, much less the emperor. Temari wondered what he would do when he does find out about this. She shook her head. She was could make a guess. But ultimately, she would not stay in this village for too long. She was going to be freed. Kanoha was also going to join the cause. Perhaps those two alone wouldn't successfully invade IWA as it already has Kumo has an ally but they would have earned two enemies. Her brother was specifically not going to forgive this transgression. If you still release me now, there shouldn't be any problems, Tamari tried to reason with Kuratsuchi. It would be a pity if all the great nations were taken to war because she was caught. Kuratsuchi just grinned. She was pleased that she at least managed this job. She had failed the last one. This just gave her the confidence she had lost. You are not going anywhere until my grandfather says otherwise, she said. Do you even understand what you have done? Yes your brother will be very angry. But his anger doesn't frighten us. We just want Suna to stop the movement of its forces across the borders. There is the thought that we might end up fighting Kyumo once Yuzushio falls, we don't want any of you taking advantage of the situation, Kuratsuchi explained lightly. As I said, we have no intentions to harm you. 
Temari shook her head. It didn't matter if they had no intentions to harm her. The fact was that they had made this reckless move. Perhaps it would lessen the pain, but there would be pain. Have you considered that Kanoha might have more reasons than ever to get involved in the war? If we told the leaf that we will kill you should Kanoha get involved, do you think your brother will allow Kanoha to fight? Kuratsuchi asked. Temari almost spat out. It was a dirty move. Her beloved brother wouldn't do anything to risk her life. He would certainly plead with Kanoha to stop. But what if Kanoha does not and they end up killing her? Suna would not only end up at war with IWA but its relationship with Kanoha would be ruined. Whoever came up with this plan was a corrupted piece of trash. They wanted to put fire between allies just to ensure that they did not get together against them. The fact that they even believed that Suna could launch an attack just proved these people were paranoid to some extent. So that is your goal, she smiled bitterly. I have to admit, it's a brilliant strategy. Your grandfather might be most infamous for his stubbornness but he certainly is wise at plotting things. Well he has been alive for long. Kuratsuchi said proudly. Since you understand things, will you quiet down while I prepare a message to both Kanoha and Suna? You are not going anywhere, and they are not going to come here and risk your life. Besides, if they charge, both Kyumo and IWA forces might as well invade the Hidden Leaf. Kuratsuchi would not wouldn't mind to see that happen. Kanoha has always been seen as the top village. The Fire Nation has always been the most powerful. But if Kanoha was destroyed, IWA would no doubt become the strongest and it would make things easy for them. They would not have to worry and business would flock here. They would grow this village and maybe that old man would decide to throw in the towel and let her become the Tsuchikage. Perhaps they might not, Tamari said. Her relationship with Naruto has always been something of a secret. People didn't know she was involved with the Emperor. The fact that Yuzushio was not allied to Suna made it even hard to conclude. But what about Yuzushio Gakure? What about them? Don't they have a bigger problem to worry about? As we speak, an overwhelming force is marching towards them. They are outnumbered. Do you think they will spare one to save you? What would one shinobi even do? If I remember correctly two shinobi dealt you a major blow in just a handful of minutes, Temari said but they are not going to come here. If it is those in Amage Cure, we have people watching. The moment they move towards this village, one unit is rushing over to aim to lay waste to it. Kuratsuchi said with a smile. See, we have thought about this. But you are not closer to Yuzushio and I seem to recall that the emperor covers a big distance in the blink of an eye. What if he comes here? Kuratsuchi looked thoughtful for a moment. It has been rumored that you have some connection with him what are you? His lover? No, that cold-hearted bastard is incapable of loving, she stood up and walked towards Temari. But if he does come here, I'll just hold a kunai on your throat and tell him to go back home. Temari laughed. It was a bitter laugh. You just called him a cold-hearted bastard do you think a cold-hearted bastard who is incapable of loving will bow to that demand? He'll probably tell you to hurry it up and kill me. Kuratsuchi frowned for a second. Well, since you may end up dying, I might as well help myself in making you suffer as I was made to suffer when I was held up in Yuzushio. And then when your brother asks why, we blame the emperor. We might even add that he let you be captured so that you can get involved. You'd have to be alive to say that. What is that supposed to mean? With AI. Reikage Sama, a messenger shinobi said to the Reikage in a fearful tone. What? AI demanded with a look at clearly said, it better not be bad news. The shinobi swallowed hard before giving his report. The second unit was attacked by the emperor. He was alone and it was almost annihilated he said. What? The rakage grabbed the shinobi by his shirt, glaring into his eyes. Are you sure this information is accurate? How can he fight two thousand men and nearly cripple them all? That was the feat of past Kages. But then again, shinobi from the Hidden Leaf have always been ridiculously strong. I watched everything, Reikage Sama, the shinobi said. AI dropped the man to the ground and glared at the empty space ahead. Why did it look like things were just getting difficult with each passing moment? 
Never mind that, he had lost men and he was laughing and Iwa's shinobi for being weak after they had faced their own challenge. They were dealing with truly powerful people and it would not end well for them if they were not careful. He just hoped that there would not be any attack like this again because it would surely impact his shinobi negatively. Whenever Naruto appears, they were likely to just give up. There was nothing more useless than a shinobi without the will to fight. But what was he to do about this? If this was Naruto's strategy, he was going to lose many men before he even arrives in the wave country. Tell the other units to inform me as soon as Naruto appears before them. They must stall. B and I will face him. Hi, Rakage Sama. The man disappeared after responding to the Rakage. Nine is as strong as you feared, brother, B said. But with our combo, Nine will be stung by our double lariat, yo. Yeah, with B, who could defeat them? Kanoha. Gara took giant steps towards the office of the Hokage. He was not a happy person, far from it. If the Tsuchikage could stand in front of him, he would turn the old man into a shower of blood. Perhaps he was thinking those bloody thoughts that once made him infamous with Suna's people. He did have that record. It was threatening to come out once more because of his anger over what Iwagakure did. His beloved sister. She had nothing to do with their war and yet they had touched her. He was not going to blame Yuzushio for not dropping her off at the village. Sure if such a thing had been done, this would not have happened. But this was not a time of ifs. He had only come here because there was no other ally he could speak with other than Kanoha. He could try with Yuzushio, but the village had a much bigger problem. Kanoha was more or less in the same boat and whatever was going to happen because of IWA have just done would include both villages. When Gara walked into the Hokage's office, he found the Godame sitting with Shikaku and her assistant. I'm so glad you could make it so quickly, Gara, Tsunade said with a small smile. Gara walked towards the window and looked down at the quiet streets of Kanoha. Suna was not quiet. The village was busy with activities. His sister needed to be returned home as soon as possible. I traveled without much rest. I don't know what those people are even doing to my sister. His voice was just dead of any emotion as he spoke. I doubt they will harm her, Shikaku said in thought. There is much to lose for Iwagakure if they do something like that. I figured as much, Gara said silently. He glanced at the Godame for a moment before speaking once more. What do you suppose is the reason for this move? Suna is not at war with Iwagakure and we have not threatened the village in any way. Sometimes I don't know why Anoki does what he does. But if you look back, IWA has a history of invading other nations if they think it will help them in some way. They also have no qualms destroying others if they perceive them as a threat, Tsunade said with a slight shake of her head. But the reason for this move is nothing but sinister. She was at least glad that the Kazakage was calm. For as long as she has known him, he has always been calm, never losing his calmness even in tough situations. But she could feel the anger from him. He was rightfully angry. Tsunade would not be pleased either. And Tamari was his only sister. He was sure as hell not going to let Anoki get away with this one. It is possible that this action was taken because they heard that we were mobilizing our forces. The Uzumaki appear to be much of a threat than first thought. So they want to focus solely on destroying it. However, if Kanoha stands at the borders of the Fire Nation, there is likely going to be a confrontation with the forces. Kanoha does not have a good history with both the Cloud and Rock. Should a confrontation occur, you would most likely try to come to our aid if we asked. What is the best solution to keep this from happening? I asked myself but when Iwagakure made that move, I thought it was a good move. If they hold her hostage and threaten to kill her if we do something, we will be put in a difficult position. Tamari is not our kunoichi, we may be tempted to fight if we are forced. If they kill Tamari because of that, Sun and Kanoha will likely fight. When that happens, Anoki can request aid from the Rakage in fighting us, Shikaku explained with caution. Gara was silent for a couple of moments before responding. But? There is a massive miscalculation that will prove costly to Iwagakure, Shikaku said. Naruto's relationship with Tamari is something that they did not account for. If we are correct, 
Naruto has more reasons to invade Iwagakure, Tsunade said. Gara nodded his head in agreement. This was a tricky situation. She was actually coming from Yuzushio when she was ambushed. I had sent her to deal with certain issues with the Emperor. If things worked out well, then we will hear from him, he said. I cannot let this slide however. I will not that Suchikage get away with this. Neither will Kanoha, Tsunade said in a hardened tone. We know the agenda here is to make a rift between our two villages. We simply cannot allow Anoki to do as he pleases. There will have to be consequences for this transgression. Kanoha will use every bit of its power to make things happen. The Fire Lord is also not happy that both Cloud and Rock plan to invade the Fire Country on their path towards Yuzushio. He will also help apply pressure on the two nations. For now, I am calling an emergency summit with all the Kages here in the Fire Nation before things become chaotic in the war. We will sort out this issue and apply the means we must apply to make him pay. Will he agree to it? We have to make him agree to it, Tsunade said in a hardened tone. We will have to use Naruto to make it happen. What do you think he will do anyway? If he does something, it will convince Anoki to attend the summit. And we won't have to do anything. I will know what he will do when I hear from him. He has not said anything. But I am certain he already knows, Gara said. Are we certain that he will do something? Shikaku asked cautiously. Will he even come here? Cloud and Rock are already marching in any lapse in his part, both the wave and Yuzushio will fall. We don't know. We don't know if he will even come to me, Gara said calmly. That is why I came here. I wanted to let you know my thoughts and see if we agree on a course of action. Yuzushio Gakure. Naruto settled on his throne silently with Naori standing beside him. He wanted to deal with the Iwagakure issue. There was no telling what Kuratsuchi was doing to Temari. Either way, this was not going to be the end of the road for Temari. There was no doubt about that. Naruto would handle the situation without the assistance of Suna or the Leaf. It was perhaps his fault that Temari had been taken. He should have ensured that she was home. No, it did not matter anymore. He just had to retrieve her from those people, even if it meant laying waste to the stone. It was unfortunate though. If there had been a plan from the start to do this, Naruto would have just had Nagato do it. He would have done it better. It could not be helped. They needed a quick fix to the situation. He could send someone to deal with it but this was Temari, he would handle it himself. Besides, he had a bone to pick with Kuratsuchi. To think that he had bothered letting her live. But this was just the case about things in this world. Nothing ever went according to plan. Surprises did try to blindside you every now and then. Naoki appeared in the room along with Haku and Mei. The man left the two and walked towards him. The Kazakage is at Kanoha. It would be good to make an impression on him by going there to talk to him. Naruto's eyes shifted towards Naoki before responding. Since when do I care about impressions? Especially to Gara. Naoki smiled. You usually don't. He said with a nod of his head. But Gara is Tamari's brother and he cares much about his sister. It would be best to have in good terms with him as your relationship with him may affect your relationship with her. We are also not trusted, Naori added in thought. In this situation, some people would even suggest that we plan for this to happen. That would not be out of the question. But you cannot do anything about people's suspicions, Naruto said with a slight shrug. I was planning on seeing him, but not in Kanoha. It can't be helped. I guess I will use the opportunity to talk to someone he said in thought. I will return once I finish speaking to him. We will talk about how my actions will affect our overall strategy and future plans. We simply cannot act without thinking clearly. It would ruin everything I have been working hard to create. Of course, Naori said with a nod. I will ensure that Noroi and Gurin are here by the time you return from Kanoha. Naruto nodded and turned his attention towards Haku and Mei. He stood up from his throne and walked towards the two before offering a smile to the latter. I must apologize for keeping you waiting, but we have a bit of a situation here and it demands my full attention. Mei waved her right hand. It is fine, she said. 
They were at war and she had already overstayed her visit anyway. I am told that you are leaving. Yes, but I wanted to have a word with you before I do so. I can see there is a lot to deal with but I just need a couple of moments, May said. We can speak as I go to my ship. Naruto nodded. He needed to rush to Konoha. But the teleportation marks were already placed. He would be there soon enough. He could take a couple of minutes and hopefully, Kuratsuchi isn't torturing Temari. Haku, follow us. You will guard her as she returns home. I see she did not bring any guards. My duties to guard Yuzushio. You are not going there forever. Naoki will come to fetch you later. Naruto said calmly. Shall we? Mei turned around and started walking alongside Naruto with Haku just behind them. Although Haku has been talking to the water daimyo, I have received word that he has gone on to contact lightning and earth daimyos. How unfortunate, Naruto said calmly. Then he is after the wave country. That is a scenario I did not consider. Feudal lords are truly problematic. He said with a slight shake of his head. Then you have no problem with us handling things in any way we see fit, no? Not now, May said. I will immediately head out to see him after landing in Kiri. No doubt he will try to force Kiri to join the war. If that happens, I will handle him. You don't have to get involved. Naruto glanced at the woman for a moment as they exited his compound. The streets were as peaceful as ever. It was truly hard to see that these people were aware that an overwhelming force was marching towards them. Haku will be with you. Not physically of course. He has other duties that require his abilities. But I will trust you will handle this issue. Thank you, May said. What is happening? Iwagakure decided to kidnap to Tamari for some sinister motive that has the possibility of seeing the sand clashing with leaf, Naruto said in a measured tone. The same woman who came here. Naruto nodded. What is she to you? Naruto could feel Mei's eyes on him without blinking. Love, you could say. He said but did not add anything to it and was not planning to add to it. It has changed the dynamics of things because now those villages are involved. I have to go see them before retrieving Tamari from Iwa's clutches. It complicates things because it does not look like I will do it cleanly. Mei was silent for a couple of moments while studying Naruto. You don't look really angry, but you are, aren't you? Naruto smiled. You can tell. I don't feel any intent from you. Then again, you seem to think logically at most times. Thinking like that helps you control your emotions. Mei said in thought. What would happen if you let your emotions show? Anger? Hatred? Naruto smiled, it was a flat smile. Nothing but chaos. I just got back from a battle. But I managed to control my anger then. I am afraid I am losing grip of it though. Wait, you were fighting? Naruto nodded. I had my second encounter with cloud forces. Buried a bunch of them before retreating. There are many of them, we must reduce their numbers, he shook his head. You have my word that Yuzushio will not interfere when you handle your daimyo. However, should you fail to contain it we will handle it with force. Of course, May said. She had confidence that she would deal with it. Good luck in trying to retrieve Tamari. You should wish luck to Iwagakure, Naruto said before disappearing along gusts of winds. May turned to Haku and spoke. He is not a happy camper, is he? Does he really care that much for that woman? He does care for her but I think he is most incensed with Kuratsuchi. She was held captive here. But he released her. And now this. Haku said with a shake of his head. He is likely going to kill her even though he had planned on having her as Tsuchikage after the war. Mei narrowed her eyes. What are you suggesting by that? Haku smiled innocently. I said too much, he said. Hidden leaf. The Kazakage was sitting at Ikaraku Ramen along with Jiraiya. He had come here because he had been told that Naruto frequented this place when he had been a shinobi of this village. The blonde emperor was not the person occupying his thoughts nevertheless. Gara was more concerned about the safety of his sister more than anything. Just sitting here made him feel like he was failing her. 
The fact that he didn't know the exact condition she was in is what worried him. He was not going to wait for the Kage summit before making if nothing was happening. He was going to send people into Iwagakure to see if they can retrieve her. It didn't matter if they had to kill someone to get it done. It didn't matter if IWA would cry foul and seek war with him afterwards. The fact was that the village had crossed a line that should never be crossed. He glanced at Jiraiya for a moment before staring at the bowl before him. How long until Kakashi arrives at the border? Two or three days, Jiraiya said in thought. They are not moving that quickly on account of the enemy's movements. Besides, it would be best to preserve energy as we don't know what will happen when they encounter them. No doubt they will first sit and discuss how to move and what needs to be done and about Anoki's plan, Gara said tonelessly. You are not going to join. If something happens, I will be rushing there, Jiraiya said. I want to be closer to Kanoha to protect it from any threats, he added in a bitter tone. There have been things that occurred while he wasn't around the village. When Naruto was to be born, he should have been around knowing the risks that were calculated but he had not been around. Minato had ended up sacrificing his life. He should have been the one to do it. Minato should have lived. If he was alive, they probably would not have been having this war. Part of the reason Naruto left was because of how he was treated in this village. If Minato and Kushina had lived, Naruto would have stayed in this village. He would have been a fine shinobi of the leaf. This time around, Jiraiya was not going to leave the leaf in the time of need. He had bad luck though. Even though he had been here when Orochimaru invaded, he had still allowed the snake to face his sensei. Had he moved quicker, had he known what was going to happen, he would have been closer to his sensei and he would have stopped Orochimaru. Gara sensed the bitterness in Jiraiya's tone but did not comment on it. Kanoha is fortunate to have many skilled shinobi. In case something happens, you should be able to hold on. Jiraiya nodded. But in war, you never know how things work out. Overwhelming power does not always win. Strategy does matter. Even if Naruto has overwhelming power, if Kyumo and Stone plays this well, they could use their numbers to make Yuzu suffer. If it is about holding Naruto back while their forces attack, would it matter? Naruto can teleport, can't he? He can but his jutsu doesn't work like Minato's. However it seems it was not made for battle. It was made to remove barriers in distance. I believe that is what he used to travel between Kanoha and Yuzushio without anyone noticing, Jiraiya said. In war, he would still need to travel. But we don't know how things will work out. Gara nodded. Nobody knew. Anything could happen. Anoki had just proved that you really needed to watch your back or something unexpected was going to catch you off guard. I am, Naruto suddenly said, already sitting down beside Jiraiya. You know my order keep them coming. I am nearly jumped off her feet when Naruto suddenly spoke. She hadn't seen him sit down. It was just his voice that suddenly shook her. She placed her hand on her heart and then smiled. Naruto, don't scare me like that. She exclaimed. She blinked once as something clicked. Oh, sorry I forget you are now his majesty she said. Naruto smiled. Who would have thought that the lonely kid who walked around this village with a dark cloud over his head would one day become the emperor? Well, I had always known you'd be someone great, I am said with a large smile on her lips. And you did mention it once or twice. I did. It must have been a rare slip of the tongue, Naruto said with a thoughtful look on his face. I am laughed. You know you never do that, she said. No matter what, I you could never get you to say anything you did not want she said. But I now I know why you once said those other words, she said. I hadn't made an offer then, but let me make you an offer. If you want to expand your business, I would be willing to help you open ramen stands in my empire. As long as you make the same quality ramen as here. Naruto said. I'll think about that, I am said before telling him she was going to get his order ready. You are still a master of stealth, I see, Jiraiya said. I only sensed a change of the breeze, he said. But still entering here freely it seems. Naruto shrugged. I did not leave Kanoha as an enemy or having done something wrong to it. I just played dead for a while. Kanoha has never been my enemy either. 
I just don't care for it and don't want it in my war, he explained. Besides, I have not come here willingly. The situation forces me to be here. Predictably, Jiraiya said. Naruto glanced at Gara for a moment before speaking to him. Kazakage, he said. Emperor, Gara acknowledged with a nod of his head. Tell me what happened. My sister was in your village before this happened. You didn't know this was going to happen. Naruto didn't look at Gara when he responded. His response didn't come immediately either. You have not heard, it seems, he said. Heard what? Jiraiya asked with narrowed eyes. He didn't think this was one of Naruto's ploys to control the conversation and divert them away from what Gara was asking. He didn't think the blonde would do that though. Just yesterday, I attacked 2,000 men from the cloud and buried them. Not all of them of course but I disabled about 90% of them before retreating, Naruto said in thought. It was before this battle that I was told of what happened. But we could not return home immediately. I had to prepare the field for battle before going back home. The land was vast and I could not just send an army if clones to do it as it would alert the enemy. This activity ended up taking too much time I only returned to Yuzu today. I didn't think you of all people would actually think of laying traps, Jiraiya said. You may hide it but you really do enjoy fighting. Against strong opponents, Naruto corrected. But this is not about my pleasure. The survival of the Uzumaki clan is at stake here and I honestly cannot risk anything. I know the enemy is large, that is why strategy is important. Didn't you always say that even a stronger shinobi can be defeated by someone weaker? It isn't the number of jutsu but the use and effectiveness thereof that determines victory. I have power, but that alone is not enough. Strategy is also important. At least you learned something from me. Naruto shrugged. Don't get ahead of yourself. I learned this from the Sandame Hokage he said. You could have just allowed me to have the victory, Jiraiya said. I'm not that kind, Naruto said before responding to Gara. I did not know anything about it. If I had even known that there was such a plan, would have had Naori accompany Tamari through the desert. But doing so would have meant that he would have not been able to join me in battle. Gara nodded, accepting Naruto's words. Then where do you stand with my sister? Part of the reason he had even sent her to Yuzu was because he really wanted her to solve her issues with Naruto. If they had solved their issues, then expected Naruto to do something. Naruto smiled as Ayam brought his order. He said his silent thanks and dug in. Ah, this is still good, he mused before responding to Gara. I'm on her side, Naruto said. I was very disturbed when I was informed of her situation. It was really difficult to tell if Naruto was really angry. There was nothing in his tone that suggested otherwise. There was nothing in Gara's face that said he was angry but his tone gave away the anger. Yet with the Emperor, there was nothing. It is really hard to tell. Naruto turned his eyes to face Gara, but he did not say anything, not until a couple of minutes passed anyway. He first enjoyed his ramen before responding. You will know that I am displeased soon enough. Temari, I will retrieve but I thought I should just give you a warning to what I will do and I also wanted to know what you have decided to do. Of course, I would still need to discuss things to see where it leads us. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. What are you planning to do Naruto? I know Temari is currently being held at Iwagakure. They have secured the village and put on one of their Jinchuriki as a guard but I am still going to go there and ask for her to be returned. Are you planning to send your airship? No doubt it was created as a weapon. Naruto shook his head. In a case where there is a Jinchuriki, I cannot take it unless forced. It would just become a shooting target, he said. There are means. But Temari will be retrieved at the end of the day. What have you planned? A Kage summit? Yes, Gara said. But I also wanted to see Shinobi to Iwagakure to try to retrieve her, he added. Both Ai and Anoki are most likely to reject a call for a summit at this stage. They are at war and would not want to leave their men when we have already attacked them, Naruto said in thought. That is fine though the idea of a summit. I will give Anoki reasons to attend it and I will be honorable by not attacking them. The safest thing of course would be to have me attend the summit, he added. I smell something fishy, Jiraiya said. 
Gara ignored this. You promise me that you will bring back my sister. Of course, Naruto said with a nod of his head. As emperor, my word should mean much more, especially a promise. If I just went around saying things, my words would not have value. Then I will hear from you, Gara said. The place and time for the summit has already been selected. By tomorrow, the summons should reach all Kages. I think both Ai and Anoki will object to your presence since you are not a Kage and they both hate you. Naruto shrugged. I could care less about their petty feelings, he said indifferently. He took out money and placed it down before taking his bowl. Next time you see me, I will be returning your sister he disappeared after saying those words. A couple of minutes later. I was beginning to think I had made a mistake, Yugao said as Naruto walked towards her, carrying a ramen bowl. She was sitting a tree branch, within the forest of death, in her umbu uniform. Naruto jumped up and sat beside her. He did not glance toward her as he responded. I was still talking to the Kazakage and Jiraiya about what to do about this situation we find ourselves in he said. Why did you call me? I am not your spy, you know, she said in a hardened tone. There is not a point I came to suggest that, Naruto said with a shrug. He took out a scroll and handed it to Yugo. After the war, you can give that to Shikamu. My arrangement with the Sandane was that he would allow me to leave Kanoha for Yuzu as long at the end, Yuzu and Kanoha become allies. Terms also included a political marriage, he frowned upon saying that. Ah, even you can frown, Yugao said with a smile. It was a tricky situation I found myself in, Naruto said. The Sandame did not buy my threat to release the Kyubi because he knew I really wanted to live. And he was certain he would be able to handle things even if the Kyubi were to be released. I had to improvise. Good thing he cared for me and thought deeply about what was best for Kanoha. But you don't. Not even a little, Naruto said. But I made the arrangement with the Sandame Hokage. I cannot break away from that. Besides, he had measures put to ensure I don't break from the arrangement. That he did, Yugao said. I'll still continue to oversee things until everything is in place. My people will speak to you from now on, Naruto said. Oh, please do tell Kurinai that I will come for my Jinjutsu lessons. I did ask for the lessons before. Is that whom you are targeting? Of course not, Naruto said. But she would not be a bad choice. I always figured if the Sandame selected someone, it would be you. I wouldn't have agreed to it. Naruto glanced at the umbu with a raised eyebrow. Do you find any that unattractive? Her response had come too quickly. I am not going to fall for it by answering that question. You obviously have something lined up in case I answer any other way, Yugao said calmly. I will give Karina your message. I am not sure she will be too thrilled though. It doesn't matter Naruto said. Yugao stared at his form for a moment before speaking. You chose to die not only because it provided you cover. I mean if you are dead, Kanoha had no reasons to look for you. If you had just left, and gone to Yuzu, you would have been forced to reveal your agreement with the Sandame before you were close to reaching your goal. Dying made sure you did not reveal anything and you never became an enemy of Kanoha. Technically, you are still a Kanoha shinobi. Your return from the dead changed that status. Kanoha never declared you a rogue shinobi. Now that is a wild thought, don't you think? Keep telling yourself that, Yugao said. What was it that the Sandame had on you that forced you to agree on terms you obviously don't like? Naruto was silent for a couple of moments before responding. He didn't buy my threats but also made a threat to me. A threat he could carry out and one that would destroy everything. He just had to open his mouth. He said. And you're not the only one who knew about this. He told me this in case I decided to have you killed upon his death. No doubt you would have done so, Yugao said. And you think I'd agree to marry you when I know you wouldn't blink trying to kill me? I thought you were not entertaining that thought, Yugao, Naruto said. Did the Sandane perhaps try to get you to agree to it before he died? Who knows? Yugao said. Then who is the other person? Don't know. I have tirelessly looked but I did not find anyone. I once thought it was Itachi given that he did speak to the old man but that turned out to be false. 
And I bothered quickening his death, Naruto said with a shake of his head. Keep the scroll safe and only Shikamaru must know its contents. Why Shikamaru? Anara was chosen to oversee things, Naruto said. Perhaps the Sandame also let slip of some things to Shikaku which is why he decided to send Shikamaru to Yuzushiogakure without Tsunade knowing. Amigekure. Naruto looked through the village hidden in rain from the tallest tower. He always found it fascinating whenever he came to this village. Amigekure was indeed a unique village. There was no village that was like it. Today, was also a good day as the god of this village was allowing the villagers to have a bit of the sun. But the moment he went out, the rain would return. It was pleasant now that it was not always raining. Nagato didn't have to always feel like someone was out there. He had Yuzushio to watch his back. This village was still on lockout though just as Yuzushio was. But once the war was done and dusted, it would be open for all. Amigekure was overall a very peaceful village. It was a pity that people often used the rain as a battlefield. Then again, the bigger nations never allowed battles to occur close to their villages in fears of things spilling into their gates. Civilians would be caught. But when it came to civilians of other villages, they did not care. The great nations were truly careless. The land of hot waters would be turned into another battlefield now. But what would they do about it? They just had to keep their gates locked and hope that things don't last long. Naruto was sitting at his favored location with his back pressed against the wall. Naori and Noroi were already in the village, just looking around. They were not needed with him here. Are going for another battle? Nagato asked as he walked towards the blonde with Conan slowly behind him. Naruto glanced at the man for a moment before looking at the peaceful streets. But it's not against the numbers we are facing in battle. I am going to invade Iwagakure, he said. Nagato raised an eyebrow. Something had to have happened because they had decided against an invasion on these villages. They would defeat them in battle rather than invading them. It would have been much simpler to just invade but that would not have helped their cause. Has something happened? Naruto nodded but did not immediately respond. He looked at Conan for a second before speaking. Iwagakure has the Kazakage sister. I have to retrieve her. It won't be a full-blown invasion. But I will face a Jinchuriki. If you are going to invade, won't they decide to move out while you are fighting? Conan asked calmly. They would not wait for him to finish fighting. They would even have the chance to kill her while he was busy fighting. Diversion, Naruto said with a shake of his head. It will affect our situation in Iwagakure but it cannot be helped. Nagato did not like this but they must have thought this through before deciding to make a move. Naruto wasn't the one to make decisions without thinking first. Why have they done this? What is the end goal? And why are you doing it? She has nothing to do with the Empire's goals. We don't have to act because of that. Naruto smiled. That is a good argument. Tamari indeed has no value to our goals. We could let her be and it would not affect us in any way. Suna would blame IWA, he said calmly. But aside from it being personal with me, there was a calculated move behind this. Iwagakure wants to make Suna and Kanoha fight while keeping them out of the battle. It would be bad for us if those two fought. For now, things work well when they are a civil. It is even better now since my attack in IWA has both Kanoha and Suna agreeing. I will not be putting the civilians in danger. If we can take advantage of the situation we can get those two to support any consequence IWA has to face for its actions. Nagato nodded. As expected, Naruto had thought about things. He wasn't just acting recklessly. Both Cloud and Stone should be meeting soon. We should make a move once more before they do. That is part of the reason I stopped by here. Their numbers are still too large. Both you and I will attack. We will reduce their numbers before they meet. Naruto said. Conan will stay behind to watch over Amigekure in case there is any movement. If it is too much, with my mobility, I will move to intercept. Is this acceptable? Yes, Nagato said with a nod of his head. Kanoha is planning to force both Anoki and AI into a Kage summit. 
Our actions will convince them to go to the summit to take a breather and think through things over their losses, Naruto said. You plan to use the summit to lay the seed for what is about to come after the war? Conan asked. It won't make difference with both Anoki and AI as they are surely going to die in this war. But their guards will be alive and will witness everything. Even if the guards die, it does not matter because this will be to contain the other three, Naruto said in a measured tone. He then stood up. Be ready for when I return. I assured Kanoha that we would not attack during the summit. So want to make an attack before? Naruto smiled. We have to. Their numbers are honestly frightening to us. We must use our power effectively to stop things from becoming dangerous for us. If they enter the Fire Nation and get close to the wave in their current numbers, the wave will fall. We will not be able to defend it. For this reason, we must use this means. And you are also excited about the idea of fighting alongside Nagato, Conan said with a stare. Guilty, Naruto said. I won't be long. He said before jumping from the balcony. He did need to fetch Naori and Noroi before leaving the village. It would not end well for Tamari if he did not take those two. About two hours later. The hidden stone nearly came to standstill when something flashed from the sky and crashed into the Tsuchikich building. The large building was hit and exploded into debris. Every part of the building crashed, creating a large mushroom of debris. Powerful gusts of wind blasted debris through the streets. When everything cleared, Naruto was standing still amongst the small bits of debris that lay around. It took just seconds for him to be surrounded by shinobi, some masked and many without. Kuratsuchi stepped up with a smile on her lips. Naruto could recognize the Jinchuriki behind her. Welcome to Iwagakure, your majesty, she said in a mocking tone. If you had said you would be coming, I would have prepared a feast for you. But I suppose this will do. Naruto just looked at the black haired with indifference. Then then turned away from the woman. I would rather not have civilians involved. Let us take this outside, he said in an indifferent tone. How kind of you, Kuratsuchi said. I don't have time for your sarcasm, but if you still want to fight here, I have no problem in stepping on your throats now, Naruto with his eyes narrowed behind him. We will take your offer, Kuratsuchi said. But I thought you came here for Temari. Don't you want to know what happened to her? I quite enjoyed her pain screams when I gave her the same treatment you had given to me when I was your guest. I thought you would. Nobody saw him move, but Naruto was standing in front of Kuratsuchi. His face inches away from hers. Before anyone could move, there was a sudden burst of potent chakra that caused the very ground Naruto stood on to crack. Kuratsuchi fell down when the chakra hit her. I let you live before but my grace does not extend further than this. You will die before I live this village. Don't worry though, I will release your chakra and then crush you. Naruto then took a step back. But I am still a merciful person, you have one minute to say your goodbyes. And I will begin laughtering these people while you watch helplessly. Chapter 23 Noroi stared from a distance as Naruto blurred away from the destruction he'd caused. It was perhaps because there was a bigger agenda that was bigger than Temari that the emperor had even bothered to move away from the streets of the village. If there was no bigger picture, this village would have been covered in smoke with the emperor running loose within the streets. I thought they would have been keeping her at the Tsuchikich tower. Naoki said. He was not concerned with Naruto's battle he had already seen enough. He didn't even need to be concerned about anything with regards to Naruto's safety. Noroi looked towards the departing emperor for a little while longer before speaking. I really want to watch the battle. They also have a Jinchuriki waiting in line in case things don't work out. We have a mission. Naoki said in a stern tone. His majesty will not be happy if we fail it. Noroi turned to Naoki for a moment. When have we failed a mission? In this situation, when things are not completely in our hands, we can fail. Well, if they lose, they might just decide to kill her. It would set off an interesting chain of events. Noroi said in thought. Let us get this over with quickly. If we can finish up early, I'll be able to watch the battle. XX. Naruto looked up for a moment. There was no need to even draw a sword for this. 
the gloves were not needed since he wasn't going to be using swords. Besides, he still needed to remove the seal on Kuratsuchi. How many were even facing him? Fifty. A Jinchuriki and then that black-haired woman. Naruto removed the gloves he wore and then glanced towards Kuratsuchi. He took a single step forward, but the moment he did so, the round below him burst, lifting him high into the sky. He glanced up when he sensed chakra spike, there were two men, flying down towards him. Dotan, Kengan no Jutsu. Both encased their right hands in rock before aiming their respective punches towards Naruto. The emperor channeled chakra into his leg muscles and bent his left knee slightly. He covered his right leg with wind chakra before aiming towards the incoming rock punches. When his foot crashed into the rock punches, they cracked and nearly shattered but the two shinobi increased the weight to strengthen them. The rock formation Naruto stood on shattered from the pressure released when Naruto's kick connected with the punches it did not shattered completely though. The breakdown, forced him down a little, but he managed to balance himself while increasing pressure on the attacks above him to defend. While he was still in the struggle with the two shinobi above him, he sensed another shinobi lunging towards him. His eyes narrowed behind slightly, the man was holding a sword with both his hands, swinging it in a horizontal slash aimed towards his back. Naruto waited for a couple of moments while coating his right hand with wind chakra. The moment the man's swing neared him, his right hand was swung in behind. He caught the blade within the palm of his hand and strengthened his grip. With all the strength he could manage, he pulled the sword, along with the man who held it. He slammed the man into the rock punches. There was so much strength that the already cracked punches shattered and the man cried in pain as he had hit hardened rock with his head. Now free to move, Naruto disappeared in a blur. He appeared just above the two three shinobi in the blink of an eye. His favored wind sword appeared on his outstretched right hand he quickly swung it. The wind blade cut through the three shinobi in the blink of an eye. They all blinked, as gravity started to pull them down, there was no sense of pain they had not felt the swing. Blood gushed out, as the three started falling down. It was then that the pain shot through their bodies. While still in mid-air, Naruto's eyes moved around quickly as he searched for a safe place to land. His body twisted along with small gusts of wind and then he was gone. There were five men standing together, in stances. Naruto appeared between them. Before any could respond, he grabbed two by their throats and slammed their heads together. There was so much force that blood started dripping from the sides of their heads. Two twisted on both his sides, they raised both their right legs, flashing high kicks towards his shoulders. Naruto didn't have time to let go of the two he held and dropped down to his knees to avoid the kicks. The two kicked their fellow stone shinobi. The kicks landed on their shoulders and sent them flying away. Naruto sensed movement. The fifth man was behind him. He saw something sharp and immediately swiped his left hand behind him. He positioned his fingers perfectly to allow the kunai to slip through before he held the hand that was holding the kunai. The emperor let go of the man he held when he sensed two on his sides moving and then rolled forward. He flipped once before jumping into the air, facing the three. While airborne, he did hand seals while inhaling air. Wind style, burning gust. He exhaled a powerful gust of wind, mixed with flames. It was like a miniature majestic flame destroyer. The jutsu slammed into his opponents in seconds. The intense flames surrounded all shinobi, consuming them within seconds and there was nothing left of their bodies after the flames flamed out. Naruto had no time to observe the handiwork of his jutsu as a dragon flame rushed toward him from behind. He allowed it to get near for a moment before snapping his fingers. The flames just dispersed like that. A hardened foot slammed into Naruto's forehead while he was still in midair. He was sent flying. He flipped three times before hitting the ground on both feet but still slid backwards because of the momentum. The second he stopped, he started doing hand seals as he felt multiple chakra movements merge towards him. Fire style, majestic flame destroyer. He launched the massive wave of flames. The flames spread out wide, burning with intensive heat as they marched towards the enemy flanks. Earth style, mud wall. It was not just one jutsu that was released to counter the flames but multiple. Naruto wondered if it would really hold. 
water was needed to completely halt the flames. A clone puffed into existence beside him as the flames slammed into the mud wall. It formed two balls of intense flames. The clone then disappeared along gusts of wind. It appeared behind the enemy line, both hands held out. Predictable, when overwhelming danger stares at you, you fully face it with a glare and forget there might be other dangers, he said before throwing all two orbs of flames. Flame explodes. The clone was cut off from finishing speaking but it did not stop the orbs from exploding. The clone was stopped because Rashi had appeared behind it covered in lava and then slammed a brutal forehand on its back. The clone disappeared in a puff of smoke. When everything cleared, Naruto stood still after receiving the memories of his clone. He stared at the Jinchuriki of the Five Tails with an expressionless mask. I have learned basic chakra elements because I realized each one of them holds an advantage over the other. I had stopped bothering with Swaytun because I could handle Katan. I should have considered that I would be forced to face off against Lava one day. By that admission, you have nothing to counter Lava. I would ask you to just give up, Rashi said. But you are an enemy of Iwagakure I cannot just let you leave. Let me go. Naruto asked with a raised brow. You are confusing my admission I never said I cannot hurt you. I hold the Kyubi within me and I have access to its power I can crush you. Rashi did not respond to the Emperor he just darted towards Naruto, while the blonde just took a stance, waiting for the Jinchuriki to arrive. When he got closer to Naruto, he jumped up, twisting clockwise with his right foot pushing the air to the sides as it moved towards Naruto's face. The Emperor opted to block the kick by folding both hands in front of him. Rashi's kick connected, causing him to slide back slightly under its strength. Rashi then brought his hands together and tried to slam them atop of Naruto's head. The blonde pushed his foot away slightly and leapt into the air. The moment he touched down the ground, he rocketed away, leaving nothing but dust behind. Rashi charged at him, slightly shifting above the ground. Naruto bent his knees, falling backwards to position his body to face up while holding his hands together. As he slid just below Rashi, he released a jutsu. Katan, great fireball, no jutsu. He expelled intense flames from his mouth, and they hit Rashi head on, exploding into a huge cloud of flames. Naruto slid past the flames and straightened up before twisting around to face Rashi. Without even looking behind him, he jumped up, while twisting around once more. Rashi's right foot just blasted below him, encased by lava. When he turned around, Naruto covered his foot with chakra and attempted to kick the man in the face. Rashi folded both his hands across his face. When his kick connected, Naruto felt an incredible amount of heat burn through his skin, but Rashi was still forced to slide backwards under the power of the kick. Naruto quickly leapt away. Now, this is dangerous, he said, looking curious, yet slightly excited. I guess I should use. He trailed off when he sensed movement from behind. He silently activated Senjutsu before he tilted his head to his right. A shinobi was driving a punch towards the back of his head. The punch missed him by a few inches, zipping away from his left ear. Swiftly, he took a single step forward while twisting clockwise. His right hand burst through the man's chest, causing a splatter of blood. The shinobi coughed up more blood while trying to stop the bleeding by frantically placing both hands on the hole on his chest, but Naruto's hand was still in there. While his hand was still inside the man, Naruto twisted around, along with the man. Rashi's lava punch slammed into the man's face, burning it horribly while the man let out a pain scream as he had yet to die. Naruto lifted his left hand on his back. Kuratsuchi's right foot just fell onto the palm of his hand. He gripped her just above her ankle with the full power of sage mode, cracking her bone. She let out a small cry as Naruto pulled her towards the front. He removed his hand from the man's chest, threw him to the sides to create a clear path for Rashi. He then took a step back before slamming Kuratsuchi towards Five Tails Jinchuriki in a downward motion with so much force that he nearly snapped her leg. Rashi had anticipated this and avoided Kuratsuchi by jumping up into the air. Kuratsuchi then slammed into the ground with her face in the most brutal way. There was a small boom as her body got buried into the ground she cursed silently as the pain shot through her body. This was not going according to plan, she thought. 
she had to find a way to break through or else all would be lost she too would be lost. The emperor was apparently in a foul mood today. Naruto lifted his right foot with intentions of stomping on Kuratsuchi's leg to break it but before he could do anything, Rashi flashed towards him, driving a lava punch towards his chest. This forced him to jump backwards. The moment B landed on the ground, he lunged towards the diving Jinchuriki, driving his right foot towards his face. The kick did not connect but Rashi was still hit by a force that sent him flying backwards. Dotan, Doryuso. A spike protruded from the ground, flashing towards Naruto from below. The blonde slammed the base of his left foot atop of the spike, crushing it with just one move. He then burst toward Kuratsuchi who was still on the ground, diving towards her. He drove a right punch towards her chest. She rolled towards the right and Naruto's fist crashed into the ground, creating a large crater that made her feel relieved she had dodged it or otherwise, her chest would have been shattered. Her relief quickly disappeared when she sensed something grabbing her left leg. She never got to look up as she was forcefully pulled from the ground by a chakra chain. Her eyes widened when she twisted, Rashi was just in front of her, his lava punch heading towards her chest. Rashi tried to cancel his lava cloak but he was not quick enough. His fist ended up hitting Kuratsuchi on the chest, burning through her skin. The force of the punch caused a couple of bones to snap, as she coughed up blood, crying as she did. Naruto created a clone that caught her, holding her in a locked position. Simultaneously, the real Naruto flashed behind Rashi, who was not in his lava cloak. He was holding his hands together when he appeared. Two crimson hands burst out and grabbed the man before slamming him down the ground. Falling Swords Naruto did hand motions as three invisible wind swords formed in the air and flashed down towards Rashi in blinding speed. Two pierced through his knees while the other pierced through his right shoulder. Rashi cursed loudly at the pain. The blonde was a brutal bastard. He could not win a battle like this. He needed to transform now, lest he suffer more pain. Naruto flashed towards the struggling Kuratsuchi. Fighting in sage mode is truly cheating. I can feel all the chakra. I can feel that he is going to transform into his bijou form he said before summoning his wind sword. Hold out both her hands, he instructed the clone. Kuratsuchi widened her eyes, fear making her tremble. She could tell what was going on. She opened her mouth to say something but the explosion of chakra behind Naruto drowned her voice. He didn't seem interested in listening to her either as he swung his sword. She felt nothing but seconds later, blood gushed out of her right shoulder, her hand cut off. Naruto caught it before it could hit the ground and did something cruel. He threw it into the air and spat out intense flames and incinerated her right hand. Kuratsuchi felt as if she could feel the flames burning through her hand. You bastard. You will pay for this. She cried. Naruto put away his sword and then spoke. I let you go away without punishment last time around, this time, I will not. He said in a measured tone. He slammed a brutal punch into her already burnt chest. She cried when the punch crushed her rib cage, making breathing almost impossible for a couple of seconds. The clone holding her disappeared in a puff of smoke before it was sent flying. He did not check on with her as he turned around to face an incoming bijou. He too rushed towards it. Son Goku created a fist and then lifted his right hand before slamming it down to crush Naruto. The blonde stopped moving and held out both his hands. The monstrous punch slammed into his hands violently, causing an explosion on the ground. The ground he stood shattered, creating a crater as small chunks of earth blasted to the sides. But Naruto's defense held on before he pushed more natural energy and pushed the punch away. Son Goku's left hand moved with great speed and swatted the blonde away from the ground, sending him flying towards his right. The emperor recovered quickly by flipping several times before landing on the ground on one knee. Seeing the bijou rushing towards him once more, Naruto sped towards it as well. The monstrous fist of the bijou caused him to increase his speed with chakra, and skipped past the punch in the blink of an eye. Son Goku's fist slammed into the ground, and when he lifted his hand, there was no sign of Naruto. The blonde was already behind the bijou. He grabbed one of its tails with both hands, rooted himself to the ground before pulling. 
The bijou was pulled and he tried twisting around a bit slowly to pick up some momentum. When the bijou allowed him to drag it, he increased his speed, and twisted around once more, lifting the monstrous form into the air, before letting it go. It was hurled a distance away from him, but still managed to land safely on both feet, massive hands slamming onto the ground for support. It lifted its tails and began to charge a bijudama. Noroi and Naori flashed beside Naruto, flanking both his sides. Have you secured the target? Yes. Naori said. Then let us leave I'm afraid I have had fun for one day and I have tested the physical prowess of Senjutsu to my satisfaction. Are you sure that is it? I think you just don't want to deal with that Naori said pointing at the fully charged tailed beast bomb. Naruto shrugged. I could deflect it if activated my wind armor when in sage mode. But I want to use this when I go to battle with Nagato to face off enemies. Should it be successful in battle, it will be good to perfect against the Kages. Naruto disappeared from view as Son Goku launched the jutsu he'd been loading. Yuzushio. Hospital home for the sick and injured. When was the last time Temari ever found herself chained to the smelly place by orders of whoever was attending her? She could not remember. She had never been so severely injured that it required for her to be taken to a hospital over the past years. But this time, she had not been that injured. Kuratsuchi had played some game with her but she had not been badly wounded. The pain though the woman had dished it out. She had not been looking at her but at Naruto. Her contempt for the emperor was unmistakable. It was no wonder she tried to assassinate him. Tamari sat up from the bed and looked around the room. She could not feel anything that was happening outside. She didn't even know where she was yet her heart felt safe. She didn't feel like she needed to escape. She could run through the open window and fight her way if she needed. Her precious fan was leaning against the wall close to the door she smiled. At least it had not been lost. She wanted to go out of the bed and get it, but the door slowly opened without warning. Her eyes remained glued to it, waiting forever to see who was stepping within. The emperor stepped into the room she managed a small smile seeing his face. I didn't think that the first person I would see would be you, she said. If it was you, I expected it to be in your place. Naruto shared Tamari's smile and sat down on the small stool placed on the left side of the bed. She didn't have any bandages. It was only precautionary measures to even bring her here. I can leave and bring back the person you wanted to see, he offered in a light tone. Tamari shook her head slightly. This is fine. Naruto took her right hand and held it gently. His smile widened slightly before he spoke once more. I am truly glad you are well, Tamari. I had been worried over your safety. Though I was certain nothing would be done to you, I did worry about your safety. Tamari stared into Naruto's eyes. She had never seen them so human, so alive. There had been times she even wondered if he truly did feel something. Everyone had emotions they hid away. Although difficult to understand, Naruto had his. He just didn't like showing them. He was showing them to her. She felt happy. She felt something in her heart moving. The life in her eyes lit up slightly as she tilted her head to the side, putting on a warm smile. She felt his gentle squeeze and then spoke. I was surprised when they appeared. But you must know that I am not a weak person. She then said in a hardened tone. Your strength as a kunoichi has never been part of my thinking I never thought about that despite having sparred with you a couple of times. I have always thought of you as, my Tamari. Tamari raised an eyebrow. Since when did I become yours? Since I stripped you naked in Kanoha, Naruto said. You were fun then, easily embarrassed, inexperienced. Forgive me for not having the same experience as a man who frequents bars to get laid, Tamari huffed, glaring at Naruto. Now, now, Naruto stated in a slow tone yet the smile on his lips did not disappear. There is no need to bring up the past. You started it, Tamari said. Perhaps I should lock the door, close the windows and then strip. You seem to behave quite obediently when I don't have any clothes, as he was saying that, he stood up and started trying to remove his upper clothing. What the hell are you doing? This is a hospital. Naruto just put on an amused look before sitting down. Don't you know? 
forbidden and rebellious pleasures are quite enjoyable. No wonder you visit bars, Tamari said with a shake of her head. How is my brother? Fine, Naruto said. He is in Kanoha at the moment. I will take you to him. He is your brother, you should be with family and I have to war to fight, he said calmly. You need not worry though. Iwagakure will not achieve their target. He offered her a smile. I worried that Suna may be dragged into war and people would die for my sake, Temari said. Naruto shook his head. Nothing of such will happen. Come here, he said holding out his arms. Temari shifted closer and rested on his chest. She felt safe, protected when he wrapped his hands around her. His was body was never cold it was always warm. And she enjoyed the comfort it gave her. Temari felt her body complaining when Naruto pushed her off him, both hands over her shoulders. He then kissed her on her forehead. Rest, he said. Someone will take you my house later on. Where are you going? To war, Naruto said. Land of canyons. When was the last time he set out of Amagekure so frequently? Nagato could not remember. He had regained much of his mobility but he had never quite enjoyed it as he had been working hard to try to make aim great. The paths always did the fighting for him. It was the safest method to ensure his survival. Ever since they got rid of Madara, his focus has seemed to strengthen. Either way, they were now moving towards peace. The great nations would no longer be able to impose their will on other nations. It was more or less going in the same path as he had planned, but this going through the more peaceful means. He eyed Naruto who was sitting beside him on a tree branch. Nagato eyed his swinging feet for a moment below him, Haku was standing still with three of his paths. He had nearly killed Yoshino when he first came into the village. But the man had said he only wanted to talk. Naruto had been summoned and they talked. He smiled slightly. Yahiko would have truly been disappointed with his loss of sight. He had great power and Yahiko had warned him about listening to Madara but had done so. He stopped following the path they had chosen and allowed his pain to lead the way. Yet, Conan had followed him all the way. The dream had not changed the method had. How certain are we that the cycle of hatred will really end after this? Naruto shook his head. That was just Jiraiya's childish dream and naive way of thinking. As long as people live and continue to think differently, there will be conflicts. People will hate each other. But the hatred is not what brings about wars. Our own war with these village has not been brought because we hate. We want to change the system. The cores of the shinobi world are what makes wars. And we are going to destroy it. Of course, we need to do it in a way that means we will not be targeted for hatred. It is easier to rule people with fear and power but they are more likely to rebel and when that happens, there will be never peace unless we are dead. But I do believe we can create a world that does not use violence to solve problems, a world where shinobi can think about what lies beyond their borders. We can create a world of better cooperation. When people work together, there is understanding. Problems will arise, but understanding should mitigate the threat of wars. Then this must succeed at all costs, Nagato said. We must first win this war, Naruto said. We are currently sandwiched between two units. The unit on the right has a Jinchuriki. We will eliminate the Jinchuriki to put a dent on their morale before we massacre the unit on the left. I will remain hidden, Nagato said. The target is just the Jinchuriki, then. Naruto nodded. They already know you. So no doubt the moment they see us, they will bring the big guns to fight. The Jinchuriki will transform to deal with you. We will deal with it quickly and then retreat, he said. We will retreat using one of my summonses, Nagato said calmly before jumping down the ground. Shall we? An hour later. The trees obstructed the view of the shinobi moving through the ground. If a battle ensued here, it would not be a favorable situation for them given the location. Iwa's forces were not even used to fighting within the trees. They preferred their barren and rocky land of the earth country. Kira knew that Kumo's forces had been twice attacked, the second unit had been nearly annihilated. He knew that it was only a matter of time before they too were attacked. The plan was simple, 
and it was scattering around to avoid getting caught in the wide-scale jutsus their enemies were using. Worried? A shinobi asked, running beside him under the green trees of the land of canyons. Kiru looked to the side, shinobi were running at full force behind him, with Han along. They looked focused. They had to be careful so not to do anything to piss of the leader of this country. They had been warned that should they do anything that is in breach of the agreement, there would be major problems. A little, Kiru admitted. The news we have been hearing has not been pleasant. The emperor released the Kyubi in his last battle and there were massive casualties for our ally. We have Han San with us. Hopefully that will be enough, Kiru said. He doubted that the Kyubi was still the strongest bijou. Han had more experience but if he transformed, it would quickly give them a chance to move away from the any attack before joining their ally. Halt! Kiru shouted after running for a while. Han had moved quickly. He could sense powerful chakra signatures just ahead. Scouts. He motioned for them to move forward ahead of the group. With Naruto group. Naruto was leaning against tree trunk, his hands folded across his chest, eyes closed. His presence had completely vanished. Just a bit behind him, Nagato and Haku were waiting in the limbs of a tree. When he sensed two shinobi moving closer, he smiled they were being cautious now. Things were truly working differently. The tactics he was using were getting the expected reaction from this people. Yet, it would make things truly difficult if they became smarter. He hid himself when he saw the two hopping through the trees silently. They were scouts all right. Their movements were still silent despite moving swiftly. There was little chakra activity. They had been well trained. It was a pity that he had to kill them. When they jumped from a tree, heading towards the other, Naruto suddenly appeared between the two, arms stretched out. He touched both on their shoulders. He could see their widened eyes shock. It did not give him pleasure. He released a bit of chakra in wind form. Wind prison. He whispered as a silent breeze washed over both along with his chakra. Both fell down the ground. They were hitting their faces, trying to remove the invisible wind barrier that had formed, cutting off their oxygen supply from nature. They struggled, kicking out as they suffocated. Naruto did not watch. He looked up into sky, with his eyes closed. After a couple of moments, the peace returned as they stopped moving. They have already moved into four groups, Nagato said through the Deva path. Two groups have flanked both our sides and are continuing to move. The other has moved back. It is perhaps the group with their supplies. Are you safe? I should be unless they have a sensor, Nagato said. Even if they find me, I will handle them. Since my real body is unknown to them and their plan is to capture any Uzumaki, they will likely surround me. I will keep the Azura path with me nevertheless. The path in question then blasted off from them. Naruto just shrugged. Then shall we? Back with IWA group. Kiru frowned. The scouts were not returning. It just meant that they had been killed. He could sense chakra signatures slowly moving through the forest, heading towards them. If it was the Emperor or the AIM duo, they could at least survive this because he had already made his move. It was no use dying here. He would hold them here while other others moved forward. His fears were confirmed when three people slowly appeared before them, walking casually through the ground. The messy blonde hair it was the emperor. The black haired was a companion of the emperor and the orange haired was the powerful shinobi from the rain. He held up his right hand. A five-tailed miniature beast, cloaked in crimson chakra leapt into the air seemingly from behind him. Without warning, it released a stream of pale energy from its mouth. The energy flashed towards the group of three in the blink of an eye. Boom! There was a huge explosion that occurred when the jutsu seemingly hit the three. The explosion was so powerful that it uprooted the surrounding trees, causing large amounts of debris to pick up into the air. The only person who did not move back to shield from the explosion was Han, who landed on the left flank of the three, preparing for another attack. When the debris cleared, the three were standing in the middle of a sizable crater. Naruto and Haku were positioned behind Deva Path which had both its arms held out, palms facing the direction of where the jutsu had come from. 
I think they are trying to kill us, Naruto said calmly. They would have prepared themselves since we announced to them that we were coming, Nagato stated. If they get us it is the end, Haku said, facing up. There were multiple projectiles coming from all sides. They were no doubt marked with explosive tags. Already, the enemy had surrounded them it was hard to fight like this. Naruto clapped both his hands. Wind tornado. He whispered, giving rise to twisting winds that surrounded them. The rotating winds formed a dome of shield to protect them from the projectiles. When the projectiles hit the tornado, they exploded into multiple explosions that disrupted the flow of the wind causing it to disperse. Han was already within touching distance by the time the wind dispersed. He was slightly above the ground, the five tails now enlarged, and slamming down towards the group. Haku did hand seals. Demonic ice shields. He formed massive layers of mirrors just between them and the massive tails. The tails slammed into the first mirror, shattering it within seconds and then the next one. When it connected with the third mirror, there was a brief struggle, but the mirror started cracking. Naruto was already in sage mode when he switched on below the Jinchuriki. His right hand grabbed one of its leg, and pulled it forcefully before slamming it into the ground on its back. The beast crashed brutally, and was buried down the ground. He then stepped away from the Jinchuriki. You should really use that Jutsu Nagato this looks like it will be troublesome. Naruto tilted his head to the right to avoid a piercing chakra tail that went past his left ear. Han was already up. He lunged towards him, swiping his claw across his chest. Naruto saw the attack coming and leapt backward slightly. But while still in midair, a chakra hand burst from the ground and caught his right leg. It hurled him to the sides away from his friends, sending him crashing through trees. In his sage mode, Naruto hit multiple trees, breaking through and forcefully before finally halting a distance away. He touched the ground on one knee and quickly looked up to realize that the Jinchuriki had raced after him. While still on one knee, Naruto folded both his hands just above him. The moment his hands formed the defense, Han slammed a crimson punch on his defense with brutal force that caused the ground to shatter and Naruto to feel pain on his arms. So you are attacking me because you know I am a Jinchuriki, Naruto said through gritted teeth. Han did not respond but merely released a massive output of chakra before starting to transform. With Naruto freed, he jumped back, but before he could land safely, the bijou released a steam of boiling mist. Naruto released a breath of relief when a mirror formed in front of him, giving him enough time to escape. With Han fully transforming, the IWA shinobi had now created some distance. When he landed, he realized they planned on getting them to tire before moving in. They probably knew if they attacked now, they would only get killed. Chibaku Tensei Nagato said, holding out both his arms. A black orb moved up into the sky before finally halting. When it halted, he clapped his hands. The ground began to shake before the trees began to be pulled into the sky. The jutsu started pulling everything down the ground into sky. Large chunks of earth peeled off from the ground, going into the sky. The five tails felt the ground below it start to shake and jumped to the sides. The ground broke off, rocks pulling into the sky. The bijou was not able to land down the ground as it started to get pulled itself. A large chuck of rock slammed on it from below, sending it further into the sky. More rocks began hitting it, covering its body. Naruto jumped from rock to rock before finally stopping inches away from the deva path where it was safe to stand. He looked up and envied the power of the Rinnegan as the Chibaku Tensei finally took form, with Koku finally captured. It was just a massive rock formation in the sky. Kiru looked up wide-eyed at what had just happened. What did he have to do now? They couldn't bring that thing down and their enemies stood still. Plan B. He shouted. They moved closer to the group of three. The terrain was now damaged. If it was a face, he would say it was defaced. There were no more trees closer to them. He did hand seals and slammed them to ground. The ground where the trees stood burst up, forming a rock formation that took them up to the sky. Naruto looked down for a moment. They wish to burn us alive, he said. The entire rock was surrounded by explosive tags. The kind of explosion that would set off from there would not be pleasant. 
it would be a chain reaction that would surely make things difficult. I can destroy TH Nagato trailed off when the tags slowly exploded from below to upwards. Can you bring this thing down? Naruto asked looking at the Chibaku Tensei. Nagato nodded. Let's have it crash on them then, Naruto said getting hold of both Haku and Nagato. He jumped to the side, floating into the air while still in Senjutsu. He suddenly blasted away in a flash before landing on a top of a tree a distance away. Oi, oi. A shinobi exclaimed looking up into the sky. This is ridiculous. How are supposed to fight against that? It was indeed ridiculous. It was getting dark because the large rock was now crashing down towards them, not just slowly. You did not stop that thing, you ran from it. But would they outrun it? The ground shook when the large rock slammed down the ground, drowning the many screams of shinobi from IWA. It crumbled into small pieces of rocks upon crashing down. Han was exposed in his human body, just lying there, broken but alive. A second later, Naruto landed beside him and marveled at the destruction. There was another explosion a distance away. He looked up to the direction and saw a large mushroom of debris in the air. It was no doubt Nagato once more. And they were not yet done. There was still more to come. He shook his head this was not really fair. He picked up Han and then disappeared along gusts of wind. What are you going to do with him? Naruto shook his head. I have no plans. But perhaps I can use him as a bargaining chip after the war. We will capture some enemies who we will also use for the same purpose, he said before dropping the man a bit away from him. He knelt down towards the ground and touched it, eyes closed. I know where the fourth group is located I will deal with it he said before the ground burst, creating a large rock formation that took him up into the air. What does he plan to do from here? Haku looked up the fact that Naruto even created a platform to be able to stand meant he needed his concentration levels at peak. He was still in sage mode and wanted to attack enemy forces a distance away. Planetary Katan Raisin Shuriken Naruto held up both his arms, palms facing the sky. He formed a massive ball of flames just above him it was almost as big as one of the Kyubi's tailed beast balls. The heat was so intense that he started sweating. He began to add wind chakra into the ball of flames. A single mistake of adding too much without proper balance and he would be needing emergency medical care. The jutsu was taking too much of his chakra but it did not matter since he was using natural energy. Blade of wind started to protrude from the ball of flames. When they started spinning, the wind started to pick up around him. The weight of the jutsu caused the rock to crack. Winds began to gather violently around him as the jutsu picked up speed. Below, Haku noticed the cracks and placed both his hands on the pillar and froze it. The thing that was above Naruto was a massive thing of destruction. It spread wide, dictating the flow of air within its vicinity. No doubt, even those from afar could see the jutsu. It is as big as my completed Chibaku Tensei and that is all chakra, Nagato noted. Is he going to throw it? Yes, Haku said. Then it is good we are not enemies, Nagato said. He would have been quite a problem. The same can be said about you Nagato, Haku said with a slight shake of his head. Naruto smiled from where he stood. If Haku had not done what he did, he would have most likely lost control. The blades millions of blades in the jutsu would have killed him before the flames turned every part of him into ash it would have been a humiliating end to his life. He could only do this in sage mode. But it was better to take advantage of it. He positioned himself and took a long breath before hurling the jutsu towards the direction of the enemy forces with supplies. The jutsu flashed through the air, twisting along the wind swiftly straight ahead of him before finally reaching the target. There was a large column of flames that picked up from the ground after the jutsu exploded. Naruto jumped down, toward the deva path and haku. He landed on one knee, breathing slightly labored. After a moment, he calmed down and then stood up. He created a clone to pick up Han before looking at the Deva path, which was looking at him questionably. I'm a proud shinobi I don't like anyone showing me off, he said with a shrug. You can summon the path, Haku, and will rush back quickly. Without any word, the path disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Moments later. 
Naruto just shook his head seeing hundreds of bodies lying at the edges of the large crater where they had left Nagato. It was a day of destruction today. He found Nagato sitting down a couple of feet away from the crater. They attacked you then. It was impossible to hide when I'm constantly sending chakra to my path, Nagato said. We did more than calculate, he added. Naruto was not complaining. They just got to cut down IWA forces. Anoki would be more concerned now more than anything. He has already suffered massive losses and he was still going to suffer. If he was wise, he would just surrender now, as he did in the Third Shinobi World War. But we must still press on. If we can stop things with such attacks, it is still fine, Naruto said in thought. I want them to have much to think about anyway. If we do this, and then go on to eliminate the ones coming by ships to Yuzu, it will make our strength very clear. It is not numbers that matter but pure strength. The great nations have been advocates of expressing their great power. I have no problem in showing them what they have shown to us in the past, Nagato said. Then let us move quickly. The others have already heard the sounds of battle, we should move quickly before they learn anything. What about the people of this land? They gave passage with plans to benefit from our destruction, Haku said. I would have just went there and completely wipe out their village, but you will look at me with an annoying look. I would rather not have that. We will deal with them once we have won this war. You won't fight in the next battle, but I want you in support, as you did before. I need to keep your abilities hidden for now. We might need an ace if things get difficult. If we face a challenge, we retreat. We cannot allow ourselves to be trapped in a long battle that exposes our abilities. If you battle long enough, they know your abilities, and will find ways to counter them. We must not give them time to do that. Naruto said in a firm tone. With Akatsuchi. Akatsuchi frowned reading the message he held. There were explosions, things in the sky that he had seen along with his men. They were not fighting against normal shinobi. These people were not even humans. The amount of destruction and death they brought was ridiculous. In the last war the Yandame had been flee on sight, and now there was these. Shinobi would have to be warned to flee from the emperor. But first, they needed to try something to see if it cannot work. He was also worried about the Tsuchikich. At this stage, he should have been protecting the old man. But they were at war. He had to lead. He had to take this mission or else someone incompetent would take over and just lead them into disaster. Still, who could have thought that things would come to this point? It was just Yuzushio they had thought. But Yuzushio was a village that housed a monster. Akatsuchi-sama, a scout started, a bit out of breath. Are they coming? Yes the scout said. This is different from the usual attacks. They usually attack a single unit and retreat, he said in thought before putting on a hardened tone. I have a plan. Listen carefully and deliver my message to the leaders of all groups. Back with Naruto. The terrain was known now no longer one with trees, it was just rocks and boulders. With sage mode, Naruto could feel the many chakra signatures that were moving around. Nagato was a sensory type, he could sense it too, to some extent. They have divided into three equal forces Naruto announced. So they know we are coming and are preparing for us Haku said with a frown. This was not going to be easy. If anything, the thought of the next battle made him slightly nervous knowing that the enemy had something planned for them. Should we split? Naruto asked. Nagato shook his head. That is probably the intention. It would make things simple for them if we split. Let us continue to the group that is ahead. They have not moved. Naruto nodded. I wonder what kind of surprises they have for us. If they saw what happened, they will not make it easy for us, Nagato said. I will keep my summonses close by for our retreat. Those two groups will probably try to block all paths of our escape, he added. Naruto smiled. I have been retreating a lot, he said. But once this day ends, we would have taken a huge step towards victory. AIM will probably not face any more threats and I doubt they will be willing to bring more shinobi. They are kages, they will know that if they do that, they'll just be sending their shinobi to their deaths. Nagato said. But it won't matter either way. 
As long as aim is not threatened, my people can continue to enjoy their peace. We fought for it and we will fight for the peace in this world as well. Naruto did not comment. He was much more focused on survival of his clan. If peace was the result of it, then he would not complain. Besides, who did not enjoy being at peace with one's neighbors? After running for a while, the group finally came to a halt. Shinobi stood on large boulders they had been waiting for them. There were four large golems that stood tall on the sides. They did not appear as weak as the golem that had faced him when he battled Anoki. Naruto stretched his muscles and then turned to Nagato. You are going to fight yourself. I'd like to see if I can move well. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. Maybe my paths will be destroyed and I will be forced to enter battle. I must be ready. I thought you always believed that you could not be defeated. There is that, but I am not stupid, Nagato said. They are busy with something Naruto said. The moment the words left his lips, the ground below them started shifting down. But when he attempted to jump away, rock walls formed on the sides, blocking the path. A large hole formed on the ground, burying them deep within. Looking around in the darkness with his eyes looking up, Naruto spoke. This is Earth Mobile Core I think, he said. This is not the time to be impressed. Even I can't break from here with Shinra Tensei, Nagato said calmly. We will have to climb up to get out. You don't think they plan to bury us alive do you? Haku asked. I can also manipulate Earth I should do undo this jutsu, Naruto said before placing the palm of his right hand on the ground. He frowned he could not channel chakra through the ground. Up it is, he ended up saying. Kuchiyos no jutsu. Nagato summoned his large bird from the Rinne summoning world. Before he could even jump onto the bird, they closed upwards, turning everything into darkness. The walls began to light up as well as the ground. Nagato frowned deeply and then released his summons. It would just get destroyed. They were boxed in and he could see thousands of explosive tags. Leave it to IWA forces to bury tags underground Naruto said. We are not escaping without a scratch. The ground started burning slowly and the three jumped up. That is if we escape at all. While still in midair. Naruto summoned the Kyubi's chakra and transferred four tails worth of chakra along with his to both Nagato and Haku. Both became encased by the chakra. I could probably escape if it was on at least six tails worth of chakra. But Haku will die. You will probably blast away most of the damage. He said before releasing chakra chains. These things of mine are just cheap imitations. They are weak. But we should survive. The chains wrapped around him and then Haku and Nagato. On the surface, Akatsuchi felt the ground shake and held his hands together, hoping that it had been enough and they had buried the emperor down the ground. It would be the end of the war. After the ground stopped shaking, he did not move. He said nothing but waited for a couple of moments before finally speaking. Think that was enough? A beam of energy burst from the ground where they'd buried the emperor and his people. The men closest to him turned to face him, giving him looks that clearly said you just had to ask. The three burst out from the ground and landed down. Haku spat out some blood from his mouth. He'd nearly bit off his tongue when the shockwave created from the explosion hit him on the chest. He looked at himself, clothes were burnt, left arm was bleeding, it had some burns but nothing disastrous it would heal shortly. Considering the danger, he was just happy to alive. Nagato looked far better than him. But he too had his clothes burnt. Naruto was more or less like him. But the rest of his body was fine and so were his clothes. It was just his hands that were smoking. Had it not been his presence, it would not have been like that. He would have managed to escape with just exhaustion. Do we still fight? Haku asked. I don't think we have much of a choice, Nagato said, noticing the golems moving towards them. Summon your bird, Nagato. Haku, you will get on it and we will be quick about it. We can't simply run with our tails between our legs, Naruto said, standing up straight. He clapped his hands, activating sage mode once more. He massaged his neck muscles and formed a raisingan on the palm of his right hand. He darted towards one of the golems with the jutsu at hand. 
the golem drove its punch straight towards his small face. While moving ahead, Naruto ducked under the punch before twisting his body to face up, while bringing his jutsu below the huge arm. The Raisingan hit the rock arm, and blasted through it. The arm crumbled quickly upon being damaged by the jutsu. Naruto took a step to the right while holding out his right hand. He got away from the path of Golem and moved towards its left flank. He bent his knee slightly before twisting clockwise. When he stopped, the Golem's upper body began falling forward, having been separated from the lower part. Naruto then jumped up towards another Golem before flipping once just above it. His falling right foot slammed on the head of the Golem in one swift move that was with force. The entire thing crumbled down quickly. He quickly blurred away when he sensed small rocks from another golem that was destroyed heading towards his way. He landed on the ground faced the enemy shinobi who were still watching from the rocks. He calculated the distance and began doing hand seals before he started darting towards them. Sage Art, Dust Storm He inhaled large amounts of air before releasing it in a powerful stream. The stream picked up dust that rose quickly and began spreading wide and high while moving towards the enemy. With Nagato. Kuchiyos no Jutsu. Nagato summoned his bird the moment Naruto disappeared from them. Haku didn't need be told, he merely jumped up to the bird before it took to the air. Once the bird took off, he started moving slowly before he ran towards the three golems standing on his way. When the first swung its huge punch towards him, he jumped up, avoiding it. He then landed on the outstretched arm of the golem before lunging forward. He stretched his right hand and touched the chest of the golem. Shinra Tensei. The focused blast tore through the golem in just one go, turning it into pieces of rocks. Nagato jumped in between the remaining two and held out both his hands while floating. He waited until they moved slowly, before trying to punch him. Shinra Tensei. He put a bit more power than intended and when the jutsu connected with the golems, most of their bodies were turned into dust while some chunks of rocks were blasted to the sides. He then landed on the ground and turned towards the enemy forces. He saw a large cloud of dust and just shook his head. Naruto had certainly trained to fight a war. These wide-scale jutsu had no use for a one-on-one -on -one battle. But when facing him, such a jutsu would be a problem. He jumped into the air and realized the enemy had been caught within the dust. He motioned for Naruto to halt his movements before jumping deep into the dust. With his eyes closed, he could feel Shinobi trying to escape. He held out both hands and this time, put out more chakra behind the jutsu. Shinra Tensei When the jutsu set off, it sent everything away. The dust, the shinobi, and the large boulders that stood in the surrounding. It all occurred in a flash. Naruto was forced to jump backwards to avoid getting hit by the flying chunks of earth. When he landed, he deactivated sage mode and bent his knees before blasting off the ground. He flashed above the circling bird and Haku caught his hand before bringing him onto its back. He looked down as see only Nagato standing, everything that had once stood, leveled and pilled up along the edges of the crater the man created. There were bodies as well but some had escaped. Some were alive. Naruto was not concerned for it. The bird started moving down towards Nagato. The man jumped onto it and settled peacefully as it took the direction of aim. With Anoki. Anoki was sitting inside a camp, surrounded by hundreds of shinobi who were resting when messengers burst in through the entrance. Tsuchikage-sama. Tsuchikage-sama. It was if the two had come here doing some competition to see who would be the first to deliver the bad news. He wondered what sort of reward he should give to each or the first to arrive. The man seemed too eager to share the bad news. He knew it was bad news because he had heard the sounds of battles. Kumo had already suffered in two separate attacks from the emperor. Iwagakure had to be next. The thought made him click his tongue bitterly it was not going as well as he had hoped. What? Anoki asked with a long stare that just made the men shrink back slightly. The emperor attacked our village to retrieve the Kazakage's sister. Anoki couldn't help but release a bit of his killing intent in anger. This was just ridiculous. Tamari was his ace in the hole. She was the trump card he wanted to use against both Suna and Kanoha. Where was the miscalculation there? 
What did Tamari have to do with the emperor that he would attack Iwagakure? Both the leaf and the sand were not allies of the empire, so why did Naruto do something? What was he missing here? Was the emperor perhaps involved with the Kazakage's sister? If so, he would not have touched the woman. But there was nothing that suggested that there was something. And? He hoped nothing had happened to the village. He would murder Naruto with both his hands if he dared touch his beloved home. The shinobi swallowed hard before explaining further. Only that Tsuchikage tower was destroyed. The village itself was not touched. They fought outside of the village. Rashi was wounded and is still alive. But they managed to take the Kazakage's sister. It appeared that while the emperor was fighting, his people were sneaking into the village. Kuratsuchi was also fighting there is no report of her status. The emperor did not take her as he was seen fleeing the battle after Rashi launched the tailed beast ball. Anoki's frown just deepened as he grabbed the shinobi by his shirt. Find my granddaughter. I want to know if she is alive and where she is. Don't show yourself before me without answers. He ordered through gritted teeth. If something had happened to his granddaughter, he was going to kill Naruto. It would not be in this war, but it would be soon. He hoped nothing had happened to her. He could not stand it if something happened. She was supposed to be his successor. If something happened, he would be more than willing to break things off with AI regarding what happens in Yuzushio. For now, he needed to plan something that would rattle Yuzushio. But he could not do it alone. Naruto would rue leaving the wave unguarded to leave space for attacks. He was going to write to AI and they would make Yuza know that they were dealing with two great nations. Once done with his thoughts, Anoki turned to the last remaining man. Tell me your bad news. The emperor and the man from Amagekure attacked Han's unit and there were massive casualties. Han was taken in the resulting battle. Only about 700 men remain in entire unit. 500 did not engage and the remaining are just survivors. They then attacked Akatsuchi's unit. But this time the emperor was with another Uzumaki who also wields the Rinnegan. They had put a trap that did wound the enemy but they still shook it off. Plus or minus 610 men were killed before they retreated. That was close to 2000 men lost in just a single day and not to mention, his village was attacked. This was a curse. And another Rinnegan wielder? How many Rinnegan wielders did the Uzumaki have? This was a disaster. Continuing with things at this point was just going to make things worse. Send a message to all units to halt. We are not moving any further. If you see the emperor, they must run for their lives. Do not even try to engage him unless you are forced to do so. Anoki said in a stern tone. Hi. The shinobi saluted before running off to deliver the message. Anoki hatefully stared at the message from Kanoha. The Hokage was calling for a Kage summit. He knew it was being called because of what had happened with Temari. But from the message, the emperor agreed to stop attacks if the summit occurs. Anoki wanted nothing but see an end to the attacks. He was bleeding men and it was in this situation that one started thinking about surrendering. Any more fighting and he was just going to get blamed by his village for leading his people into their deaths. He would accept this call. If it meant he could try to bring an end to this fighting, then he would take this route. Fighting was no longer a good option. It was okay to accept defeat, as long as IWA survived to fight another day. Yuzushio. It must have been a hell of a battle. Yoshino said as he walked into the throne room, seeing the state of Naruto's clothes. Naori and Haku were standing stiffly on the sides. Naruto stared at Yoshino's slow movements. The man was not moving alone but he had his woman with him. Just seeing that woman made Naruto rest his head on the palm of his right hand, and close his eyes for a moment. He truly should have figured that something like this would happen. Now Yoshino was not a stupid man who could fall into the charms of a woman. Everything was by his choice. But it did not make him feel comfortable. He felt the need to be on guard. When his eyes opened, he responded. We graced three battlefields today, and faced two Jinchuriki, it normally has to be a damaging battle. I'm afraid I have had enough until I rest a bit. Naruto said in a low tone. And the damage? Traps, Naruto said. 
When they are expecting you, they make preparations. It proved to be a nasty one that did not leave us unscathed. Had we been normal people, he would have been most likely killed. That would have been unfortunate, Yoshino said. I have decided to make Miyuki my assistant. She has a great mind that I think will be very useful. To Yuzushi Ogakure. Naruto said in a hardened tone. Yoshino smiled, he did not fail to read the unspoken message. Of course, he said. What is the state of things now? Will things come to an end during the summit? Is it even going to happen? It will happen, Naruto said firmly. Anoki loves his village. Although he is stubborn, he knows when a battle is lost. During the Third Shinobi World War when my father defeated 1,000 men, he quickly surrendered in a war that they had been previously winning. He will take the call for the summit and see if he can work out a way to save things. Should Anoki accept, AI will not have any choice but to do the same as well. Yoshino smiled hearing these words. It was music to his ears. If Anoki surrenders, there will be no more troubles. Maybe the Rakage will fight them but it did not matter. Once one of them was out of the picture, his heart could still rest easily. Will you still be attending the summit? Naturally, Naruto said. We can't be left out. We have demonstrated our strength to these people. They can no longer overlook us as things stand. Besides, I need to make my terms known to all Kages. Anoki will most likely reject them. It would be understandable. Naruto said. But if I go there, it is likely that he will send his men back home calling an end to the war but will request battle with me. The Rakage will probably get involved as well. If this happens, I get to kill them both without anyone making a fuss. Hopefully everything goes as planned, Yoshino said with a small nod. What of the forces coming through the sea? How many ships are there? Eight. Naori said. Will they stop if things are called off during the summit? Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment. We will pretend we don't know anything about it and see if AI will mention it. If he does not mention it, he will likely say the message failed to reach them in time. The emperor said with a smile. We most likely won't have to defend ourselves anyway. If they come closer, we sink them and don't say a damn thing. Yoshino smiled and he was often accused of being the one with a twisted mind. If Naruto mentions this to Kumo, they will be forced to call things back. You forget, your majesty the Rakage will most likely be dead. Ah, uh, Naruto mouthed. Yes, my battle with them occurs before then but they will probably have them move in while the battle occurs. This would ensure that he dies with the sin. You will have Haku with you to defend the village. It appears that we will no longer have to summon Gyurin should the summit provide us with success. Must we thank Kanoha for calling the summit? Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment. Yes and Anoki for being a scheming little man it was indeed good to leave these villages out of the crossfire. Had things not been in this well, we would not have had this success, Yoshino said. Naruto nodded. He stood up and heaved a tired sigh. I'm going to shut down. I won't be up until tomorrow to take Temari to her brother. Haku, as my right hand, you are in charge until them. He eyed Yoshino. That is no problem to you, no. Not at all, Yoshino said with a slight shake of his head. Naruto did not say anything just disappeared along gusts of wind. Once the emperor was gone, Miyuki looked at Yoshino curiously. Why do I get the feeling that there is more to him shutting down? There is nothing more to it but take the words as they are literally. Isn't that dangerous? It is, Yoshino said. But a necessary risk. His majesty's chakra system is a little complicated because of his death. It now takes him too much time to replenish his chakra. For him to make a complete, natural recovery from a tiring battle, he must rest this way. Yoshino-san, Naori warned the man. You should also leave once the barrier activates, she will be trapped in here since she is not granted access. Should we work on that? Naori shook his head. You know only His Majesty sets the rules. Besides, he is the one with the keys. With Kakashi. What was with this war? People were dying like flies. Naruto was letting loose in his battles. 
the reports made Kakashi relive the treacherous time of the Third War. It was never a time for peaceful moments. No, there was nothing but pain at war. He had gone to war and came back with nothing but regrets. He hoped Kanoha would not be dragged into another war, especially one that was as brutal as this. The Jonin looked back towards his camp there were tents sent up, shinobi sat in groups, some chatting with humor and some doing some light movements. Sensors surrounded the camp, keeping them safe from any surprise attacks. Many of them had no experience with war. They did not know its nature. There was a difference between experiencing something and hearing about a certain thing. To fully understand the horrors of war, you needed to experience it. Kakashi folded the piece of paper he held and walked back towards the large tent he was using. There were several tents spread through under the trees. When he walked back into the tent, he found Shikamaru and Sakura sitting together. Guy and Asuma were leading the other charge. Sakura would give medical support if they ever get dragged into war. More bad news? Shikamaru asked, seeing the look in Kakashi's visible eye. The jonin shook his head. He sat down beside Sakura before responding in a quiet tone. No, at least for us. Naruto attacked again. And this time, it is IWA suffering heavy losses. But this time it does appear he did not leave the battle unscathed. Shikamaru adopted a thoughtful look. These attacks looked like they were unplanned but it was far from it. These were part of a plan. It was the plan. Yuzushio was never going to confront both Kumogakure and IWA head-on. They would not survive. This is the most brutal method to end a war. Kakashi nodded. Brutal and cruel, he added. No one wants to suffer like this. Just imagine what these people are going through. The numbers that Naruto alone has killed. These people have families, and they are not going to go home because Naruto killed them all. It's not like people don't know that he is the Yandame's son. IWA will hate him more than ever. There was just no way to avoid this. Besides, they should have expected something like this. He shook his head. Even though people head to war knowing that death is possible, they never really think they will die it was always someone else who was going to die. No sane person wished death upon themselves. Yuzu has no way but to play things like this. Naruto was never arrogant but I was starting to think he was by openly going to war with two great nations, Shikamura said in thought. But he knew where he lacked and how to deal with the numbers. Sakura looked curiously between the two jonins with a raised brow. Am I missing something? Kakashi explained. Naruto is doing these massacres purposefully because he doesn't want to face Kumo and IWA head on. If he does that, there is no chance of winning. Death will force both IWA and Kumo to reconsider. They are Kages, they know if things continue this way, they are just going to lose more men. You don't want to go to war with 10,000 and return with just one. It seriously dents the village's military strength. If Naruto just defeated them without killing, Anoki and AI would not listen to death. But there is something that makes even the most stubborn halt loss. They are bleeding, and will be forced to surrender. If they don't, Naruto will just continue killing them until there is no one left. Regardless of who you are, that very thought is frightening. Even shinobi cannot fight at their best knowing they are just going to die. Sakura absorbed it silently. She smiled bitterly. Who could have thought that Naruto was the person she once called a teammate along with Sasuke? Does Naruto not feel anything for killing thousands of people? War is war. His father did it before him, Kakashi said, tone stern. As a shinobi, you know you will kill eventually. For Naruto, it is perhaps more than just the survival of his clan. That aside, Naruto is not known for being a feeling person, Shikamura said. But if things work out, they won't come to this side and we avoid a potential battle. Kanoha might even decide to fight given what IWA did to Suna. We will hear what happens in the summit. There is no doubt they will accept the call. Even if they don't plan on surrendering, this gives them time to breathe and calm some nerves, Kakashi said before pausing. What do you think Yuzushio is after? Do you think Naruto agreed to this summit because he thought he would start losing? Shikamaru asked instead. Kakashi shook his head. 
with how things were going. He is obviously powerful and not that only, he also has those in Amage Cure. I don't think he is afraid of death either. If Kumo and IWA choose to continue fighting, he is just going to continue fighting. That is my thought as well, Shikamura said with a slight nod of his head. I can't put my hands on it. But I don't think they want to have a history of having massacred close to 20,000 shinobi. No matter where you go, people just fear you. I don't think Naruto wants that. But if things stop here, he has demonstrated his power, and has left one to think that if things had continued, they may have succeeded in defeating him. What Yuzu is after is something big. It will probably change the balance of power, and how things work in this world while also cementing his place as the most powerful shinobi alive. It was maybe safe to say that Naruto has created a legend for himself. He will surely be remembered. With how things have played out, it is Kumo and IWA who started this war. Shikamaru smiled bitterly. I think I must start respecting those people in Yuzushiogakure far more than before, the Nara said after a couple of moments of silence. Who started this with war? Who threw the first stone? What does history even say? When history is written, Naruto is the brave and powerful shinobi who fought against the second destruction of his clan. You mean they planned all this? Not the summit, Shikamaru said with a shake of his head. The conclusion of things is what they most likely planned, he smiled. He really needed to talk to Naruto about this. But it would have most likely not worked this far if the Sandame Hokage had said something. Even to this point, they still did suspect that the Sandame Hokage knew about Naruto but did nothing. How it would all come to benefit Konoha was something to be seen. His father probably knew something. Yuzushio. Temari stared at Naruto's form with a curious look. When she came here, she had been stopped from entering. The emperor was resting they said, and only a select few could enter the compound while he was resting. What kind of policy was that? Did they even think that she would try to slit his throat while he was sleeping? Haku had been a little more accommodating but he too would not give clear answers, saying it was not for him to say but Naruto. Something on your mind? The emperor asked, in a quiet tone, walking over to Temari from his throne. He stopped just inches away from her, looking straight into her eyes. Why wouldn't anyone allow me to come in here? And I thought you were coming from war to take me home. You know how concerned my brother must be with how things have gone, Temari said a bit too quickly, but Naruto heard every word. I was not in a state to see anyone, Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. And I can't say why village secrets, he added with a smile. Why does it look like you just said that purposefully? Naruto waved his right hand. You are imagining things, he said. But we must take you to your brother before he decides to come here himself. We don't want to do anything that will make him angry. When he feels that his beloved sister is going to be wounded, he can get angry. Tamari just shook her head slightly. The scroll you'd given me. I lost it. Don't worry no one else aside from your brother can read it. To anyone else, it is just an empty piece of scroll, Naruto said before placing his right hand on Temari's shoulder. They disappeared from the throne. Temari next saw the creepy forest within training ground 44. She remembered this place. Her brother had still been bloodthirsty when they came for the exams and Naruto was well, just another genin who did not stand out. You could have warned him, you know and why this place. Naruto pointed to the ground there was a large circle with marks glowing slightly. The mark then just disappeared after a second. I use what you call, portals, to cover big distances. We have these around the elemental nations. Naori was unable to take you straight to Suna because we have not drawn a portal on that side. And for a second I'd entertained the idea that you left me there because you knew they were waiting for me, Tamari said with a stare. Naruto stared back with a raised eyebrow. It was rather unpleasant to be doubted. He'd not done anything to plant such seeds of distrust, had he? What did she even think of him? He ended up not responding to this but just started walking towards the side of the village. Temari was surprised she refused to show it on her face, but her skin crawled just thinking that Naruto of all people would take offense over something like that. He was known for being an indifferent bastard. The journey towards the village was silent. Temari occasionally glanced at Naruto as they walked through the streets. 
he truly did seem to be lost in his own little world. He said nothing and his eyes didn't seem to be focused on the villagers who were giving them looks. For some, it was fear. No doubt they were hearing what he was doing in battle and were starting to think about how they treated him. Tamari did not pity them. They deserved it. He'd done nothing to them and yet they chose to make him miserable. The hotel her brother was staying at was guarded by Umbu. When they walked in, they were welcomed by Kanoha Shinobi who led them towards the Kazakage's hotel. The lounge was silent, even though Gara and Kenkuro occupied it. Tamari smiled warmly seeing her brothers. These were her siblings. Anything could have happened to her. She could have been killed, but she was back, with her family she was happy. Gara did not rush towards her. If he'd done so, Tamari would have requested Naruto take her somewhere because it would not have been her brother. Kenkuro showed his excitement. They hugged each other, eyes watery but the tears refused to come out. Naruto moved around as if he owned the place. He walked towards the window and shifted the curtain slightly. He was feeling a bit sentimental. He wanted to jump on the frame and settle down peacefully. He did miss those days he could just obsess over his thoughts, enjoying his peace in his own little world. There would be no voices, the physical world around him would be drowned out of his senses those had been good days. His eyes glanced over to his right as Gara slowly walked towards him. The Kazakage was silent for a couple moments before finally speaking. Thank you for bringing her back he said in a sincere tone. I did say I would do so, Naruto said. He took out a scroll and handed it to Gara before speaking once more. Please enjoy your family time he said before disappearing along a small gust of wind. With AI. AI was proud of his strength. He still thought that if he partnered with B, they would defeat the Emperor. But his views aside, looking at the men he had led from the cloud, he could feel for them there was a crippling wave of fear that was sweeping through the hearts of his shinobi. They were warriors, he would normally not accept such cowardice, but this was more than that. What Naruto was doing was beyond normal he was performing acts of famous shinobi once hailed as gods of shinobi. To give the blonde such a title would not be exaggerating think she was deadly powerful. He was not praising him but just admitting the cold truth. They were losing. How many men had the combined forces lost now? He could understand Anoki's thoughts on surrendering. But that man was not going to make it simple for them. At least Anoki had even acknowledged that much. Are we really going to the Kage summit? Darui asked the Rakage who was sitting inside a tent, just alone before he came. A. I looked up to Darui before nodding his head slowly. Yes. Darui released a long breath, expressing a bit of relief. He was honestly not looking for a battle with the Emperor. No, if anything, he would do anything to avoid it. The man was just killing people out there and he was not the only one. These people had indeed prepared for war and they had underestimated them. They were going to go home with a crown of humiliation. We can't even afford to continue with this battle as things are. We only have three or four people we must worry about. An army is not needed since Naruto is not even going to bring out his army, AI said in a hardened tone. We are going to send the men home before we depart later on. Is Iwagakure doing the same? AI shook his head. It doesn't matter what they are doing. I am not going to lose any more men needlessly. It is obvious that the Emperor isn't someone who can be defeated by just anyone. But if you manage to defeat him, what happens to the wave and Yuzushio? That Tsuchikij has made plans for the wave he tells me it will work. If we defeat the Emperor, we force it to surrender, AI said. Some people might wish for it to be completely destroyed given what the Emperor has done so far. Likely, Derui said with a sigh. It was going to be a drag. But they could not avoid it. Should I send out the order? Let us leave just 500 behind. The others are to return home. And don't send anything to the ones at sea. We will wait to see what happens before deciding, AI said with a small smile. You and B will accompany me. Kanoha has given us the assurance that the Yuzushio will not attack. And if they attack, we will attack the Hokage at the summit. With Kurinai. Kurinai wiped a sweat off her forehead before straightening herself. If Kanoha got dragged into the war, she would be going to the battlefield to fight as well. 
preparation was needed. In the last trouble when the QB went on a rampage, they had been forced to stay hidden and kept in a barrier while the adults fought. In the Third Shinobi World War, it was not like that. The younger ones fought. Perhaps it was because the village was stretched fighting a war it was losing, only until Minato performed his extraordinary achievement. Her students were all away with Kakashi. She hoped they would come back safely. Well, they were no longer students. She was just the team leader. Her thoughts halted when she sensed someone moving slowly towards her. She twisted around and looked into the clearing the emperor of the Uzumaki Empire was walking towards her his hair still a mess. He wore black shinobi pants, a long sleeve crimson shirt with the Uzumaki clan symbol stretched across his chest in black ink. His hands were behind him. He looked normal just like any other shinobi. He didn't look like the man who has been killing shinobi from Kumogakure and IWA. Her hair rose he was coming to her. There was no one around the training ground. What did he want from her? She swallowed hard. Her conversation with him in the past had not been that bad, right? He waved his right hand as he grew closer, a small smile on his lips. Yuhi Kurinai. Kurinai was silent for a moment, not knowing how to respond. He was just Naruto before but he was now the emperor and with how things have been going in his war, you simply could not just call him, Naruto, could you? Your Majesty, the Genjutsu mistress said with a small bow of her head. Naruto appeared amused but he did not say anything about it. I have come to see if we can work out the schedule for me to begin my lessons. I asked you before and I did send Yugao a message. Kurinai stared. He was not affiliated with Konoha, she could not do that. If he was still a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf, she would do it. I can't do that. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Can't or won't. Kurinai looked at him curiously before asking. What do you want me to say? You are not a shinobi of Konoha and have nothing to do with it. Shinobi treasure their skills, and I can't transfer my skills to someone who won't use them for the sake of Konoha. Won't then, Naruto said before walking past the woman. He sat down under the tree and folded his hands across his chest. Why don't you tell me what you really want? I had a certain level of interest in you but I was told that you are involved with someone. I wish I had asked before. Regardless, I am deciding on whether I should make this person you are involved with disappear so that you can be free. Kurinai stared, puzzled. He just said something like that with a straight face. You are joking right? Yes, Naruto said. But I am serious about Genjutsu. I learned and made all countermeasures against it. But now I want to learn how to use it. Why? You are already powerful. It is not about power, Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. It is my goal to be proficient in all shinobi arts. I have mastered taijutsu, ninjutsu, kenjutsu, fuenjutsu I must now learn genjutsu while I still have finer control of my chakra. Hokage Office Shikaku leaned back on the chair behind the desk of the Hokage's office. He was officially in charge now. Tsunade was standing in front of him with her Kage robes, Jiraiya and Sasuke flanking both her sides. She was leaving early. The summit would not happen until five days later she needed to prepare things. And during this time, he would be watching over the village. Don't get too comfortable, Tsunade said with a stare. When I come back, you are out of there. Shikaku just smiled. He would not wish to be Hokage. Not in this lifetime. He had no such ambitions. He was even forced into this situation because they didn't know what would happen while Tsunade was away for the summit. I'm already wishing you'd come tomorrow, Shikaku said in a tired tone. But I do wish you success. That is what we are aiming for, Tsunade said before turning around to leave Let's Go You Too, she said to her two guards. Both Jiraiya and Sasuke. It was a bit of an overkill. But it also showed just how many skilled shinobi the Hidden Leaf had. If things had turned out differently, Naruto would have been another asset. But they still had powerful shinobi with them. The Nara head closed his eyes this was going to be troublesome. Well, it would give him an excuse as to why he went home late. That woman probably won't be taking it. He opened his eyes and nearly jumped off his seat, 
Naruto was sitting by the window frame, left knee inches away from his chest and eyes cast outside this was downright frightening. He couldn't sense a damn thing from the blonde even though he could see him. How much do you know? Shikaku noted the tone was flat. He placed his hands on the desk and tapped for a few seconds before responding. Not much, he said. What do you know? Not much, Shikaku repeated the same response. Naruto eyed the Nara for a moment before looking outside once more. I did consider that you knew something but there was never a hint. And it was too dangerous to simply approach you because of suspicion. But it does appear that Hiruzen could just not keep his mouth shut. You expected him to keep quiet about it. You had no regard for whatever happened to Kanoha and the same can still be said regarding the thought. If it suited you, you would have even involved the village in your war. A deal is a deal. And what I chose to do with my life had nothing to do with Hiruzen. Naruto said. No matter nothing about my connection to Yuzushio got out before I wanted. That was the core agreement. However, should there be anything tricky happening, there will be consequences severe. Hiruzen was always too smart and loving towards Kanoha for his own good. If there is something he plotted behind my back, everyone in this village will curse him in his death. Shikaku did not offer an immediate response. He could understand why Naruto was not happy. The Sandame had basically blackmailed him and that was a threat that could see Yuzushio being destroyed again. The current leadership will not plan anything harmful towards you or the Uzumaki. For Kanoha's sake, I hope that is the case. If I sense something wrong, I will tear the agreements and make this village a mere memory with nothing but the Hokage monument remaining till there once was a great nation. Chapter 24 Gara stared at the sand-aimed Suchikage with a cold glare that made the two men walking beside him shift uncomfortably. The old man was walking towards the large wooden shelter that had been set up by Yamato. Temari had told him what had happened in Iwagakura she had told him that Kuratsuchi abused her upon learning that she may hold value to the emperor. This man had dared kidnap his sister when he had not been provoked. Some Kages had no moral compass. No, should he even pass that judgment on just Kages? The Shinobi world was not a world ruled by good moral standards. Shinobi did everything to win. Anoki was still a product of this world but it did not excuse his actions not even a little. Every man did what he wanted. Anoki was not forced by anyone. He was old enough to determine what was wrong and what was right and in this case, he had chosen the wrong route. A pity the shinobi who had been involved in the attack were probably all dead. Gara would have had them sent to Sunagakir to pay for their actions. Of course, there was still the man who gave the order. This is some hostile welcome to the summit, Kazakage, Anoki said in a lazy tone. Was he concerned about Sunagakir? Not even the least. Unless backed by Kanoha, the village would not do anything against his village it simply did not have the military muscles to carry out an attack. Admittedly, given the current situation he too could not afford to be at war with them. Yuzushio no, the emperor was proving to be a stumbling block that he could not move as easily as he had thought. He would not have even bothered coming here had he been winning. IWA had suffered massive casualties but so did Kumogakure. The risk carried by these other people was that they could enter the battlefield, with the losses he has suffered, it would be most unpleasant. It is not as if you don't deserve it. Gara said in a measured tone. He was controlling his anger perfectly. He did consider that if he hadn't become good, his first reaction to seeing that Suchikage would have been to instinctively attack him. I guess not, Anoki said with a shrug. But you should not complain. My plan ended up in failure after the emperor took action. Whether you have failed or not does not change the fact that you attacked my sister. It does not but nothing can be done. At the end of the day, you got your sister and I lost my granddaughter. Of course, you will be held accountable if I don't get her. There was nothing of her. She had not been completely erased. But there was nothing of her from the site she had been fighting Naruto. Rashi had been certain Naruto fled from the battle before he could finish her off but she was still nowhere to be seen. There was the chance that the emperor took her. But Rashi could not confirm this. One second her body was there and the next it was gone. You can go to the emperor about that. You're quick to throw him under the bus. It is the truth, isn't it? 
he is the one who attacked your village. I am not simply throwing him out in the open. I just want you to know that we have yet to do anything against for what you did to us. I don't think you are in any position to do anything, Anoki said with a shrug. But by your statement, I can conclude that you didn't take my granddaughter. I have been thinking perhaps you did. Then it must either be Kanoha or Yuzushio. Isn't ironic? Anoki glared. He was now worried and saying someone would have to pay for Kuratsuchi but he was still not going to easily accept anything in regards to his actions against Himari. This world was treacherous. What goes around doesn't always come back around but this time, the trick he had tried to play on Suna had been pushed back at his door. It was a bitter pill to swallow and he hated that he didn't have such a good position to be able make demands. We will talk at the summit, Kazakage. We have had a long journey, Anoki said. We want to rest a bit. We have been at war, and it has been rather brutal, he finished with a deep frown. I have heard and I cannot enjoy it. Gara said in an honest tone. Despite what I think of you, your men do not deserve to be caught up in an unnecessary war where they are just going to lose their lives. Anoki stared at the large shelter, ignoring Gara. There were five more rooms surrounding it, each with a symbol of a great nation. This was in the middle of nowhere. Kanoha had obviously prepared this just for the summit. It was indeed true that Kanoha had a Mokutan user. They could not have done this so quickly without the use of ninjutsu. He motioned for his guards to follow him as he walked towards the room prepared for Iwagakure. The meeting would be held later during the day, he could afford to rest his mind and for a moment, not worry about an attack from the emperor. The island. Naruto was standing behind Karen who was sitting behind her desk inside her study. Both his hands were inside of her t-shirt, fondling her breasts. She was not big, but he did not hate it. He has enjoyed the comforts of all sizes of breasts. The bigger rack did seem to stimulate the sexual urges a bit more but with Karen, it did not matter. She was perfect just the way she was even though she acted like a man at times, she was fine. She was his wife after all. He leaned over and started kissing her on the right side of her neck. Karen had her eyes closed, enjoying the chills that were sent through her spine. She wasn't fond of the idea of leaving her experiments to go play politics but this was one part of her relationship with Naruto that she did not hate. Despite how cold and ruthless he was, her body always shivered with excitement whenever he caressed her. He was always gentle and knew how to please her. Did you come here for this? I thought you had Tamari to keep you company. She left, came back and then left again. But there is no one who quite pleases me as much as you do. If I pleased you that much, you wouldn't run off to sleep with other women. Must we all always bring that? Well, you are an unfaithful husband, why must we not talk about it? I doubt you have even stopped with your tendencies anyway. You say that San Nin did not influence you but you certainly picked up his love for women. Maybe, Naruto said. His tongue slid out of his mouth and he ran it across her neck, slowly and then on her check. But you know I have been behaving since we officially married. I had my fun. But admittedly, it did leave me with a bit of an appetite, but it is an appetite only you can fully satisfy. I'm sure Tamari will not be happy hearing that. Naruto retreated slightly, but still kept his hands on Karen's breasts. She lifted her face to look at him. He smiled. You wouldn't tell, would you? But even if you did, I'd deny it. You are rather good at that. I'm sure you've also denied responsibility for women who came to you with little blonde bastards. Naruto just smiled before capturing her lips. They were always smooth. There was nothing rotten inside of her mouth. The tongues playfully tagged for a couple of moments before Naruto pulled away. Better stop before I get a little too excited, he said straightening up. Karen frowned. You bastard you just came here to get me excited that then leave me like that. Naruto smiled happily. I am your husband, I should leave you excited. When I return home, I'm also going to do the same to you and then keep you locked up with chakra chains so that you don't go anywhere to be satisfied. Karen said firmly. Vengeful woman Naruto said with a shake of his head. He shifted his body closer and sat on the desk, by Karen's right side, facing her. I should have chosen to marry a more suitable woman. Chosen. 
Karen laughed. You did not choose me. The Uzumaki chose for you. There was no one else born in the same year as you aside from me. Of course, you would have married someone older if you were given the option. Someone older would not give me such a hard time. They have experience in all parts of life and know what is expected of them. I like the maturity part of their brain. You young ones are just full of energy, and puffed up with so many emotions that confuses you it can be frustrating at times. Are you saying I am frustrating? Naruto smiled. Did I? He asked rhetorically. We are going to meet the other Kages later on. It should be fun. Once we have done that, we will see how things go. But Naori has informed me that Kumogakure has started retreating. We should be ending this bloody sequence soon. Karen frowned it only meant one thing she would be returning to Yuzu far sooner than she liked. She enjoyed Naruto's presence but she hated playing politics. She loved doing her experiments. She had agreed to marry him even when she knew what would be expected of her. The clan had stolen her away from Orochimaru and then put her in this situation. But they had decided to offer her to the emperor the elders did at times treat Naruto like an outsider. She was the sacrifice given to him. They loved Yoshino. If things had gone their way, they would have made him emperor but there wouldn't have been an empire without Naruto in the first place. So, you came for me. I came to warn you to start preparing things. Next time I come here, it will be to fetch you if you have not returned, Naruto responded. You really don't look pleased. I'm really not. Why? I don't want to play politics. It is just not me. I thought I could do it but now that I am facing it, I don't really think I can do it. You still don't have a choice. Naruto said with an expressionless look. You treat me worse than your subordinates, Karen accused with a glare. You allow them to do as they please but you never give me any freedom. I must always tiptoe around the fine margins you set for me. Naruto raised an eyebrow in surprise. Should you accuse me of such? I do give my subordinates some leeway but whenever I call them for duty, they must always be ready to serve. But you have been locked up here in the last couple of years because of your choice. I didn't choose for you. I gave you the freedom, Naruto said. But if you want, I can relieve you of some duties and have Haku perform them. Of course, I would still need you to avail yourself whenever you are wanted. You'd reconsider. Naruto smiled and leaned in. He cupped her chin and stared at those reddish eyes. Ah, it seems I am interrupting something, Kabuto announced with a smile as he walked into the study holding a stack of papers. Naruto lost his smile and straightened up. He watched Kabuto from the corner of his eyes. Once the former Odonin settled on a chair in front of the desk and placed the papers atop of it, he responded. You have a bad timing, he said calmly. How far goes your research? I had made some success with Orochimaru-sama. What I have needed to do is how your body would react to the cells. If to say, we are only implanting them on a portion of your body, there might be consequences of the part-changing form. But if we are changing genetics, to infuse the cells with yours to make you a true Mokutan user, there are higher risks of death. We wouldn't want me dying, would we? No. Are you using me as a test subject to see if you can alter a person's DNA without completely changing their appearances? You and Orochimaru collected many samples of various shinobi in an effort to create the perfect warrior who could be powerful and immortal. Kabuto pushed up his glasses. You know about that, he sounded surprised. Of course I do, Naruto said with a wave of his right hand. Why would I let you come here in the first place? You are not truly afraid of being killed by me. You just took the most logical option. With me, you hide from those who'd want to kill you and still continue to do your research. I even have prisoners you can use for your experiments. I didn't think you'd willingly offer me people. Some of them are murderers and rapists. They are just waiting to die. I should have killed them but left them alive to use as test subjects for my prison. Then? I would not lie to say I did not consider that, Kabuto said. Naruto shook his head. Just make sure you are safe. I'll give you what you need he stood up. You heard me, Karen. Be ready when I return. I get it, Karen grumbled. Before you leave, 
Kabuto said. You want to control the elemental nations, isn't it? The purpose of this war was to give you a pretext to enter these nations without fostering a declaration of war from the other nations. It also means you move without the need to invade them and have that history. You want to create a sustainable rule in which the Uzumaki will influence what happens in the shinobi world for future generations. That is quite interesting, Naruto said in thought. Kabuto smiled. You are not going to deny it. He said. Is there a reason to do so? I guess not, Kabuto responded. Are you not interested in the existence that is Zetsu? He is not human. Was he a human before? What gave his birth? From what we know, he calls himself the will of Madara but that is questionable, Naruto said with a shake of his head. I am interested. Find out what you can. We don't want his existence to continue. Of course, Kabuto nodded and watched Naruto walk away from the study. After he was certain the emperor was gone, he faced Karen and smiled. She was less hostile than the emperor. Perhaps it was because they shared a common interest. You thinking of something funny? Karen asked with a stare. The mark I was given was surely made so that I don't do anything. I don't even want test what would happen if I do anything wrong. I can tell you. I'm listening. Your body will be incinerated. That is an unpleasant thought, Kabuto admitted. Shall we get to it? That is the reason you came here with those papers. I must admit, you and Orochimaru truly did some sick experiments. But I cannot go against the knowledge gained. Fire Country. May was sitting just in front of the small room she had been given, staring at the empty space ahead of her. She could feel the tension in the atmosphere. It was certainly not going to be a civil summit. She was meeting the other Kages for the first time but she would have preferred to meet them under finer conditions than these. She had an issue with both IWA and Kumo for threatening her village with war if they did not attack Yuzu. May hadn't even thought twice about it before burning the letter. There were some battles you did not fight. Yuzu had done nothing against them, even though they had helped in their destruction during the Second Shinobi World War. She would not ruin everything by becoming a traitor. Naruto was one person she didn't want to become her enemy. With everything he has done, you'd think twice about making him angry. Her eyes caught the sight of two Sanins walking towards her the Godame Hokage and the Toad Sage. Seeing them, she had no doubt on what they wanted to talk about with her. She still smiled nevertheless. Although she wanted to be allies with the Hidden Leaf, she was not going to say anything she was not supposed to say. Mizukage Dano, Tsunade greeted cordially before sitting on the Mizukage's left side. Jiraiya remained on his feet, standing in front of the two with a watchful eye. Hokage-sama, May responded quietly and turned to face Jiraiya. Jiraiya she said. May-sama, the toad sage responded with a nervous smile. He quickly brushed it off when Tsunade looked at him questionably. We came here to talk about Naruto. I assumed as much, May said. He is just Naruto to you to everyone else, he is the emperor. Well, you watched him grow, you saw different sides of him as a child. Naruto is a former shinobi of the Hidden Leaf. I spent about three years traveling, training him and in all these years he never revealed the true level of his strength. He never let slip of anything. I can't say he ever denied being part of the revived Uzumaki clan but he always found a way to answer without answering the question. In the years I spent with him these are things I learned about him he loved his clan, he was smart, strong and never answered questions personally in his present state of mind. He liked talking objectively and I never knew he was a Fuenjutsu master only when we were concluding our training. Basically, he kept his thoughts to himself and never revealed anything he didn't want to reveal May said. You understand why we are a little suspicious about his actions. Tsunade said. Everyone is suspicious, May said. Even she questioned his motives. She had experienced staring at him he was unreadable. His mind always looked like it was blank of any thoughts. What do you want to know from me? We want to know about your relationship with him and the Uzumaki. I don't have that much of a relationship with him to even talk about it. I don't generally talk to him but with other people. There was a proposal of a marriage but that is something we are just looking at. The Uzumaki. I have no relationship with the Uzumaki. 
but you are still not allies just trading partners. Yes I have held out on that until after the war. Why? Because I want to see what their intentions are. You might be thinking because I have been around them lately something has been happening but most conversations were not even about Kiri. But about the water country. Our daimyo has been on a war path with both Yuzushio and the wave country. We have been working together to try to solve the issue without bloodshed. That is surprising considering that he has been spilling blood everywhere, Tsunade said. Not every situation can be solved by simply killing people. He is fighting a war here. In a war, you have to fight and that is what he is doing, May said with a slight shake of her head. Of course, from what Haku had said, Naruto would have chosen force already. But the fact he was willing to change things to be more diplomatic spoke volumes about his character. Haku had said that he was being used as a filter to Naruto's sometimes extreme methods that also reassured her a bit. Naruto was not unreasonable. Jiraiya was confident in this. He thinks logically. I'm sure there is a reason he is fighting the war in such a manner. He always did enjoy the good battle. In any case, Kanoha would like to form a relationship with Kiri. We also wanted to know your position on the Emperor. I have no problems forming a relationship with Kanoha but this is not the appropriate time. I think it is, Tsunade said firmly. He is going to appear and there will be questions in which we want to pick sides with him or not. We wanted to see which side you would pick. The side that is right, May said sternly. I will not make my decision because of pressure. I will decide what is best for my village and something that I can live with. Nobody is going to influence me to decide anything. This is why I have even played a game of wait and see with Yuzushio. No, the Uzumaki Empire. What you don't understand is that there is a difference between the Uzumaki Empire and Yuzushio. It was something that Naruto really doesn't explain but you could only understand it once you grew closer. Naruto was basically the empire. Not Ashiko, the wave were part of the empire, including Yuzu. We have grown to learn this but it does not change that Naruto sits at the top. It does not, May said. I will only discuss an alliance with Kanoha on a proper time. I am also not willing to share the finer details about the emperor. If he wants you to know everything, he will let you know. I cannot act against the trust they have put in me. Kanoha. Shikaku's mask became a bit serious as Yuga walked into the office without her umbu mask. She was not here as an umbu but on the personal capacity the Sandame had chosen. I'm glad you made time, Shikaku said. You made it sound as if it was serious. Shikaku nodded it was indeed serious. What had the Sandame Hokage done to him? This was a dangerous task that he was assigned. Even so, the old man must have really trusted Naruto to believe that once things were set for him, he would not betray their agreement. Perhaps the two had shared a much deeper and mutual relationship. The old man had kept most of his thoughts regarding Naruto to himself. It is, the Nara said. The emperor was here I'm sure you spoke to him. I did, Yugao said. He gave me everything and talked about your son and his thoughts about the agreement with Kanoha. He did not sound particularly pleased about the proposed marriage. He was not pleased about being strong-armed into making such decisions. He also made sure to let me know that if Kanoha went against him, there would be severe consequences. Naruto is powerful and if he came here with plans to destroy this village, we would not escape unscathed. What do you propose? We don't force him into marriage but say that one of his children will have to marry someone from a clan in this village. The Hyuga clan is the most powerful clan at the moment. We would need to talk to them about it. I'm sure if we do things this way, we will make things workable. If things go south at the summit? They won't, Shikaku said with confidence. But we must still take measures to defend ourselves in case things go wrong. That means studying more about his abilities and of those around him. But we must do this secretly because if he finds out, he will not be pleased. I don't know about getting involved in that. He has held his end of the bargain and went out his way to avoid battling Kanoha. Not for a second do I doubt that he feels contempt for this village, but he has never been driven by anger. If Kanoha gives him a reason, he will act on it. Naruto had made it absolutely clear that he didn't give a cent about Kanoha but it was his word they could bank on. 
I'm worried about the future. We don't know what will happen tomorrow and how the next Kage will handle things. We won't all be alive. And even if our future leaders do wrong, we still cannot say it is right for the leaf to be destroyed we must always protect it. Being Umbu, it had never been about right or wrong it was always about protecting the leaf and following orders. Ideals did not matter. What do you want me to do? Summit location. The table was small, the Kages sat a bit closer to each other with their guard standing behind them. The room was large with only a single window for some light. There were no other shinobi present. No one would even think about attacking here, not when it was the most powerful in action. Well, at least they were the most powerful shinobi but there was now the emperor. Tsunade still believed that the five Kages held more power than the emperor. It would test the balance of things if Naruto held enough power to challenge them all. Everyone would feel threatened and they would tread carefully knowing the emperor was watching. The Godain Hokage glanced at the quiet Gara who was sitting on her right hand, a I bit further the Mizukage sat on her left side, Anoki just across her. This meeting would be basically the other three against the two who were at war with Yuzushio. As the ones who called the meeting, Kanoha will take charge, do any of you have any problems? Tsunade asked in a Hokage tone. Let us just get this over with. We are at war and the emperor can attack while we are sitting here, Ai said with impatience. The emperor assured us he would not attack during the summit, Gara said. He could at least trust that Naruto would not go back on his word unless these two do something that would provoke an attack. Besides, he was going to come here. I can't trust him. Ai was quick to say. I assume the last attacks were done knowing this. Did he also do them to give us more reasons to attend the meeting? Anoki demanded with narrowed eyes. Were you even aware of this? Ai glared hearing the question as if it had never occurred to him. He slammed his fist on the table and leaked a bit of his killing intent. His glare was directed at the Godame Hokage. You would not be working with the Emperor would you? He demanded. If you are, there is not even a reason we should continue with this. He had lost many shinobi and he would never forgive those who worked with the Emperor. He would be willing to attack the other Kages even in the summit if they proved to be conspiring with that man. Don't be so rash, Tsunade said in a dismissive tone. Instead of accusing us of anything, you should think about thanking us for giving you a time to breathe. You were not performing well in the war. And the Emperor would not have given you time to recover before launching another devastating attack. It did not please her saying this but it had to be said they needed to be reminded that while they had come here with their chests puffed, they were losing horribly in a war they had started. They had certainly underestimated Naruto. And they were paying dearly for it. We don't need to be reminded, Anoki said. But you are still not answering my question. I knew he would attack but I was not working with him. We are not even allies. The only reason I even knew about it was because he informed me after coming to let me know he would recover my sister, whom you had taken by force, Gara said with, staring at the Tsuchikich. Your actions are part of the reason we are here. Tsunade said. We don't want to drag our villages into a needless war. But we will be forced to defend ourselves if you two going to provoke us. There has to be consequences for your actions, Tsuchikich. Anoki frowned deeply. What do you want from me? He demanded harshly and in anger. My granddaughter is missing, possibly dead. And she was the one who led the attack. I feel for your loss. Losing a family member is difficult but you had no problems in giving the order that resulted in me nearly losing a family member. Your granddaughter tortured my sister. I cannot forget that. You must pay for what you did. If I refuse, what are you going to do? Suna does not have the might to do anything against Iwagakure. I don't even think Kanoha would be willing to get into a war with us. Last time we fought, we were winning until Minato appeared. You no longer have that. May shook her head this kind of attitude was the reason the Great Five always fought. Anoki was not even willing to admit that he had done wrong. There would be nothing to talk about if he could not admit his error. If things did not change, they would not gain anything other than threats and war declarations. We thought about things and knew you would give such a response, Tsunade said with a shake of her head there was clear disappointment in her tone. Will you not admit that what you did was wrong? 
Suna was not enemy and yet you gave the order. Anoki was silent for a couple of moments. I did what I thought was best for my village. He simply said. Talking about this issue is not going to change anything. Kumo once did something against in the leaf and it never admitted to do any wrong, even when everyone knew they were wrong. Don't turn this on me, AI said with a sharp look towards the Tsuchikich. I am just pointing out that things happen. The Sandane Hokage had seen too much at that point and the leaf had just suffered massively from the QB rampage. He took a decision that was best for the survival of the village, Tsunade said firmly. But it does not mean that Kumo was not wrong. Wounds from the Third War were still fresh, we had also lost Minato. If we had gone to war with Kumo at that point, you would have joined and Kanoha would not have survived. We are just not going to bring it now because it is not the reason we are here. Are you really not willing to admit that you were wrong? May asked, finally speaking. Her tone was gentle, quiet. I've already said what I did was best for my village. This is the reason why you are at war with the Emperor. You too cannot solve anything without going to war. You think power gives you the right to do whatever you please. You just now threw your muscles. Both you and the rakage threatened me unless I joined your cause. You always want to use force to get what you want because you value power above all things. May had held back from making an alliance with the Emperor because she had still been concerned about his true objectives but just hearing these two talk just made her realize that Yuzu indeed had no choice but to go to war. Both the Rakage and Tsuchikage would not have stood for it. Morals did not work in this world. It was all about power and protecting one's village. Tsunade raised an eyebrow hearing this from 5th Mizukich. It was honestly surprising to hear her speak so calmly despite that the two villages had tried to bully her into supporting them into war. This just added to the sins of these two. They have certainly fallen. But this has always been the way shinobi do things, hasn't it? The leaf has in the past done many injustice to secure its position and borders. Perhaps pointing fingers was not really the one thing she could do. You really want all of us to return to those bloody days? Have you not had enough of wars? You should know better than anyone, Tsuchikich. There is nothing but pain in war. You have already lost many shinobi and you will still lose many more if you continue like this. Those shinobi at home will only blame you. We have all done unspeakable things. Kanoha certainly should not be the one to try to hold the moral high ground, Anoki said. That is true, Tsunade would not deny this. We cannot change our past but that is precisely the reason we have refused to talk about past issues. The Kumo issue was in the past. We are talking about things you did now. And I will not allow you to use the past against us. AI slammed his fist on the table. We should really be talking about the Emperor. He is too powerful and a danger to the balance past Kage has fought to protect. What makes you think he isn't going to turn on you? We should really work together to fight against him. Anoki added. He is after something. He works with the criminal organization, the Akatsuki, and we have noted that he has taken the sound country. That man plans to destabilize things in this world. He calls himself emperor, soon he will call himself emperor of the elemental nations. Working on their fears, eh? Tsunade found it laughable. Maybe if it was months ago, she would have agreed to the idea of dealing with Naruto like that but not anymore. The Akatsuki? That is ironic coming from you, Anoki. I will admit that my past actions have not always been good. I made a blunder in this case. We have also underestimated the abilities of the Emperor and we are paying for it, Anoki was truly loath to admit this he spoke in a bitter tone. I will agree that the Emperor is indeed too powerful but whether he is an enemy or not is something that we will decide for ourselves. If he is planning to expand, we will put a stop to it, Tsunade said in a hardened tone. The war is yours and we will not fight it. We have no reason to do so. But since you have shown contempt for us, we will not permit you to go through the borders of our country. If your shinobi try to cross through, they will be attacked. You'd risk war with us. Yes if you invade the fire country, you are the ones challenging us. We are not taking sides, we just don't want you crossing through the borders. 
We have also agreed with the Hokage that shinobi from IWA will not be permitted into both the wind and fire country until you see the error of your ways. Both wind and fire lords will put pressure on your feudal lord to put some restraint in you. If he refuses, the earth will lose the business of all the small nations that border it. Apparently, they all don't like IWA for its lack of respect for their borders. One worrying fact seems to be that they appear to have made an alliance with the Uzumaki Empire. Gara added calmly. Anoki frowned deeply. Even if he survived the war, IWA would surely suffer economically. Once the war was over, the feudal lord held more power. He had not thought these two would take such an extreme measure. I would not be against sending my forces to assist the leaf in protecting its borders. May added. Ridiculous. AI exclaimed in anger. None of you are willing to help in this war. If you stand against us, we will fight you. What you are doing is simply protecting the emperor, we cannot excuse that. I think I have proven beyond doubt that I do not need any protection, a cold voice of the emperor rang as he entered the meeting place. The guards of both Anoki and AI took their positions but the others did not react but just watched. Sasuke had his Sharingan activated, watching. If Naruto showed a moment of weakness or a simple opening, he was going to take it and ensure the blonde was dead. He heard the blonde was planning to expand. He no doubt wanted to dominate the elemental nations he wanted to change things. Sasuke could not trust Naruto's intentions. AI activated his lightning cloak while Anoki took to the air, holding his hands together, ready to launch an attack. Calm down you two. Tsunade shouted while on her feet. She didn't want things going far. They could not fight here. We did not come here to fight and you were informed he would appear. The Godain then glared at Naruto for his timing. With how good he was with stealth, he may have been watching since the beginning. Well, it didn't look like things were going anywhere anyway. But their measure against Anoki would hit him hard. IWA was going to suffer and he would be forced to act. Kanoha would not be affected badly by this measure. It just meant that Leaf Shinobi would be constantly fighting with IWA. This is an opportunity for us to get rid of a man who has killed many of our shinobi, Anoki had nothing but hate for the emperor. If you are going to fight, just know that we will be willing to fight you. Gara said in a stern tone. Brother, be said to his brother. Even he knew that the situation was dangerous. There were three kages, one of them a jinchuriki and a san nin. The other was an uchiha, and he felt powerful. He was not the emperor but he was not normal either. What? If we fight here, we won't win, B said. AI stared at Naruto before deactivating his cloak and then settled down, yet he kept his glare upon the blonde. Anoki followed his example and calm returned into the room. Naruto who had an amused look slowly reached the kages before rounding them, hands crossed behind. He stood by the window and looked outside. You should really do well to hide your killing intent, Sasuke. I have killed many people, so I can tell when someone really wants to murder me, the emperor spoke in a measured tone. I can understand with the Tsuchikage I have been picking apart his shinobi after all. Tsunade frowned hearing those words. She had thought she handled this issue with Sasuke's thoughts towards Naruto. She truly hoped that the Uchiha did not do something stupid like attack the emperor because she did not want that. There were chances of Naruto declaring war on them if Sasuke went that far. Showing your back to us, you have grown rather confident in your abilities, AI said with anger. I am watching you. My senses work perfectly. Besides, I am not here for a battle. We decided to pause just for this summit. I am here to talk to see if we can end things without any more bloodshed. I must be honest, this is starting to weigh me down. I cannot continue to stomach this slaughter. Naruto said. And I thought you were enjoying yourself, Anoki said with bitter sarcasm. Naruto eyed the Tsuchikage through the corner of his eyes and then responded. Just because I grow weary of it doesn't mean that I cannot continue with it. I would have no problem slaughtering all your men in both camps if that is what it takes to end this conflict. That kind of language doesn't really help, Naruto, Tsunade warned. I'm afraid I must speak in terms they can understand, the blonde said. This is a formal setting, I would rather you not call me so casually, Hokage-sama. 
Perhaps when we are in a private setting, I can accept that. Tsunade did not respond to this. If you came to talk and look for a way to end this, you must be ready to die then. We will only accept your death and the return of my granddaughter. Anoki said. And Yujito, Ai added. We can leave Yuzushio alone for the time being. It is likely that the village has no power to threaten us aside from you. Laughable, the emperor said. You started this war and are losing it, yet you demand my head. Perhaps it would make your people happy, but it will not happen. I did not take Kuratsuchi, Tsuchikich. I beat her and left her to die. If she isn't around, then it is a worrying matter. Yujito will not be returned. We end this war by you surrendering to me and giving your lives as sacrifices. That is not going to happen. We are still Kages and will not give our lives to anyone. You have already killed many of our shinobi. AI added forcefully. He seemed ready to explode. You started a war and we have not forgotten that you invaded our village before and nearly led us to extinction because of your insecurities. You wanted to lead us to ruin once more. We simply cannot let this go. We are not sure if you will not even try to do this again. We will not allow them, Tsunade was quick to say. The Kages can make an agreement to say if the other attacks one of us for no reason at all, we will defend the other. We could extend this agreement towards Yuzushio. There will never be peace in my village as long as he is alive. He has killed far too many for us to simply let things go. Naruto shook his head he had expected them to he stubborn but it was still disappointing seeing it happen. These two were just prime examples of what was wrong in this world. The main issue was that they had declared war on them and then tried to destroy them simply because they viewed them as a threat. They were now angry because he had killed their shinobi. What did they expect of him? Were they thinking that he would just roll over and allow them to butcher the clan he forced to come out of hiding? It was war. People died. They had just gone into it thinking they would win and now they were trying to push their kage muscles to see him dead even though he had been provoked. Naruto had never cared about the balance and peace. He'd always been concerned about his clan it was his greatest love. For it, he had donned the mask of the emperor and went on a slaughter. He would not simply die to make bloody idiots comfortable. Just because they were kages, it did not mean they were right. The leading powers were truly arrogant. Naruto turned around and faced the Kages his eyes were sharp, the atmosphere around him a little menacing. There was deathly silence when he did this and when he spoke, no one seemed to breathe. You people are disappointing. You should be on your knees begging for mercy. You have done us wrong and you refuse to accept this. The core issue here is not that I slaughtered your shinobi, it is that you declared war on us when we had done nothing to you. You wanted to repeat history but this time, we were prepared. We have stopped you and you think that now you can demand my death. Ridiculous. You are insane to even think of such. You are losing your war. Admit that. Beg for mercy and I will give it. Your status as Kages mean nothing to me. Naruto calmed down after saying those words and then turned away once more. I lost my cool a little there, he said in a light tone. A full minute went by in silence until Anoki spoke. If we had not attacked, you would have done it for the past actions. We did what we did for our safety. But I am still willing to declare an end to things without your death. Of course, I would still need the other Kages to agree with me that if we are attacked upon making the agreement, you must defend us. This should be an agreement supported by the feudal lords as well. Anoki suggested. You'd still be letting him continue to live. AI said. That is a sound idea. May said in thought. But it still does not address the fundamental issue here. Which us? Anoki asked. The fact that you cannot even see it makes it difficult for me to say I will defend you, May responded a bit sharply. Kyumo and IWA waged war on Yuzushio. Kiri, Kanoha and Suna all agree that you were wrong. But you are not willing to admit this. You want to justify this by saying you lost your shinobi. What did you expect when you went to war? Did you not consider that it could happen? You would not have complained if you laid siege in the wave and killed innocent people before destroying Yuzu once more. Do not speak to me like a child, Mizukich. Anoki responded with a slight glare. 
But she is right. Gara stressed. Tsunade agreed. This war should have never occurred in the first place. If you can admit that, we would be willing to help you end it. But we will not support the death of the Emperor. We are not saying we are on his side. You don't need to die. If the Emperor is good in his intentions, he should be satisfied that you have learned your lessons and should be willing to work with you towards reconciliation and we would be there to oversee this. There will be no reconciliation until he is dead. A.I. said. He is a major threat. Tsunade could not have said it any better and A.I. could not have given a better response. There is nothing else to talk about then. We will continue with our war, Naruto said as he turned around. He started walking towards the exit. Wait, A.I. shouted, while on his feet. We don't want to lose any more shinobi. Let us settle this amongst ourselves as leaders. We will fight you and we shall accept the result. I will order my shinobi to retreat and maybe we can talk about peace thereafter. We would not seek the destruction of Yuzushio and the others would take action if we went against this. You would also not attack our villages if we lost. We would need the Kages to back us in case you decide to attack us regardless. Anoki added. We can do that, Tsunade said. What do you say, Emperor? When do we fight? We will send a message. I will be waiting, Naruto stepped out of the room after saying those words. At least we were able to get somewhere. Tsunade said with a smile. But our judgment on IWA for its actions towards Suna remains even if you lose against the Emperor. It doesn't affect me in any way, A.I. said as he stood up. Tsuchikage, we will need to talk about how we handle him. We cannot afford to lose this battle. Of course. Anoki joined A.I. in leaving. This was the perfect chance to kill the Emperor with the other Kage staying out of it. Gara shook his head after they left. I have a feeling this is just what the Emperor wanted. I doubt he would have accepted anything less than what he demanded, he said. I feel the same, Tsunade said. But at least they all got what they wanted. No doubt they want to kill him, May added. We made some progress. There should be another meeting after the war to talk about a way forward. There should be greater cooperation amongst the Kages. Let us start with us. We have an understanding and can work with each other. I have been working with the Kazakage for some time. There is trust amongst us. His word means something. I would not be against having that kind of relationship with you. But the problem now is Yuzu's expansion. We simply can't let it continue. Jiraiya spoke for the first time. We will discuss this but I must agree with you, Gara said. We focused on the right side of things, if one of us does err, we should apply the same standards, including Emperor. I have no intentions of giving him a free pass. Tsunade said. It will be difficult for him because all eyes will be on him mainly due to his power. Mei said. But I agree with the Kazakage we must apply the same standards to everyone. We cannot overlook certain things. This is truly different from how things were done in the past. The concept of right was defined by the winner. Everyone always has reasons. We can justify anything. Perhaps, this world will see some change, Tsunade said with a slight shake of her head. Maybe his introduction isn't a bad thing as long as he does not stray to the path of evil. It isn't as if he isn't incapable of evil, Sasuke commented. I'm sure he isn't far off I'm going to speak to him. The Uchiha disappeared. Jiraiya, keep watch before he attacks the Emperor. We don't want to make things worse. If they fight and Naruto is stronger, he will kill Sasuke. We still need him for Konoha. Of course, Haim the Toad Sage made a clone and it disappeared. He still did need to stay with Tsunade in case something happened. With Anoki. The sand named Tsuchikage let loose of a long tired breath. He stopped walking under a tree and watched his guards lean against the tree trunk. Well, things had taken a turn that he had not expected. The pressure from Kanoha would certainly make things difficult for him and IWA. But on the good side of things, they'd managed to make a deal that would save many of his shinobi. He just had to make sure that they lived to see another day. It was honestly going to be a difficult task fighting the emperor but they had to pull through. He nevertheless did need to consider that he may die in battle. 
If he was going to die, he would need to at least make sure that the emperor was crippled. His eyes turned to the rakage. He was not pleased that the man was not facing the heat from other three nations. And he had received a report that the man had started retreating before they even came here. He hadn't even bothered telling him about it. Their alliance was indeed patched up. But they still needed each other. Neither thought they could win without the other. In this case, there was no underestimating the power of the emperor. You could have told me you were going to have your forces retreat. If we had not reached a deal, my shinobi would have been the ones to be attacked, Anoki complained with a stare. The rakage stopped just a foot away from Anoki and shrugged indifferently. You could have made the same choice. I did what I thought was best for Kumo. But it hardly matters now anyway, we must speak about how we battle the emperor. Of course AI was going to dismiss his concerns. I have already lost one of the Jinchuriki but I will summon the last one to be with us in battle. We have to go all out or else we won't win this. My brother will join me. I have also lost a Jinchuriki to the Emperor. A.I. said. I hope you don't hold out on me and let us face him alone. I wouldn't go that far, Anoki said with a shake of his head. You know this is also what he wanted. If we don't seriously work together, he will get his wish and I don't think he is just going to leave our villages alone. We need to put everything to ensure he dies. Yuzushio itself doesn't appear to be a threat. If they had the power, they would have been to the battlefield already. We will test that, A.I. said. There is still the issue of Amage Cure. That Rinnegan wielder is just as powerful as the Emperor. It appears that there is more than one, Anoki said with a frown. It is still in Amage Cure. We will need to make a plan for it once the Emperor is dead. But we should recover first. If we make any reckless movements, we will be going to an all-out war with the other three great nations. With the casualties we have already suffered, it will not be good for both our villages. Agreed. With Naruto. Naruto was sitting on the limb of a tree, swinging both his feet slowly as he counted the seconds. He was sure Sasuke would come for him. He had no problems with the Uchiha and actually wanted to see the rebirth of the Uchiha clan. But Sasuke's attitude towards him would make things difficult for him. He clearly held murderous intentions towards him. If this did not change, he would end up dying. It would be a pity. When the Uchiha appeared below him in a lightning buzz, he narrowed his eyes below and then spoke. You still refuse to grow, Sasuke. I thought perhaps sending Itachi after you would help you grow a bit. But your hatred has truly battered you. You make your intentions so obvious. If I was someone else, I would kill you because you obviously will try to stab me in the back if you see an opportunity. It would not be a bad thing to this world if you died. Sasuke said. Do you actually think you can kill me simply? The power of the Kyubi does not make you invisible. I would not need the Kyubi to beat you unless you had the perfect Susano. Admittedly, that is a power I would rather not face, Naruto said. What are you planning Naruto? I know you want something. You plan for this. If they had not attacked, you would have provoked them to attack you. Naruto looked behind him, sensing Jiraiya's chakra signature. The San Nin he hadn't said anything then. But then again, it hadn't his moment to say anything. The platform was reserved for the Kages. How good is your vision now? Can you even see clearly? Naruto asked while looking down at the Uchiha. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I know overuse of the Mangekyo Sharingan causes blindness. You will eventually go blind. He then jumped from the tree and landed in front of Sasuke with a smile. Ah, you can still see. Did you take my brother's body? Maybe, maybe not. I would be nice if I had it, don't you think? Naruto asked with a smile. Sasuke unsheathed his sword and lunged at Naruto, swinging his sword in a downward slash. The blonde did not move an inch. Jiraiya flashed between them, knees bent slightly, right hand held up, the left facing Naruto with its palm open. He caught Sasuke's wrist with his right hand. Stop it, Sasuke. The Uchiha glared for a moment before pulling away. Good timing, Jiraiya, Naruto said with a smile. I must depart. 
There was some troubling information I received from Anoki that needs intervention. What information? The disappearance of Kuratsuchi. I was certain I had left her for dead but her disappearance posses questions about who may have taken her. If it was not you, who could have done it? I'm not the bad guy here, Naruto responded. Regardless, I will see to it that I find out he waved his right hand and then disappeared along gusts of winds. Sound. Naruto stood by a large boulder, overlooking the many rice fields that surrounded the large green watery area. None of the other lands within the Uzumaki Empire had such land that could be used for farming. The wave's main point of business was indeed trade but it worked well with its port. It would certainly challenge the port city in the Fire Nation within the near future. He would have to make sure more farms were prepared for agricultural purposes. Those with land saw the value in it. Economic benefits simply did not come from shinobi missions only. The sound was not going to be structured to depend on shinobi for its economy. It was not to say it would not have shinobi it would be waste of Guren's power to make her lead a civilian nation. The empire did not have the military prowess to challenge the great nations without him but he would build his military strength. It was now time to develop this nation. Amigekure and Nadashiko provided some fighting power but sound would have to develop as well while. Naori, Naruto said as he felt the presence of the man. Your Majesty, Naori responded as his form appeared behind the Emperor. Should we prepare in case IWA decide to pass by this land on their way back? It does not hurt us to make precautionary measures, Naruto said. Do it. I'm rather concerned by Kuratsuchi's disappearance. We need to find her and fast. She absolutely loathes me and if she meets the wrong people, she will prove to be a major problem in the future if she returns. You think Zetsu might be behind it? A possibility we cannot overlook. I will send the men to look for her. It is strange that she could just disappear. If she is still alive, she will eventually return to this world and she will not be able to hide. Hopefully without any nasty surprises, the emperor responded in a thoughtful tone. What do you think about Miyuki? Yoshino's woman. She is a strange woman. She was not like that from the beginning not unless she was faking it. We know all Uzumaki and their personalities but she is somehow. We cannot get a read on her and she has displayed a rather curious mind. Yoshino doesn't seem to mind it nevertheless. Naori smiled. She may be a little twisted. I would not want to be alone with her. But that is the reason she matches Yoshino. She worries me, Naruto admitted. I don't plan on talking to Yoshino about this but keep an eye on her. Of course, your majesty. Go attend your duties. I will see Guren and then return home. There should be no more battles until the Rakage and Suchikage send us their message to meet for one last battle. But keep your eyes open. Those treacherous people might just shock us with something nasty. Hi. And then he was gone. Sound capital. Wooden houses lined up one after the other, surrounding the tall tower within the heart of the capital the tower overlooked all other buildings and unlike most buildings, it was made with a mixture of three materials, wood, sand and metal. There was a large wall that surrounded the capital, with one main entrance. In the future, it would be dividend in five parts, shinobi district, market, civilian district, the mixed zone and the compounds district. The mixed district welcomed you from the main entrance. Naruto put on a disguise and walked through the busy streets in a slow pace as he viewed how things were within. He could see more people coming here. Sound, Amage Cure, and the wave would all be connected by the trains. It would be easy for people to travel to each nation and for goods to move. Upon arriving the tower, Naruto stared at it thinking about Payne's tower. After a couple of a moments, he crossed his hands behind and then entered the building. There were guards who stopped him but he revealed himself and they apologized before offering to escort him. He permitted it and walked with them in silence. Guren was at the top of the building. Her office was large the wall on the left from the entrance had a shelf which contained scrolls only. The shelf on the right wall contained books. There were three chairs in front of her desk. Behind her, there was a large sliding door, opening the view to a balcony. Your Majesty, Guren was on her feet as she welcomed him. 
Naruto smiled and walked over to her but he then surrounded her and walked out towards the balcony. There was a quiet chill. He jumped on the small wall and settled graciously before closing his eyes. Yes, he could get used to this. You have a lovely view here, the emperor said before getting off. He walked back into the office and motioned for Durin to sit. He stood behind her and placed both his hands on her shoulders. Marriage plans? I have been a little too busy. Not good enough. I'm not really interested in marriage. Ah, that is the reason. But I need your bloodline to continue, as I do with Haku. He then leaned over her right ear. If you are not having any luck, I would not mind taking the reins. If one of my children became a bloodline wielder, it would be good for the empire in the future. Guren tensed. Naruto smiled. Ah, I'm harassing you, he said in a light tone. He moved away from Guren and then walked back outside. Status Report Chapter 25 For how long has he been thinking about battles? The desire to see the Uzumaki reign in this world. There was never a time to enjoy the comfort of life, he always had to be the emperor, playing judge and murderer. Karen may have been pushed towards him, but aside from Tamari, she was truly the only other person he could speak with freely without any restraint. Perhaps conversations with her were much more enjoyable than with Tamari. There was always some attachment to Gara's sister but there was not time to think about it. With battles heading towards conclusions, another chapter in his life would open up. With a long and thoughtful look on his face, Naruto stripped the gown he wore was standing at the edge of a hot spring within the land of hot springs. Esoteric marks covered his chest with black ink. There were no wounds. There was nothing but peace within the waters. He closed his eyes, enjoying the warmth that filled his body. The muscles felt as if they were loosening up. The tension in his body evaporated slowly. He felt calm. It was almost as if he was trapped in the little world he captures for himself when he was alone. Perhaps he was truly a miserable person who continually spends time alone, obsessed with thoughts about Fuenjutsu and what his life would have been like had his mother been alive and if Yuzushio had never been destroyed in the first place. Maybe he would have lived a much simpler life. There had been unbearable pain when he was younger. He had been silently miserable. Only the Sandame had cared. Kanoha had turned him a villain it had corrupted its thought towards him because of what he carried. Maybe the destructive thought about the Uzumaki had been the result of his hidden emotions. Rationalizing things had been the only way he could grow without hating everything around him. He certainly would have been filled up with anger which would have exploded with the Kyuubi's goading. But he was here. Perhaps the downsize of his mindset was that he had suppressed his emotions. Someone is lost in thought. Naruto blinked upon the words registering through his mind. On the other side, Princess Koyuki sat, her naked body hidden within the waters. Naruto could still see the shadows of her breasts it just made him curious to stare into the water to see if he could see more of it. I let my guard down, Naruto said in a whisper. He smiled warmly. You have learned to be sneaky. You were just far away from me. I thought you may have been gone and trapped inside with a heated argument with the Kyuubi. Naruto shook his head. I was thinking about things I never give myself time to think about. The war is to come to an end. There will still be more to do once it has ended. What things? Koyuki asked curiously. Relationships, family, and my feelings about my bitter childhood. I've always avoided thinking about what could have been because it does not change anything and just makes you wish for things you can never have regardless, I want a future to be a little better. I have not even honored my promise to give you a child. Despite by pleadings Koyuki said. I won't deny I do find myself enjoying the physical pleasures a little too much, but I'd never deeply thought about being a father. Maybe I don't think I am ready for it. Maybe it is just some nonsensical fear. It's strange hearing you talk about fears. You have always been assured of what you want. You have never displayed a moment of weakness and always have an answer for everything, Koyuki said before smiling a small smile. But it is good to know you are still just like the rest of us. Everyone is human, dear. How we are trained to react to situations determines our emotional reactions. I taught myself certain lessons and principles. 
I have spent time thinking about the wider issues in life but I don't have all the answers. I'm not a genius I just give myself time to think and conclude things logically. Naruto responded in a quiet tone before adding with a smile. I guess we should start trying to give you what you want. It would be interesting and something I can use to develop myself as a person. You want to use my child as an experiment? I'm not that heartless. Every child of mine will be loved. Admittedly, there might be favoritism to those who will bear the Uzumaki name it is really going to be a challenging experience but we will get it right. You have never raised a child either so, we will see how it goes. As long as you don't abandon me to raise the child on my own. What do you think of me, Koyuki? Well, for one thing, you don't love me. This marriage was just an arrangement we both made to benefit our nations. It's not like you love me either. Naruto said with a shrug. I have learned that to care for someone, is the best thing you can do. I care for you. Sometimes for a woman, that is simply not enough. You need to give attention in time. Caring and protection are sometimes equivalent to you. There will be those people who will not be pleased with protection but will want more. It was not that he didn't know about that. During those days with Jiraiya, Naruto had observed many things about relationships. Kanoha had deprived him of that, but he was no longer in that contemptuous village. I know that, but knowledge and awareness doesn't really mean application. Naruto said in a thoughtful tone. It is going to be difficult. I wonder if I will even have the time. My duties alone will only grow once the war is over. And I fear that there could be some people lurking in the shadows, waiting for an opportunity to strike. Isn't there always something to worry about? Always. Sanagekure. Gara stared expressionlessly at the papers on his desk but his eyes were not focused on them. His mind was in chaos. It was a jungle that threatened to test the ever-firm expressionless mask on his face. There was much to think about the road ahead seemed narrow. There was a chance of another war. He had lived the past years thinking about its possibility. Kanoha had trained its shinobi in preparation for war. Almost every great nation had prepared. At some point, it had seemed as if it would be an inevitability that they would be dragged to a blood bath but things had not progressed to that point. Instead, it was Yuzushio fighting Nyo, it was Naruto fighting. And he was the one committing the bloodbath. Just how many men had he killed already? It was indeed war and perhaps for the survival of his people, he had to fight this way, but this was something that could have been avoided. Anoki and AI were stubborn. Power was the rule. Because they had the power, their movements were right and justified. It was ridiculous. But that was how things operated in this world. He didn't think it would continue nevertheless not with the force of nature that was the emperor. He had just come to disturb the order of the five kages, the balance of power. He was not bound by the fear of the great nations. Gara was not worried too much about the emperor but he worried about Iwagakure. Once the pressure they would invoke on the village start squeezing the life out of them, he could expect some resistance. There was no doubt that the village would try to push back. Anoki would not simply grovel and apologize. That is if he does survive Naruto Hichigara doesn't think likely. The emperor was likely going to kill those two kages. The Kazakage looked up towards his door when he heard it slowly open. His sister walked in and closed it. His eyes fell firmly on her until she settled down on a chair in front of his desk. You look stressed. Tamari said, her eyes fixed on her brothers. Gara shook his head in slow movements. The words did not quickly escape from his lips. He only spoke after a couple of moments had passed. Suna does not have the military strength to fight Iwagakure. We have to depend on Kanoha to fight battles. If we are to get anything from them, we have to continue make sure that our relationship with them remains strong. Isn't it strong? You have worked hard since you became Kazakage to strengthen things after the invasion. It is, and there is a mutual respect and understanding between me and the Hokage. But? Things can change, Tamari. The Kage Summit taught me that power means everything in this world. If you do not have the power, no one will listen to you those with power will trample you. That Tsuchikage even reminded me that I could not do anything to Iwagakure without help from Kanoha. 
Suna's dependence on Kanoha had been the reason his father had even considered the idea of betraying the village in the first place. But Gara was not going to follow that path. He was not treacherous. That aside, the leaf was powerful. He had seen it himself the village rebuilt its once fearsome shinobi over then past years. It continues to rebuild. It was no wonder Tsunade had no problems going to war with both Stone and Cloud as long as he was there offer support. Military strength was not attained simply for show it was gained to be used. Naruto did not train become stronger just for the sake of it wanted to use his power. Perhaps the powerful end up misusing their power because the power corrupts them. No, power does corrupt, especially those who allowed it to dictate their lives. Solemnly, Gara added. With your relationship with the Emperor, our relationship with him may become better than Kanoha's. From what I have been able to gather, he hates the leaf and their relationship might improve but it probably won't become like ours. Perhaps there is also the issue of why Kanoha failed to rescue Yuzushio before. Temari looked away from her brother she really did need to have a long chat with Naruto. He would not tell her about anything that does not affect their relationship. Whenever they are together, it was always about what concerns them and other things were kept locked away. Do you think our relationship with Yuzushio may cause some friction with Kanoha? It is a possibility, but depending on what both Yuzushio and Kanoha are doing. We just need to ensure that we maintain things as much as we can. Certain things you cannot avoid regardless of how hard you may try. We must also look for ways to strengthen our military maybe that is not necessary at this time. But we will see what happens. Without weapons of destruction, there will not be destruction. Yet, it is not the weapons that are the cause of destruction. Jutsus are merely the imaginations of men. We think chaos. That is why we invent it. Perhaps to stop this kind of thing, we must stop thinking about them. Do you want me to use my relationship to make things better? I'm sorry, I must make this request. No it is fine. Tamari said with a wave of her right hand. I did think that something like this would occur. It became apparent that I would have a role to play when he revealed himself as the emperor. Kanaha Gakur. It was remarkable how much time he was spending in the village compared to a couple of years ago. He'd always been a visitor ever since both his teammates left the leaf, he'd also left. Perhaps being here had reminded him too much of his failures as a shinobi. But these days, he could hardly allow those factors to influence his decisions. He could not afford to be away from home not with war knocking at their doorsteps. If things work out with Naruto and his enemies, there would be no more war and perhaps they would try to make sure that such things never happened again. The current group of Kage were taking things in the right direction. Jiraiya glanced at Tsunade from the window where he sat. She seemed preoccupied with her thoughts than the work Shikaku had left behind for her. He smiled bitterly thinking of his feelings. You simply just could not get everyone to love you. Just because you love doesn't mean you will be loved. Life was not fictional as the stories people wrote. Thinking of stories, he seriously needed to pick up on his writing. Perhaps he could draw inspiration from Naruto. He was the emperor and with his history with women, he surely had some interesting stories to tell. You're drooling, you pervert. Jiraiya blinked Tsunade was glaring at him. He smiled a bit sheepishly. I was just thinking about something, Heim. Perverted no doubt. She said with disgust. Don't be like that, Heim, Jiraiya responded, smiling. He then turned serious. Nothing is happening yet, but fireworks should start soon. You think Naruto is going to win, don't you? Tsunade nodded. With the power he has displayed in this war, he could win. It would be stupid to bet against him. But still, nothing is certain. He could still lose the war to them. If he loses, they will kill him. Jiraiya shook his head and then corrected himself. No, he has already come back from the dead. He has always displayed a smart sense of battle. If he is losing, he will flee. Naruto isn't that stupid after all. But if they win, things can go any other way. Maybe but they will move carefully. Perhaps it is cold to say, but if Naruto does die or lose, it would make things easier for us. Yet I don't think that Yuzushio would be left without options. Nagato is still there and he has displayed that he is just as destructive as Naruto. 
There is a bit about the Empire's strength that we don't know and it is by design. The end of Naruto does not mean the end of it. His former student that peace-loving Nagato who once didn't even know if it was right to kill to protect your loved ones he had surely become a brutal person. Perhaps he was worse than Naruto. What Nagato had done in Amike Cure was merciless. Those two were Uzumaki and they had the power to change things. The Toads had warned him. If both wanted chaos and destruction, they would surely bring Ithi had the power. I must go see Nagato once things have settled. Jiraiya announced. We should now focus on how we work things out with Yuzushio. Kumo might be a problem but AI is perhaps reasonable and we could work things out with him. High chances are that they will be killed. You okay with that? It doesn't matter. It is their war and this is what they want. Tsunade responded in a firm tone. If they are killed, it clears the way for new leaders to come in. Perhaps a problem may be if the new leaders are like their predecessors. But I am hoping for something different. Jiraiya's lips parted as he tried to respond but there was a knock at the door. Come in. Shikaku opened the door before closing it once inside. He greeted both Sanans with a small smile before sitting in front of Tsunade's desk. You're late. I apologize, I had got held up with something. He said. What did you want to discuss? Jiraiya asked. About the way we move forward with the Uzumaki Empire. I spoke to the Emperor just after you left and we exchanged some words. You already know that he had made an agreement with the Sandame Hokage. Part of what was in the agreement was that Naruto had to marry someone within the village to maintain relations with Kanoha. But I think we should not work on that route. Naruto does not want to do it and given his contempt for this village, forcing him into the marriage will only make things worse. He will not do anything far beyond the agreement. We have to avoid that. I suggest that we break the current agreement and make a new one. We can discuss new terms that we all find acceptable when we sit with him. But there is something that we insist on inserting and that is one of his children must marry into Kanoha. The children would have to be introduced at a younger age and Naruto's child must also live here, study here and become a shinobi of this village. We had not considered that but it works better. Tsunade said in thought. You want the child to grow up here so that Husha grows attached to this village. Shikaka nodded. Better relations can only be formed when one of them is attached to this village. Naruto may not care for this village, but his children might. Of course, there is still the issue of who gets to marry. For this, I had considered the Hyuga. That includes the Byakugan. Do you think they would willingly agree to such a thing? The Byakugan is not being taken anywhere since Naruto's child will grow here, thus by marriage become a member of the Hyuga clan. Hayashi will consider the benefits to his clan. The Empire is only going to grow and become more influential on the lives of many people in the elemental nations. If they get closer, they will benefit greatly. We cannot pick just anyone who is not noble since Naruto's children will be princes and princesses. Will you do the talking with Hayashi? Tsunade asked. That would be troublesome. Shikaku said with a shake of his head. Hayashi is my peer, it would work best coming from you. I will think about it. Is there anything else? No, Shikaku said. He spoke his last words and departed from the office. Things were just going to get a little complicated from now on. At least she was going to quit. She was not getting any younger anyway. She certainly didn't want to lead this village through her old age as her sensei did. There were people capable of becoming Kage now. When is Kakashi going to arrive? I am going to have him sit with Hayashi to lead the discussion. It will be good to see how he handles diplomatic talks before I quit this tiring job. You really serious about that? Of course I am. Tsunade said firmly. I don't know how sensei did it for so many years but this job is too much. The brats might think being Hokage is fun but it is not. The responsibility you carry weighs you down. I can only imagine. Jiraiya said. You're constantly put in a position where you must choose between two things. You must always be decisive. Sometimes you have to choose who gets to live or die. If you had to make such decisions, you'd certainly grow old quickly. But Kakashi should be Fanih was Umbu after all. 
he knows what is best. It is his tardiness that bothers me. I'm sure that will change with the new responsibility. Yuzushi Ogakure. Footsteps echoed through the throne room as Naruto strode, hands crossed on his back. There was no other sound other than his footsteps. When he sat down and rested his head on the palm of his right hand, everything became still it was just complete silence. Naruto did not hate it. He had designed the room to be completely cut off from the world to give it privacy and peace. He didn't have to worry about explosions setting off outside while he remained ignorant. Yuzu was well protected. After a couple of moments passed, Naori formed from the shadows, on the emperor's left side. Where is Haku? He has gone to Kirigakure to see if the issue with the water lord has been resolved. He should nevertheless return soon. Naori answered. Did you need him? No, I just did not feel his presence, so I wondered. Yoshino has requested permission to grant Miyuki access to the compound. He would not give his reasons as to why such a move should be made. No aside from my concerns, there is no reason to grant the request. She is useless to me and the protection of the compound. Her access will be restricted as normal. I will give him the message. Naori was certain that Yoshino expected the rejection. Perhaps there was a game the man was playing with the emperor. Sometimes it was difficult to understand just how the two thought at times. Yoshino was the only one who could take decisions that Naruto would have made. Haku was different didn't consider his superior's thoughts but what he believed was best for the situation. Kumo's forces in the sea have not made any movements. But we received a message saying that they stopped at an island and unloaded the suppliers. It could be that they are just taking a break from the sea travel while awaiting further instructions from the wreckage. They will move again. Naruto said in thought. Keep watch on them. We must not let anyone escape if they make moves towards us. For now, we will play ignorant and allow the cloud to think we see nothing. Nadashiko sent a message. We will visit them once Haku returns. It has been long since we made an appearance. Naruto said. Ready Itachi's eyes and put the seal on them. Send a message to Gurin to start recruiting people she can use for intelligence within the sound. As planned, there will be one system that manages all our shinobi. Recruitment within the sound will nevertheless be strict. The members of the Akatsuki. They are no longer of use to us. They are wanted criminals and it would not serve us right should we shield them when the great nations want them. For now, leave them be but keep their movements under surveillance. We should nevertheless make plans for Kisame. He was too close to Abito. Will you handle it? In due time perhaps it will be a hunt once we have settled things. But for now, we have our focus Naruto paused when he sensed Yoshino's presence. The man walked purposefully toward him and stopped a couple of feet away from the throne before speaking. Your Majesty, he greeted with a smile. Naruto merely nodded in response. I have been thinking about how we are going to build the trains and the railways without the Akatsuki no longer doing missions. The project to even develop the sound is going to cost us more than we have and Amage Cure will not be able to help as it did in the past. What do you have in mind? We took Gato's business and that helped us with some funds but it was all spent in the wave country. The shipping business helps the wave's economy, so we cannot take it. The wave also needs to continue with its expansion to make it the kind of village we want it to be. Money will be required which we do not have. I'm well aware that our financial position does not match our ambitions. Get to it. Yoshino continued smiling as he responded. There are many criminals running loose and many gold mines that are in the hands of criminals. Bandits have loot with them. We can simply claim that instead of demanding compensations from cloud and stone. This will set us up for the future. That makes sense. Another reason. I want to expand Yuzushi Ogakure. It is still relatively too small. I want it to grow, but of course, we would still need to ensure that the Uzumaki know they cannot marry anyone not from the clan. Extinction is our greatest fear, and we have all agreed to do everything possible to make sure it is avoided. Yuzushi Ogakure is yours what happens to it is not my decision. But you would still need to approve. If you need my approval, you have it. However, ensure we don't have a situation with our people falling for those not of our blood. 
what should we make of it, taboo? Yes, something forbidden. Naruto said. How do you plan to make this plan of yours work? I was hoping we could utilize Guren's extreme skills and the men she leads to make things happen. Noroi has already gathered valuable spots we could hit. Naruto stared at the man thinking how long he had been having such thoughts. He then shook his head it didn't need to know. You have my permission. He said. I have rejected your request with regards to Miyuki does that pass your test? Yoshino merely continued smiling. Which side of you does she even know? A side that she likes, your majesty. Naruto blinked before bursting out in laughter. When does she get pregnant? I am expecting a child. If she is of any use, she will serve her purpose. Very soon, your majesty, very soon. I work hard at it. Naruto smiled. Does she know? Kanoha, Uchiha compound. Sasuke couldn't help but snort at his current predicament. He had fled this village for more power did get it but just not quite enough. His salvation had been with his brother. It was at times maddening that many people looked down on his brother and cursed his name. He had once done it and vowed to murder him but he hadn't known the sacrifice his brother had made for Kanoha. Coming back here, he had vowed revenge over all those who were involved. But recently, he'd come to realize he was truly no longer interested. It has been some time since he returned to this village and ever since he has worked to protect it. Perhaps it was his jealousy and contempt for Naruto that made him chase after the Emperor. No doubt if he did anything, Kanoha would turn on him the whole of Yuzushio would hunt him. Tsunade had made it clear to him that unless she gave the order, he was never to try anything. Admittedly, he'd never given much of a thought to the consequences but he'd only been thinking about removing someone he believed to be a threat to the leaf. His eyes turned when he sensed something. He picked up the short sword lying on the floor on his right side was sitting just behind his house. I come in peace. Black Zetsu said in a slow dark tone seeing, the narrow look from the Uchiha. He'd just formed from the ground, in front of Sasuke. What do you want? Naruto has been hunting you and it would make him owe me if I captured you. I did consider that but I have been watching you. And I want you to join me. Sasuke's Sharingan activated and he strengthened the grip on his sword. He was familiar with the danger here and Naruto had mentioned it. He was simply not going to allow himself to be taken in for a ride and Itachi had already warned him about the dangerous characters in this shinobi world. I have no interest. I know where Itachi's eyes are and in your current situation, you need them. I can make sure you get them and take down the Emperor. These people are still not grateful of the sacrifice your brother made to this village. They scorn him and make him turn up to be a villain when he really was just following the village's orders. Sasuke had a look of anger in his eyes but he controlled his rage. Don't talk about my brother like you know him. I know him better than you do. Naruto has those eyes I'm not interested. He channeled lightning chakra into his sword, ready to attack black Zetsu. Disappointing, Zetsu said. Oh, well, not that it was unexpected. But I will return. He returned to the ground before Sasuke could attack him. Yuzushio Gakure. The lone figure of Yujito stopped walking within the streets and looked up into the clear sky. There was a chilly breeze at this time in the villagite was perhaps because the village was surrounded by waters. She was strangely becoming familiar with everything. The street was in its usual form of bubbles. Children walked around with their parents while some brats ran through academy classes were over, so they were free to run loose. Shops were open, people went in and out. Yujito had never taken part in the festivities within the village. She had always observed from a distance. Maybe she did not want to end up liking the atmosphere a little too much. But no one bothered her. Not even the people from the leader or the emperor. She was just left alone to do as she pleased. One of the little things that Yujito had come to realize when walking around this village was that the Uzumaki were truly nobles. It was not that they walked around with their chests puffed up in arrogance of their status no, they mingled with people and were much more energetic than others. But when it came to romantic relationships, they did not mix. It didn't seem to bother anyone else as they were good people. It was still not something that was not practiced by other clans. She had also noted that most people came here from different lands. 
There were those from AIM and some from Nadashiko. And some were just lost people the empire brought in and fed. The village was really charitable everyone had a home. Overall, the village was a good place to live. Still, there was no place quite like home. Yujito had missed the mountains of the cloud. She had missed the terrain and the people at her home. She truly longed to be there. But she could not leave, not unless the emperor permitted it. Yujito focused on the road ahead and continued walking. She walked past some people, greeting some along the way. She stopped close to a ramen stand, seeing the emperor sitting there. He looked just like a normal person. The people loved him she had noticed as much. He was their emperor. To the Uzumaki, he was like a god. To the little ones, he was even greater than a god. They were being told of his amazing power in the war with stone and cloud. The versions were not exaggerations but they did leave out the bloody trail of corpses he left behind. It was understandable you did not want to traumatize the little ones with such images. She walked towards the ramen stand and then sat on a stool on the emperor's right side. Oddly enough, despite holding her captive in this village and killing many people from her village, Yujito did not hate him not even a little. Should you be sitting here like this? Naruto eyed Yujito for a moment with a raised brow and then asked. Why not? You are the emperor. Some of these people worship you. I'm not a god I can be normal. You don't expect me to start avoiding bars because I am the emperor, do you? Yujito stared at him. Naruto chuckled lightly. When you stand too far away from your people, they only see you through the lenses of what they hear. In this case, they would only see me through what they hear about my achievements in the battlefield. If I allowed such a situation, adoration could become fear, especially if I just kept a straight face along the way. I don't want my people to come to the point where they fear even looking at me. I want them to be free to greet me without fear of death. If they respect me, it should not only because of my position but because of what I am to them. Yujito did not respond immediately. She made her order and eyed him out the corner of her eyes. He was sensible at times. Well, it was no wonder these people loved him. You're admittedly a good leader. I'm sure not many people would want to hear that. You mean your village and Iwagakure? Yujito refused to comment on this but it was her thought. How was the summit? She asked a bit hesitantly perhaps afraid to find out any bad news about her village. According to plan. Kumo and IWA are retreating but I will still be facing the Kajian a battle of death. They will most certainly die if they cannot defeat or outrun me. Naruto said firmly. Have you come to a favorable decision? Yujito did not take time to respond her response came a bit too quickly than she would have liked. She meant every word nevertheless. I cannot betray my village. I love Kumo even with all its faults. This is a good place. No doubt I'd be happy here if I learned to adapt but I have a home. I suffered for Kumo, and I will not let it be for nothing. Naruto sighed. It is truly difficult to change people once they become loyal to something unless they are traitorous people. You're not mad. Disappointed, yes, but your rejection of my affections is hardly surprising. Naruto responded with a nonchalant shrug of his shoulders. Oh Yujito mouthed before asking. What will happen to me? I'll return you home once the war is over. I have already achieved my objective anyway. Your presence here is no longer necessary but it will work best if you are returned after the war. Aside from keeping me away from the war, what else did you want? Naruto smiled. Well, you like Yuzushio, don't you? You'll have good things to say about us when you return home. Of course it will depend on whether the new leaders will be able to take your word. I still won't complain if you are treated as a traitor. You could still return here. And prove them true. You'd go through the process of being called a traitor. I was hated for being a Jinchuriki, no one trusted me and I was trained like a weapon nothing will be worse than that. Naruto shook his head. Are you macho? He asked calmly. Well, that is your decision to make. I would not take that route. You don't always have to suffer just to prove people wrong. At a certain point, you must say it is enough and look at other things. I have my share of suffering and pain. 
I don't want to live through that again and would not wish for anyone to go through it. You can easily lose your mind. But Jinchuriki resist because of the desire to form friendships and to be accepted. The world would be an unpleasant place if all Jinchuriki turned against their villages and wielded the mask of vengeance. Kirigakure. You should just find an apartment and come to live with us. Mei said to Haku with a small smile on her lips. Haku shared the smile as he walked towards the Mizuka Juho was sitting behind her desk in her office. He did not say anything until he sat down. If I did not have a home already, I would not mind that but my visits are a little more forced because of the situation. I cannot leave Naruto alone because he will go through with his most reckless ideas. He said with a slight shake of his head. It was simple for these people to simply call him Naruto, but May found it difficult to call him that not with everything he has done. He was the emperor. He had created a name for himself. There was possibly no shinobi who hasn't heard of his name now. He would die a legend in the shinobi world. If he doesn't end up dying in battle, he would certainly live a long life. The Uzumaki were known for this after all. Water Daimyo, issue. May frown just thinking about it. Fortunately due to Yagura's reign and the civil war, we haven't had to depend on the daimyo's support but he still holds influence and it would be a lie if I said we did not need his support. Still no changes. He would not listen to anything I say. Perhaps IWA got to him before we did. He seems positive that the wave will become a threat. It has not stopped growing and once the war ends, it will continue to grow at an accelerated rate. We have already discussed this and set some terms to ensure we all benefit from our locations. A partnership is more worthwhile and beneficial to both sides. He doesn't see that the just wants everything for himself. May said before heaving a long sigh. She put on a serious look before asking. The emperor will order his death if things stay like this, won't he? That was the plan or we could just manipulate him. The Godei Mizukij leaned back in her chair and put on a thoughtful mask for a minute. Once her thoughts settled, she responded. I can use threats to make him listen. There has always been that option but I held off from doing it because of the consequences that could arise but it seems I have no option. This is an internal matter, I don't want the empire getting involved. You afraid we may end up controlling this country? There is that thought. May admitted. If I take this route, I will need you to be open with me. I will be putting my trust in you that means you will back us up in case we come across some problems. I am also working on other things to help negate the consequences that may come. You have my word, Mizukij, the Empire will not abandon you. If you need assistance, we will help where we can. I have been waiting for you. Naruto said to Haku as the ice user walked into the throne room. When he had reached a good distance, Haku kneeled before the Emperor and then responded. I had some business to attend with Kirigakure but I have returned. I must say, news of your fame is spreading rather quickly. Is there someone pushing for it to spread this quickly? Naruto wasn't concerned about fame or glory. Maybe it wasn't a bad thing to be known throughout the lands but being famous was not the main point at this stage, there were much more fundamental issues that he needed his attention. War was not over. Even when it would end, there would still be more work to be done. The groundwork was done nevertheless. I have not made such an order Yoshino must have done it. Naruto answered. Was your visit fruitful? Haku nodded. I will hear from the Mizukich soon, but it was fruitful. We should no longer be concerned. We will nevertheless have to put more effort with Kirigakure in the near future should things become difficult for them. I will compile a report and submit it tomorrow. More things to read. Naruto shook his head. You have never complained about such things before. I'm not complaining. The emperor responded. Once things are set, I cannot have you leaving my side, Haku. Originally, Naori and Naoki were meant to be my guards but the clan decided to change things and Naoki was sent for Karen. Noroi is the messenger, but he spends too much time away from me handling intelligence and executing other things. Naori was forced to complete two jobs I want to release him from being my guard once we are no longer at war. You will serve as both my number two and my personal guard. You've never actually needed a guard. Things change. You don't know what the future holds. 
My body has been corrupted by the many seals that I placed on myself. Perhaps I failed to understand what would happen if I died with the seal's binding chakra from leaving my body. Though dead, my body was very much alive. I cannot always be ready for battle. I know have you tried removing some seals. I have but failed miserably. I won't admit this to the Uzumaki I would be a laughing stock. I made too many that they have now formed a complex set of routes that I can't just untangle without making something go wrong. It isn't that it is impossible but I would need someone's unique eyes. Pride? Something like that. Naruto said. I didn't take you for the kind to be held up by pride. Naruto stood up from the throne and slowly walked toward Haku. I don't say this often, but Fuenjutsu is the only thing I hold on to for being Uzumaki. As you already know, some of these people don't even treat me as an Uzumaki because my father was not Uzumaki. The laws we have even put in place was discriminatory. But I am not concerned for that. My seals make me feel worthy of carrying the Uzumaki name. Haku stood up before responding. It bothers you. He said with surprise. He smiled, finding it amusing that Naruto held such feelings. Well, this is the Uzumaki clan, I should not be surprised. This isn't a funny matter, Naruto said before putting a hand on Haku's shoulder. They disappeared in the blink of an eye. They appeared in the middle of a training ground away from the village. Trees surrounded the training ground there was silence even so. Haku looked around for a moment before facing Naratoho had already created some distance between them. Sparring session? Yes. Naruto said with a small nod of his head. A real one this time around. You will be fighting most of my battles once the war is over. I have already displayed my strength, but you have not. The shinobi world must know of your strength as well. I will put you under pressure, and I expect you respond. Haku was only concerned about Naruto's fighting capacity when the war ends. He took time to recover from battles where had exerted too much power. Without any Uzumaki backing him and the possibility of fighting two Jinchuriki, he would need to be at 100%. He could voice his thoughts but it was only Naruto who knew his body best. It still didn't make him any less worried. Don't be concerned. Naruto said with a wave of his right hand. Keeping sage mode activated does help me replenish my chakra a bit quickly. I have even stored enough natural chakra in me to battle for days, only if my body will allow me. So, no holding back. Yes no holding back. Haku nodded he hadn't done this in quite some time. Naruto was also not the kind of person he wanted to fight in a serious battle. Going all out in ninjutsu would just give him a massive disadvantage if he could not do any harm. Fighting at a close range would do it. Haku's instincts kicked in when he sensed some movement. Naruto was no longer in the spot he had been in moments ago. His eyes scanned around for a second and he glared just in front of him. Naruto appeared in the blink of an eye in front of Haku was slightly above the ground, body leaned forward a bit with his right hand, held out slightly with a fist formed. Before he could throw the punch, he suddenly disappeared along silent gusts. Haku sensed the movements and snapped his right fingers. An ice mirror formed behind him. Naruto flashed just when the mirror formed. His punch crashed into the wall. The emperor only smiled when his punch hit the mirror and it did not even budge. He felt a tinge of pain but it was nothing serious. Hayatan, ice needles. Naruto's eyes opened slightly when he sensed the buildup of chakra. He retreated and leapt into the air while jumping backwards, hands held together. While he was airborne, multiple ice needles shot out from the mirror. He watched them weave through the air as they reared towards him menacingly. Katan, great fireball, no jutsu. Naruto inhaled some air and then exhaled a monstrous ball of flames that created a shadow over Haku. The ice needles were hit by the intense flames and melted upon being consumed. Haku had more or less expected Naruto to use a fire jutsu to avoid those needles. He was using ninjutsu at the beginning even when he had said he should not. Well, he had no choice since Naruto dictated the flow of the battle. He needed to gain that control before engaging close up. He held a single hand seal. Triple demonic mirroring crystals. While still airborne, Naruto's senses picked up something a mirror appeared above and another below him. 
he quickly cancelled his fire jutsu and held out both his hands. Wind started to gather around him before forming a shield of tornado around him. Ice splinters shot out of the mirrors, rushing towards him from both sides. In the blink of an eye, the ice was upon him and crashed into the rotating winds. They were soon spat out to other directions. The tornado flashed to the ground, hitting in a small explosion that picked up debris from the ground. When the winds around Naruto dispersed, Haku charged towards him, running through the ground. After a couple of steps, he suddenly disappeared. Naruto looked up when Haku appeared above. The ice user was flashing the back of his foot towards his head. He raised both hands and folded them just in time to block the kick. He winced slightly when the foot connected with his hands it felt like he had just been hit by a stone of ice. He pushed back slightly, forcing Haku to leap backwards into the air. Haku timed everything correctly and opened his mouth the moment he leapt backwards. He released a smoke screen of ice that spread through the atmosphere before Naruto could move from his position. When he landed down, the air was cold. He could see his breath as his body started generating heat to keep his body warm. Naruto held out his right hand. What is the name of this jutsu? He asked curiously. It is similar to the one you used to freeze Kumo Shinobi at the bridge in the wave. The atmosphere has chung at it is a little difficult to breathe and the air is heavy it affects my control over wind but nothing I cannot overcome. It is not fair that you are able to analyze ninjutsu like that. I have been around you for some time in the battleground and I once grew an interest in trying learn Hayatan. Are you ready then? Haku held out his right hand. Naruto took a stance and smiled. I am. But before Haku could make a move, Naori flashed behind him. There is a situation, your majesty. He said in a serious tone. Naruto straightened up, wearing an expressionless mask. Haku, we will pick up some time. It seems that we cannot indulge ourselves in this situation. He said. What? Yoshino is waiting for you in the throne room along with Naoki. Bring Haku. The emperor said before disappearing in the blink of an eye. He appeared on the throne with that expressionless mask on his face. He stared down at the kneeling Yoshino while waiting for Haku and Naori to appear. They appeared after a couple of seconds Haku and knelt beside Yoshino while Naori walked to the throne. Naoki. Naruto called. The Uzumaki materialized on the left side of the throne. Your Majesty. I assume you are the one with the news. Yes. Naoki said. We caught three shinobi from Iwavikure within the wave country. But they committed suicide before we could interrogate them. We don't know what they were doing or if it was just the three of them but what is certain is that they had been here for more than a week. And nobody noticed them. Well, the wave is not protected like Yuzu. It is easy for people to sneak into the country. You said no to barriers because it would just confuse people as there were a lot of people who were always coming into the country. We just kept watch of the leader and important buildings. Naoki explained. Naruto frowned deeply. Yoshino what do you think? That they were plotting something. We can be sure that there is indeed something that they did. The fact that they went as far as to kill themselves to avoid being interrogated meant that they did not want us to find out what they did or if there are more people. Naruto nodded. Haku. It is concerning that they managed to sneak in and be able to move about but I share everyone's concerns. The wave could be in trouble but we cannot be sure. Naruto tapped his finger on the throne while thinking. More than a minute went by while, the only sound coming was from his fingers. What of Yuzushio? I cannot say but the measures we took, nobody should be able to come in unless they are civilian. But since the war started, we have not welcomed people we do not know. The only way to enter is through the bridge or by ship. Yet, seeing this, I cannot be sure that no one has not slipped through. There will always be a flaw in something created by men. Noroi is currently busy with the issue of Kuratsuchi. We cannot allow the Uzumaki forces to leave this village, as you have said, we don't know what may have slipped through. With Noroi busy, he cannot come now. Naoki, go to aim and request some experienced shinobi from Nagato. Teleport them to the wave and snuff out the danger. Take Shiro with you, he is a better sensory type than Karen. 
he should find any other shinobi if they are there. If they are using shinobi. Yoshino added in a serious tone. That is a possibility. We also use civilians for some covert operations that do not require fighting. If that is the case, and there is something those people did, we are screwed. They will likely know we are moving and take measures to avoid us. But I trust you will succeed Naoki. Of course, your majesty. I will depart now. He said before disappearing in a flash. Naruto rested his head on the palm of his right hand before speaking. It seems I have made an oversight in judgment. I did not consider that such a thing would occur even when I knew that stone and cloud would not waste time laying siege in the wave. We were focused on Yuzushio. We have always saw it as the bigger picture. Yoshino said. Indeed, if anything happens, this can be blamed on me. It did seem like Naoki was already blaming me. Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. Must we make a visit somewhere, Naori? Yes we have not a Shiko. We cannot cancel that visit. Naruto said. But we will not be gone for long. I trust that you have put measures in place in case of emergency. If the compound must be used, then so be it. I will unlock the door to the throne room in the pocket dimension just in case. I will activate maximum security barriers but things in the village will not change. That is fine, we don't want anything to scare the people. Will you need Haku? No he should be with you. The message from Stone and Cloud could arrive even as we speak. Let us hope it does not. Naruto said before closing his eyes. Do what you must, Yoshino. Yes, your majesty. The man said before vanishing into thin air. Haku stood up and stared at Naruto with a curious look. If something ends up happening, it would be a disaster but it would still be a nasty move from Iwagakure. The wave was defenseless and had not threatened anyone. It was associated with them but was not involved in the war. If Anoki was indeed targeting it to hurt them, Haku would be disappointed in humans, Kage to be particular. To simply wish harm for innocent civilians was just wrong and evil. People should not think like that. I didn't think they would resort to such a measure. This is the shinobi world. Winner determines everything. We are branded by win or lose. And for a win, shinobi will do everything, anything and they will justify. We must think of such things. Just because we are not willing to lay siege on other villages and destroy everything does not mean that other people are not willing to do it. Still. Haku shook his head. I saw some things while with Sabuza sama but this will be a new scale. What are you going to do about it? I have not thought of making any plans. Naruto said calmly. Even if something happens, I don't know if I will make them pay. I just want us to get to the finishing line. He opened his eyes and spoke once more. You'll go with me to Nadashiko. I'll introduce you to those people. Naori, you'll stay here and summon us if there is something that needs our immediate attention. Amage Kure. The ever reigning village these days, it rained heavily and constantly. The whispers of discontent were growing by the day but Nagato could not stop it. Not when they were at war. Iwa's forces were matching through the lands, returning home. There was no guarantee that they would not move towards this village. Spies could try to come through. Vigilance was a necessary precaution at this point. If he blinked, this village could fall. The peace he had fought to protect would be destroyed he could not have that. He could not watch everything he built be destroyed. Complaints didn't matter. But one day, it would all stop. Conan walked towards the balcony where Nagato stood. She stopped at his right side and looked at the heavy drops slamming down the village. Do you think they may come here? We are not certain. They do seem to be going home. They have also declared us enemies they cannot fight, but we don't know what will happen tomorrow. It would be against the agreement made in the Kage summit if they go that path. Agreements have always been torn apart when it was convenient. That was just how the shinobi world worked. Nagato had always been cautious about these people and he'd continue to be so. At least he did not have to worry about Naruto falling prey to nice words and empty promises. He did have his reservations at first, but everything was clear. 
Things should move in the right direction now and we will finally enjoy our peace. Once the war ends, it will be within our grasp. Nagato added. Conan did not offer a response but narrowed her eyes behind when she heard footsteps. She saw Naoki walking towards them in slow purposeful steps. What brings you here? Nagato asked while Conan remained silent, just watching the Uzumaki. His majesty has sent me with a request. There is a bit of a situation within the wave we want to handle it before anything happens. What situation? It is possible that the wave may go into flames and IWA shinobi or agents are running through the country. There is a possibility that they are planning something. We caught some who then killed themselves. We want to hunt down those who are possibly still there. And find out if those who killed themselves have planted something so we can disarm it. What is the request? Experienced shinobi skilled with tracking. Don't you have them? Busy with other things. Some are with Gurin and the others are with Noroi. We cannot afford to permit the others to depart from Yuzushio because there might also be dangers there. Conan, help him. Nagato instructed. I will stop the rain for a little while to help you work faster. Conan was gone for about fifteen minutes with Naoki. Nagato remained by the balcony, observing everything. When she returned to the tower, he did hand seals to start with the rain. Naruto knows this jutsu, why does he not use it? He could create a clone while in sage mode, and that should help things quicker. It would take away focus there is the issue that it may be civilians in the wave he tracks chakra far better than anyone using senjutsu but there are people better suited for that. We should not think this might not happen here. We must put extra eyes until we are certain there is no danger. Not Ishiko. The village stood atop of hills, surrounded by a large forest. Haku had never been here before. As far as he was concerned, the people here would never give him entry unless he was with Naruto Samuzumaki had come here though. The village still had strict laws about men entering here. They stood on a bridge connecting the hills. There was no one there just the two of them. He stared below for a moment before glancing at Naruto. You never did tell me how you came across this villager the situation in which you had to marry Shizuka. I guess I can thank Jiraiya for making it happen. But it would have still occurred anyway. Shizuka had to fight someone who was a student of Jiraiya and win that battle to force that person into marriage with her. We came across her while we were still thinking about whether we should fight Kirigakure or just leave it. Nadashiko was closer and could have been useful. When we came across her, I took the opportunity and defeated her. It was my luck. Once I marry her, I can effectively take over Nadashiko. Wait. Haku faced Naruto with surprise. You never told me that you had plans to fight Kiri. That was shocking considering everything he has known. And he has been at Yuzushio for some years now and he'd never heard about this. But then again, the battle lines were drawn way before he was revived in the land hidden in whirlpools. There was no plan, just a thought. Naruto said with a wave of his right hand. The laws of this village work a bit differently. Weak men are not wanted here. You must dominate the woman to take her hand. I guess that suits you perfectly. Haku said. How did you come across her? Noroi did some groundwork and found out what had to be done. We did not know about the issue with Jiraiya but she told us when we met her and were glad. Naruto said as he turned his head to the right. He saw Shizuka walking towards them along with someone. We are not going to enter the village now, but you'll eventually see it. We don't even want to spend much time here. Tokiwa was the first to speak after she reached them along with Shizuka. She knelt on one knee and greeted the emperor. Your majesty it is good to see you again. Likewise. Naruto said before turning to face Shizuka with a smile the woman did not share his smile causing him to shake his head. He still cut the distance between them and hugged her a bit tightly. Shizuka. Your Majesty. Her voice was low she was still a woman with a closed heart. Pain did do wonders to people. It was not pleasant to have someone like that. The people that surrounded him were lively. He could be suffocating at times, he did need to have people who could give him some light. Naruto separated from Shizuka and pointed at Haku. That is Haku, he is my right-hand man. It is no longer Yoshino. 
Shizuka asked. Yoshino is dealing with other things. Naruto said. You still look as miserable as before. I'd hope you'd have grown out of that shell. Well, it is not like I am doing anything to change the situation. Shizuka looked stared at the man who defeated her. Her green eyes were glaring with a question but she did not voice it. The words were surprising to hear from him. He had presented himself as a kind person but she could not say he was. She had agreed to marry him because of tradition and nothing more. She looked away from him and moved closer to the edge of the bridge. She placed her arms on the walls, leaning a bit while staring down. You want to do something? Naruto moved closer to her he leaned on the walls with his back while watching her through the corner of his eyes. I am going to be your husband. Perhaps it is not the kind of romantic story you had dreamed of while still young but if you want to make something possible, you can. Happiness is something you create yourself. You cannot allow your past to bind you. Doing that, you just become miserable, unable to see the road ahead. Don't think it is impossible to love again. You are not affording yourself the opportunity. Give yourself that chance and you will live without regrets. It would be hard when you are not even around here. We can make arrangements. I am still fighting a war but once we are done with it, you will see me. My subordinates will say I am cold, but I have a heart. As stated in the letter we sent you, we just want to reassure you that we will make good on the agreement. We have not forgotten. He smiled. I hope no one is trying to challenge you. I'd be disappointed if that was the case. Shizuka managed a small smile. It is hard for anyone to challenge me when I tell them I have already been defeated by the Emperor. At least my name keeps some pests away. Naruto said with a smile. We have a bit of a situation at home we will not stay long. But I don't want you miserable. I will come again, we shall eat, drink and be merry. That sounds good. You don't have energy but that is okay. He spoke to her for a couple of more minutes, telling her about the war. She had some questions which he answered. Once they were done talking, he bid her farewell and watched her leave with Tokiwa. He then turned to the silent Hakuho was giving him a questioning look. Are you really interested in her happiness? I am offended that you of all people would question me, Haku. You're often a logical being. Haku responded with nonchalance. It is going to take some doing. I'm surprised you'd speak of happiness. I only ever see you laughing and smiling when Karen is around. Everyone wants their peace and salvation. Naruto responded. Maybe I can make it work for her and me. You never know. But admittedly, I am not too focused on her happiness. I just realized that strong relationships with mutual trust need happiness in them to cement their status. Unhappiness leads to thoughts of betrayal. If Shizuka is content with her life with me, she has no regrets, the people around her see me as a friend. But if miserable, the people around her become distrustful of my treatment of her and we could be in trouble. Hence my question. Haku said. Naruto ignored this. Nadashiko has many beautiful and powerful kunoichi, if you want, you can look around and challenge someone. I would not complain if you made this your second home. You're not going to let this go, are you? No you need to marry, have kids of your own and enjoy being human. I also need little ice users to restore your clan. Maybe I will give it a try. You say maybe as if you have a choice. You are going to do this, even if I have to compel you. You made that obvious before. Then we will have no complaints when you must deliver. While I think things will be a little different after the war, the peace can only last for a few years before something happens and people forget our power. You cannot wait for there to be a favorable time, you must create one. You paint a bleak picture of the state of things. Haku said in a quiet tone. It is a reality we must accept Haku. But the reason we have come this far is because we want to avoid things becoming dangerous again. It does not mean we will not face dangers again. As we age, more stronger people will come and we must be ready for it. There might even be someone who is training now to surpass my power. Haku frowned deeply. It wasn't that unthinkable. Naruto was skilled but so were other people. Shinobi were driven by different reasons. Haku hoped there would be no one strong as Naruto at this generation. 
the world was not ready for it. Fortunately, each generation had its special people who were considered gods of shinobi. He hoped, Naruto was the only one and there would be no relics from the past coming back to haunt them. Days later. Unknown location. Anoki didn't smile seeing the Reikajethi were ready for a battle to death with the Emperor but the reason he was not smiling was that the man only brought his brother with him. He had said so before but Anoki thought since he has said he would bring two with him, the man would follow his example. He was quick to voice his thoughts when he reached the man. You only brought your brother. I had stated my intentions before. A.I. said with nonchalance. Are you afraid the Emperor will not be taken down with what we have? He asked in a slightly mocking tone. Strong as he was, Naruto could not possibly fight them all and win. He had the speed and B had the firepower. He was confident in their chances of claiming victory. If he didn't think they could win, he would not have even come this far. Why fight when you had no confidence of winning? I'd remind you that it was the fact that we underestimated him that we have been brought to this situation. He has made us look like fools. People will start questioning if we are really strong. We just have to defeat him. It won't be that easy. Last time we faced him, he fooled around with us before walking away. You should take away your confidence in your speed and think this through clearly. We are going there as a team and we must win this, no matter what. I am not going to let your overconfidence ruin us both. AI glared at the small figure of the Tsuchikage for a couple of moments before speaking. My team is stronger than yours. You have no other reason to complain. AI said sternly. How are things are your end? Everything is proceeding as planned. Even if things don't go as planned, we can be sure this will work. The Water Lord hasn't been moving as I would like. It appears that Kiri has been getting involved. If the village had agreed on siding with us, we would have hit Yuzushio already. It can still happen. We may not move now but eventually, they will open their gates and we will strike. Anoki said with confidence. For now, we face with Emperor. And we will win. For the sake of our villages, we must. The others seem to favor the Emperor. If Naruto won against them, he could move towards their villages and that would be disastrous. If he was able to win, the others would not be able to stop him. He certainly knew this. Chapter 26 Kakashi had only returned the day before but he was truly glad that they ended up not fighting in the war. Past experiences with war had not been pleasant. Then again, there was never anything good about where it was just chaos, destruction and pain. Only those without emotional attachment and an obsession for chaos found peace in such situations. Kakashi had experienced enough of it. The everyday life of a shinobi was already filled with many hardships the current generation has grown up in a time of peace. They did not experience what he had experienced. At least they had been spared from pain. Yet in this world, nothing was certain. It was perhaps right to say they only avoided it today. If Stone and Cloud won against the Emperor, they could try to turn on them. Even if they don't do it now, they would eventually do it. The agreement between Sand and Leaf to make things hard for the Stone would certainly not be allowed to enter the memory lanes. They might come to their senses now simply because they want to survive, but they would return to pay back the humiliation. It was all about surviving for another day, wasn't it? Kakashi shook his head as he hopped through rooftops. He came to a halt when he arrived at his destination. He settled peacefully on the roof and took out his book. A minute later, Yugao climbed up to the roof, in white pants and a purple long-sleeved t-shirt. The former Umbu captain looked at her with a raised eyebrow. I don't usually see you without your Umbu gear, it surprises me when you are casual. Yugao shrugged nonchalantly and settled on the Jonin's right side. Still reading those books, I see. She commented. A couple of pages at a time. Jiraiya-sama hasn't been releasing anything recently, Kakashi said with clear disappointment. He then beamed up slightly. He did say he was going to come up with a new series I can't wait for it to be released. Yugao shook her head. At least you did not pass this on to your students. Are all powerful shinobi really perverts? The Sandame was one Jiraiya-sama is a self-proclaimed super-pervert. And while it is not a known factor about him, 
Naruto does love women a little too much. Kakashi I smiled. Maybe. Then, what do you want, senpai? Kakashi eyed Yugao with a hurt look. Can't I just come to check out my former subordinate? Yugao stared. Kakashi sighed deeply. It is about Naruto he shook his head. Perhaps it would be correct to say the emperor. He is no longer the same kid who used to be on my team. He is different now, a world-known shinobi with a flea on sight ranking. I guess to you he was once normal. Ever since the Sandame Hokage called me into his home to talk to about him, I'd always seen him differently. He was certainly not a child. When it comes to power, he'd always been strong. I don't know if he sealed a portion of his mind about the power he had or if he just pretended. But from what the Sandame said, he was stronger. Yugao responded in thought. Why do you want to talk about him? She asked. The stone and cloud have retreated but he is going to battle the Kages of both villages. What happens after that? That assumption is that he wins the battle I am more interested in what happens in his relationship with our village. Yugao debated on whether she should answer the question. She shook her head there was nothing secret about what was going to happen. Besides, Kakashi did hold some interest since Naruto was the son of his former sensei. She has hidden this for long now. Most of all, he was going to succeed Tsunade as Hokage he did have the right to know. The hope is that things are worked out to the point where Yuzushio and Kanoha enjoy a fruitful relationship. At this point, we are most interested in Yuzushio, not the Empire in general. Because that is the only thing that Naruto will kill anyone to protect. His love for his village succeeds anything else in his life. Shikaku-san has concluded that much. When you look at what he has done, it has always been for his clan. Well, Naruto's love for the Uzumaki clan had ever been questioned. He had never even hidden that himself. I see. Kakashi said. It would not be bad visiting Yuzushio and maybe stay there for a little while. But I do wonder if Naruto will permit it. Yugao eyed the jonin. You are not just saying that because you want to escape from your responsibilities, are you? I know Tsunade-sama plans to hand over the mantle to you. Yugao stated in a serious tone. The mood around Kakashi seemed to deflate the moment Yugao stopped talking. I'm really not ready for that. You're always not ready for anything. Yugao said with a shrug. I'll be the one heading to Yuzushio. I will see what happens then but I will probably take up residency there. But it will only be after the war. Spying on the Emperor? Kakashi asked with a raised eyebrow. What makes you think that? Why else would you of all people go to live in Yuzushio? Kakashi asked. If I do end up becoming Hokage, I would not approve that mission. It gives those people in Yuzushio a reason to be distrustful of us when Naruto has been playing nice despite every reason to turn on us. Yugao smiled. You've always been able to see what is between the lines, sensei. Either way, I'll follow orders given to me. But I will admit that I have the same thought as you do. The emperor has been forthcoming and truthful to the agreement he made with the Sandame Hokage. I also fear that if he discovers such a thing to kill me without thinking twice but I still cannot disobey I direct order. We will see what happens at least they will put me in charge. I still haven't had that full discussion with Tsunade-sama. Kakashi said. Land of hot water. It was truly a shame that this country was being used as a battlefield for a war that they had nothing to with. But this was how things worked in the shinobi world the small countries were always the victims who hosted and suffered from battles they did not fight. Amage cure had been used constantly. It was no wonder Hanzo had taken a firm stand against any shinobi moving through his country. Of course, there was that friendship with Danza but the war hawk was poisonous. Perhaps things could have been different for Nagato and his friends without Danzo sticking his nose in their business. But then again, there was a Beto to consider. That man would have done everything in his power to make sure Nagato followed him. The terrain was lifeless. The air was hot even though they were within the land of hot water. Every country had its parts where the environment seemed to disagree with the name of the country. Either way, this was a good place for battle. Naruto looked up into the tall boulders that surrounded the clearing. There was truly no tree as far as the eye could see. Gathering natural energy at such a place would be difficult. 
but at least he had enough chakra stored in the seals to keep him going in case the battle took longer than expected. He was also hoping to enjoy himself. The IWA group stood atop of a hill on his left while the cloud were on his right side. These people were ready could feel their intent. It was good. It made him feel slightly excited for battle. The past battles were completely boring. He was only doing a slaughter but here, he was going to do battle. And he was going to have a thrill as long as they didn't end up disappointing him. Anoki looked down at the emperor he was wearing an armor, two swords sticking out on both his shoulders. He was stated to use a lightning and wind sword. And was rather good at using both. What could he not do? He was a shinobi who seemed to know all shinobi arts. Jinchuriki often depend on the power of their bijou but he was a different case. What made him strong was not that he was carrying a bijuit was his skills and the abnormal chakra levels. He motioned for Rashi and Akatsuchi to follow before jumping down to the ground. The second he landed, the cloud duo also landed besides them. Let us talk for a bit, shall we? I will not have any other conversations with you because once we start fighting, you will surely die the kages at least. And I will not accept your surrender. A.I. snorted. We would never surrender to you. Don't be so full of yourself to think you can actually defeat us all in this battle. Naruto smiled as he responded. Well, it would be embarrassing if I cannot defeat you. But unless it cannot be helped, I will not summon the Kyubi. Can you even control all its power? Naruto smiled. Let us not get into that. We are at war and you have lost many men. Right now, their families cry out in pain. Surely, as the one who killed them, I am the one who gets blamed and hated. I think that it is unfair that I get to be blamed for your decisions. Enough of this. Anoki exclaimed with impatience. We did not come here to discuss anything with you we came to battle. You need not be so impatient to meet your death, Anoki. This is your last hour in the shinobi world, you should really try to enjoy this moment and maybe reflect on your mistakes, good points. Anoki glared, he had made mistakes. Everyone made mistakes. Perhaps starting this war had been a mistake to begin with. He had lost far much more than he had thought. He was even now facing death and it was a decision he took that led to this. The last time things had gone so well. They had destroyed Yuzushio and Kanoha had looked the other way to avoid getting caught in the middle. We all make mistakes. You can't say you haven't made any mistakes either. I never said I don't make mistakes. We are flawed beings repeating the same things we do. I have made my mistakes but the problem with you is that you never admit your mistakes. You will never say you are wrong. You still maintain that destroying Yuzushio was the right decision. Anoki shook his head. Perhaps if things hadn't come to this point, there would be more to talk about. It is actually when you face death that you get to think deep. But talking here will not change anything. Indeed. Then let us do this. Naruto didn't waste time activating Sage Mode he would not be taking any unnecessary risks. Besides, there were two Kages, two Jinchurikis and an experienced Shinobi who could very well be a Kage if things favored him. These five opponents didn't need him to take it easy on them. He needed to be serious. He could not enjoy it either if he was not being serious. Once Sage Mode was activated, he released potent chakra that burst out like a wave of wind. It picked up some dust around him. It only took a couple of seconds for everything to settle down. B only shook his head. That was no weakling. The chakra was as potent as that of a bijou. Hardly surprising though Naruto housed the Kyubi the most powerful bijou in existence. He still grinned though. This was certainly going to be a blast. Killer B, the Hachibi N brother, the Rai, entering the stage in a combo this is gonna be blast, yeah. Did that come out right? No, there was something wrong about that. B adopted a thoughtful look on his face as he tried to fix his lyrics. AI smacked him on his right shoulder while glaring. This is no time for your nonsense, B. You just felt it now that is no normal person we are facing. I need you to be serious. All the more reasons we shouldn't hurry. AI activated his lightning cloak and disappeared in a blur without responding. He did not want to waste time just lingering around without doing anything. 
he certainly didn't want to give the emperor the advantage of making the first move and be able to control the flow of battle. The emperor had shown it in their previous engagement that although he was no yellow flash, he was still ridiculously quick. With his senses heightened, Naruto could feel the flow chakra within the area. He could feel the movements. It wasn't like with the Byakugan where you had the entire field of vision or the ability of the Sharingan to predict movements. With Sage Mode, his instincts became one with his senses. He was ultimately in a true fighting mode. At times, he did think it was not fair fighting using Senjutsu. When AI flashed on his right side, slightly above the ground, Body leaned forward with his right shoulder bulging slightly as he moved his right hand toward the emperor's in the blink of an eye. His fist blasted the air to the sides as it moved towards the target. Naruto swiftly dodged the punch by ducking under. He felt some wind slap onto his head, but did not think deeply about. He waved his right hand towards the rakage chest. Before he could connect, the man disappeared in a blur. AI appeared above Naruto hands held together. As gravity started to pull him down, he raised both hands above his hand and then started slamming them down. He watched as Naruto swiftly straightened himself. The emperor raised both his hands just above his head and then folded them all while without looking at him. There was a loud boom as the ground exploded when his attack collided with the emperor's defense. The attack failed to break through as the emperor held firmly. AI stretched his right foot with greater flexibility and tried to kick the emperor on the left side of his chest. Naruto saw the kick being swung and stopped trying to defend. He pulled away, and leapt backward slightly. When he landed on the ground, his eyes shifted around to see if anyone else had moved. Once satisfied, he took off like a bullet, rushing towards the rakage. AI was a little surprised at Naruto's speed when he lunged at him. He should not have been surprised but the emperor's speed was still something he could not quite grasp. How did he even get so powerful? He didn't allow his surprise to leave him rooted to the ground he too took off, rushing to meet the emperor head on. His left leg crashed to the ground while his right weaved the air, moving swiftly towards the emperor's waist. The foot collided with the emperor's, who'd done the same movement as him. The ground burst under the weight of the kick, with lightning sparkling from the collision as he had his cloak activated. AI growled slightly when he realized that Naruto's strength wasn't something to scoff at. It had even felt as if he had hit a solid rock rather than a person. Naruto sensed a spike of chakra and looked up. He saw Killer B flipping several times while crashing downwards. He closed his eyes and then disappeared in a burst of wind. Even though the emperor had disappeared in the blink of an eye, AI still saw him and was able to follow him. The second he disappeared, Killer B crashed on the ground, lifting up debris. He had two swords stabbing into the ground before pulling them up as he straightened. Naruto folded both hands in front of him when AI suddenly appeared in front of him while he was airborne, flying backwards. The man hit him with a powerful punch that collided with his defense with brutal force that sent him rocketing backwards. It didn't hurt as much as it would have because of Senjutsu. While flying backwards, Naruto narrowed his eyes behind sensing movement. A wall of stone suddenly burst from the ground. Both Anoki and Akatsuchi landed atop of it with Rashi nowhere to be seen but Naruto could still sense him. There was nothing he could do to stop himself from crashing into the wall. He was glad he had his armor when his body crashed through the wall. The second he went through it, he saw AI's fist sneaking through the hole he'd created when bursting through. He reacted quickly to make a haste defense. The rakage punch went through his hands and hit him on the chest plate, propelling him backwards. Rashi watched as Naruto burst through the wall erected by Akatsuchi. He readied himself by holding both his hands. When the rakage also appeared, attacking the emperor, he did not stop but just went through hand seals believing that the man was fast enough to dodge. Lava release, scorching rocks jutsu. He spat out multiple rocks of lava from his mouth. With Naruto being blasted towards him, he just stood and watched but before any of the rocks could hit the emperor, a violent force of wind suddenly pulled up around him, tearing through the ground while moving toward him. The wind turned into a violent tornado that pulled up the rocks before hurling them into different directions. Rashi was forced to jump to his right side when the tornado moved toward him. The tornado came to a halt after a couple of moments and then dispersed. 
Naruto was standing calmly, a small smile on his lips. It works best when you all attack in coordination. This might be a little fun, it seems. Naruto stated, eerily calm. There was only the sound of lightning when AI flashed in front of him, stabbing his right hand towards his chest. There will be no fun. Naruto's reaction was once more a shock to the rakage, he jumped up in the blink of an eye, his body positioning horizontally before twisting around with his right hand held out. A katan raisingan formed and he tried to slam it onto the rakage who was below him, but the man disappeared in a blur. His jutsu ended up crashing onto the ground. He blurred away, not wanting to be caught in the explosion. The moment he landed on the ground, he was attacked from behind. There was a sound of swords clashing, lightning currents sparkling when be flashed behind the emperor. Naruto had both his hands around him, holding his swords. The lightning sword was held horizontally around his shoulders, with the tips of two of B's swords pressed against its blade. The wind was held in the same angle as the lightning but around his waist it too was blocking swords from B. That was fast, yeah, but B grinned. Rashi flashed in front of him in his lava cloak and then drove a lava punch towards his chest. TSK he certainly could not move recklessly with B behind him. And if he allowed the punch to connect with him, he would certainly suffer and the man behind him would stab him with his remaining sword sit would be most unpleasant. Wind Bullets The Emperor inhaled large amounts of air and then spat out three invisible wind bullets from his mouth. Rashi only found himself being hit by the three bullets before he could reach the Emperor. One bullet slammed onto his forehead while the others hit him on his chest. The sheer amount of force on the bullets left him seeing blurry images, feeling a bit disoriented, and he staggered to the ground, falling on one knee. Naruto eyed to his right side, Akatsuchi was standing a distance away, holding his hands together while gathering chakra. His focus was once more turned to the man behind him after he retreated slightly. But AI flashed on his left side, flying in the air. The man spun around and kicked him on his right shoulder. The kick picked him from the ground, sending him flying to the sides. While still airborne, B flashed behind him, cloaked in the Hachibi's chakra. He drove a punch that blasted the winds to the sides as it targeted the emperor's back. A single chakra chain burst from behind. B's fist collided with chain but did not break through it. But the force of his punch made the emperor rocket towards Akatsuchi like lightning. Golem no Jutsu The moment the rakage kicked the emperor, Akatsuchi activated his jutsu and then lightened it to give it more speed. When the emperor neared, the stone golem lifted its right leg and swung it towards him. There was a loud boom when the kick connected with the emperor. Akatsuchi watched eagerly as his golem crumbled down from the collision with the emperor. His hair stood up when he could not see nor sense the emperor. His instincts kicked in and he tried to look behind, a bit fearfully. Naruto flashed behind Akatsuchi in a blur. He was holding his wind sword with his left hand, a bit around his waist, its tip facing up a bit around the man's left shoulder. He was also swinging his lightning sword in a downward slash. The moment he touched the ground, his sword inches away from the kill, B flashed between them, holding two swords above his head, crossed for defense. The lightning sword clashed with B's swords and failed to break through because the man encased the blades with lightning. Predictable. Naruto said. G-U-H. Akatsuchi shouted in pain when something pierced through his left shoulder, around the joint. He felt that it had just cut through the bones, leaving only flesh attaching his arm to his body. B narrowed his eyes behind and saw Naruto's pointed sword. Wind, he realized. The emperor had been calculating, and concluded someone would try to block him, either way, he would still get what he wanted. When he noticed a lightly upward movement in the sword, he reacted swiftly by hitting Akatsuchi with his right shoulder, in an attempt to push him away. But it did not help, Naruto just expanded his sword, and it lengthened. It separated the arm from the shoulder, causing Akatsuchi to fall forward while clutching his left shoulder to try to stop the gushing blood. Naruto leapt backwards, creating some distance between him and the two. The rakage flashed behind him the moment he landed on the ground, but Naruto was just about expecting it. Even though he was still not facing the rakage, he swung his wind sword in a backward motion, causing AI to duck under the strike. 
The rakish size widened slightly when he saw Naruto's lightning sword moving towards his face. He jumped from the ground, while twisting clockwise. The swords just zipped below his head, touching his lightning cloak slightly while his body was positioned horizontally. Naruto twisted around, channeling more chakra into his right leg. He swung it towards the man's head. There was a brutal sound that echoed when Naruto's kick collided with the rakish's head. AI felt like his neck had snapped and a steel hammer had hit him on the head. He felt pain shoot through his spine and nearly bit his tongue. He was sent flying towards a large boulder and could not stop his body from crashing into it. Naruto landed on the ground gracefully before suddenly blurring away. Anokis was standing on a tall pillar of stone, observing the battle. He had neither the speed nor the physical prowess to engage someone like the Emperor would most definitely die soon if he tried fighting as the others. Still, it didn't look like the blonde was struggling despite the best efforts of everyone. AI was certainly trying but Naruto was moving quickly and his reactions were swift. He frowned at the thought that Akatsuchi was already handicapped and the rakage had just taken a huge hit. But knowing him, he was going to stand up to fight as if nothing was wrong. The sandamed Tsuchikage's hair stood up when he heard footsteps behind him. He didn't need to look to tell it was the emperor. Relax, I am not going to attack you. Naruto said in a measured tone. He still held both swords. He stopped by Anoki's right side and glanced down. This is a rather good view. For him to speak so casually at this stage, it infuriated Anoki. He wanted to release his jutsu at that moment and turn the blonde into dust but he knew, he would not hit. He needed an opening and he was going to get one. You're awfully easy going for someone who is in a battle of death. Should I be all serious? If I am like that, I just kill everyone without blinking. I don't want that it would be boring, Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. Have you found Kuratsuchi? If it was not the seriousness of the emperor's tone, Anoki would have lashed out or just cursed the blonde. The tone told him the man really wanted to know. But why? He would have most likely killed her anyway. Why are you curious? You have not found her. This is really troublesome. Naruto said in thought. You obliviously think I am the danger in this world but I am not. There are those with intentions to making our world come to end. I do believe that they may be those who took your granddaughter. Well, she will return, most definitely a new person. Why do I have to believe any word you say? Anoki said with narrowed eyes. You don't have to believe me and I don't intend for you to believe me. I just wanted to know if your granddaughter had returned already. My people are looking for her but we cannot find anything useful. No, doubt to finish what you started. If we find her in a place she should not be, we will kill her, but if she returns to the stone, we will not do anything lest we invite the anger of the other nations. Naruto said. If you really didn't take her, then who did? I have one person but you know there are shadows hidden in this world. A little far more than you can imagine. You people refuse to look at real dangers and turn to weak villages to flex your muscles. If not for me, all Jinchuriki would have become targets of a sinister plot to end this world. But of course you don't know this. You probably won't even believe it. We try to understand the shape of the world and find the forces that lurk in the shadows because we know that it is such forces that are the true enemy. The battle wasn't going smoothly. No, they were a little behind. The emperor was still a step ahead of them. Anoki wondered how things could have been if he had tried to initiate a talk with Yuzushio. Maybe things would not have come to this point. We may have been hasty in our decisions. But that is the natural instinct of a shinobi. Regardless, we have paid the price. I lost many men. Anoki closed his eyes. If I lose this battle. If we lose, what will really happen to my village? Nothing. You can tell me. You are already confident that you can win this battle. There is no harm in telling me the truth. Is it really that hard for you to believe that I have no intentions toward the stone? What do you make of me? Anoki glanced at the emperor before looking down. When you keep telling yourself that someone is the enemy, it is difficult to change that mindset. Naruto shook his head. A pity you only come to say that when you are facing death. Is the threat of death really what makes a shinobi listen to reason? 
Maybe. It is unfortunately that maybe that will make you die with many regrets. If I was not intent on killing you, I would let you live just so you could try to correct your wrongs and see how foolish you were. But I'm not that merciful to afford you that chance. My people were not given the peace they deserved when you destroyed them. Anoki laughed a bitter smile. I should have known that this was about what happened years ago. You say you don't hold grudges but you certainly have not forgotten. Not at all. You are not being killed because of what happened then only. I just need you to die to usher a new world. And of course, you need to be a stepping stone for my fame. He paused, looking down. This is getting a little interesting and I wish we could continue it but it seems they have collected themselves he said before jumping down. B turned toward his brother, who was walking toward him. He hadn't expected him to stay down, but that surely hurt. On the other side, the other IWA mean had been crippled. Evidently, if even the smallest opportunity showed itself, the emperor was not going to waste it on needless movement she was going to do real damage. You okay, brother? Of course I am. A.I. said as he stopped by B. But Iwa's efforts are disappointing. Akatsuchi heard it and turned to face the rakage. We are not facing a normal person. He has been able to handle himself so far. He isn't even using his great ninjutsu arsenal in this battle. It's pointless, fool. B said. A.I. nodded. He isn't stupid. He isn't going to waste chakra throwing ninjutsu around when he knows that we are going to dodge it. Ninjutsu is only good when it hits its targets but when you miss, it is just a waste of stamina and chakra. This battle has just started. Neither Jinshuriki has transformed, you think he'd waste chakra before then? We should not waste time, then. Rashi added while looking toward the emperor. He was still able to fight me in my transformed state without even using the Kyubi's chakra. I thought he fled from the battle. It was because he had achieved his agenda. You may want to give it your all, Rakage. I have fought that man before, and by how things have gone already, you should know already. He has already landed a blow on one of us and your blow to the head you received must have damaged you. You received a blow yourself. Rashi waved it off. I heal quickly because I am a Jinchuriki well, as long as it is not fatal he responded in a measured tone. Here he comes again. Akatsuchi, you can't weave hand signs anymore, you should step back. Akatsuchi smiled bitterly. I think I know why he made sure to disable me like this. He said before creating some distance. B. B grinned. And withdrew all his swords. Naruto landed gracefully and faced his opponents. He was not worried about Anoki, for now at least. The old man would try to attack him once he receives an opening. Admittedly, he did have fearsome jutsu that he could not block. Anoki's particle style was dangerous. If only he had the ability to use it. Maybe if he possessed the Rinnegan, then it would have been better. The Dujitsu was able to master the elements that he could not quite grasp. He channeled Chakra through both swords when he sensed movements from B. He was carrying his swords in a truly strange manner. Within a couple of seconds, a flipping bee was upon him, slightly above the ground. The sword he held by his mouth was swung towards his head. Naruto aligned his wind sword horizontally across his chest and held his lightning sword above his head to block the swing from B. There was a sound of swords clashing. B swung his left leg toward the emperor, forcing him to pull back. B was upon him once more, but this time, when he arrived, he threw all his swords to the air. Naruto didn't wait for the man to pick them up. He released powerful gusts of wind from his mouth with enough force to slam the swords away from B and then force the man to slide backward slightly. The Emperor smiled. I clashed swords with you once, I'm not doing it again unless there is no other choice. You are fast. You'd no doubt do me harm, and not to mention your brother could attack me while I am preoccupied with you. That's surprising. Maybe if it were just the two of us, Naruto said calmly. I wow. He trailed off when he saw a hand cloaked in lightning flashing through the air from behind. The palm was open, and looked to be cutting towards the side of his chest. Lightning currents burst when the hand collided with his lightning sword. B drove forward while Naruto was still in the struggle with his brother. 
He grabbed two swords and lunged towards the emperor but before he could reach him, the man slammed his right foot on the ground and a wall burst in front of him, blocking his path. Be punched through the mud wall with just one punch. When he came into the view of the emperor and his brother, the latter was above the ground, flipped backwards with his brother twisting around with a fist created. Naruto's body was positioned upside down when he was forced to block AI's punch by folding both swords just in front of him. The man's brutal punch sent him rocketing backwards. He slammed onto the large pillar of rock Anoki had been standing on with his back, while still upside down. He winced slightly while covered in dust created. The dust cleared as B flashed in front of him, surrounded by crimson chakra. Still plastered on the rock, Naruto watched B get closer. He held both his swords just above his chest once more. B's Bijou chakra enhanced punch collided with the blades of the swords. The rock shattered from the shock when the punch collided with the defense. But Naruto's swords did not break or crack. Hmm. B wondered why Naruto was not being sent flying. He received his answer when something grabbed his outstretched hand. A chakra chain snaked through his arm. He tried to pull away, but the force of his punch forced him to be pulled away with the emperor. By the time they crashed on the ground, the chain had already spread across his body. Naruto stood up and forced B to sew the same. Hyunjutsu. B asked, not even panicking despite the fact that the Hachibi's chakra was being suppressed. And he could not call out more. He could not even force his limbs to move. The chains of the Uzumaki were as strong as rumored. Yes, Naruto said, and put away both his swords. He formed a small orb of flames in the palm of his right hand. I'll tell you a secret. Those chains are weak. I am only able to do this because you are human. The moment you transform, I won't be able to stop you. You planning to hit me with that? B looked curiously. But he received his answer when his brother suddenly flashed behind the emperor. And Naruto jumped up into the air, flipping several times before landing behind him. But he had left the ball of flames behind, in the face of the rakage. The ball burst into a huge column of flames that had be sweating because he was close to it. AI suddenly flashed behind Naruto silently. He drove an extremely fast punch towards the back of the emperor. Naruto could do nothing to avoid the punch. It slammed into his back with brutal force that sent him crashing into B and they flew together. Naruto grabbed B and used him as a human shield when AI flashed above him, with a backhand chop. But the man did not hit, he disappeared in a blur, and appeared below him before hitting him on his back once more. This time, Naruto felt it. He grit his teeth as he was sent up into the air. But AI did not follow up to do more damage. When gravity started pulling them down, Naruto positioned B below him. They crashed onto the ground with B heading first with his head. There was a small crater that was formed. Naruto stayed above B for a second before standing up while forcing B to stand as well. I see your brother is showing his true speed the emperor said. It is worrying. I'm afraid I cannot fight while holding on to you like this. While it limits your brother and everyone else, I am also at a disadvantage. WH. B never got to finish as the chain started stretching around both his hands and chest. His right hand was being forced to bend backwards. B felt a chill down his spine while holding in a scream as pain began to shoot through his body. His right hand snapped around the elbow. There was a cringe-worthy snap that was heard through the battlefield. Both Rashi and AI flashed around him, flanking both his sides. The latter was quicker waved a right backhand chop straight to the side of the emperor's head. The former jumped up slightly, covered in lava, and waved his right leg towards Naruto. The emperor could only raise his right arm, coated with wind chakra to block the incoming kick from Rashi. The rakage attack slammed on his head, just above his ear. The ground below shattered the attacks hit him. Naruto cursed slightly when he felt his right arm being burnt by the lava. AI twisted around while jumping slightly. His stretched right leg, connected with Naruto's left shoulder. The moment it did so, the chakra chains dispersed and Naruto was sent flying to the side. Rashi dropped to all fours and started transforming into a miniature four-tailed beast. AI turned his attention to his brother, who was on both knees, 
blood slowly dripping from his mouth and clutching his broken hand. Can you continue? When was the last time something like this has happened to him? B had always been stronger. He'd always been a step above his opponents. No one had ever made him experience such pain. He stood up. It's time to reveal my miniform, yeah. And let that fool feel the sting of the hachibi, yeah. Just get to it A.I. said sternly. We need to end it. Those chains are not going to be a problem. Are they? He said no. Can't take his word. I will watch out. Meanwhile. Naruto touched the ground while still being carried by the momentum. As he slid through the ground, dust picked up. In front of him, there was another cloud of dust rushing towards him, led by a four-tailed crimson beast. Kyubi. What? When I call you, be ready to infuse your chakra with mine to enter that mode. Things are going to get a little serious and I need more speed. If I just take your chakra, it's not going to be enough. I thought you didn't need my power. Naruto finally came to a halt. But Rashi was upon him. The miniature beast released a low growl before throwing a right hook towards his face. The emperor blocked the attack with his left hand then threw his punch. The punch resounded in a powerful shockwave and it hit the creature's face. It stumbled back slightly but did not fall over. I pulled and hurled you into the air, do you think I would be able to block your punches? Rashi lunged at him without responding. Naruto sensed B's movements. The Jinchuriki had transformed as well. It was going to seriously get dangerous. As long as the Kyubi was on standby, there was nothing to worry about. He didn't think he could be defeated by these opponents but anything could still happen that was why Naori was watching from a good distance, ready to pounce if there was a need. Rashi twisted clockwise when he was just above him. He swung his massive tails towards his face. Naruto saw it coming and ducked while stretching out both his hands. He caught one of the tails. While his grip was firm, he did feel like he was holding on to an unbreakable material. The emperor took a step forward, pulling the Jinchuriki with him before straightening up. He spun around, pulling Rashi with him as they did a quick spin. When satisfied, he hurled the Jinchuriki into the air. Rashi slammed head onto the onrushing bee. They collided and fell on the ground in a heap. Lariat. Naruto didn't even have time to stop moving after hurling Rashi towards B because AI had suddenly appeared in front of him, hooked him around his throat with his killer move and sent him flying towards a large boulder. AI landed down and stared as Naruto crashed into the boulder with his back, completely crushing it. Did you get him? AI frowned. It had been something that occurred in a split second but the Emperor's reactions were frighteningly ridiculous. He is not dead if that is what you are asking. You should be ready to attack or just fully transform, he will get up soon. Even after Lariat. It did not fully connect. AI said and waited for the coming Anoki to join them. Finally decided to join in. I have a plan. Anoki said. We are only going to use more chakra and stamina if we continue with this. Naruto coughed up a mouthful of blood, lying on his back surrounded by small rocks and dust. The pain was coursing through his body. He could not ignore it. He had his left hand grabbing his throat. There was a deep gash on his arm as if a sword had just sliced through it. Blood was dripping out. Had he not put his hand over his chest to absorb the first contact, his chest would have been ripped open. He closed his eyes for a moment and allowed the Kyubi's chakra to run through his body to heal the damages. After a moment, he slowly got up and started to dust himself. He created a Kage Bunshin and it just disappeared without orders. This is interesting. Kyubi said. I will not disagree with that. The battles I have fought so far have been a little boring. But when fighting two Jinchuriki in a man who claims to be the fastest shinobi, it is bound to be interesting. You say it like you are not a Jinchuriki. Well, I hardly fight as a Jinchuriki. But once they fully transform, I won't have a choice. I am not blessed with the visual prowess of the Sharingan or the Rinnegan to be able to stand against such a battle. Kurama snorted but he did not say anything. It was not true. Of everyone, he knew what the blonde could do best. 
Naruto removed his armor seeing it useless at the moment as he was going to soon enter a state of power that would grant him his necessary defense to be able to handle these shinobi. He would have to take out his wind sword once in that mode. Don't get too comfortable. AI shouted, flashing down the emperor with a drop kick. Naruto looked up for a second before leaping into the air a bit. AI crashed into the ground, creating a crater after his kick slammed onto the ground. Naruto touched down the ground before blasting off towards the rakage. He landed just a foot away from the man and lifted his right foot, waving it towards the man's left shoulder. AI blocked the kick by raising up his left hand. He slid to the side slightly before swinging his right foot towards Naruto's waist. The emperor channeled chakra through the palm of his left hand and then caught the leg just above the ankle. The moment he did so, lightning burst, shocking the emperor before he could manipulate it. The rakage disappeared in a blur. Rashi replaced him, already in motion in his beast form. A left hook hit the emperor just below his chin. The punch sent him flying upwards. While still airborne, a six-tailed beak jumped from behind Rashi, with his mouth closed, holding onto something. He then released a powerful blast of pale white energy that traveled nearly instantaneously. The jutsu seemingly connected with the emperor head-on and then exploded in the sky. There was a sizable cloud within the air. A couple of seconds later, the immense power of the QB tore through the battleground before a four-tailed beast started falling slowly from the cloud. The chakra started to disperse slowly, revealing Naruto's form. By the time he hit the ground on one knee, he was no longer surrounded by the Kyuubi's chakra. The ground below burst and a crimson chakra tail appeared. Naruto was forced to jump into the air to avoid being pierced by the tail. The second he landed, his senses picked in but he could do nothing as both B and AI appeared in front of him. Both slammed punches onto his chest with so much force that there was the sound of something snapping along with a powerful shockwave that caused the ground to shatter. The emperor took off like a bullet. Anoki was already waiting for the blonde. Jin Tun, Genkai Hakuri no Jutsu. He formed a cube, with a sphere of energy at the center. The Jutsu extended towards the emperor. Naruto was trapped within the cube before the sphere exploded in tremendous amount of force, obliterating the emperor. Before Anoki could even rejoice, a lightning sword pierced through his chest from behind. The sword had had gone through his heart. The old man had wide eyes, as he looked down. Blood started to drip slowly. This could not be his end. No, he could not die like this. There was still much more he wanted to do. But he could not even move a muscle. His energy was deserting him. Pain was shooting through him, he ignored it all, and tried to move. A tremendous force of electricity escaped from the sword, and shocked the sand named Suchikich. Naruto was behind him, the sword being held by his left hand. His entire upper body was fully exposed. His right shoulder and the side of his chest were bleeding heavily, the flesh exposed with his shoulder joints clearly visible. When he sensed movement, he pulled his sword and disappeared. Akatsuchi caught the falling Tsuchikage in just his remaining hand. There was no sign of life. Anoki was dead. He had failed. He had failed to protect the Tsuchikage. It had been his duty to protect the old man and he had failed. His eyes sharpened dangerously. He could not wallow in pity now. He needed to stay strong. The emperor was badly wounded. Rashi, AI, and B surrounded him. How did he escape that jutsu? Akatsuchi smiled bitterly. He had been waiting for him to release his jutsu. You know the emperor can completely hide his presence. The moment that Suchikij entered the battle and released that jutsu, the emperor's clone was behind him. He must have performed a replacement jutsu to replace himself with the clone. AI only felt disappointment that the job had not been done. The emperor had still taken a massive damage nevertheless. B, let us move before he regenerates. Naruto was one knee, breathing slightly heavily. Blood was dripping on the ground, his sword stabbed inches deep in the ground. Once he calmed his breathing, he picked up his sword and sheathed it. I underestimated the jutsu a little. He said looking at his chest. There were some marks that were gone. He frowned slightly, hoping nothing set off the measures he put in place kick in. 
When he stood up, his body started to rapidly regenerate. Within seconds, he was whole once more. His eyes were on his chest. The seals also started regenerating and filled up his chest once more. He let loose of a sigh of relief. He clapped his hands together while breathless. His wild hair stood up. Winds began to gather around him. The wind was clearly visible around his body, his eyes gained a sharper look. He stretched his muscles for a moment before smiling. Perfect. You could have done that earlier. Not when confined in that structure. Naruto responded in a stern tone. We should do some damage now. I have been damaged. After a moment, he darted towards his opponents. The Kumo duo were the ones attacking while what remained of the stone stayed behind him. The rakage was in front with betrailing just behind. When a bit closer, AI lunged towards him, diving in with his right hand stretched out. Naruto waved his right hand to the left. Gusts picked up quickly and a powerful force of wind slammed into the rakage, sending him flying to the sides. Great wind breakthrough. Without even doing any seals, Naruto released even powerful gusts of wind. The wind picked up debris, as they it tore through the ground, heading towards B. The Jinchuriki brought three tails in front and they pierced through the ground while three more covered his face. While everything around him was peeled off, the Jinchuriki remained rooted to the ground. When he removed the tails on his face, Naruto's right foot crashed onto it with blinding force that had him lose control of the Gyuki's chakra. There was much more force than previous attacks. The tremendous force behind the kick left him breathless, the ground shattering, and sent him flying backwards. Before Naruto could even straighten up, AI was already on the move. Naruto bent his left knee slightly and jumped up. He flipped upside down. The moment he did so, AI zipped below him. The man twisted around while Naruto tried to land. Before the blonde could land, the rakage had already twisted around, and thrown a right punch towards his gut. Naruto blocked the punch by meeting it with his shin. Wind bullet. AI narrowed his eyes when he saw Naruto's hand. The blonde flicked his index finger and a bullet of wind pummeled him on the chest. AI cursed silently when he felt his oxygen leave him for a second as he was sent flying backwards. Naruto touched down the ground gracefully but was forced to fold both hands together when Rashi flashed just above him, driving a right punch towards his face. He slid backwards slightly after the kick connected with his hands. He then pushed Rashi back a bit before twisting around, three fingers glowing with chakra. He took a single step forward and slammed the fingers on Rashi's forehead and twisted his fingers, drawing something on him. The man released a loud pained growl before dropping to the ground. When he did, the chakra started dispersing around him, and he then fell flat on his face. Naruto jumped up slightly and brought his knees around his chest when AI flashed above Rashi with his right hand stretched out. The rakage punch went through his legs before he locked. AI could only widen his eyes, unable to remove himself from Naruto's lock and with Naruto's right hand swinging. When he was able to free himself, his right arm remained with Naruto. He landed gracefully, missing his arm. He cursed silently, seething. But did not care for the pain. He was indifferent to it as he straightened up and stopped the bleeding. Naruto threw away the rakage's arm and turned to the transforming bee. The Jinchuriki didn't waste time charging a massive Baijuduama. The rakage seemed to move to the side. But close enough to step into the field in case he decided to run away. It isn't as big as the Kyubis, even with just half of its power but still big enough, Naruto commented while holding his hands together. Kyubi. The Bijou obliged and he became cloaked in dark orange chakra. We are going to deflect that but to just let it explode without a target would be a waste of power, Naruto said calmly. He then created a clone. AI breathed a little when he saw B releasing the Bijudama. The Jutsu flashed through the air, blasting wind and land to the sides, heading towards the Emperor. He afforded himself a smile when the Jutsu collided with him. That relief turned into dread a second later. His eyes widened when the Jutsu suddenly changed directions, heading towards him. When he tried to flee, another orange blur flashed behind him, holding him in place. He panicked and tried to move but the clone would not let him. There was not even enough time to struggle as the Jutsu arrived. 
The wreckage became engulfed in a large explosion that picked up into the air, creating a mushroom of debris. Naruto snapped his fingers and the chakra surrounding him dispersed, along with sage mode. Naori flashed beside him. Yes. Naruto answered the unasked question. Both Kage are dead. We no longer have to fight. Restrain the Gyuki. And then we will depart. Sasuke is within the country, I would rather not have him come here while we are still around. Yes, your majesty. Victory at last. The war was over. He had won. Anoki had nearly turned him into dust. The rakage had nearly ripped his chest open. But thanks to the QB, he had survived. There were surely many battles to come in the near future, but this was the first. He had proved his power and there would be no one to simply challenge him without thinking twice. The emperor looked up into the sky and adopted a content mask for a couple of seconds, before ducking under a punch from Akatsuchi. He twisted around swiftly before leaping backwards. Akatsuchi had a hateful look. He was still missing one arm. He simply could not forgive the emperor for what has transpired since the war began. Many of Stone had lost their families because this man butchered them. And now, their Tsuchikich was dead because of him and this stupid war. You think you are going to get away with this? Iwagakure will never forget about this. You have killed far too many of us for it to be forgiven. The emperor tilted his head to the side, with a curious look on his face. What was wrong with Shinobi? He had been willing to let this man live but it would be a stupid decision. With how hateful he looked, he was obviously going to plot something in the future. He wasn't going to do a Nagato in Amage Cure but he could at least end this miserable man before him. Pathetic you are an experienced shinobi yet speak like a child. Hatred does make men think foolishly. This is a war you started. Had you killed me and my men, you would have been celebrating. But because you lost a battle you started, I have done you wrong and you want revenge. Ridiculous. Shinobi never ceased to amaze me. Perhaps Madara was going somewhere with his plans. I did not kill you because I had no business with you. I killed the people I wanted to kill, but you want me to kill you and I will oblige. You have become useless as a shinobi anyway. The only thing you can now spread is hatred. Minutes later. Sasuke arrived at the battle scene and looked around there were signs of battle, but there was no one around. He frowned at had missed it. He had sensed the power that belonged to Naruto some minutes ago but it was now gone. He couldn't even tell who'd won the battle. He needed to know. He'd even thought he would be able to catch the emperor while he was unguarded and strike him from behind. The world would be a better place with those Kages dead and the emperor dead. Cloud and Stone would have no more reasons to be after Yuzushio. The village had no more monsters. Perhaps that was what they wanted people to believe either way, Sasuke didn't care much about it. The Uchiha's body froze when he felt a breeze wash over him from behind there was someone. He hadn't sensed anything. He hadn't felt anything. He still could not sense anything. He could only tell because of the breeze. There was one person who had the ability to completely hide his chakra signature and presence. You're not going to strike me from behind, are you? Sasuke asked after activating his Sharingan. I have not the slightest of intentions to strike down a blind man. The emperor said in a measured tone. He was standing behind the Uchiha, hands folded on his back, eyes narrowly opened. Sasuke turned around to face Naruto. There was no attack Kaminjit made him curious. The emperor was not ignorant of his ill intentions toward him. The last time he had attacked. But this time, the emperor was just standing there. Sasuke was no less hostile. So, why? Did Naruto think he could not kill him? Did he think that he was just insignificant and not a threat? The thought made him stare with contempt. Naruto had always looked down on him. It infuriated him. Had it been some years ago, he would have snapped but Sasuke reigned in his anger and responded in a cold tone. I'm not blind yet. If you are still standing, then the Kage is lost. Obviously. Naruto responded in a measured tone. Did you come here because you wanted to shoot one of those arrows at my back, Sasuke? It seems that even in death, Itachi controls you. He led you into a path of hatred and now, part of your contempt for me. 
I'm doing what I want not because of what my brother said. It is true he warned me about you. But I see you as a threat to my dreams. Naruto raised an eyebrow, surprised or at least feign that much. Your dreams that is interesting. But I truly do not care what you do. Of course, unless it is something against my empire and to me, personally. The emperor responded in a firm tone. He then paused and turned looked up. You took long, Jiraiya. Is age starting to take effect? I'm not that old. Really? I'm interested in seeing how Tsunade looks like under her makeup. Her healing jutsu certainly ages her fast. Of course, he'd know that because it was the same thing for him whenever the Kyubi did amazing things its chakra. Did you come to stop Sasuke? Jiraiya nodded. I was afraid he'd attack you. But seeing you stand here, it's safe to say the battle is over and you have won. It is not a bad outcome. Of course, depending on what you do next. If your purpose is to put both cloud and stone under your empire, we would have a problem. There would be another war in the near future. The toad sage said in a stern tone. I have no such interest and if possible, I hope to never fight another war. But knowing our world, another war may happen. If I took purposeful steps that would evoke anger and more chaos, Nagato would turn on me. And the Uzumaki clan would show its displeasure. Both parties desire nothing but peace. It was a little hard to believe that Nagato would be set on peace given what he has done. But thinking about things, it could be true. If Naruto was indeed being truthful when saying he would not be doing anything against Cloud and Stone, then there was the possibility. The Uzumaki clan had never been known for wars and fighting. Even when allied with Konoha, they never took part in wars. They always stayed secluded on their little island. Perhaps this was what made their destruction even more sickening. Of course, Konoha had nothing to stop it either. I highly doubt you want peace. That idea is ludicrous to me. Your perfect world seems nothing more than a fantasy to me. Shinobi will fight. People will have conflicts. We can't always understand each other. At some level, we will always be selfish and there will be someone who will want destruction. What you should seek to change is the mentality of Shinobi. If you cannot change it, you make it difficult for wars to occur. You create a system and alienates any nation seeking war with the other. But that is impossible as long as Kages remain closed in the bubbles of their villages. I have no care but what I have determined is that you cannot fight for stability if you only care for your village. And that makes you a bit of a hypocrite, Jiraiya. Maybe naive to some level in your fantasy. You cannot say you desire peace and yet still remain confined by the love to your village. You will do anything to protect Konoha. And that is contradictory to your ideals. To desire peace in the shinobi world, is to love the shinobi world with more love than your village. If you cannot turn on your village for wrongs, you have no conviction to your ideal. I have fought and deceived many. My life has never been peaceful. But I have never loved the shinobi world. I have always loved my clan, my village, my people. Because of that love, I came to realize I cannot protect them without changing this world. And that is my desire. Whether I need to redraw maps and slaughter thousands to change it, then it shall be so. But I don't do this in Yuzu, because there is nothing broken in Yuzu. I am here because this is where things happen. All the more reasons, you should not live. You will not waste time causing chaos in this world. Sasuke said coldly. You are missing the big picture, Sasuke. And I won't explain to you what it is. You will have to figure it out on your own. Jiraiya said with a slight shake of his head. I don't believe this rumor about there being more Rinnegan users. Nagato is the only Rinnegan wielder. But I must wonder why the expansion. A foothold in the elemental nations, if you like Naruto said with a wave of his right hand. Now that war is over, I look forward to hearing more from Konoha and how it intends to please us given its past failures. You're not going to let that go. Naruto smiled. It would just be a fun conversation to have, don't you think? Naruto asked before he burst into a cloud of smoke. Kage Bunshin. Figures. Lights brightened the streets, music was being played. People had gathered just in front of the emperor's compound. 
some in small groups, drinking and laughing. Some danced, around small fires made around for warmth and light. No one was grumbling. Everyone was happy. Yuzushio was celebrating an end to the war. The darkness that loomed over the heavens was being ignored in favor of celebrations. They had won. They had stopped the enemy from reaching their land. They were now safe. The tension they had hidden during this time has been released when the horn was blown and people broke out in cheers as the emperor returned with victory over their enemies. Haku had never seen the village so peaceful, so overflowing with happiness. The Uzumaki were out in full force. Even those who seemed to hide from the sun were now out. He could see them around. They were the loudest and most energetic. It was a good thing to see. The war was finally over. It has been a threat to their very existence. But now they could sleep in peace. Naruto's strength had been proved. It had been put in a fire baptism and it came out on top. Now, they could breathe freely. The clan elders were sitting in their little group, speaking in hushed tones. Since Yoshino refused to be their puppet, they were probably plotting to have Nagato dethrone Naruto as emperor. They would never be comfortable with the blonde but at least they would now acknowledge his strength. The emperor was sitting beside a small fire surrounded by women with Yoshino just across him along with Miyuki. There was no sign of either Naoki or Naori. But knowing them, they were probably grumbling that they couldn't join the others, while having their own celebration in a corner somewhere. You seem to be enjoying yourself. Haku said to Naruto but he did not sit down. Have you come to ruin the mood? Naruto asked. I was just stating an observation. I have every reason to enjoy myself. After years of plotting, torture and hard working, we have finally achieved something and most of all, Yuzu is now truly safe. I have to be happy in such a situation. It is only a pity that Karen isn't here. The emperor responded. Weren't you just saying it is best she isn't here a moment ago? Yoshino asked in an amused tone. Yoshino, you traitorous bastard. You want Haku to look at me with narrowed eyes? I already know everything. It isn't like you have not made your appetite open. Haku said with a shrug. I do recommend that you call it a night though. You had a battle today, you should rest as we do not know what happens tomorrow. And I would rather you not do anything unbecoming because you drank a little too much. Well, the emperor is always the last person to arrive and the first to leave no one will depart until you do. Yoshino said. I hope you are not saying that because you want me to leave just so you can gather the people and spread false stories about me. Of course not. Yoshino said with a smile. That smile of ours does make me uncomfortable. I should put a gag order on you for the rest of the night. That would be unpleasant. But completely necessary. Haku cut in. You are still sitting, your majesty. The battle was not clean today. You need rest. Naruto looked up into the sky for a long minute. Well, he did have a couple of things to think about and he did need his rest. He would be doing some more talking these days with the war over. He needed to be prepared mentally for it. The emperor stood slowly. Please put some restraints on him, Miyuki. Yoshino can be a little mad when drunk. She smiled. Isn't he always a little mad even when not drunk? Naruto laughed. I guess that is true if you get the idea of some of his thoughts. I thought I was the only one who thought he was a little twisted. You should not point fingers, your majesty. You are not different from me. Naruto shook his head. While I don't like to admit it, you are better than me, intellectually, at least. He then turned to Haku. Lead the way. It was a bit disappointing that after such a feast, he was leaving alone. Well, he was a married man. He had a wife. No, wives. He could simply visit them. He should have just brought Koyuki with him. You don't have to look so displeased. Tomorrow is still another day for celebrations. We will be holding a massive feast. Fresh meat will be brought in and you will also address the people. Maybe Karen will be back and you can drink to your heart's content. But while she is not here, I must look after your health. The following day. Naruto was sitting at the rooftop of his compound along with Yoshino, Haku and Naori, 
observing the festivities occurring just outside of the compound. There were more people than during the last night, even the kids had been welcomed. It was to mark to the day Yuzushio officially became free from fear. You have finally done it, your majesty. Many doubted your word, but here we are. The village rejoices. Those sly old geezers are even walking amongst people now. Their fear has been erased because they now fully believe that what happened before will not happen again. Yoshino said with a smile. The state of the village had been ridiculously pathetic when he first landed here. He had thought Kanoha haunted his very being but these people had been haunted by fear in levels Naruto could not have imagined. I must thank your hard work in making them believers. The emperor responded. But the hard work begins now. We will need to do more plotting and manipulation now. The Kages must move when we suggest. Nothing should happen without us knowing. We must control this world from the shadows. Are we finally going to make use of that prison? Naori asked. Yes we will show it to the Kages one day. They will be free to send their most wanted criminals. Naruto eyed Haku for a moment before speaking. You have something to say, spell it out. I'm just afraid of this manipulation game you are planning to play. Will it not come back to haunt the empire? Do you want the Uzumaki to be associated with dark arts? Naruto smiled. Of course not. I would never sully the clan like that. Why do you think when Guren was recruited I made her join the Uzumaki in underground operations and then moved her to sound? You plan on housing black ops in the sound Haku said in realization. How big will the sound be once you are done with it? Big enough to be the capital of the elemental nations. Naruto said. I have told you already, we are going to build our second home there. It will take some time because we do not have the resources. We can solve things quickly in terms of resources. Yoshino interjected once more. We do need some billions nevertheless. The mines I have targeted can only take us to about 350 million Rio. The wave has also been generating something. We can take as much as about 250 million from it. With that, we can begin with trains. We can borrow some money to start developing the sound. We will leave such discussions after the celebrations and I have gotten my needed rest. But maps must be brought out because we need to start moving quietly and quickly. The work he trailed off when Naoki flashed on his side. What is it? We have a situation in the waves you must hurry there. Chapter 27 Flames gave rise to smoke, the air around the country was contaminated, making it difficult to breathe, the wave was in flames. Several buildings had exploded, and were burning to the ground. The people were trying to put out the fires, and failing. It was chaos, a tragedy that had befallen the peaceful land of innocent civilians whose only crime was being ruled by him. Causalities were there but they had avoided the most of it. Some of the shinobi Naoki had brought from aim were still in the ground, helping out the people into safety. Panic had surged through. They didn't know whether to be indoors or to go out. If this fear knocked at the doors of Yuzushio, Naruto would lay siege to Iwagakure. He'd make them pay dearly. First of all, the war was already over. He had won and they had done this. He had not moved against their land but they had made the move even after losing. It did not matter if Anoki was already dead. He knew about the attack and planned it but did not stop it even when knowing he could die in the war. There would be consequences to those who were left alive. Naruto would make them pay. The emperor executed hand seals and held out both his hands. Dark clouds began to gather above the country. Slowly, they filled the area and drops slowly started to fall, kissing the ground while putting out the fires. In a few seconds, it was a downpour. As the drops became heavy, people started running to shelter. Naruto did not mind being rained one was not in a pleasant mood anyway. Perhaps the rain could hide his disappointment from the people of this country. He jumped from the rooftop and landed on the ground. A second later, the raindrops stopped hitting him. Naori was by him, holding an umbrella. When Naruto eyed him, he smiled. Yoshino figured you'd make it rain and still walk amongst the people to make yourself visible to them. It is a time when they are in trouble, if I am not with them, they think I do not care about them. This was not even their war to begin with. The reason this has even happened, 
is because of a lapse of judgment on my part. We could not have foreseen such a thing, Your Majesty. You could not have, but it is my duty as Emperor to protect these people and foresee dangers to the lands I control. Naruto sighed. Well, this talk will not solve anything. We have much more important things to deal with. But we will discuss them at home. For now, let us bring calm to this nation. An hour later, throne room. You play your role as emperor to perfection, your majesty. I really do not see why the elders keep on insisting that they make me emperor. Yoshino said. He wasn't the only other person in the room Naori and Haku were flanking the emperor's sides. Politics. Naruto said. Things must be done in order and in a way to show that you care. If you don't give your people love, they will start thinking you are no good to them and then rebel we must never give the wave a reason to turn on us. Do you not choose leaders of the country to avoid this? Haku asked. There is that but that only gives us control. To win a nation, you must win the hearts of its citizens. They are the most important people. We have the leader, but if the people turn on him and then tell other nations that we are forcing our rule on them, we'd have serious problems with the Great Five. They may not be able to do anything to us but our empire can't grow in a way we want if they are actively plotting against us. The emperor said. What is the damage? Is it something that will cripple us? The hospital, the academy, the offices of the shipping company, and several homes were destroyed. It is nevertheless nothing that can cripple the economy. There were causalities, but nothing too much. The wave is capable of rebuilding from this without the assistance of any other country. But this puts us back a bit. We should have been focusing on connecting the rail tracks with other nations and putting the trains in them. And now we will have to shift our focus on rebuilding. The train stations were not destroyed, yes. No we placed maximum security on them. If they had been destroyed, it would have been disastrous. The materials used to build them is rather expensive. The trains promised to generate enough income for us to be able to fund other projects. Then the wave was targeted because of its significance to us. It was not a simple attack on the innocent civilians. Yes, we believe so. Yoshino said with a nod. And Yuzu. Setting off explosions would be near impossible given the barriers we placed on the buildings. Fire spreads quickly and we took measures against that. There hasn't even been a breach of security. Good. Who shall take charge of the reconstruction? We need to ensure that the railways are still moving forward. We stopped because of the war. We are no longer at war now, we must continue. We need the revenue they will generate. Funds for the trains were already put aside. If we wait longer, we may be forced to use those funds for other things at this stage. I will ask Tazuna to take charge of the project to rebuild what has been destroyed. But most valuable infrastructure is still safe. The Waves train system can start within a month if we get all the trains. Should we send for the springs to assist with this? Yes that would be for the best. They have something. Send the airship to collect the materials. You can give the go-ahead to assemble the parts we already have in our stores. I want the trains running as soon as possible. Have Gyurin set apart the land for the projects and clearly mark out the places where rail tracks will be put. If we do this, it should make things quicker. Nagato will handle things on his part. The Emperor said before turning deadly serious. The main issue is what to do with IWA. We only found dead bodies of the men responsible suicide missions. They did not want to be caught to be interrogated but we are certain they were from IWA. I will visit the village to speak about the end of the war and a way forward. They should have someone acting as leader when we visit. I will ask them to pay for the damages and then to go grovel before the people of the wave if they refuse, I will pay them back. Vengeance. Karen started as she walked into the room. You have never been the one to think about revenge, my husband. I am not thinking about revenge. I'm just saying this must be punished, severely. Would it not make for a good image if you let it slip? You have already killed thousands of their shinobi and if you make your case, it lessens the hatred and improves your image amongst neutrals and your allies. They think of you as the forgiving emperor. Naruto smiled. I didn't take you to be making cold strategies, 
Karen. But is it not reasonable? Is it not the logical option for a better future for the Empire? She is right. Yoshino said. While it makes us look a bit weak and could encourage them to try again, but on the short term, it works best. We claim the higher moral ground. That sounds amusing coming from you, Yoshino. Naruto said with an amused look on his face. Fundamentally, he did not disagree with the statement from Karen it did make sense after all. They could afford to blink and look the other way if it strategically worked better for the Empire. The purpose was not to make the Empire a terrifying beast that would frighten all. If they became that, they would not last long. Dynasties founded on suppression and tyranny never lasted long. People always rebelled. Even if they held long, it was always a bloody battle as people rebelled against those in leadership. Naruto could not have a situation where the Uzumaki were systematically hunted to break apart the Empire it would be failure on his part to protect them. Perhaps, but this is the route that we must take from now on. We don't want to be continuously fighting wars for no reason. Nagato will be displeased with us if things go like that. We must take measures to ensure that there is stability. It would also make things easier for us. Could it be that you're a little ticked off because this is solely your fault and you want to do something about it? Karen asked with a stare. Naruto raised an eyebrow. That would imply that I have become a rather loving emperor ruled by emotions, he said. He did not comment further on it. We will do what is best for the clan and the empire. But I would not have minded seeing them grovel before the people of the wave that is fine nevertheless, the bigger picture is of importance than soothing my displeased spirits. So you admit you are ticked off Karen pressed. There was silence in the room. Everyone seemed to wait with bated breath to see if he would concede. After what felt like eternity, he finally responded. Yes I am. It is nothing shocking really. To fail is not a pleasant thing to experience, especially when you have arrogantly thought you could not fail. They do say experience is the best teacher. The realization that you cannot protect everything is rather unpleasant though especially with my power. He stared at Karen. Are you happy now? Yes, she said with a wide smile. I will comfort my wounded husband now. We can go now. Yoshino cleared his throat before anything more could be said between the two. How do we deal with this then? The emperor adopted a thoughtful look for a second before responding. Haku, you will send a message to our allies and request aid in rebuilding. On its own, Wave should and can rebuild. The economy is strong. But having others assist brings about unity in our nations. It is with this unity that we can move forward as one without the other pulling back. Yoshino smiled. That was well said, your majesty. He said. Yuzushio will readily offer its help. That will be appreciated. And send the sealing corps to begin constructing a barrier around the wave the bridge must be protected and adequate sensory seals should be placed around the country to alert us of any movements. Yoshino, take measures to begin the establishment of the Imperial Police Force. The prisons we have built cannot remain empty forever. The police force would operate similar to the manner of Kanoha's military police force, but it would have authority to act in all lands below the Empire's flag. It was just one method to keep balance and to give their shinobi missions to do. Yes, your majesty. You are all dismissed ah, uh, oh, cancel the celebrations for now. We shall celebrate once the wave has been restored. Karen watched the subordinates disappear one by one. Haku was the last to leave the room but not before greeting her with a smile. She then turned her eyes towards the man on the throne. She frowned at the thought that she was looking up at him. She was supposed to be sitting up there with him, not standing here like a commoner. When did I start thinking like that? Karen thought with a small smile. You return sooner. Weren't you the one who kept reminding me that I had to return? I thought you would take your time and I would have to come once more to fetch you. You do seem to enjoy the attention I give when I'm trying to force you to do something. You are dreaming but it is okay. Just don't take it too far. Karen said with a wave of her right hand. That is not a nice thing to say. Naruto said. Well, it is not like I can murder you for saying it. In any case, you are home. You have truly returned at a troublesome time. 
but I will make some use of you now that you have returned home to fulfill your duties. Karen frowned. I didn't come back home to be treated as a slave and you did mention that you would take away some duties from me so that I can still do research. I did say that but you must still complete some duties. We will get people to dress you accordingly and tomorrow, you will visit the wave country and address the citizens. I was there but I did not address them. You will tell them that help is coming and the empire takes responsibility for what has happened. I don't like the sound of it. You are putting words in my mouth. You are free to add on to what I have said, but you are not to contradict anything and if you make any promises that do not align with my objectives, you will carry them yourself. Is this the same attitude you give Yoshino? Those people know that if they are going to do something I didn't tell them to do they must take responsibility for it. Yoshino acts differently because he understands how I think. Of course, that does trouble me at times, but it was necessary that he understand how I think if things were going to work accordingly when I was not around. Karen shook her head. Politics later, aren't you going to welcome your wife? Naruto stared at the woman for a moment before smiling. He then stood up from the throne and descended down the stairs. He embraced her in a firm hug. It is good that you have returned home, Karen. I won't be so lonely anymore. Lonely you? Is that some kind of a joke? Naruto smiled. I miss this colorful side of you. We will have many memories to share once things have settled. Well, we can even start now. There is nothing that stands in the way after all. Kanoha. The mask was off it was a unique situation. Yugao had always made appearances before the Hokage wearing a mask but these days, she appeared in the office without her mask. She was no longer acting as an umbu. She had yet to retire but she was still working. Perhaps this mission could be called an undercover mission. It was dangerous perhaps worthy of being S-rank. If Naruto found her doing something treasonous, he was going to kill her. He had made it that clear and she was not really looking toward deciding anything that could get her in trouble with the emperor but orders were still orders. Yugao settled on a chair in front of the Hokage's desk along with Shikamu. Thank you for coming, both of you. Tsunade started in a measured tone. She glanced at Kakashi who was standing just on her right side. We received word that the wave country was attacked. There was some destruction it seems that several buildings were marked with explosive tags. We don't know who was responsible but apparently, Yuzushio has been keeping a close eye on things. The silver-haired Jonin said in a serious tone. We don't need to guess it is either the stone or cloud, and or both of them. Shikamaru said. That is our conclusion but we will not draw any accusations without any evidence. They will probably deny it as it has happened after the war and it was an attack on innocent civilians. We don't think that the Empire will simply let this slide. It was just going to be chaos if the Empire responded with force. This war had shown that the Empire had the mobility to cause destruction in both stone and cloud but they had not gone that far. They only fought those in the battlefield. But if they were attacked like this, they could respond by sending out the airship for destruction. It could make things dangerous again and they could go back to war again. Tsunade hoped things did not come to the point where the Emperor was calling for the destruction of either village because although they were wrong, destruction was not the way to go. But she still did not know if she would go as far as to stand in the way of the Uzumaki Empire. Not unless there is something to gain. Yugao said. Shikamaru agreed with this. Their movements have always been calculated. They don't simply move because they can. The wave has been attacked, but there is still nothing from them, is there? If they were the ones to simply move because they can they would have already moved to the stone. The Emperor knows space-time ninjutsu, he could simply teleport to IWA. Knowing him, he is likely weighing the pros and cons of each move. Yugao added. Tsunade smiled. At least she had people who reasoned. Seeing them speak like this, it made her feel relieved. Well, Shikamaru had already proven his worth but he was still young and there was the thought that Yugao could be compromised. Either way, she had made the right decision about permitting this to happen. Yugao once I sign the paperwork, you officially will no longer be a kunoichi of the hidden leaf. You will be sent to the whirlpools, where you will become a kunoichi there. The emperor is not stupid, he isn't likely to have you do anything and might send you away from Yuzushio, 
but that is fine. We primarily just want someone from our side to be able to reach him any time. This will be a sign of goodwill. Shikamaru you know your role. You are to ensure that the Empire and the Leaf have an alliance. Your father must have already briefed you on the negotiation terms. Don't go beyond them. If he is being unreasonable, don't indulge him. We will not beg for an alliance and if they reject Yugao, don't try to force the issue. We are not that desperate but we do acknowledge the Empire's power as a rival to the Great Five Nations. You leave in six days, prepare yourselves. Hi, Hokage-sama. Once they both left the office, Tsunade released a long breath and leaned back in her chair. She closed her eyes for a moment before speaking to Kakashi. I thought things would calm after the war, but there is this and the cloud's forces moving in the sea have yet to retreat. At this stage, they will likely attack. What bothers me is Yuzushio's silence in it. I don't think they are ignorant of the threat, especially since they were having problems with the water daimyo. You think they will cause destruction and keep silent about it? Most likely. Tsunade said with a nod. I should not stress over it. This should be your problem. At least for now, we have avoided a great war. Looks likely but knowing how things work in the shinobi world, one could just be around the corner. That is why you must never relax. We don't know where the next threat will come from and if Yuzushio handles the stone and cloud badly, we will indeed have another war once they recover. You need to play your role well. If we have to go to war, then we will go. You should never sacrifice the leaf for anything. Kakashi felt like going on a tour across the elemental nations just thinking about the trouble ahead. Don't you think it would make sense for you to pass on the mantle once things have settled? It would be fair to the next Hokage to have a clean slate rather than inherit problems. It would be fair if those were problems caused by me. I have not caused anything. You just have to deal with it. Besides, I am still going to be around. Of course, I must still give you room to make your mistakes and do things as you think best. We don't want to be in a position where I am fighting with you over the village's direction. Such a situation would create factions within the shinobi forces. An unpleasant situation would surely arise from that. Meanwhile, it is quite remarkable that the Naruto that used to walk in this village has managed to bring all great five nations to acknowledge his power in this manner. Shikamaru said as he walked alongside Yugao. Who could have thought? Shikamaru's friends could still not believe it, but this was the reality of things. For you it is remarkable. We have always been able to see beyond the mask. Even when you could not see beyond the mask, there had always been something about him. If things had been different, I would not have been dragged from my peaceful days. Well, this is the result of this village choosing to hate him rather than accepting him. Shikamaru said in a tired tone. My father says you don't approve of the idea of keeping tabs on the emperor by spying on him. Yes. Yugao said. What do you think about it? It is risky and dangerous and I think hardly worth the effort. I wouldn't say hardly worth the effort but risky. Yes. The consequences would be disastrous to the leaf. My life is out of the picture but the emperor would see it as a sign of betrayal. I stood before him on his throne and I returned confident that the emperor does not have any intentions to do this village any harm unless we incite it. They have their goal but they are not a threat to Kanoha. Naruto lived in this village he probably knows it in and out. If he wanted to bring it down, he would have done so. He has stood before the village's strongest knows their skills and weaknesses. But he has not done anything with it or even threatened to use it against us. No matter what their goal is, it is simply not tyranny. Their movements and actions tell me that they are looking for something better without continuous battles and they will probably make their movements in line with this. The wave and Nadashiko have not been undone by force it has been cooperation and keeping good relationships. It is likely that they want to keep things on that level in the near future. For this reason, I don't think they will attack either Kumo or IWA. In saying this, you should not carry out that mission. Just be the best Kunoichi you can be for the Empire. Your behavior there should mirror the Leaf's behavior towards the Empire. You seem to think highly of the Emperor. I was in class with him. I don't think he is necessarily evil. He is cold and ruthless, but not a bad person. 
His relationship with the Sandame did tell me that he is one who honors his word, and most likely won't betray agreements even though he doesn't like them. He didn't like the one the Sandame drew but was still willing to go through it even when the Sandame was dead. Yes that is someone you can trust. Of course, he will always think about what is best for his clan as anyone would for their village. The problem is his power. Which he displayed for all to see. Another reason they encouraged this war was to display the power for all to see. His name is now known all over the elemental nations. No shinobi thinking rationally will face him in battle. Shikamaru shook his head. We will see how he welcomes us when we get there. The office was silent Haku had thought he would find the emperor and his wife bickering, as they usually do. It was always amusing to hear their banter about this and that. At least Haku could say it with certainty that Karen was someone that Naruto genuinely cared for. What simplified things was that she was Uzumaki. The emperor loved all his clansmen. He did not discriminate whether they were twisted or not. As long as they were members of the Uzumaki clan, they were in his good books. Haku placed a load of papers on Naruto's desk. The emperor already had two mountains he was going through. Even with all the work, Naruto did take the time to read the bottom line. He didn't just sign. It is good to see you at work, Naruto. Not that I find it enjoyable but there is some peace about it. I cannot tire from it since I don't have to talk to anyone while doing it. Are you saying you get tired of talking to people, even me? Karen jumped inch was sitting on the sofa, reading some reports. Naruto lifted his eyes from his desk and glanced at the Karen before looking back at his work. Maybe. He said quietly. What is that? Wave business regarding construction, budget proposals from Tazuna and proposal for a new structure. What is wrong with the current structure? The leader does not report to you but to Yuzushio. We didn't change that. No you were focused on fighting and always let Yoshino do everything. We will change that. But that means that we must hire more people to work for us. The compound is not big enough for that kind of work. We never did make it to be a working place but my personal space. You are going to build your castle in the sound, you can base all your subordinates there. Moving between here and there should not be a problem for you. Your other wives will also find a bed in that castle rather than coming here. I really don't want anyone in this place. This is our home, not any other woman's home. Naruto dropped the pen and leaned in his chair before staring at Karen for a long minute. Hmm, I guess that works. I can have my fun there without your elders sending me glances. Send a message to Gurin to prioritize the building of my castle. I want it complete within a month. Of course, I will send an army of clones to help build it quickly. We will also borrow Gurin's power for materials. But her ninjutsu is only usable while she is alive. The moment she dies, everything falls apart. We are Uzumaki, we can solve that problem. Naruto said with a shrug. That does remind me, Karen, I am sending you to your elders to make sure they teach you proper fuinjutsu. Karen glared. You really hate me, don't you? Maybe a little. Naruto said with a smile. I don't expect you to come up with amazing ideas, but I at least expect you to be adequate. Not in the standards of the Uzumaki. You're disappointing. For an Uzumaki to have less than desirable skills in Fuinjutsu is laughable. He then sighed. We are not born all the same nevertheless. You will still have time to learn. I have already sorted out your schedule for the next six months. Your duties will be relaxed during that time. Of course, if you show good improvement, you won't have to spend that much time with those people. They will probably give you poison to feed me. I'd take it with both hands. I don't doubt you'd go that far. I have truly married the wrong one. Take lessons Haku, be careful with whom you choose to marry. But poison is unlikely to kill you since you are a Jinchuriki. Haku said. The Kyubi's chakra has been working within my system. That means it must leave the seal. If you have Karen bind me with her chains, I cannot break free. Haku smiled. You'd never sleep if you knew there was a jutsu that could trap you in an inescapable trap. I find myself agreeing with that statement. Karen said with a nod. Naruto shrugged. 
I just find it to be a puzzle that needs to be solved. He said. What else? Kumo Shinobi. Have they selected a new rakage yet? Not that we know you think if they select a new rakage they will order a retreat. Yes, but that will depend on the position of the new leader. If he thinks he can do what AI failed to do then Husha will lead them into war. Of course, should that happen, then we will annihilate them. For now, don't do anything. Let us wait and see, but if they move towards us, sink them all. All of them. Let no one escape, Haku. If possible, leave a monument of ice in the sea. That is rather brutal of you. Karen commented in a flat tone. A necessary measure to those who think that if we let IWA get away with nonsense, we will let anyone who dares threaten us get away with murder. Ah, you are still displeased about that. Haku said with a smile. You'll soon get over it. And I hope you don't do anything to sabotage the route we have chosen. What do you make of me? I have never been driven by my emotions. But this is different. Haku said. The loss of life was the result of your oversight. It happens. Naruto said nonchalantly. I think we shall. He trailed off when Yoshino entered the office with stack of papers. He released a long sigh and folded his hands across his chest. Is there any more work that needs me? Yes. Yoshino answered with a nod. I can bring it now, if you want. Haku. Guren probably has something. You can send Naori to fetch it. Naruto thought about it for a moment before nodding. Let us do that, and every one of you will leave me to work alone. And no one shall disturb me. Including me? Karen asked. Who knows? Naruto said. I am going to visit both Cloud and Stone in the next couple of days. It is then that we will return with a way forward after having spoken to the leaders they have chosen. I had decided against going soon because I wanted them to prepare. I thought you would send me over as you did last time around. Yoshino said. You enjoy messing with people's minds too much, Yoshino. I don't want to frighten these people by your tongue. Besides, you relieved yourself of those duties when you had Haku take your position as my right-hand man. You have no role to play in this situation. Focus on Yuzushio. That is a little harsh. Go to Miyuki to nurse your wounded feelings. Naruto said with indifference. I'm afraid Miyuki is as unapologetic as your wife, your majesty. Yoshino said with a smile. I'm sitting right here you creepy bastard. Now now, Karen. Yoshino started in a quiet tone. I am not without emotions. It does wound me when you say such things like that. Karen snorted. Yeah, right. Naruto laughed. See, dear, you would make a good match with Yoshino. We can change things now and you can marry him. And you'll marry Miyuki. Yoshino offered. Hell no. Naruto was quick to say. He then changed the subject. I need you to stay here and prepare for the meeting with our people. It is likely that we will have some nations coming before us to be nice. Haku, have you readied the invites to our leaders? Yes. Good Naruto said. Once they arrive, and I have dealt with both Cloud and Stone, we will know where we go. The Uzumaki Empire can begin another chapter of its rise to power. And hope it will not be one of bloodshed. You have always said that you don't want the Uzumaki to be associated with bloodshed. Karen said. There will be no more slaughters. Our prisons are enough to hold thousands. If they cannot be held, we will dispose of them. We must usher a new way of doing things. Naruto said. And yet, you just gave Haku the order to waste Kumo's shinobi without leaving anyone to survive. That is something else entirely. Naruto said. He then turned to Yoshino. Be careful with who you welcome in your land. Once I'm done with my part, I will hardly spend time moving around here. Then you will set forth in the sound. Yes, but we will still conduct business with the Kages here. I'm certain that the smaller nations will be trying by all means to move closer to us. We are moving closer to the great nations and we have displayed our might against them. They will look to us as their saviors and seek comfort in us. Would they not directly come to you then? 
we will set up the structure. But as you can see, we don't have the structure. The empire itself is only me. Most things go through you. We must look for people to fill up the gaps the emperor paused, looking thoughtful. I will do this before the day ends. The one thing about being emperor is that I don't need to take anything to anyone to approve it. Yoshino smiled. I can say the same but little difference in that I know what you like, so I can do whatever I want and only inform you afterwards. That must stop. Haku jumped in before Naruto could respond. People will have to stop coming through you but to me. We will set up that chain of command and communication once the castle is built. His eyes narrowed. I'm serious when I say you will not be speaking to His Majesty directly unless I approve it. This thing of strolling in his space will stop. That is rather assertive, Haku. Yoshino remarked. I must be with you people. You have grown used to His Majesty. It is why some things are not done in order. I can understand with either Naoki or Naori, but you are different. I must nevertheless put a leash on Naoki. He is too much of a loose cannon. Naruto whistled. Save the energy for the troublesome people we will deal with, Haku. He said. You can all leave me to work. So, we are indeed keeping up with what Haku said. Yoshino stated. Well, I did know he would come around. Someone will bring the paperwork to you, Haku. He turned to Naruto. I wish you a safe journey when you visit the Cloud and Stone, Your Majesty. Three days later. Yujito had to mentally slap herself to avoid smiling when Naruto appeared before her once more in her room. She didn't mind him coming in her place. She didn't even leave the balcony where she sat, reading a book. He had sat here some days ago when coming to visit her. Admittedly, she had never hated his presence and still did not. He was the only other person in this village with whom she could freely speak. He had made his intentions clear to her she knew what he wanted from her. Hidden motives had been thrown away. Perhaps it had been a move from him to make her feel a little free. Escaping work. I'm not that childish. Admittedly, I find peace going through my work. You are strange. We can't all be the same. Some people must be weird. It is our differences that make life interesting. If we were all the same, there would be no puzzles. We would all be the same person in different shapes. For some people, that is not a bad thing. Mentally challenged people. The emperor said. Pick up your things. We are leaving now. Yujito stared. What is that supposed to mean? The war is over I won and my enemies lost. That was apparent when I heard celebrations. I can't say I had any reason to celebrate even though I knew I was going to be free. Perhaps it was because I knew A.I. Sama had been killed. Then you know what my words mean. I am returning you to your home since you have refused to love Yuzushio. You could have warned me, you know. While she had tried by all means to avoid becoming familiar with this village, she had ended up liking the peace. Of course, there was no place like home and she had been honestly bored here but she had still come to enjoy the atmosphere around here. She would admittedly come to miss it. She would, of course, never admit this to the emperor. It would just give him the motivation to try harder to get her to return here. If I had warned you, it would have defeated the purpose. Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulder. Ready your things. We must still travel a bit. My jutsu will only take us into the lightning country. Yujito stared for a moment before closing her book. She stood up without saying a word to the emperor and readied her things. Some minutes later, they were running through the lightning country. Yujito felt excited and happy to be going back to her beloved home. She had twice ran ahead of the emperor in her excitement. He had been amused. He didn't pick up his pace to accommodate her didn't seem to be in a hurry to reach the cloud. Then again, he had nothing to lose in this situation. He had won the war. He was in a position to make demands. The thought made Yujito slow down and her excitement died down in the blink of an eye. Say what are you really going to say in Kyumo? Derui has probably been made rakage since he was the previous rakage's right-hand man. Naruto stopped running and started walking. They were within the outskirts of Kyumo and he had already warned them of his visit. Still, 
he had hadn't actually thought about what he was planning to say to the leaders. We will see what happens when I get there. You're not that whimsical. I'm not but I have still not prepared a speech. Things will go in two directions. It is either we work out our issues or they say we go to war again. Of which, I would not mind going on a rampage. Darui would find it too much of a hassle to go to war. With what they saw, Yujito didn't even think that they would willingly choose war once more. The emperor would destroy them unless they had something else in mind they could use. As long as Naruto was fair, there would be no challenges. Yujito was almost certain that the emperor would not be making ridiculous demands to her village. Hopefully, war has not changed Darui. I will not rest on hopes. Naruto said. You are overly excited what do you think will be waiting for you when you arrive home? I honestly don't know. Let me tell you then, they will blame you for losing the war. If you had not been captured, you would have fought alongside B and might have saved AI. You will be branded as useless and having hidden in the comfort of the enemy if they see you walking with me in perfect condition. Yujito frowned deeply. You have two options, you can choose to enter on your own and have Darui admit that you were returned as a sign of good gesture. Or you can allow me to beat you up, break some bones and chain you before dragging you. They will only spit on you. They already hate me for killing their shinobi and loved ones. Hatred I know and I have experienced. That is generous of you but no thanks. I will endure it. I did not choose to be captured and if they choose to hate me for it, then so be it. You're hopeless. It's a little disturbing and I won't smack you in the face, perhaps then you can speak sense. Samui, Derui and Mabui were waiting for them at the village entrance. Derui was wearing kage robes. Yujito didn't pay attention to the other two but hurried up when she saw Samui. She embraced her fellow blonde with a warm smile. She shed a tear she was truly glad to be home. To be with the people she loved. Even if the villagers might hate her, as long as these people she loved were still there, it would not matter to her. Your Majesty. Derui greeted the Emperor while holding out his right hand. Naruto shook the hand silently before folding his hands behind his back. You succeeded AI. Yes. Derui answered. Please follow me. We can simply head straight to my office or we can walk. I must warn you that some unfortunate things may reach your ears if we walk. That is fine. It is not like it is anything new to me. Besides, I should not feel offended. I did kill their loved ones. The emperor said as he followed Derui. He eyed Yujito before shaking his head. Was I that bad of a host that you cry when you arrive home? You did staff me in with that hateful woman after I was captured. Yujito said. Naruto shook his head. There was nothing but glares as they made their way through the village. He could sense some shinobi following them from the shadows. Even B was with them but keeping a distance. They didn't want a situation where he was allowed to attack this village without restrictions. Naruto could understand and so, he didn't comment on it. Upon reaching the office, Derui showed him a chair in front of the large desk before sitting behind it. Mabui stood closely beside him while Samui and Yujito waited outside. There was a tense silence before Mabui broke it. What are the Empire's demands? You won a war which we started. Derui shot her a look before speaking. I thought we had this discussion and agreed you would let me do the talking. You were taking too long. Naruto smiled. It is fine I don't really mind it. I have brought back Yujito. We had taken her simply to take her out of the war. Since the war is over, we have brought her back. As you saw she was treated well. Why? The treatment at least. I had my reasons. Naruto said. Demands? We have nothing to demand of you. But there has been no correspondence between the two nations since the last battle. I want to confirm something before we continue. Are still at war or are you waving the white flag to accept and acknowledge your defeat? We were defeated. Naruto smiled. Then do we call an end to the war? Yes. If we are calling an end to it and something happens in which you are responsible, I will come back here, and I assure you, it will not be to talk. You have displayed your strength. Mabui responded. 
we need not be reminded of it. We will not take any decisions to betray our word. We have lost many shinobi. The previous Rakage had his beliefs and fought admirably for them. We respect him for it. We have a new Kage now, and he wants to set things differently. You must already know about the shinobi at sea. We have sent a word for them to return. If they still continue towards Yuzushio, they have just gone rogue. Then we will deal with them accordingly. Naruto said. Only if it comes to it, of course. I honestly planned on making you submit under my rule. If you'd refused, I would have just killed you and asked the next person if they wanted to follow under my rule. That would have been extreme. When a shinobi sets his mind on something, he will do anything to achieve it. Your previous rakage went to war with us because he believed in something. I won't go over whether it was right or wrong but he believed in it and then went into war. He lost but you get my point. We see no reason to pick up where things were. If possible, we would like to have a fruitful relationship with the Empire without the talk of war. Of course, we would need to admit to our past errors. Our first thought of action would be to offer Yujito to you. We will of course discuss this with her. You are not thinking with your muscles. You are only making that decision because you know that to us, the power of a Jinchuriki means nothing. We can subdue them without fighting. We did consider that. Darui admitted. Perhaps we will get along. I did not come to hold any formal meeting but just to see how things will go from now on. It appears that there will be no need to put on any armor once more. And I hope you will be faithful. We are not very forgiving to those who try to backstab us. I don't want to throw threats but I want you to know what you are dealing with. I saw you in battle fighting a war I thought shouldn't have been fought in the first place. I will not be doing anything that will risk this village's future. You have the power to destroy a village. We are not stupid as to provoke war with you unless given a good reason. Good reason. Naruto smiled. That is fine puppets with no will of their own to reject what they see as wrong or just dull. Challenge us if you think we are wrong. Do not be afraid of us. I will think about Yujito when I get home. For now, sort out your proposals as you know where we stand. Next time we sit, we shall come to an agreement. For some reason, Derui agreed with the Emperor. They talked for a couple of more minutes before the man decided to leave he didn't need anyone to follow him as he would make a hasty departure from the country. Once he left the office, Derui released a long breath and leaned his elbows on his desk. That went better than expected. Mabui said. Derui nodded. We still cannot let our guard down. They might surprise us when we hold meetings. Yet, it is still plainly clear of who stands at the top. There will be things we would normally not agree with but we will be forced to agree with because we know what he can do. We will most likely be forced to toe in line without having him place us under his rule. Derui thought about it before shrugging it was better than more bloodshed. As long as Kyumo was safe and the people had their freedom, he would not complain and he would not allow anyone to say otherwise. Meanwhile, seeing Naruto outside the office, Yujito smiled nervously, worried over how things had gone. Everything went well? She asked. She would not want to be in a position where she had to attack the emperor. He had been kind to her. But if there was no other choice, she would have to swallow her emotions and get it done with. Yes better than expected. Yet, you don't look very happy. Samui commented in a flat tone. I'm hardly excited unless there is a strong opponent in front of me or a woman stripping down for me to partake myself in her. So it true, you are a pervert. Naruto shook his head. I'm not a pervert. Don't mix pleasure with perverseness. He said in a strong tone. We will speak soon, Yujito. I'm told you might make a home in our land but of course that is if you accept it. You calculated that something like this would happen she accused him. Naruto just smiled. Enjoy being home. He disappeared along gusts of wind. The following day. The stone was different from the cloud. The moment Naruto had walked through the village gates, he had been welcomed with contempt. No one had even come to greet him, but Shinobi followed him through the rooftops, their hands in motion, ready to launch attacks on him. The streets were crowded with peeplight was not silent but there were loud whispers. 
There was fear in the eyes of many, but it was overshadowed by pure hatred. It was the same feeling as in Kanoha when the villagers believed he killed their loved ones but in this situation, he had indeed done it. Naruto didn't regret it, he didn't feel a thing about it. This hatred, he reasoned, it was only logical given what he did, and so he just walked through the streets, heading towards the rebuilt Kage Tower. It would have been a good thing if these people had prepared the Uzumaki flag, held it up and played music for his royal procession. But instead, they were just looking down at the murderer of their loved ones. None of the adults would dare think of attacking him, not when he could snap their necks. A child suddenly stood in the way, holding a stone. The shinobi watching close by did nothing they just watched as the child threw the stone towards his face. The emperor caught the stone and crushed it before coming to a halt just in front of the child. Give back my father. His cold eyes froze the boy into his place. No one stepped by. Naruto reasoned this child was now a war orphan. If he still had a mother or father, they would come out to try to plead for him, but the rest of the villagers just watched. War orphans, it was a sad thing, but sadly, the result of war. You did not go into war and return without pain and suffering. This was the result, and yet, shinobi nations have always been quick to ignite the flames of war. He bent down slightly and spoke in an audible tone. I cannot bring your father back to life. For the dead remain dead. If you want to hate someone, hate the person who sent him to war. But you killed him. Someone shouted from the crowd. Yeah. Naruto straightened up and closed his eyes. He put his hands inside his pockets and then walked past the boy. An oppressive air began to fill the streets as Naruto slowly walked. He then spoke in a cold tone. In war, it is kill or be killed. If I had not killed, I would have been killed. Of course, you people would have rejoiced. This village took part in the destruction of my village years ago, we experienced the same feeling you are feeling now. Yes, the small nations you cheered while IWA invaded suffered this feeling, they are looking at you in the same manner as you are now. They are probably, shouting in joy, experience what you have made us experience. Know the pain of war, and next time, you will not be so quick to go to war. After saying that, he disappeared from the crowd and headed straight to the Tsuchikich Tower. Kuratsuchi she was sitting there, with a smirk on her lips. No doubt, she was waiting to see a baffled look on his face. But he would not give her the satisfaction. Admittedly, he was shocked to see Kuratsuchi sitting behind the desk. He hadn't been informed yet that she returned. Naturally, he did not display his shock just smiled and entered the office before speaking casually. That was a rather unique welcome into this village. If I didn't know better, I'd think you organized the march just to entice a reaction from me. Kuratsuchi waited until the emperor was settled before speaking there was nothing but contempt in her eyes. You seem to handle it well, nevertheless. My childhood was colored with such displays of affection in the hidden leaf. Looks of hatred and people calling me names mean nothing to me. I honestly don't care if people hate me. At least in this case, I can reason why. There would be no reasonable person who would not be angry at a person who killed their loved ones. This reasoning made Kuratsuchi frown deeply. What kind of person thought that way? What kind of an emperor was he? Didn't he have pride in his name and status? Was he simply just going to allow some people to talk to him in any way they pleased? Heartless bastard. Kuratsuchi murmured. Not the worst thing I have been called, but I will not tolerate that from you. Kuratsuchi narrowed her eyes. What are you going to do about it? Naruto smiled he hadn't expected things to be easy with Iwagakure. These people were stubborn. But the appearance of Kuratsuchi did complicate things. There were still many questions regarding her disappearance. Anoki had not been playing tricks on him that day when he demanded to know of her whereabouts. He genuinely didn't know where she had disappeared off to and if she was alive or not. He raised his index finger and shook it three times. Killing you is simple for me, and the same about laying waste to this village. Did you know, I can expel oxygen from this room? The effects affect me as well, but I have had much better training. He said and then snapped his fingers, releasing a burst of chakra. 
Kuratsuchi started gasping for air within seconds, she had her right hand on her throat and her left fist slamming her desk. She could not breathe. There was no oxygen. She struggled violently, trying to find air to breathe. Her struggle caused her to fall from her chair and down on the floor. She was suffocating. Her eyes were wide and in shock. She was slowly dying. She could feel it in her body. Why was there no one even coming to save her? How did things even come to this point? She had not defied death just to die so pathetically in her office with her people watching. What had the emperor even done? Naruto snapped his fingers once more and everything returned to normal. Shinobi immediately flashed around him and summed to Kuratsuchi and helped her to her chair. She was breathing heavily, hands around her chest. After wiping some sweat off her forehead, she calmed her breathing and glared at the emperor. For a moment, she had thought she was going to die by suffocation. I'd put a barrier around the space. We Uzumaki specialize in the art of sealing after all. Putting barriers happens to be something I am very good at. I was making barriers when was I was little to hide certain things I did. The emperor said before asking. Will you behave? Don't think it isn't impossible for me to do something like that in the village. I just need to erect a barrier large enough to cover this entire village and then make it happen. Kuratsuchi did not respond to this. What do you want? IWA Shinobi did us some good by destroying buildings in the wave and killing some people. I'm a little displeased by that action and did think about coming here to do the same but I have been counseled against such a move. In any case, I do expect you to pay for damages. No we will not do that. We will take it from the funding you receive from the Earth Lord. Of course we might just take everything while we are at it. The Emperor responded in a flat tone. Bastard. The name calling is becoming boring. Naruto said. We did not attack this village when we were at war with you and you cannot reasonably say that we did not have the strength to do so. But you went a step too far and I am not going to overlook it. I had even entertained the idea of making you kiss the ground in the wave but that would be a step too far in your humiliation. Payment will be just fine in one way or the other, we will get it and there is nothing you can do to stop it, unless you decide to kill the earth daimyo. We will make arrangements. Kuratsuchi said through gritted teeth, her glare, murderous. Excellent. I want to think that war is over between us. But it will not be so until you admit that you have lost and you surrender. We indeed lost but we will not surrender as we have already lost. Must you always be difficult in everything? We will not be bullied into doing anything. We are more than capable of doing anything we imagine as possible but we won't be going that far. We simply want you to understand that we are superior and come to an agreement that you will not be provoking a fight with us. Should you do anything contrary to that, we will erase this village. Our airship was developed for this simple purpose of causing havoc. Threats Kuratsuchi said. We will arrange for the agreement. Good. Naruto smiled. Then, what happened to you? I'm curious about your appearance. You have both arms, but I cut off one of arms and turned it to ash. The other arm you have has a different chakra signature to yours. Where did you get it? If Orochimaru was still alive, I would say it was him, but he is dead and I know where Kabuto has been this entire time. Kuratsuchi smirked. Now there is something you don't know she said happily. I will not forget that you killed my grandfather and humiliated this village. But for the moment, picking a fight with you will only lead to my destruction. That is a change of tone. Were you being difficult just to see how far I was willing to go? Naruto asked curiously. If so, you have returned slightly different. And given this, I cannot trust that you will not try to stab me in the back when you see an opportunity. I will nevertheless still enter an agreement with you. I do not trust you either, so the feeling is mutual. Naruto smiled. It does seem that playing the role of being emperor will not be so dull, after all. Entertain me, Kuratsuchi. And I will find out who gave you that arm. He then stood up. We shall talk soon. But next time, please ready my money. Naruto stared at Noroi with an expressionless mask on his face. He was silent for a more than a minute. Finding Kuratsuchi in the stone had not been according to the plan. 
there was something he did not know. He didn't always know everything he had always considered such a possibility when operating. But now that he was facing it, it posed a dilemma for him. There were many questions that needed to be asked. He could speak to Kabuto Orochimaru had possibly known more about this world more than anyone else. Yet, Kabuto could not be brought into the loop of things unless he entered the frame willingly. You had the mission to find Kuratsuchi, Noroi. You failed this mission. You were supposed to find her and dispose of her. Why was I the one to see her waiting for me in the stone? We had searched for her within her village but became certain that she was not there. We were forced to move out to look elsewhere. Apparently, we were looking at the wrong place. That doesn't please me. The fact is that Kuratsuchi is very much alive and with a backer that we do not know. Unfortunately, there is nothing that I can tell you that will please you, your majesty. You didn't find anything in your search. Noroi shook his head. No. There was nothing. No one even saw how she disappeared from that battlefield. Whoever took her knows how to cover their tracks. Naruto was silent. He hoped this did not come to trouble the future plans. Of course, he did think that Zetsu could be involved. But he didn't want to draw any conclusion without evidence. Zetsu was a suspect. But they needed motives behind the movement and they could not rule out any other forces operating in the shadows. And I thought we had mastered the art of lurking in the shadows. The Emperor said before turning to Yoshino who had appeared moments ago. What do you think? It could be Black Zetsu but whatever it is, it is something we cannot possibly overlook. Kuratsuchi has always hated you since she was captured in her attempt to assassinate you. Her hatred was the result of the suffering she suffered at the hands of Gurin. Perhaps we shouldn't have gone that far. That is unlike you, your majesty. Kuratsuchi got what she deserved. The fact that she is alive is the result of something we did not see happening. She should be dead by now. But she is alive that is a fact. We must decide how we deal with her existence because she will definitely try to backstab us in the future as long as she lives. Then we must think of way to kill her. Naruto said in a measured tone. I will think of something, Yoshino said. She must be removed. But not now. I will think of something clean. If death is not an option, controlling her should work. But that would raise suspicions given her contempt for you is not a secret. We have the tools to control her but such killing her is the best option. Fine, Naruto said. In the meantime, Noroi, have someone disposable keep an eye on her. We will proceed as planned on our agenda. Go to Gurin to help set up things for intelligence and decide how you will communicate with all other nations. Yes, your majesty. Noroi said before disappearing from the throne room. The first suspect of course is Black Zetsu. But what would be the motive there? Kuratsuchi has not the power to be used in gathering the Jinchuriki. And that is something she would most definitely not go along with unless she doesn't know about it. What is it? Is it his way of trying to disrupt things for us? We do not care about peace. Even if Kuratsuchi disrupts things, nothing will change for us. As long as the empire stands, we march on. But there is a powerful man amongst us who does care about peace and if he thinks we are not trying to achieve it, he might be tempted. Even if he does not turn on us, he could still try to do things on his own and we would eventually clash. Naruto frowned deeply. That is something we must deal with, he said. Kumo doesn't seem like it will give us problems. But of course, we must be cautious about it. Kuratsuchi's contempt, is however clear. And we might not be able to solve it. Then she must definitely die. Naruto said. He tilted his head slightly and rested it on the palm of his right hand. How would we go about it then? We must be able to do it without drawing attention to ourselves. I don't think we can escape without being suspect. Hmm then I trust you will come with something I will like. No one must know about it, aside from Noroi. Of course, your majesty. Yoshino said. You will have guests from Kanoha in the coming days. It must be Shikamaru Naruto said. Three days later. Being in the throne room hadn't been a pleasant experience before and it was still not. Shikamaru could not get over the feeling that he was looking at something else not human with Naruto's imposing form on the throne. 
The okay. fame he has earned himself from exploits in the battlefield do make it a little difficult. And to think this was the person Kanoha had dismissed. He would have become something greater in the leaf. But what could not be reversed occurred and it was now time to talk about the future. He followed Yugao's example, who knelt before the throne. Your Majesty. Yugao greeted, while looking straight into those cold eyes. Yugao, I was not expecting to see you. When I was told there would be guests, I expected him, not you. Certain arrangements led me to come with him. Yugao said. You don't look too happy to see me. It would make the purpose of my visit very difficult to see through. I have nothing against you. While not often, I'm not in a good mood due to certain events. My mind takes time to fully grasp certain things. No doubt something bothering you would have to do with the wave country. You spent too much time developing the country. Business into Yuzushio came through the wave we had even concluded that you depended heavily on the success of the wave to make Yuzushio economically sustainable. Shikamaru reasoned. Naruto's eyes shifted towards the Nara. That was before we came out but indeed, we spent too much effort in making the wave what it is today. The daimyo of the water country had even felt threatened by its growth that he had tried to take measures to curb it. Even so, if there had been too much damage, it would have most likely crippled the empire from a financial point of things. Naruto did not deny this. That was true. If the wave had been heavily damaged and the infrastructure was crippled, it would have been disastrous for them. The railways had already been built along with train stations. It was only the trains themselves that were outstanding. If that had been finished and destroyed, they would have suffered greatly. We managed to stop the situation from becoming disastrous. I doubt you came here to talk about the wave country. You already passed by it, you must have seen that we have started making it whole again. You have moved a bit too quickly. We thought we would offer our assistance but from what I saw, it doesn't look like it will be needed. Shikamaru said before lamenting. That is one point removed. I would not have accepted your help, either way. The wave isn't that poor that it would not be able to fund things. Yugao, you said you had something. Kanoha is offering me to you as a sign of goodwill. This is the result of us no longer willing to force you into a marriage with anyone in the leaf. I have ceased being a kunoichi of the leaf and I'm ready to serve the Uzumaki. Naruto stared at her for a long minute before responding. No doubt to spy on us. The thought did come to mind. Yugao admitted. But if you were to become a kunoichi serving under me, it would be impossible for you to betray us or even spy on us. Yugao did not hide her frown. Somehow that doesn't make me very comfortable. I'll not nurse your feelings. But I will accept you. You will find out that you will not be able to act against us. But you won't be in this village. You'll be sent to the sound. I am building my castle there. Shikamaru realized something his father had made an oversight in something. The Uzumaki were Fuinjutsu masters. Of course, they would have seals in place to ensure that Yugao does not do anything against them. There were seals that kept you from talking about certain things already at use these people could do far worse. At least he had cancelled that mission. Fuinjutsu. Shikamaru said with a slightly shake of his head. As Yugao-san has said. Kanoha wishes to draw a new agreement with you. I came here for that purpose and I have already been given what Kanoha wants in the new agreement. Tomorrow. Naruto said. Naori. The redhead flashed beside the throne. Your Majesty. Call Haku to send Shikamaru to a hotel. Give Yugao the seal and then take her to the sound. Tell Durin that she is a former Kanoha Umbu and she can make use of her any way she pleases but she must be given duties that fit her skills. Hi. Chapter 28 Durin stared at Yugao with an expressionless mask on her face. The sound country was going to be big in the near future. The added pressure to make everything run smoothly was that Naruto was going to have a home here. She would have liked to have the place to herself but she could not complain. Besides, from what she has seen of the emperor, he would not interfere with how she ran the village. He did keep those boundaries, but the fact that he would be around would cause her to act with caution. What she did not expect was for him to send someone from Kanoha to work for her. She couldn't trust the woman. 
The Emperor's word may be that they could trust her but she was a former ANBU and that didn't sit well with her. Her eyes turned to Naori. The man seemed a little impatient for some reason. Are you sure she can be trusted? I am only bringing her here on His Majesty's order. That does not answer the question. Guren said in a flat tone. I told you why I brought her. Do you need more, Guren? The Emperor says she must come here and be given a duty that is worth her skills and that is what must be done, unless you are beginning to question His Majesty's orders. Guren frowned. She certainly did not question the orders of the Emperor. He welcomed questions but there were those days and Naori's attitude told her this was one of those moments she just had to do what she was told. Fine. Good. Naori said. I will return if there is any other issue. Do you perhaps have any message you want to give to His Majesty? No everything is going smoothly. I want funds to be made available as soon as possible though. We will talk about that. Naori said before vanishing into thin air. The moment Naori left, Yugao stared at the woman. She knew her as Orochimaru's former subordinate but she had known that she had been working with Naruto. Are we going to have problems? Not unless you bring them. I don't intend to bring any problems. If it was my wish, I would not have come here but the Emperor has ordered that I come here and he didn't even give me time to say otherwise. If you don't want me to do anything, I have no problem in just moving around this city. But when he comes for an explanation, you'll have to answer for it. That sounds like a threat. Yugao shrugged. I'm just stating it as it is. I will decide what you will do. I must look at my structure and see where you will fit. But since he is going to come here and seems to trust you, I can make you head of his guard at the castle we are building for him. He should not complain if I make that decision. Yugao smiled. Indeed. When was the last time Karen had breakfast with such peace? Yes, it was around that time when her parents had still been alive. She had never thought that she would enjoy such moments again. But here she was, eating breakfast with family. It was casual, easygoing. Then again, most of her interactions were easygoing, unless there were those moments he called her rough. Haku was present, but she didn't mind his presence. He was a fresh breath compared to the other twisted people Naruto surrounded himself with. You should join us regularly, Haku. Karen said. I would be invading your moments with him. Don't you want to be alone with him while eating like this? Nonsense we can have privacy some other time. Besides, there is no better way to start a day than with the people you care about. And don't let that make you think you cannot start a family of your own. Naruto jumped in. Karen glared at him. Just leave the poor guy alone, Naruto. We are trying to enjoy some peace, you don't have to nag him about it. He must do what pleases him. You don't care about anything you just want to make sure that the Hayaton bloodline does not die out with him. Is there something wrong with that? Yes. I don't see it. I didn't just have him brought back to life for no reason. Naruto said. But of course, I don't want him to be miserable. He must just enjoy life. Men and women were created to be together. Nobody fills a woman more than a man. Don't try to pass on your love for sexual relationships to other people. Haku smiled. I don't think anyone can quite match his appetite. He said lightly. But you need not worry, I won't copy what he does. Disappointing who is gonna to be on my side and we visit bars at night after a hard day at work. You have been fairly content in doing it on your own in your Kanoha days. You don't need someone now. And I hope that going to the sound isn't just a way for you to whore around without me looking at you. If I find out that you are doing that, there will be consequences. I don't like the sound of that. I didn't mean for you to like it. Karen said with a nonchalant shrug. Then, how are things going with Kanoha and your many wives? With the war done, there are going to be many more marriages. You are going to do this political thing to strengthen your hand and alliances. I need to know about it now so I can think about how that will affect me. Speaking about that. Haku started slowly. You do need to speak to the Mizukage about that. She has said she was willing to enter into the marriage. But for her, it won't be just politics. You will be expected to fulfill your duties as a husband. From what I have seen of her, 
she has been looking for marriage for some time. I won't say she is desperate but it is a sensitive issue for her. Naruto looked thoughtful for a couple of moments before nodding. We will make a date to arrange that. This is going to take a toll on me, though. But at least if Karen is refusing to pleasure me, I can always go somewhere. If you speak like that, I won't mind sleeping in a separate room from you. And I won't allow you to visit at night. You can always visit one of your women after all. You mustn't joke about such things. You mustn't say such things carelessly. Message received. Naruto relented. If you are saying that, is she satisfied with our actions? She had said she was going to wait until the war to see what we would do before deciding on our future together. We are trading partners but not allies in that sense. There should be no issues given the direction of things. Make arrangements then. Naruto said. We will first handle Nadashiko. I have been holding it for a little longer we must do with haste. I'm not going there. I did not expect you to go there. Naruto was quick to say. Then there is Tamari. I have missed her a bit. I haven't seen her since I rescued her from Kuratsuchi. You have been busy. Haku pointed out. It is just those three only. Kanoha has changed its mind, so we don't have to worry there. Once you have done all your marriages, I must sit with all of them and have a talk with them about boundaries. They must know that I take priority. Naruto stared at Karen with an expressionless mask. Hadn't she done something similar when Tamari had come here? Thinking of the blonde, he really needed to go see her, but there were people coming here to discuss the future. Naruto hoped that things would not be so crowded in the future because there was no time to do other things or even spend time sitting on his throne with no one disturbing him. That sounds awfully a lot like marking your territory. I am going to do so. I came first. But they are older than you. Doesn't matter. I am the empress and they are just your wives. They must know their places. Like even when you are with either, if I feel like it, I can send Naoki to fetch you and you will come. I'll just bribe him to say he didn't find me. Naruto said with a wave of his right hand. I expect you to dress up and welcome our guests. They should be arriving anytime soon. And this should not be a reason to avoid taking your lessons. Why do I feel like I am being treated like a child? Your imagination. Naruto said. This does remind me, Haku. We must get rid of Shikamaru. I don't want him around when our people come. Will you conclude things with him today, then? Yes. Naruto said with a nod. He then stood up after finishing eating. Karen, I must warn you, Koyuki will bear me my first child. Of course, that will not have any consequence on the empire. The child I will have with her will be groomed to take over the land of springs. I'm learning not to care about thought as long you don't do it in front of me. I have even long suspected that you might have a child you don't even know about. You have a low opinion of your husband, wife. You are to blame here, given your record. Haku cut in, staring at the emperor who stared back but said nothing. Naruto's office. Your majesty, Kabuto is in the throne room waiting for you. Naori whispered to the right ear of the emperor. What does he want? He would not say. Bring him here. Hi. After a couple of minutes, Kabuto walked into the office. The place was tidy. A little unexpected given that the emperor always had messy hair. Perhaps he just liked it like that. The man was busy at work. The bespectacled shinobi walked towards the desk and stood motionlessly. Naruto did not glance at him his eyes were focused on the papers on his desk. Speak as you can see, there is much work to be done. Isn't it a little different from the work you usually do? I mean fighting, at least. These are duties that I must still carry out as emperor. But that is not the reason you are here, Kabuto. The emperor looked up to the former spy for a second before looking down on his papers. Kabuto didn't offer an immediate response. He did wonder if the emperor would even grant his wish. Still there was no harm in trying. He liked to believe that he had earned a bit of trust and the emperor didn't seem to view him as that much of a threat at least not with the Uzumaki branding on him. I want to leave the island and go do a little hunting. I don't wish to be followed during that time. 
I might even take a couple of weeks while away. How will that disappearance benefit me? When I return, I'll be ready to give you Mokutan. It is necessary that I depart to look at one last piece of the puzzle that will solve the current question that I have if I am successful, you might even be able to replicate Mokutan to the level of the Shodai Hokage. At this stage, there is no one who is capable of doing so. I want to see you break that boundary. You may leave, and no one will follow you. Kabuto smiled. Thank you. When you return, I want information. You can also look into how Kuratsuchi was able to simply vanish from the face of the shinobi world and then appear back with a new hand after I'd turned her original into ashes. You can do that, can't you? You and Orochimaru traveled much in the underworld, you must know a lot of what happens there. Kabuto looked at the emperor curiously. It was not that he hadn't heard about the curious case, but he could still look deep. The fact that the emperor was asking him meant that he didn't have the answers. Now, that was something else, wasn't it? His value just increased in this empire. I will find what I can. Kabuto said and then turned away from the emperor. The moment he went outside of the office, Naori appeared before him. I will see you out. Is it safe to leave the emperor alone? You need not worry about that, Kabuto. Just make sure you return alive from your adventures. We'd be willing to find your corpse and bring you back from the dead just to suck out everything inside your head then kill you again. Naori said in a cold tone. Kabuto only smiled and did not respond. Naruto leaned back on his chair when Shikamaru walked into his office with Haku. The Nara settled on a chair in front of the desk while the latter sat on the couches. The issue with Kanoha was something, he admittedly, was not really keen to talk about. But this was a chapter he had to resolve. They could not remain stuck in the first gear. How is Kanoha going to make amends for closing both its eyes when Yuzushio was destroyed? Shikamaru had not expected the question but did it not surprise him. Kanoha had betrayed the whirlpools and that was something they could not run away from. It was a sin of the past but their past nevertheless. I have not been empowered to talk about that. Shikamaru said. Is that what you think happened? That is what happened. Naruto said in a hardened tone. When I was with Jiraiya, I always asked him about such things. There was no way for Kyumo, Kiri, and Stone to move without Kanoha knowing about it. And even if they didn't know about it, why was it that some Uzumaki chose to scatter around the elemental nations rather than going to Kanoha? Possibly because they felt that Kanoha had betrayed them. Shikamaru answered. Given the numbers, it is possible that the leaf decided against getting involved for its own safety. You are the first person from the leaf to actually admit that. No one wants to admit it. Of course, we don't hold grudges. From where I stand, Kanoha made a logical decision. But given the facts, do you think it would be rational to ally ourselves with a village that once betrayed us? Does this really affect what we are going to discuss? Yes I want you to understand where we stand. Naruto said. You said there would be a new deal from the one I had made with the Sandame Hokage. No more marriage but what replaces that? To say there will be no marriage is not quite right, Shikamaru said with a smile. The decision was that one of your children would have to marry into a clan in Kanoha. The Hyuga clan was chosen. We will still need to iron things with the clan before they are allowed to engage with you on the matter. Naruto stared at Shikamaru. You also want that child to live in the hidden leaf. The Hyuga clan would not agree to such a plan if one of them had to leave Kanoha. It would mean the Byakugan is going out of their hands. For them, there is nothing more precious than the secrets of their eyes. You claim not to be a genius but you read between the lines quickly. Experience this is something I learned from the Sandame Hokage, Naruto said. Both Yugao and your father must have taken my displeasure seriously what else is there? Nothing really. We would like to be allies and perhaps trade with each other. Trade? You would do well to trade with the Wave Country. I will grant permission for that to happen. If those are your only terms, you will have an agreement. Next time you come, have the agreement at hand so we can sign it. You will still need to talk to the Hyuga clan. That is fine. Shikamaru nodded. You are not going to make any demands. No. Naruto said. 
do you want me to make a demand about something? It would make the situation a little fair and understandable. We have not been kind to you, personally. Nothing can really make up for how Kanoha treated you. Nothing can be changed, but we do hope for something better in the future. Personally, I am happy that you have come this far. Kind words Shikamaru, but simply words they are. You don't believe me? Whether I believe you or not is irrelevant. The fact is you are not Kanoha. Sound. This place was turning out to be a great city. Yugao had seen the maps drawn for what these people wanted to make of this place. If anything, it could just become the capital city of the empire. Or maybe not, but the fact that Naruto was building a castle here meant that this would be just as valuable as Yuzushiogakure. This was not expansion simply in the name of expansion but expansion with plans to make something great. This country was going to be developed in a way that would make it powerful, both in military and economically. No doubt, once the development starts picking up the pace, people would start flooding in. Yuzushio had restrictions but the recruitment here seemed a little relaxed, yet fast-paced. The tower of the leader certainly overlook everything. From its height, it was going to be taller than the imperial castle. Or maybe not. Yugao's senses perked up when she heard footsteps behind her. She narrowed her eyes and relaxed when she saw the emperor. At least people didn't know she was from the leaf. Being an ANBU meant that she had been unknown. Enjoying the view. I'll enjoy it once everything has been built and this city is fully standing. Yugao answered. It's bound to spectacular sight but this will not be a village. We are in the sound country, but this shall be named the imperial city, because the emperor rests here. That makes sense. Yugao said. I'm surprised that you haven't decided to take Iwagakure and Kumogakure. You were in a position to make such moves. With the expansion, I would have thought you would go this route. Perhaps that was the worst case scenario of how things could have moved once you ended up winning the war. There was the plan to make such moves but the Kage summit proved that such a move would result in resistance from the other great nations. Not to mention, we wouldn't want to absorb something that could result in our downfall. Iwagakure holds much resentment upon us and if we ended up going to that path, we'd be inviting a sickness into our midst and it would corrupt other people. It's amazing that you don't even bother trying to say you could not have thought of such an action. It's not like I fear you and you can do something about it or that you will tell Kanoha about it. What we did here was make a logical choice for the empire. Naruto responded. What has Gurin decided for you? Head of your guard in the castle. I have two guards, Naori and Hakui don't need another one. But it would not be bad to have someone guarding the place. My home here will be a little accessible since it is going to house many people who will work for the empire. Come on, follow me. He found Gurin sitting with a large blueprint of everything to be built. She had a tired look on her face. Your Majesty. She quickly stood up to greet him. Naruto motioned for her to sit down as he walked toward her. He stopped behind her chair and placed both hands on her shoulders. She stiffened for a second before he spoke. Relax. You have been working a little too much for your health, Gurin he said while massaging her shoulders. Gurin felt the tension in her body alleviate slightly. She closed her eyes to enjoy the feeling. After a couple of moments, her eyes snapped when she fully came to understand that it was the emperor standing behind her but she did not do anything to stop what he was doing. There is much to do. Gurin said. And I don't have too many people I can trust to take care of things. Yugao is around. I have issues with her. Yugao is a valuable asset. Use her skillfully. I sent her here because I decided that she could be of use. There is much to do here and you cannot handle everything yourself. This is your country to rule but you cannot do all things. You must allow others to do some things. Naruto said before turning his eyes to the map. Have you gathered materials for my castle? No. Gyurin said with a slight shake of her head. What is the hold up? We need more people to get the wood needed. And the castle is a little complex in its structure. We need to find someone proper who can build it and as things stand we don't have anyone. Naruto frowned slightly. This was not what he wanted to hear. He stepped away from Gyurin and moved closer to her desk, staring at the map. 
Yugao, do you know anyone who can assist quickly? Not with building but if you were doing something simple, you could ask a Mokutan user to provide basic structures. Kanoha has one. But I am not too sure they will provide one. I don't like the idea that someone from the Hidden Leaf will have the complete structure of my home. The Emperor said. I am flexible, so we can do something about the complex structure. The castle can be forgotten. I need something that will be built quickly. We must change things. Provide move land, Guren. We will build a compound. It will be five buildings. There is the main building which will have a library, the throne room, two war rooms, my office, Haku's office, and Yugao's quarters along with her people. My private quarters along with Haku's private quarters. Four other buildings will surround the main building. Two will be used as guest houses for our guests. One will be used for people I will hire to handle some things for the empire. That is simple enough, yes. Yes, but it will require more land. You can sort out that quickly. Naruto said dismissively. Yugao I will send you to Kanoha to get this Mokutan user. Didn't you say you were worried about someone knowing the structure of your home? This will cut costs in building the compound and it will make things go quicker than I first thought. Besides, I can trust Kanoha to keep a secret, yes. That was definitely not it. He was going to have the memories sealed away once the person was done. He would not be taking any chances. Kanoha had some skillful mind readers, but he could use Fuenjutsu to lock the memories away from those people. While at it, can you leave your clones to gather the wood we need to build the other structures? If you can get us the building materials, I can organize people to start putting things together. We cut more costs in that way. Fine I don't leave until later today. But when I leave, we leave together for the meeting with others. Guren blinked. I'd forgotten about that. Prepare yourself. I am not leaving without you. And Yugao, I will take you to Kanoha and then return to you. Guren, do a mission request to Kanoha. We will of course pay the right price for this service. Tsunade stopped what she was going and stared at Yugao with surprise. She had not been expecting to see the woman so soon and she had returned before Shikamaru could. Nothing had gone wrong, right? Tell me everything is well and the emperor did not see any threat with our offer the Godame Hokage said. Yugao shook her head. She smiled. She was going to miss the moments when the woman lost it and slammed her fist on the desk, shattering it. Those reactions had always alerted them. She was going to a man who did not react like a normal person. There is nothing wrong. What are you doing here? Where is Shikamaru? I left him in the whirlpools. I was sent to the sound after we told him why I had come. I am going to be stationed there. There are still some issues around where I will be working but I will see what happens when they finish what they are doing. Yugao said before adopting a thoughtful look. If Shikamaru has yet to return, then he must have been stuck in the wave country. Tsunade sighed in relief. It would have been a bad start of things if Naruto had rejected Yugao. Although she was not going to beg for an alliance, she knew that it was something that needed to be done. Naruto was a major power and his empire would become a major power in the near future. To avoid bloody conflicts, they needed to align their interests and work together to see a way out where they did not agree. What are you doing here then? I have been sent for a request from the sound. Yugao gave Tsunade the request to the Godame Hokage. Tsunade took the request silently and read it. Naruto would know about Yamato. He had been a shinobi of this village after all and his connection with the Sandame had given him prime position to be privy to some details. How important is this? It is important for the development of the imperial city in the sound. The emperor wants to build things quickly. When I left, he had thousands of clones chopping down trees to make wood for the development. They want to complete things with minimal costs. Money problems? Yugao shook her head. She would not say. If she was going to be a kunoichi of the empire, she would have to do things properly. Yamato is available but I am not sure I should let him go. Turning down the request would not be good for future relations. This is still a mission. The Godame said in thought. I have to return in a couple of hours. There is someone waiting for me outside the village to take me back to the sound. 
Tsunade leaned back in her chair and thought for a couple of moments before nodding. Umbu. Get me Yamato. She stood up from her chair and walked toward the window. When was Jiraiya even going to return to the village? He had disappeared off to Amigakure but he had said he would make some rounds to his connections to try to get some valuable intel. After some minutes, Yamato appeared in the office. I have a mission for you, Yamato. It will be perhaps a month-long mission. The travel to this nation had been a little quicker since he had flown here but he would have someone teleport him back to the rain once things have ended. He could not afford to be away from home for longer periods. Conan was capable and he trusted her but Zetsu worried him the most. That thing had made it clear that it would not end things as they were. No, he was going to come back and Nagato knew he would be the first target because of the Rinnegan. With it came the control of the Ghetto Mazo. Without control of the husk, there was no way Zetsu could try to seal the bijus and revive the jubi. Ridding the world of that person had to take priority for him. Nagato looked ahead, the emperor was walking alone within the forest, coming towards him. He was a little away from the village. With the barriers surrounding the village, flying over meant you could not see it, even with the Rinnegan. He had ended up getting lost. You could have told me you were coming in early. The emperor said. I did not expect to arrive this early and I wanted to see a bit of the elemental nations before coming here. Nagato said calmly. Everyone appears to be picking up the pace in wave. We have had to move fast because we don't want things coming to a halt. Nagato nodded. One reason I came here early is because I want to talk about Zetsu. As long as he is alive, there is the danger that he will pounce. It would be meaningless for us to create foundations for peace if he is just going to topple it. Zetsu was indeed a threat that could not be overlooked and if he was the one behind Kuratsuchi's return, then there was going to be trouble. And he had warned him that he would allow him to do what he wanted but would then crush it all. The thought was a little scary considering that the person could be anywhere and could manipulate any person to do his bidding. His knowledge of things happening in the shinobi world meant his danger was above all other things. He has somehow managed to disappear without trace. We have even stopped trying to search for him because it has been a waste of time. But if he appears we will pounce. There is something happening nevertheless. Kuratsuchi was supposed to be dead but she is very much alive and her intense hatred for me is something that complicates things for your peace. You should have killed her long ago when you had the chance. Killing her now will only draw the anger of other great nations. Right now, we should be working on creating stability. Once things are stable, we can work out things with other nations. But her hatred can be in the way of things. Hatred is dangerous and can spread quickly. If not managed, she could spread it to other people and we would soon have to fight another war. If we are unable to stop a war from happening in our current position, we have failed. You have failed. This peace-loving junkie, Naruto shook his head, yet with a smile. Nagato and his peace were something else. But he was indeed right. It was all the more reason they had to move quickly and make sure that Zetsu was incapacitated. But how would they go about it? Kuratsuchi should have also died. He made a mistake there. He has always known her personality had examined her after all. But still, he had her and then released her. When he thought of killing her this happened. What had he been thinking? Was it because he wanted her to become such a kitsch? Did he think he could control her? Or was it perhaps he had lusted her body and then determined that she would not die without him betting her? Naruto laughed. What was he thinking? I have made mistakes. It's ridiculous given all the preparations I made. You really cannot account for what other people will think. Everybody makes mistakes. That is just part of our nature. Nobody can live and die without going wrong somewhere. My experiences have taught me that nobody is perfect. I did when I went against Yahiko's wishes. He had warned me but in my pain and hatred, I fell into Obito's hands. I might also be making another one. Naruto said in thought. Sasuke. Naruto nodded. Perhaps I should end him when the chance presents itself. Either way, he is one that I that will make things happen for me or ruin me. Why are you keeping him alive? Insurance and as a man who loves his clan. I can sympathize with his wish to restore his clan. 
In any case, I'll have to make a decision quickly before I have more regrets. I seem to be getting things wrong these days. You were just not willing to change your plans on certain things. Perhaps but I must learn. That is part of being alive. Nagato said. What is happening with the clan elders? I received a message saying they wished to speak to me after the meeting. Senile old fools. Naruto said in a flat tone. Inner problems? Something like that. It must be solved quickly. We don't want to have a situation where there is infighting it could cripple the empire and everything we have fought for could fall apart. One thing I saw in the Akatsuki's early days was that unity provided a platform for a clear environment that was conducive for the same conclusions even though thoughts could differ. It seems that the elders do not trust my ability to lead peace. To them, I am a violent person with tendencies to go overboard. Maybe securing a second residency is another attempt to flee from them. The blonde said with a slight shake of his head. Speak to them and deal with it. I'm getting tired of them. Any more of it and I will strangle them all to death. I thought you couldn't act against the clan. They are no longer thinking about what is good for the clan but are acting on fear. I have always respected decisions I felt were reasonable and made sense. But anything irrational, I do not accept. Gyurin looked around the peaceful village of Yuzu with a smile on her lips. She was truly happy to be back here. The load of work that would be waiting for her when she goes back to her new home was no longer on her mind. She had spent a couple of years roaming through the rooftops at night to guard this place and chasing spies just outside of this land. It had been happy days. This village had become her home she still felt that it was her home and that she belonged here. Of course, what also made her happy was the thought of seeing Yukamaru once more. I'll admit, I miss being in this place. Gyurin said to Haku with a smile. Admittedly, the work on that side has become a lot more than what I was doing here. Wasn't it because you enjoyed hunting down people and torturing them for information? Haku asked with a raised eyebrow. I still get to do that in the sound. There are many people who come in and many who try to do some funny business. Some spies who are just looking for information are usually left in peace. But we still keep watch of things. I want to create an environment that allows for spies to come into the city. But there will be rules. If we do things that way, it allows for better exchange of information. Haku would not say how things should work, but he wondered what Naruto would say about that. They would spend most of their time in the sound and it might not be safe to have spies coming in and going as they please. Then again, he need not to worry. Naruto was surely going to put the same barrier he placed around the compound here to keep out unwanted people. Just be careful when you do your things. Not everyone wishes you well. And the sound is set to become bigger than Yuzushio, some people might not be happy that you are the one who gets to rule it as the daimyo. You think once I'm done some people might want an Uzumaki to lead? A possibility but don't worry. You have worked with the Uzumaki and they are not going to do anything to you. Unlike with the elders, everyone else is absolutely loyal to Naratone there will be no one going against him. Haku said confidently. Have you thought of taking Yukamaru? You could take him and groom him to be the one to replace you. Wouldn't the emperor choose who is to take over after me? But I would not mind leaving that role of politics to become an active kunoichi. If you give him reason, he isn't going to deny your request. You have seen how he handles things she isn't unreasonable. The only problem would be Yukamaru's lack of power. That might be the only reason Naruto would not want him acting as Danya but feudal lords have never been known for their strength. I will give it some thought. Gurin said. I need you to go to the land of canyons. Once we officially assume control of that country bordering the Sound and canyons, we'll need to have a relationship with them. In our eyes, when we speak of the Sound, we are talking about the land from hot water, going through the fire border until the canyons. But I will see to it. Later that day. The day had truly been a long one for Karen. She had started off at the wave to lead a ceremony in making Tazuna the leader of the wave country. At last the people had been more than pleased with the decision to make the old man leader of the country. But it had it been a hassle for her. After that, she had to welcome some people who came to see Naruto about alliances and business opportunities with the empire. The bloody bastard hadn't met with any of them and her deal with it along with Haku. 
Karen glared at him when she walked into the office. She didn't mind that he seemed busy at work, and what infuriated her was that he didn't even bother looking up to her. She thought of flying over to punch him but that would only make her vent in vain and have no effect on him. She calmed herself and stalked toward the sofas before throwing herself down. That is a shock. Naruto said without looking up to Karen. I thought you would throw a fit. I am going to throw it later on. You banking your frustrations now. I must you tricked me. I can't believe that I spent my day playing the negotiation games and playing politics. This is not what I had in mind when I agreed to marry you. I didn't think you'd complain that much just after a single day of work. Naruto said with a raised brow, his eyes fully on the redhead. Was it that bad? What do you think? Naruto ignored this. I'll help you relieve the stress later. He offered with a smile. Hell no. I just want to have a full night's sleep. And if I feel your hand touching me, I am going to bite it. Naruto shook his head. You can be cruel at times, wife. The emperor said. He put the papers he was reading together and leaned back in his chair. I'm not really going to force you to do things you don't want to do. I don't want anything going bad because you are doing it just to get it done. If you don't want to work, let me know and I will make your position powerless. What do you mean powerless? You'll just be my wife with no real authority. Even when I'm not able to execute my duties, I'll put measures in place to ensure that Haku takes over, if he cannot do so, Yoshino will do it. That is the price you will pay for having all your duties removed from you. Karen frowned. She did not like the idea of having no authority. What else, are you going to take my throne away as well? Yes the throne is a symbol of power and authority. You should not sit on it if you have neither. You are cruel. To gain something, you must be willing to forfeit something. There is always a price for everything in this world. I did not give you authority just so you can walk with your chest puffed up in it while not doing anything. It is either you work for the empire or you don't. Either way, it changes nothing because you will remain my wife. I'll think about it and I'm not sure the elders would agree to that. Their thoughts are irrelevant. Naruto said in a flat tone. I was wondering when you'd come to this point. I guess they pushed things a bit too far. Karen said without surprise. Before Naruto could respond, Haku knocked at the door and entered along with Shizuka. When Karen saw the green-eyed woman, she frowned. The woman was beautiful, she had power and she had the assets. She had nothing, just a loud mouth and the stamina to keep up with him in bed. Karen was envious seeing her. The other people in Naruto's life were like that. Her self-esteem took a dive off a cliff with such thoughts and she wondered what would keep Naruto coming back to her. Naruto looked at the black-haired woman with a smile. He had certainly chosen well. Seeing her with Haku, thinking about personality, he thought perhaps he should have left things for Haku. Those two could have maybe gotten along. Your Majesty. Shizuka bowed slightly as she greeted the Emperor. Formalities to the side, Shizuka. Naruto responded calmly. But, welcome to Yuzushiogakure. This is my home he said before turning to look at Karen. I think you have already met, Karen, yes. Yes, that was a couple of years ago, but we did not exchange any words. Shizuka said. Hello, Karen-san. Shizuka-san. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the flat response from Karen. Come sit in front of my desk, Shizuka. Someone is a little moody today. We don't want you getting contaminated when you have just arrived. Shizuka nodded and settled in front of the emperor's desk. Haku sat across Karen, with a slightly amused look on his face but he received a glare from the redhead. You look well, I trust that your journey was pleasant. It was. Shizuka said before she eyed Karen. The woman didn't seem to appreciate her presence. That was a little disappointing. She didn't expect to get this kind of reception but there was really nothing she could do about it. The war is over. She said. Yes I guess now we can talk about our future marriage plans, children, and the future of Nadashiko. Aren't you jumping a couple of years with children? Naruto just smiled as he responded. We can arrange for our marriage to happen in, let us say 8 to 10 days from tomorrow. 
We don't have really to make anything formal because discussions have already been held. You just have to prepare for the ceremony and we will come when you are ready. I can arrange that quickly. Finally, she would be married. Yet, Shizuka still didn't how this was going to go. She had been in a relationship before, but it hadn't ended that well. It was what crippled her heart. She had to make this work or she would be miserable for the rest of her life. This was not simply a political thing. Her happiness mattered. The future of her village mattered. But would she be happy? Shizuka didn't know but she could hope. Good. Naruto said. What are you thinking about? If I can really be happy? You are going to be part of my life once we marry. I did have hopes of love and happiness. They were crushed, and now I wonder if I can be happy. You keep telling me to open my heart for happiness, but I wonder if it will be possible. Only you can make it possible, Shizuka. I can try to make you happy but if you keep your heart closed, you'll never be happy. You will remain miserable. Happiness begins in your heart and your mindset. People will indeed make you sad, but you can move forward. Being stuck in the past keeps you from moving forward, you just become miserable. You say such things, but I wonder. Yes, with my reputation, it is hard to believe such words from me. But you believe what you want. Only you can decide if you want to believe my words. You decide if you want my words to give you hope or not. What is with this conversation? Karen asked, staring at Naruto. This is rather unlike you, Naruto. Indeed. Naruto did not deny this. But that is only according to how I deal with you. I have always tried to adapt to the person I am dealing with. Can't you just be normal? What is to be normal, Karen? The emperor asked. Haku, take Shizuka and show her a place she will rest. Let her rest for a bit and we will call her once dinner is ready. Haku nodded and stood up. He left the office silently with Shizuka. Once the two were gone, Naruto faced Karen with an expressionless mask. Jealousy does not suit you, Karen. Who said I was jealous? I can tell. I have studied people long enough and I think I know you by now. What are you worried about? You think you are no good and that I'm going to find happiness somewhere and only partake in you just to make babies? Well, that is not beyond you, is it? No, but do you think I'd do that to you? I don't know. It is really sad to be doubted by someone you call your wife, Naruto said with a shake of his head. You'll get over it. Karen said with indifference. Have you been sleeping with her as well? No. It must be killing you. Yes, admittedly. Since she is so close, I might leave you tonight and knock at her door. She is a special case that I don't want to ruin. Still I think I have given it enough time. You're sickening. How can you talk about sleeping with another woman when I am sitting right here? Aren't you the one who started it? Did I? Naruto sighed. You've had a long day, Karen. But fine, we shall never have a discussion like this ever again. You won't ask me anything and I won't tell you anything. Is that good enough, for you? I can live with it. But be nice, Karen. We are dealing with different people. I can't afford to have meaningless conflicts that will put strains on personal relationships. Sometimes you can hold on to things until your old age, and for you, that is going to be a long time. Naruto was dressed in a crimson robe, hands folded on his back. He was standing in the throne room with both Yoshino and Naoki. The meeting with his other leaders was about to begin any time soon. We are going to talk with Kyumo, IWA, and I need to sort out the issue with Kiri. But to avoid going into all nations, I want to propose a summit with all the leaders to talk about the future in the elemental nations. It is then that we will discuss other matters personally with the different leaders. Kyumo and IWA will be forced to come here, but the others have a choice. Yet, we must try to convince them to come here. Do you think Kanoha will come? Yoshino asked. I passed the idea with Shikamaru and we still need to sign our agreements. Besides, don't you think it is time to talk about how we are all going to live with each other from now on? That discussion does need to come, but I wonder if we will make any headway, things will be difficult. At least in terms of the Kages. 
but we should be able to tie down loose ends with everyone else except Iwagakure. It remains the only village that will trouble us. Isolation will not harm us, but them. If we are able to work around with the other four, IWA becomes irrelevant. Having this meeting with all the Kage will also help us push our interests with the trains. To have more influence within the elemental nations and to generate enough revenue, we need the trains throughout all nations. We can't have them moving just within our empire. We had not budgeted for that. Yoshino pointed out. The mines you took, are they still producing gold? Some of them. I did manage to collect some loot from bandits, but still enough. Doesn't matter, we just need something to make a start. We will work out something. We can make arrangements with other nations to build the trains for us and we will pay them once completed. But that means we would owe them and they can hold us for ransom. I don't want that situation. Naruto said in thought. Another idea was getting the daimyo to agree to pay for everything. Of course, keep the arrangement a secret and we would pay them back with taxes. It is much simpler to control daimyo than kage. The latter option makes sense. We had already made some inroads anyway. If we do this, then, we can set up things quickly. Yoshino said in thought. Should we set up collateral in case the daimyo decide to shift in a way we do not like? Do you need to ask? But make a plan and leave it to Noroi to execute everything. Of course, your majesty. Yoshino said. You can leave to deliver the messages to the Kage, Naoki. By now, you must have set up the portals in all nations. Make it quick and return before the day ends. If possible, return with others so we know when we set up our things. Hi. Naoki said before vanishing in thin air. Naruto and Yoshino began to walk away from the throne room. They took the passages, heading towards the war room. Iwagakure. The pressure from Kanoha and Suna was real. Kuratsuchi had been surprised to learn that there was such an arrangement that was made. This was truly just a way to make things miserable for them and it was going to suck the life out of this village. And not mention that the earth daimyo was being hard on them. She'd entertained the thought of just plotting his death but with the emperor standing close by, it would not end well. There was only one way of ending this trouble and it was through swallowing her pride and face humiliation. It was that or face a slow death. Humiliation was better any day. Kuratsuchi would not make decisions that would make this village rot and face decay. They could not grow their military strength to challenge the empire with these kind of conditions. She needed to get a handle on things before it became difficult to even breathe. She leaned back in her chair and stared at her father who was sitting in front of her desk. The war hadn't left them in a good position. She was fortunate that her father had somehow survived. If not, they would have been in real trouble. You look stressed. Kitsuchi said. Grandfather left us in a mess. Kyumo is not responding to the message I sent. They are likely going to get along with the emperor and that does not bode well for us. The other three have no issues with the emperor as well. As things stand, we will have to cede to the demands of Suna. Is there any other choice? Kuratsuchi shook her head. No. We are backed against a corner and if the emperor does manage to work out things with the other villages we won't have any chances of revenge. We will be forced to live with what has happened. She could not possibly try to fight the empire head on her own. Iwagakure would be destroyed by the emperor's allies. What would be so wrong in forgetting revenge, Kuratsuchi? It is pointless at this point and not good for this village. You might be willing to forget everything, father, but I will not. I will not forgive the emperor for what he has done. But I will admit that we will have to bow our heads if we are going to survive. There is no other way of doing things. Kitsuchi shook his head. Perhaps this was the influence of Anoki. He could see it in her eyes, that he could not change Kuratsuchi's mind regarding the emperor. He didn't like the man and would not forget what happened, but he was willing to let the issue be to move on to the future. Fighting the emperor was only going to lead to their ruin. He hoped Kuratsuchi didn't do anything that would prove to be disastrous for this village. At least she was thinking clearly and not influenced by her hatred. Are you going to set up a meeting with the Kazakage? Yes and we have to pay the emperor for damages done to the wave country. 
I don't know how we are going to do that with the current situation. Even if we bow our heads, it will only relieve the pressure a little but we are most likely not to get as much mission requests from the smaller nations as before. If that becomes the case, we will have to work hard for our image to get it back. Invasions will lead us to ruin. Things have changed now. We can't act against any other village without the other great nations taking action. It is perhaps for the better. But not for us. Naruto settled on his throne and then released a long breath. Talking could be tiring. He was not used to this kind of heavy work. He had enjoyed the small moments in his younger days when he could go all day without speaking to anyone. Hell, he could even go a month without even talking to the bijou inside of him. Haku would have to do more talking as he was going to start avoiding some talks. Perhaps Karen was correct to complain about the heavy load of work. Still, it was something that could not be avoided. He had known this would come and he could not complain to anyone started this thing and he had to complete it. He would eventually get used to it either way. He opened his eyes and then rested his head on the palm of his left hand. He was facing Nagato and Yoshino. I spoke to the elders. They had nothing better to say. Their fear of you is what makes them itch. At the same time, they also fear me given my actions when I took over Amage Cure. Still, they would prefer me over you. Uzumaki politics. Naruto shook his head. I will sit with them and solve it once and for all. We have more important issues to deal with. If we get rid of Zetsu we will not have reasons to worry. Everything else should move according to plan. We will make a plan for him. Naruto said firmly. Will you need to be teleported to the rain or will you move on your own? I will fly. Something came up that I need to check out something along the way. Perhaps Setsu will appear. From what we know, he doesn't have the power to best me in battle. But that doesn't mean I won't be careful. We won't worry much since it is you. Naruto said. We will talk. Nagato turned away from the Emperor and Yoshino. Once the Rinnegan wielder was gone, Yoshino spoke to the Emperor. Where has Kabuto gone to? I do not know but he said he would return with something valuable and I have also sent him to look into the Kuratsuchi issues. When it comes to intelligence gathering, he does it better than his experiments. We should either have him impart his skills on some people or have him become a spy rather than waste his talents on research. Would it not be risky? Kabuto is a little too smart for his own good. We are first to know when he misbehaves and we can just kill him with a snap of our fingers. We must make use of whatever we have perhaps giving him some purpose will make him settle. If not, no harm done. The Emperor said. Abito's Sharingan is still secure, yes? Yes. Along with the other Sharingans we collected. Whatever we do, we must consider that Madara can be revived. Things happening now have shown me that the unexpected can occur even if you take some measures to stop them. We must be ready for whatever happens tomorrow. Madara's power is something we must fear. Up until now, I had been certain he would not return, but I am not too sure now. Preparing does not do any harm. Yoshino said. It would be problematic to face him. He does have the perfect Susanoo. That is something one cannot go against without some sort of special ability. We will deal with it. I still have the QB and Sage mode. Waving away at Yukimaru, Guren couldn't help but smile sadly. He had been a puppet for Orochimaru. His special ability had been harvested although it killed him to do so. She had grown to love and care for him. And now, he was her child. He has grown though. Yet still a bit fragile. His health had improved. It made her happy. She was going to miss him. With arrangements now done, she was going back to the horrors of work in the sound. She would not have the time to come here to see him. At least he had made friends and this was the safest place he could be. She smiled bitterly at the thought that she was still the one who killed his mother. She eyed the silent Haku and asked. Aside from Yoshino and the Emperor, who else knows my secret? Those in intelligence but this is something nobody even talks about. You can say it is old news and something that has been decided to be kept buried. Haku answered. Why do you ask? I just thought it would ruin me if someone told Yukimaru about it. 
nobody here is going to go that far. You have already displayed your loyalty and we are loyal people. We keep our word and you will not be betrayed. Besides, you have become a valuable member of the Empire. All the more reasons this could be used against me. If you are that concerned, just tell him the truth. He'll hate me and it will hurt him. I don't want to face either. Haku shook his head. If you love him enough, you will tell him. The truth does have a nastier way of coming out at the wrong time. Whether he hates you or not is something you don't know and can only confront when it occurs. You want him to know the truth. Still, it is your decision to make. Guren smiled. Orochimaru would have been keeping this information to himself while blackmailing her with it. Yukimaru had been taken care of since he came here. And they did not use their knowledge against her. Perhaps things could work out. She could trust these people but she didn't know if she could tell the boy the truth. She didn't want to lose him meant a lot to her. There was no one much more valuable to her than him. I'll think about it. Guren said in a quiet tone. The emperor is busy sorting out his marriages. Alliances with Kirigakure and Suna have to be strengthened and there is no other way than that. Of course, Kiri is not a done deal. We still need to talk more about it. But Suna is done at least from where I stand. He mentioned that at the meeting. Guren said. How do I go about if I also want to be involved with the emperor? Haku was silent for a full minute that had shocked him. It had just come from nowhere. Am I mistaken in understanding your words? No. Once more, Haku fell silent. Why? I have pride in myself and I love myself, maybe a little too much. I was just thinking that I wouldn't give myself to some lowly man. I wouldn't even allow that kind of man to touch me. But the emperor is not that kind of man. He is powerful, my superior and someone I would willingly give my body. As you had decided with Orochimaru? This is different. Apparently. Haku said. What would have given Guren such an idea? How was Naruto even going to respond to this? Knowing him, he was probably expecting it and he would not be surprised if he had hinted that he was willing. Have you thought this through? I have Guren said with a firm nod. Well, since you lead the sound, it would make sense and you don't have to worry about being closer since he is going to have a home in the imperial city, where you live. Haku said in thought. I will talk to him. Chapter 29 Naruto stared at Sasuke from his throne. He knew what the Uchiha wanted and had permitted for his hateful presence to appear before him. He could have stopped it if he willed and Sasuke would have been powerless to do anything about it. Still, when he took Itachi's body, he hadn't thought that there would be many things going wrong in his planning. Everything was supposed to be going well with the Uchiha becoming his tooler maybe a potential tool. He had no problems with Sasuke gaining the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, it was only then he could be controlled by him. But with many things going wrong, Naruto wondered if he was also making a mistake. Those eyes would not be able to turn on him, but it still did not change that they could turn other things he valued. Going nowhere with his thoughts, the emperor rested his head on the palm of his left hand and then spoke. Have you come across Zetsu? Sasuke's eyes sharpened. He knew there were issues there and his brother had already warned him. Why do you ask? Don't be stupid. Just answer the simple question. He came to me, and went away before I could do anything. He wanted to recruit me and said there was a way he could get my eyes. Naruto stared upon hearing those words. By, my eyes Sasuke meant Itachi's eyes. But that was not what bothered him in that statement. How could Zetsu get those eyes when he had protected them? There could not possibly be a traitor amongst the Uzumaki unless it was that woman. On his own, Zetsu could not know about the secrets of the village. It was also unthinkable that one of them would turn out to be a traitor. This village had barriers made to keep people and things out. Someone like Zetsu could not come in any place without them knowing. Whether through land or air or below, you always went through a barrier before entering the village. There would be some investigation into this. Then again, Zetsu could have been lying to Sasuke. He was manipulative that much was apparent. You could have just burnt him with Amaterasu. Why did you not go that far? I don't take orders from you, Naruto. Sasuke responded in a cold tone. 
Where do you stand, Achiha? Naruto asked, he did not raise his voice, his relaxed posture did not change either. What is that supposed to mean? Do you even think that just because I am in your village I will be scared of you? You do not frighten me. Naruto shook his head slowly. For someone hailed as a genius you are rather stupid and blind, the emperor said before raising his right hand. He snapped his fingers and marks began to spread through the floor within the palace. What the H? A massive force of gravity pulled Sasuke to the floor. He slammed down on both knees. Sasuke gritted his teeth in anger and frustration. The moment the seal below activated, he had known something was wrong. The force pulling him down was too much. He couldn't even summon his Susanoo. When the force continued to pull him down, both his hands slammed on the floor as he attempted to keep his face from kissing down. He did not hold for too long. His face hit the floor, he realized, his Sharingan was no longer active. Naori appeared out of thin air holding a jug with a pair of eyes. I will give you Itachi's eyes Sasuke but should Zetsu appear before you again, you will take action. And if Kanoha tries to act against us and betrays us in any way, you will be the one to turn the might of the Uchiha on them. Sasuke didn't hear anything the Emperor said, he was struggling to keep his eyes open. When he could no longer hold firm, everything turned black. Take him and ensure he is programmed in order. Once you are done, have Karen implant the Sharingan and then brand him. Once done, send him to a hotel in the wave and have someone look after him while he recovers. The Uchiha was a handsome young man it is a pity that such a handsome face had to be turned into something else. Naruto opened his eyes, still on his throne, as Karen walked towards him. She stopped just inches away from him, staring at him intently. Sasuke was not turned into anything. We simply put suggestions in his head. Is that not going to cause you trouble in the near future? Noshirsue had a Mangekyo Sharingan that was capable of manipulating someone without that person or people even realizing they were being manipulated. It was indeed a powerful Genjutsu. Perhaps it was out of paranoia but Danzo feared that it would also control him and then stole one of his eyes. Shirsue gave his other eye to Itachi. Danzo used it for his devilish desires, but that just shows you just show powerful Shirsue's visual prowess was, but he was not a typical Uchiha. Despite being a Jinchuriki, it would even manipulate me, and since you don't know, you can't escape from it. It completely rewrites your mind frames. We developed a similar technique. For what reason? Just insurance in case things go south. Naruto said with a shrug. You should not worry yourself with such details. I must worry recent events have shown that even you can get things wrong. You are not stupid, but that doesn't make you perfect. You can get things wrong and at this stage, and something of this magnitude, it would cause problems if ever discovered. Don't be concerned, we have things covered up. The emperor responded in a confident tone. Noroi appeared out of thin air didn't even acknowledge Karen's presence but leaned towards the emperor and whispered. Nagato has not arrived in Amage Cure, yet and we don't know where he is. His presence has seemingly vanished, the man said. Conan has called for you as she is deeply worried. Naruto sat motionlessly. This simply could not be happening now. Not when he had just finished things and was planning to take the Empire's rise to another level. Nagato was not someone he had to worry about but if he disappeared like this, he had reasons to worry. Zetsu was not someone who could defeat Nagato in battle even though he knew the secrets of the Rinnegan. Overwhelming power gave you that advantage. But what could have happened to him? Zetsu could not have pounced, could he? Where was that good for nothing Kabuto? Have you exhausted everything? Yes, your majesty. But we are still trying to look. Conan attempted to summon him, but nothing happened. Naruto stood up from his throne. He too was connected with Nagato. It was something that was only arranged for emergencies but he should also be able to get the feeling. He did slow hand seals and then slammed his right hand on the ground silently. A summoning seal appeared on the floor but nothing happened. He stood up with a large frown on his lips. Karen stared at him curiously. What is wrong, Naruto? Naruto did not offer an immediate response. Kabuto had gone away, saying he wanted to handle something. 
But he didn't have to worry about the man betraying the empire but it didn't mean that he could not do anything that could not be of benefit to them. Not unless he had some twisted view that it would indeed be helpful at which case, he had to worry. We will talk when I return. Naruto responded to Karen before facing Noroi. Take me to Amage Cure. He commanded Noroi. The redhead placed his hand on the emperor's right shoulder and they vanished into thin air. Conan was deeply worried for Nagato. It was not like him to disappear. He was strong. She even thought that the emperor could not defeat him if they were fighting a serious battle. But, there was Zetsu. There was still much that they didn't know about that thing, but what they knew was that although he didn't have the physical prowess to cause them danger, he was still dangerous. Her childhood friend had been talking much about getting rid of him. That thing could not have been thinking about doing the same thing to him, right? Because of Abido, they knew that Nagato had not awakened the Rinnegan but it was something that was awakened by the infamous Madara. The Dujitsu was also the only piece that could make the man's dream a reality. Without it, there was no reviving the Jubi. But how was Zetsu going to do this? Madara had to be first revived and they were going to use the Rinnegan to do so. But Nagato would not willingly do something like that. And with the power of the Rinnegan, it was not just anyone who could wield them to their full potential. Conan did not feel relief when Naruto appeared at the balcony in the tallest tower along with Noroi. For him, this would be a major loss. He had almost everything to lose if Madara was indeed in the making of coming back. He was the one who came up with the plan to topple Abito. They had always been confident that Madara would not come back because they believed that no one would be able to defeat Nagato. When was he supposed to return? Naruto went right at it the moment he saw Conan. Three days ago, but he never showed up. Two days ago, he only summoned the Preta Path. I don't think it was for battle but a measure taken to avoid exposing himself. Conan said. Didn't he tell you where he was going? He frowned thinking that since Nagato was talking about Zetsu, he must have gone to Madara's hideout. The place was a red zone they had sealed off. But Nagato could walk through the barriers and he could even deactivate them. Noroi, send someone to Madara's hideout and see if you cannot find a trace of Nagato. If you find anything, then we can conclude that things are going south. The emperor instructed. Hi. Noroi vanished without saying another word. Naruto faced Conan. This is a serious problem and one we do not need at the moment. We can't simply put our hopes on that Nagato is fine and that he will come back. We must think about the worst case scenario. If something has happened to him, will you bring him back? We have enough people to make the exchange of life as you know, our jutsu requires us to make sacrifices. But we must still get his body back. At this stage, we don't know where he is and if we will even find him which is a serious problem. Everything just seems to be going south now. Perhaps we should not have been so confident that Nagato would be fine and made plans in case something happened. We should have done more to hunt down Zetsu as we already knew that he was a threat. And the members of the Akatsuki? Not all of them were recruited by Nagato. That is another problem. At least we know if things are going where we fear, we know what they will be doing. With the members of the Akatsuki, if they decide to join Zetsu, we will have to hunt them down and kill them all before they cause trouble. Naruto shook his head with disappointment over how things were turning out. Stay on guard. We will speak once Noroi has returned with answers. We will decide what to do then. Haku was used to seeing Naruto stare into the empty space in front of him with a non-existing presence while sitting on his throne. But he was not used to seeing was the emperor releasing an oppressing atmosphere that demanded all who stood before him to bow and be cautious. It always felt like he was staring at the image of a god dressed in human flesh or perhaps something worse than Theta Demon. The emperor certainly had a murderous killing intent that could make even the most experienced shinobi spill their guts out. It was maybe how he channeled his hidden anger over his lonely and painful childhood. He was not the only person who had been summoned into the throne room, Yoshino was also present. Haku did wonder how Naori could still stand next to the emperor without the urge to flee from the man. Despite what he knew of the emperor, this feeling made him nervous. After some time of waiting in silence, Noroi appeared out of nowhere and knelt down. Your Majesty. The man started, his tone flat. 
It does appear that Nagato went to the hideout. But there was no sign of him or that a battle occurred. But he did not get inside. From what Shin said, the Preda was the one that went inside the hideout. We found it in the passages motionless till, no sign of battle. Haku frowned no matter how you looked at it, even if you were hopelessly naive and optimistic, you could not listen to those words and say Nagato had gone for a stroll and left his precious path behind. He could understand why Naruto did not appear to be in a good mood. Since he won the war, the important things haven't been going according to plan. It was almost like all the planning done was for nothing. Who could have thought that the man who called himself a god could just disappear? While it was highly arrogant of Nagato, there was still no one who could say the man was not powerful. If he was indeed lost, it would be devastating to the Empire's strength but much more of what was about to come as the result of allowing him to fall into the hands of the enemy. The only person who could have gone this far would be Zetsu. We have a serious problem, your majesty. Don't state the obvious, Yoshino. Of course, I know this is serious. In all our planning, we never actually thought that something like this would happen to Nagato. We did think there was the possibility of Madara coming back to life he isn't after all reliant on Nagato. He could return as a reanimation which wouldn't have been a bad thing for us because then we could seal his soul away. But Nagato disappearing like this was something we thought not likely to occur. Then we can conclude that it was Zetsu. If no battle occurred, how did he even manage to do it? If he could do it to Nagato, then he could do it to you as well. Yoshino said in a serious tone. We must figure out how. That will lead us into understanding the mystery of what Zetsu is. Naruto said with a small nod of his head. We must be on the lookout. Barriers must be kept up but everything else continues as planned. We cannot simply allow this to stop our plans. But the other nations must not know about this. Indeed. That will be easy for us to do unless Zetsu decides to act otherwise. If that happens, we must be on the defensive. We could face a rebellion. If we have the remaining members of the Akatsuki and those two villages coming up against us, as well with the presence of Madara, we will be imperially screwed from both the front and the back. If not for the situation, Yoshino would have laughed at those colorful words from the Emperor. The situation would be bleak if they had to face that kind of offense. Madara was something that they did not want to face. He had been a man who stood before the first Hokage and not to mention, if he was back, it meant they would be facing off against someone with the power of the Rinnegan and the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and not to mention Lokutan. It was not only the Dejitsus, but Madara's usage of them that made the situation troublesome. And he thought the Emperor was overpowered. For this generation he was, but Madara was a monster and his Dejitsus made him a foe no one wanted to face. When facing the Rinnegan, ninjutsu becomes useless, the Sharingan copies all ninjutsu. There is more power from the Rinnegan that only Madara should be able to use. Yoshino paused, and took a long breath. We will be indeed screwed if things don't go according to plan. There has to be a way out of this. Haku said. You have always been able to solve our problems, Naruto. Haku, what are few ninjutsu barriers made off? Chakra. Not long ago, I was saying everything could be useless when facing off against overwhelming power. If Madara returns from the dead, he can walk into this village and there would be nothing our barriers can do to stop him. However, I don't think he will go that far, at the beginning at least. Indeed. Yoshino said with a nod. Abito was supposed to gather all Bijou and then use Nagato to revive him but now he will be revived without the Bijou gathered. He will have to do that himself. At least in this case, the other villages will be involved. Looking at it coldly, such a situation would be beneficial to us. Naruto said. Haku frowned. Of course, Naruto was often a logical being. Although disturbed by this situation, it did not stop him from looking at the benefits of the situation. He was someone who always looked to benefit even from murder. Perhaps this mindset was the reason the clan elders were always wary of him. We could get the other nations to cooperate over the threat of Madara. They still value their Jinchuriki and the thought of losing them could force the great nations to work with us. If we are successful in dealing with Madara, we will end up maybe having even better relations. Yes. Naruto said with a nod. 
But for now, we don't tell them anything. Once they come here, we will inform them of what we know. There is also something that can be gained in getting rid of someone who could be a thorn to us. Yoshino smiled coldly. His majesty was certainly a cold strategist. The methods were not that complex, but they were brutally efficient. If we could fight Madara in the presence of the other Kage, Kuratsuchi could no doubt would be enticed to attack you. If she does that, we have a reason to kill her while the other Kages watch on and they cannot deny that she doesn't deserve it after everything. You would have worked hard to defeat the man who could have ended this world and destroyed everything. The other Kages would have more reasons to side with you and no matter what IWA does, it won't win. Indeed. Naruto said. But we must still find a way to deal with Madara. I'll try to move around to the other Jinchuriki to warn them about the danger. Once we have done that, I can have some people keep an eye on them so we can be sure if Madara has indeed been revived. Noroi said. Keep an eye on the members of the Akatsuki as well. As things stand, we don't know if indeed Madara has been revived or if he will be revived. Nagato is gone that we are certain. The Emperor said. Yes, your majesty. XX. Naruto was lying in bed, his right hand raised up, eyes staring at it expressionlessly. He had been rooted like this for a couple of minutes, the only thing moving being his eyes. Karen frowned seeing him like that. Her husband was a tough man who didn't let things bother him had always looked so immovable. But in here, in bed, she was seeing a human, and that didn't please her. If you keep looking like that, you may as well just turn into a statue. Karen commented a bit dryly. Naruto smiled there was only one Karen and admittedly, her voice had a certain effect on him. Of course, she was not the one to pamper him with all that pity talk. She was not Tamari. She was no Shizukash didn't need him for comfort. She had her mouth to give her what she wanted. Why would I turn into a statue when knowing it would simply just free you from our marriage? You can't be free to see another man in your life. Karen stared and then slid under the sheets. She stared at the ceiling before responding. And yet, you are free to see other women. Well, of course, I am the emperor. And I am just another one of your women. Karen muttered. Is it this Nagato issue? Naruto nodded before bringing his hand down. He shifted it towards Karen, but it was slapped away. He tried again and the result was the same. What the hell are you doing? She demanded. Just trying to see if my wife has feelings for me. If not handled carefully, we might lose everything. I am not even sure about my chances with Madara. Maybe some time ago, I would have been happy that I am going to face a powerful shinobi. The battle instincts in me do crave a mad battle, but there is much more to lose if we don't do things right. Madara wins and then gets to cast infinite Tsukuyumi on this world. Once that happens, we will all be doomed. Of course we won't know it because we will be in blissful dreams. Karen said. What is the issue here? You just have to stop him, right? It sounds so simple to say it but I wonder about it. All my ninjutsu can be nothing to that man. Of course it is nothing tested, but I'm not too sure. A lot of things have been happening that I can't control. Karen laughed coldly. That is unlike you, Naruto. What happened to your unshakable confidence? Are even Naruto? Whatever happened to it? That was a good question. Did he doubt himself? Naruto had always been confident. There was no logical reason to doubt himself now given all he has done. Facts he had. Perhaps it was the human heart that was playing tricks on him. But if he had to face Madara, he would do so and with the confidence that he would win. Of course, he was willing to admit that his current power might not be enough to defeat the infamous Uchiha and that he would need more than what he had to actually stand a chance against the man. You are cold, Karen. You don't need me to tell you that it will be alright, do you? You are not a child and I shouldn't be hearing that from you. I'm not lacking confidence, but I'll admit that I am in deep thought about how to go about things now that it has come this far. I have always been proud of my power and that I have trained to get where I am. My insistence of not using the Kyuubi's power has always been because of this but now, I may have to swallow my pride and use borrowed power. Well, it will only be fair since Madara made himself strong by experiments. 
you are already going to try to gain Mokutan from Kabuto what else are you going to do to even things out? Once Kabuto has done what he needs to do, my body should be revitalized by the life-giving cells of the Shodai Hokage. Once that happens, I will track all Jinchuriki and get their chakra. I wonder what will happen if I use all that chakra. Would I be anywhere near the power of the Jubi? I doubt it but it should make you strong enough. That is the plan. Well either way, we must win if he has indeed returned. I have not fought so tirelessly just to see everything destroyed. If I face off against such a man, and win, my status as the most powerful shinobi should be cemented, don't you think? I should have just left you to brood. Karen said with a slight shake of her head. But yes, and if you are able to work with the Kages, history will remember you a bit fondly. Then we must maximize the benefits of Madara's return. I'm not too sure Nagato will be happy hearing you speak those words if he is still alive. You are basically saying that it is beneficial with him being dead. Well, is it not? Amage Cure. People were coming in and going into the Villagite was a different situation. Of course, the check at the gates was still strict and they were not just allowing anyone inside. Jiraiya reasoned it was because the war was over and now they were looking forward to keeping the gates of the empire open. It was only going to benefit Amage Cure if it opened its gates. Jiraiya had entered through the gates, after some difficult questions and being reprimanded for not calling the leaders of the village in their given titles. It did nevertheless seem evident that people were very much aware of what was happening outside the shinobi world. Maybe it was beneficial because they used to have a warped view of the elemental nations because of the tragedies that used to fall on this village during wars. The sun kissed the streets with light sun rays. It was not hot, just warm the people seemed to rejoice in being able to enjoy the sunlight. The raincoats and straw hats that people used to wear to avoid the drops that poured down daily were nesting in their homes. There was not a single puddle of water in the streets. Evidently, it hadn't been raining for a couple of days now. The toad sage made his way towards the tallest tower. Unlike last time, the lower levels had many people moving around. Someone had even escorted him but then turned half away after telling him to just go up ahead. He had noticed that there seemed to be some work going on around the streets. They were building something. He found Conan standing motionlessly by the balcony, overlooking the unfamiliar bright streets of the hidden rain. Hello, Conan Chan. The toad sage greeted his once student with a smile on his lips. Last time he hadn't been allowed to move around much but this time, he had been permitted to even walk by himself. Conan eyed the sage for a second before looking down at the streets. What can I do for you, Jiraiya? We haven't spoken in quite some time and this is how you greet me. I am wounded. Don't you love your sensei anymore? I was not aware we were having that kind of relationship, Jiraiya sensei. Conan said quietly. But I doubt you came here for that, Jiraiya sensei. Jiraiya shook his head. I came to check on you and how things were going. From what I have received, Naruto has already visited Cloud and Stone. But there are no major movements to speak of the Toad Sage paused and asked. Where is Nagato? Not here. Conan said. He went to Yuzushio to deal with matters. As you can see, we are rather busy here and I would appreciate it if you went about your business quickly. From Naruto's directive, they were going to keep Nagato's disappearance a secret from everyone else. At least he was not a public person. Naruto could imitate his presence if needed with Kage Bunshin. The truth would be revealed when it was convenient but for now, there were much more fundamental issues to deal with. Conan was not pleased with Nagato's disappearance he was the only left in her life. But just because he was possibly gone didn't mean that she had to stop everything. No, she had to continue working, for his dream. The village was open. There was no a threat to the village and much more importantly, Amage Cure was rejoicing in this new freedom. This village would grow, and they would move step closer to their peace. The toads once told me that one of my students would either lead the world into destruction or to the path of peace. When you were young, I believed that person who would lead a good change would be Nagato but when I was told he died, I searched for another. I came to think that Minato would be one, but he too died. And then there was Naruto. I could never tell what he was thinking and the toads seemed wary of him. 
When it became obvious that he was connected with you, I came to fear that there would be destruction. Conan eyed the toad sage for a second before responding. It isn't that neither are capable of that destruction. Nagato and Naruto have that power. If they chose, they could collapse the elemental nations, but we have no desire for destruction. What we want is peace. We have suffered greatly at the hands of the great five nations, but we are not looking at revenge, we want to usher the shinobi world into a different path. That is all I am willing to say to you, Jiraiya. If you want peace, I can lend you my help. You were all my students at one point, after all. Jiraiya was quick to offer. Sanagekyur. Tamari noticed that there was something that changed as she walked through the streets, heading home. The people's reactions around her had been something that suddenly became silent and she realized that there was something that had arrived. The villagers were looking at someone, who they were not familiar with. She twisted around and saw Naruto just behind her. She nearly skipped a heartbeat seeing the blonde emperor, smiling at her. N.A.R. Your Majesty Tamari quickly corrected herself. Naruto smiled. Formalities to the side, Tamari. It doesn't feel right being called that by you. Tamari shared the same sentiment. It didn't feel right saying it either. What are you doing here? When was the last time she saw him? Ah, when he took her to Kanoha after rescuing her from Iwagakure. Some time has passed since then. She should have gone to Yuzushio weeks ago but certain events occurring stopped her from going. All this time she had been wondering when he would come to see her nevertheless. It was not right to go for long periods without being with someone you love after all. Naruto folded his hands across his chest, and raised an eyebrow. Is that how you greet someone you, love, Tamari? She stared at him. Sometimes I wonder about that. Really? That is not what I heard. I was told that the people in your house sometimes hear your moans and my name being shouted at night. Tamari's cheeks flashed red slightly. That is not true. Then why are you all red? Not because I did anything. Tamari cleared her throat and tried to regain her composure. I just imagined that. Imagined what? Have you become that naughty? Tamari glared, causing Naruto to laugh before pressing on. Why the need to imagine it when you can experience it? You could have just sent for me. Tamari looked around the streets there were people still watching. They were probably wondering what they were talking about. They really didn't need to do this in the streets and she didn't want to be seen blushing by everyone. Her relationship with the emperor was not a public thing after all. Let's go somewhere. Private. Tamari said before drawing inches closer to the emperor. She grabbed his right hand and they vanished along gusts of winds. Naruto blinked and they appeared at her lounge in her house. He then smiled. Wind-style Shunshinyu have improved your control over your wind. I wish you'd be fine without your fan though. We all have our ways of handling things. You know that wind is much sharper and efficient when used in conjunction with a weapon just as it is when you use it with your sword. Tamari said. Naruto nodded before holding out his arms. Come here and give me some affection. Tamari stared before sighing. She wrapped her hands around him and then smiled with contentment. The embrace was warm and tight. She spoke in a whisper. I've missed you, Naruto. Many nights went by thinking about you. Tamari had a different smell so did everyone. People were not all the same. It was what made each individual unique. The feeling each gave was different as well. Life was certainly worth living because of uniqueness in everyone. I've missed you too, Tamari. The blonde emperor said in a whisper. I'd been a little too busy lately. It was always something after something, but that is not an excuse. In any case, you have me for the rest of the day and until tomorrow morning. Tamari separated from him and stared. You serious? Well, I am famous for joking around. Tamari hit him on the right shoulder before dragging him to the sofas. They sat down gracefully and she faced him. I am aware of certain events that would keep you busy, but I am happy you came. I haven't put it in to come Naruto said with a sly smile. It took a moment for Tamari to fully comprehend his words, and when she did, she stared. Must you always be a pervert? Naruto chuckled lightly. 
You are not fun anymore. It was always nice to tease you. Well, people adapt to certain things. There are certain issues that we need to discuss. That sounds serious. It is. What do you say to being married to me? Well, wasn't this going towards marriage? I didn't love you just so I could remain your mistress. People date and then break up. Naruto said with a shrug. But I wouldn't want a mistress, especially not when it is you. You deserve much better. Words are simple to say. Indeed, but that is why I am taking action. I'm telling you this because I'm finalizing my marriages, for both political and personal reasons. Marriages Tamari swallowed. Of course, she should have known about this. She did know about it. It was just not something she was comfortable thinking about. She could be all alone in bed, thinking about him, but he would be in the embrace of another woman not even thinking about her. You don't look happy. Tamari shook her head. I've just been ignoring the fact that you have two wives already and are likely to marry more. You are the emperor and if it is right, you are going to do more marriages for political reasons. You want influence and to change this world, what better way to do this than through that way we had already discussed the issue with Gara. We won't have issues then. Naruto said. He then leaned back and stared into the ceiling. What would you choose? To live with me in the sound or to stay here? I'm building another home in the sound so that can be your new home. Of course, if you choose, you could stay between here and there. That could work well. Tamari said in thought. Gara offered Naruto his tiny smile as the emperor stepped into his office. He had already been informed that the man was in the village. Everything had been pushed aside, as he knew that he would be talking to the man about the future relations between Suna and the Uzumaki Empire. You could have told me that you were coming. Gara said. It was something that was decided on the spot. I just felt I hadn't been making rounds to Temari and thought it best to come just unannounced. The emperor sat in front of Gara's desk before speaking once more. I hope I am not being an inconvenience. Not at all. Gara said. I was meaning to talk to you anyway. We are still scheduled to talk soon along with other Kage. Those talks will focus most on what happens in the elemental nations and its future. I wanted to focus more on our personal relationship. You are closest to Kirigakure than any other great nation. We do share common interests, and that relationship will only get better now that war is over and Kiri has seen everything it needed to see. If possible, I also want Suna to share that relationship with you. I'll be honest with you. While we have done well over the past years, I do not like that Kanoha still remains our only major partner. They have not abused that relationship in any way as we work on common trust, but I want this village to grow further. Naruto stared at the Kazakage for a long minute. He hadn't come here for such talks but it didn't hurt indulging the man. Gara was of course someone he could get along with just fine, he was going to marry the redhead sister. That would make them family. Having better relations with this village would only be natural. We were never going to reject alliances forever, anyway. The main reason I rejected being allied with any village before the war was because I wanted the Uzumaki to fight their battles. I didn't want victory to belong to other people but the Uzumaki. We have achieved that and we are now looking to the future. We can listen to other people in a standing that is higher. When people are looking down at you, their thoughts of you are also very low and they negotiate unfairly. In our current state, we can speak to other nations equally. I can understand that. Gara said with a small nod. How can we have benefit to each other? I'll be blunt with you as far as I can see, there is nothing that Suna can offer that I do not have I would be just fine without an alliance with your village. You're not wrong. You are only here because of my sister. We are going to be family that relationship has to extend to our nations. That aside, it will only be good to have better relations not because we benefit from something. If we only think about benefits, what happens when you no longer benefit? First, let us be friends, and then anything else can come because of that friendship. You came back. Haku said as he entered Naruto's office. Was I supposed not to return? Naruto responded without looking up from the papers he was looking at on his desk. Haku shook his head. I was expecting you to come back maybe in the afternoon. 
You have spent time away from Sunnigakir and with how things are going to flow from now on, you might not get that many chances to visit Temari. We must balance things out. Work here is just as important, if not more important. It might sound harsh and cold, but marrying Temari does not make things work in the Empire. The Emperor shifted his eyes towards Haku and then leaned on his chair. Anything I missed? Isn't Naori supposed to give you a briefing of intelligence? Nothing then. Naruto said in thought. Did you receive word from Nadashiko? We must be heading there any day now. I want to get this over with and look at what happens afterwards. We must also look at Kirigakure and the delightful Mizukage after finishing business with Nadashiko. You must be looking forward to be with the Mizukage. Naruto raised an eyebrow. What makes you say that? She is powerful, someone who stands with you and she is a sly woman and not to mention older. You have always been attracted to older women at least as far as Yoshino is concerned. I think I have heard Karen saying something similar. Older women are not children that need to be pampered. Of course, they are still women and you must treat them as such, but they know what they are doing and you don't have to point the direction. No doubt you are talking about your sexual desires. No, I was talking about the experience of life. I have experienced many things in my life and I must be able to talk to someone who can challenge me with their experiences. If you cannot stimulate me, spending much time with you means that you will most likely bore me quickly. Naruto responded. And? Two days they have set the time and everything. They will be waiting for us. Yoshino is arranging things on your side. Some of the elders want to go. I don't want them there. They must mind their own business. My marriage to Shizuka has nothing to do with the clan. The emperor said. No wonder you don't get along with them with that attitude. Haku said with a shake of his head. They want to know about what will happen to Nagato in efforts to revive him should he be dead. We will discuss that. Naruto said in thought. What would my mother say if she came back from the dead? Would she be sad to live in a world without her husband? He shook his head. No, never mind. Those people would most likely try to force her to marry and produce more children. I wouldn't want that for her. And yet you are forcing us to do the same thing. You are not my mother. Naruto said with a shrug. Haku shook his head. Gyurin says she thinks you are best suited to be the one she can give her body to. And I thought she would most likely form a relationship with you Kamaru. He has become old enough to satisfy her, yes. Sometimes I think you are twisted. Haku said. I know you must have done something to give her that thought. She would not have come to the thought without you helping her. I was thinking that I want to have children who are strong. Our empire doesn't have so many people. And if you, and I die, what happens then? I'm at an age where I can raise my children to become strong individuals who will stand on their own to protect their homes. Shizuka's children will remain in Nadashiko. Mei's children will be groomed to lead Kirigakure Tamari's children to lead Sunagakure, and Gyurin to lead the sound. If you have any more seed elsewhere, we will have a time where your blood controls all great nations is that what you want. Naturally. Naruto said. But I must still be alive to see it. When that occurs, your family will be the one to play peacemaker. Whether of the same father or not, people will fight. I would not be surprised if any of one of them decides to fight the other for my throne one of them might even grow bold in my old age and decide that I have ruled for long enough and my methods are no good. What happens when such a thing occurs? Naruto looked up into the ceiling, unblinking. We will take measures even if some of them must be extreme. You mean kill your own children? If that must be done, yes. Karen rarely saw the throne room with so many people it was just twenty-two people, all Uzumaki aside from Haku. Naruto's personal space was not the one that welcomed all kinds of people. She would not have even bothered coming here had things gone her way. And Naruto had not minded either way. But the clan elders had instructed her to be here. Of course, Naruto was not going to take her with him to Neichiko had already said so and was not going to change his mind. Now that she spent time with the elders, she understood why Naruto had grown weary of them. They were senile old geezers who needed to be retired and not care about things that didn't concern them. They thought it was their ultimate goal to protect the clan but it was not. 
why Naruto even agreed to such an arrangement baffled her. He could have chosen things better and took the clan for himself it had become what it was because of him. Of course, she could not take anything away from Yoshino. The man had worked hard for his health and the Uzumaki. She had noticed though, Haku had immediately come in between the two. Had the ice user not come to the empire, Yoshino would have been doing as he pleased and would have wielded more power and Naruto would not have put a stop to it because Yoshino did things that would please the emperor. Karen looked up at the throne, the emperor wore white ceremonial robes, his hair was still undone. She shook her head. There seemed to be some value in his hair being like that. You look well today. It is not often that you look like the part of the emperor. Karen commented lightly. The rest of the people in the throne room were kneeling before the throne, ready to receive their instructions. This is a good day for me and the empire. We move a step closer to the unification of the empire and take a step forward in growing its influence. The emperor responded in a measured tone. Have you come to bid us well wishes? Of course. They are well received. Naruto said. This must not be easy for you but this is still something we must do. We will have that kind of talk in private. Naruto drew an amused look. That is inconsistent with what you have often displayed. You have never shied away from discussing our relationship in public. But no matter. He turned to face his subordinates. Naruhiro. You are going to serve Shizuka from now on. Her safety will be in your hands. You will also become a link that connects me and her. Once I assume the role as leader of Nadashiko, I expect you to carry your duties with the same motivation as you would when serving me. Shizuka will become my wife, thus very important to me. Nothing must happen to her. Understood, your majesty. Naruto turned to Noroi. Noroi, I expect you to link up intelligence with Nadashiko. There will be one body, and you will direct its movements. Of course, this will be different from Durin's job. She is rather good at disposing things, no. She is. Noroi said. But, would that not affect her role as daimyo of the sound? No, there will be time for her to execute her duties. Besides that, her position grants her cover since her other duties do not exist. Naruto said before standing up. Yoshino, will you? The redhead stood up and walked toward the emperor. He took Naruto's hand and walked him down the stairs. Once they were in front of the other men, he spoke. We are going to need the people are already expecting us. Let us go and enjoy this great day with our emperor. He then smiled. I know Naid is a land of women, but I expect you to behave. That is gonna be difficult, Yoshino-san. Someone commented. Put on blindfolds if you must but do nothing I would not do. Yoshino said. Of course, you don't say, nothing his majesty would not do. There was laughter from those words. You know that I'm still standing right here, yes. And you are just telling your fellow clansmen not to follow my lead as if I am a bad example. In terms of women, you are not. Yoshino responded. Is that not the truth? No Naruto said but did not add anything. Prepare yourselves. He said before performing a hand seal. Karen, step back a little, will you? He then slammed both his hands on the floor and a large seal glowed within the throne room before they all vanished into thin air. The streets were crowded with people. There was the sound of joy rushing through the village. The people welcomed them in songs and dance, giving them a clear path towards Shizuka's residence. Naruto led the way along with Yoshino and Haku. As they drew closer to the place, Kunoichi stood in line holding high a flag with both symbols of the Empire and Nadashiko. There were trumpets played as they gave them a royal procession. Naruto could not help but admire the preparation. A part of him had always loved a royal procession. Yuzushio had never given him one. He was going to make it a spectacle once he arrives in the sound. This was something deserving of the Emperor of course, he would not try to get off it. Such an addiction would certainly lead him to ruin. At the end of the procession, Shizuka was standing there, wearing a white ceremonial kimono. Her hair was not tied, falling over her shoulders beautifully. Her green eyes shone with nervousness. But her beauty was without question. 
she stood out like a flower within the two people flanking her sides. No staring, Yoshino. Naruto warned the man. She is going to be my wife I don't want to catch you thinking naughty things. Yoshino smiled. I was merely admiring her, your majesty. I have to admit you have chosen well. Well, it was good that she was the one to lead this village, but even I can admire her. Haku commented. Had you arrived earlier, I could have had you marry her. Tell the truth, your majesty. You would have looked at her twice and thought, she is mine Yoshino said. Naruto thought about it before laughing. Perhaps. When they reached Shizuka, he smiled at her. Shizuka. The women beside her bowed lowly as she too bowed slightly before responding. Your Majesty. She said before standing up straight. She held out her right hand. Shall we? Every human truly has his or her uses. For as long as Zetsu had existed, these other people from this world have always been tools to use to achieve his great ambition reviving his mother after the betrayal by her ungrateful sons. There had been no mountain he was unwilling to climb to revive his mother. He had manipulated many and altered history records just to see it happen. Some time ago, it had looked like everything he had fought to build would be ruined, it would be laid to waste, and he would just wonder about, without any cause of action in mind. It had never been in the plans for the Uzumaki to return to fold. Zetsu had thought of every possible scenario and provided countermeasures for such scenarios that could ruin things for him. But what he had not counted on was for Abito to be killed by the Uzumaki. That simple move cost him both the Rinnegan and his substitute tool. Had the Uzumaki been willing, they could have sealed away the Rinnegan. It was a possibility and it would have taken him back at least 100 years. The wheels were in motion once more he had just finished controlling Nagato into reviving Madara. And he felt at peace seeing the Uchiha rise from the dead. Of course, none of that joy was displayed on his face, not when there was a snake in the form of a human called Kabuto standing next to him. The spy was almost drooling in anticipation. Leading Kabuto on had benefited him in getting Nagato and the Rinnegan, but the Nin was no longer of use to him. He could now simply get rid of him but he was perhaps useful as a spy to the so-called emperor. To feel the corrupted breath of the living world, to feel his blood rushing through his veins, and the chakra flowing smoothly within the chakra pathways, Madara was indeed back to the living world. He had waited with bated breath for the day he would be returned to finish what he started. It didn't concern him that he was blind if he had returned like this, then everything was going according to plan. Perhaps not. But he had left the capable hands of Abido dealing with things. Thinking of the Uchiha, he frowned when he couldn't see him. There was something wrong. He could feel Zetsu but he could not feel Abido. There was still another person Thuf was unfamiliar. There shouldn't be another person. And if Abido was not around, then something was wrong. Not everything was going according to plan. What is happening, Zetsu? Where is Abido? Kabuto could not quite believe that he was standing before the legendary Uchiha Madara. Although blind, Kabuto was certain that he could not even get close to the man. His power was astounding, Kabuto wanted to see it in action. He already knew a couple of things thanks to Zetsu. While the plant had its motives, he too had his own. But to simply stand before Madara was something to behold. He was a little glad that the people of Yuzushio were not around at this place. Had they been following him, things would not have worked out so well. No doubt, Zetsu would have taken notice and tried to stab him in the back. Dead. Kabuto responded before Zetsu could. He had a large smile on his lips. He met an unfortunate end some years ago it has been more than ten years now since he died. Madara's expression displayed nothing. Whether Abito was alive or dead didn't really matter. As long as the Rinnegan was not lost and the plan was still active, then he could not complain. I had not expected for him to be killed. Madara said, his closed eyelids staring at Kabuto's form. What happened, Zetsu? And what of the plan? The Uzumaki rose from the ashes and decided to take over this world. Abito was in the way of their plans, and his grip on Nagato was troubling. So, they got rid of him after convincing Nagato to turn to their side. He was killed before he could do anything. None of the bijou have been gathered as yet. What was he doing all these years? 
Preparations. Madara didn't allow silence to grip him this was not an impossible situation. He could handle things without any problems. Besides, he could entertain himself by going on the hunt himself. It would be interesting to see how strong this generation was. He doubted he could get any challenge from anyone, there was no one quite like Hashirama. Who are you? He is no one. Zetsu was quick to respond. But he did help me manage this situation. He then turned to face Kabuto. Your job is complete, and you got what you wanted. I assume you studied the Mokutan cells because you want to try to give them to Naruto. Maybe. Kabuto responded with a shrug of his shoulders. What will happen to Nagato's corpse? You want it? Yes, he is an Uzumaki. And he was able to hold wield the Rinnegan's power. His body could prove useful in experiments. I will deliver it to Amage Kure once done with it. Kabuto nodded and faced Zetsu for a moment before turning to Madara. It was a pleasure meeting you. Madara was silent until he could no longer hear Kabuto's footsteps. Once there was silence, he spoke. Explain to me what happened. How was Abito even killed? Chapter 30 You must have had a pleasant night at Nadashiko that you would stay even for breakfast and then some. Karen greeted Naruto as he walked into his office. The emperor eyed her with a raised brow she was sitting on one of the couches along with Haku and Yoshino. He looked away from her and walked behind his desk. Once settled, he responded in a quiet tone, a small smile on his lips. Well, I cannot say I was displeased. What did expect of me? To just escape as if I wasn't going to see her again? Well, it isn't like it would have been your first time doing something like that. Karen responded with a nonchalant shrug. Naruto shook his head. What did this woman think of him? Shizuka was his wife, and to simply treat her as a nightstand would certainly be mistake on his part. He glanced at both Yoshino and Haku there were a couple of things that needed to be dealt with. He didn't need to deal with Karen's petty feelings right now. Of course, knowing her, she wasn't going to let it go even if he kicked her out. She was going to come at him once more when they were alone. He could deal with it then it wasn't like she was going to go away if he ignored her now. Not to someone who will be the mother of my child. Naruto's tone was a little sharp. I need to speak to Yoshino. He glanced at Haku for a moment and then shook his head. Alone. Please excuse us you two. Plots to kill someone, probably Karen commented as she stood up. I wonder how long it will take for the elemental nations to realize just how cold and calculating you are. You play the role of the good emperor quite well, but there will be a day when you will be exposed. Nothing really remains hidden forever in this world. Naruto smiled. Technically, that is true, but certain things remain locked away from public ears and eyes. We will hide what needs to be hidden and take actions to ensure things are hidden it is how you create that flow of information and manage who knows. You mean purge all who know and ensure that those that you want to know are unable to say anything. Karen said with a slight shake of her head. It is best you keep me out of it. I wasn't going to tell you anything even if you begged. Karen did not offer a response to this she just walked out of the office silently. Haku didn't leave immediately. He stared at the emperor with a hardened look on his face. You are doing something behind my back why? You don't have the stomach for it. Or maybe you do but will most likely offer your disapproving thoughts. We do not need them right now. So, you're just going to keep me out of it and let me live in ignorance? How can I do my job effectively if you are going to keep crucial things away from me? Naruto was silent for a couple of moments, thinking. Yoshino ended up speaking before the emperor could say anything. While I am not officially the number two in the empire, I still carry way more weight within. Outside of the empire, you are the main man, within, it is me. I still do outrank you. Say it plainly, Yoshino. I don't think you are the kind of person who'd beat around the bush just to say something. Haku said in a hardened tone. I was trying to be nice. I don't need your kindness. There is no need to be that serious, Haku. You have your role, I have my role. Things are as simple as that. Perhaps in your view. What is your view of things, then, Haku? Be quiet, both of you. 
Naruto cut in before anything else could be said. You are in the dark over certain things because you are too kind. Another reason is that I don't want you taking part in things that will dilute that kindness. But if you want to know, I will inform you of certain things. Just so you know of what happens. Is that acceptable enough? For now, yes. But we must still talk. I don't believe there is nothing else to say but if you want to say something, I am willing to listen. Once I am done, I will need to be informed of what is happening within the Empire to get work done. I will brief you, Haku said before stepping out of the office. Once he was gone, Naruto spoke. Things have taken an interesting twist. While there are a few surprises, it certainly does make things interesting. But we cannot understate the danger that does lie with the thrill. Indeed. Yoshino agreed. But, for Kuratsuchi to still be alive, I had not expected it. Her hatred for us runs deep and she has been able to navigate through this difficult phase without throwing flames. I had expected her to make some disastrous decisions because of her hatred. You should know by now that people can be unpredictable. Naruto said. Then, has this attitude of hers made you think that you can change things somehow and let her live? I have already stated that I want her dead. She is a variable that will disturb things for us if we allow her existence to continue. And whoever rescued her from the jaws of death certainly did so because they have intentions meant to cloud us. I'm conscious of this, your majesty. But? I was exploring the idea of keeping her alive, but on our leash. Noroi has not been able to make any breakthrough on what happened to her, and the only person who knows this, is Kuratsuchi. We don't need her to be alive to know what happened to her. If we kill her, we can poke into her head and that would be the much more desirable option as nothing will be filtered through her lips. Of course, the emperor would be rational about this. And, even when he did allow him to do things the way he saw fit, this time, he had been given an instruction and deviation was only permitted with a reason that was acceptable. Yoshino had always been conscious of this when doing things. Maybe this time it was his fondness of Kuratsuchi's desires and mindset that made him think twice about plotting her death. Truly, if nothing was done, she would be a problem they did not need. We indeed don't need her to be alive to know what happened. Naruto cut off Yoshino before he could finish talking. Yoshino, I won't tolerate anything unreasonable. And I am willing to give you time to gather your thoughts to give me a reason. If Madara has indeed returned, then Yoshino, there is going to be chaos in the days to come and we don't want to have sideshows keeping us from focusing on the major threats. Madara can kill us and insects can bite us hard in ways we will be forced to take measures we don't want to take. I understand your majesty. Yoshino said in a stern tone. What I had thought of doing had also been using the Akatsuki, or more precisely, Daidara's grudge against his former village to make things happen. It would not be an impossible thing to make him attack the village and then move quickly to remove him from the picture before anyone gets hold of him. We could deal with the fallout of our past association with the Akatsuki, if anything comes out of it. Another option. Assassination. For us, it would be simple to get close enough in IWA to kill her. But if she is killed and no one is caught, we will be suspected of having done it. Not unless we cook up something within the earth. Naruto said in thought. Cause friction between the earth daimyo and Kuratsuchi. There are already troubles between them due to the earth's pressure on IWA. Put more fire on it and when things have become public, remove the earth daimyo. If Kuratsuchi is killed after the daimyo, our hands are clean. They killed each other, and nobody looks at us with suspicion. Even if they do look at us, we will have reasons to deny anything. But of course, any loose ends must be removed. Yoshino couldn't help but smile upon hearing those words. Naruto had always been like this, perhaps in the past couple of years things had been toned down a little as he focused on getting stronger and allowed them to do as they pleased. Haku could not stand such moves. He was far too kind for it. But Yoshino had no problems with it had always been able to follow through and if such a scenario did play out, he would be pleased with it, he just didn't necessarily want to go through it because of certain interests. You will consider the details and how you go about it. I don't need to know, but I will be waiting to hear the details on how this will occur. Unless you can convince me otherwise on why it should not occur as I have said, I expect results. 
Should as we fear and Madara has returned from the dead, he will start causing problems for us. I will see to it, your majesty. Should there be deviation, I will give a proper response. I expect nothing less. Naruto said sternly. Get Haku back in here. Without saying anything else, Yoshino departed from the office. A couple of minutes later, Haku walked back in with a rather unusual expression on his face. He sat down in front of Naruto's desk and stared at the emperor for a couple of moments before speaking. I was under the impression that my other role also entailed me persuading you from doing other corrupt things. That has not changed. Then why are you doing things without telling me? It is convenient at this time. There are days you will not be able to get me to move to other ideas. You know me to be reasonable and flexible but there are times I will not move from what must be done. However, I have given Yoshino an option, and should he choose to exercise it and offer me a reason, you will play your role. But for now, you have other things to worry about. Should the Kage accept the invitation, you will have too much on your plate. Worry about what we must do to have the Kages playing nice with us. Conan had to hold back from lunging at Black Zetsu when he appeared before her in the tower. The only reason she stopped herself from attacking was because he was holding Nagato's body her partner was indeed dead. When the days numbered, she had begun to accept that she may not even see his corpse. The people in Yuzushiogakure had been loud enough about his survival possibilities. Still, seeing him on Zetsu's shoulders just rang a loud call to her head, confirming what she had feared. Once more, she had lost another friend, and partner. Once more, she was all alone. Had it not been for the fact that she didn't know anything about Zetsu's abilities, she would have attacked him there and then. He was indeed the source of all challenges. Without him, there would have never been a Beto coming after them and Yahiko would have been alive. Of course, those were just ifs and wishful thoughts. The cruel reality was that she was alone in this world. Her only true family was now dead killed by the injustice of the shinobi world. Had things been different, had shinobi not been so corrupted, their lives would have turned out differently. Conan reigned in her thoughts and stared at the person standing in front of her with an expressionless mask. Zetsu was the first to say something nevertheless. That is the same look I had when you betrayed Abito and killed him. I also had to control myself from attacking all of you. So, you were watching. I am always watching. Black Zetsu responded. With Nagato gone, you have no one. Those people in Yuzushio will most likely circle in to try to take over this village. I know they have means to bring the dead to life, but it also requires sacrifices. I wonder if they will even try to bring in Nagato back to life. At this stage, he is no longer useful to them. The war is over and Yuzu has formed good relationships with other Kages. You would expect a manipulative person to come with such words to try to dilute your thinking. Conan was no longer a child but she would be urged to think otherwise about Yuzushio. Naruto was cold about what was best, logically, rather than what his emotions desired. If he believed that reviving Nagato would be of no benefit, he would not do it. It was such a move that Conan expected from the Emperor. But, if he thought it that way and she had her reasons, he would issue the order for Nagato to be brought back to the realm of the living world. All Uzumaki had their souls tied to this world. I have no interest in listening to what you have to say. Zetsu smiled. Unfortunate but not unexpected. Before he could add anything else, Noroi materialized from thin air, holding a long black sword. I have been looking for you, Zetsu. Zetsu did not respond to this. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. And you can tell Naruto that he will soon meet his end and everything he has built will be destroyed one by one. While saying that, Black Zetsu disappeared from the view. Conan turned to Noroi with a blank expression. How long have you been watching? Long enough. Noroi said. Will you keep the body, or do you want us keep it? Which is the safer option? We can keep him. And what about his revival? While His Majesty has yet to said anything, you must not worry about Nagato. He will return to World of the Living. The benefit of having him in this world far outweighs anything and besides, he is Uzumaki. Kabuto could not help but smile when he stared at the Emperor, who was sitting on his throne. It was always unnerving that he could be without a presence while sitting there. 
he wondered how those people dealt with it. He felt like he was dealing with something that did not exist, yet was there, staring back at him. It was no doubt that the emperor was powerful but he was still not yet there. In this generation, he had no one to rival him. No doubt, if Orochimaru had succeeded in all his experiments and had not met his end, things could have been different. No, they would have been different. But there was nothing now. Once you were dead, you achieved nothing. Of course, he was running with some of those dreams, but he had his own agenda as well. The former spy knelt before the emperor. I have returned, your majesty. Kabuto congratulated himself for how easy it was to say those words. Calling Naruto by his rightful style was something he was unfamiliar with. He wasn't just putting on a show. The emperor was truly worthy of being called majesty. Of course, not to the same standards as Madara but he was still a legend to this generation. Naruto sat up straight and stared at the former spy of the hidden leaf with an expressionless mask. With good news, I should hope. Kabuto smiled. I'm certain you will not accept any bad news from me. That will depend on what I will define as bad news. At this stage, one does expect certain things to go the way. I'm certain you have returned with more good news, but the first thing I want to hear from you is about Kuratsuchi. Her delicate situation gives me restless nights. Kabuto almost laughed. How could he say that? Why was he so worried about Kuratsuchi? In his eyes, that Suchikage was insignificant to the plans of the Uzumaki. What made her even more irrelevant was the fact that she was the minority. IWA was completely isolated from the other great nations as things stood. She could not possibly be a worrisome existence that would give the Emperor sleepless nights. Naruto had to have disturbing developments to worry about. For certain, he was now beginning to think that Madara had returned from the dead. They knew about Nagato. Zetsu would not risk trying to sneak into this village. He would never dare. He had admitted that there were possibilities that if he ever stepped into Yuzushio, he could never return. Of course, that did give Kabuto the idea that Zetsu had a spy here. Predictably, he never confirmed it. But he hadn't denied it when asked. I did look at the issue and it has come to my attention that Black Zetsu had nothing to do with her revival. She also seems to have gained a new hand which possibly has the qualities of the Shodai Hokage's cells. I do not know who gave it to her, but I have some ideas. Of course, that will require me to go out more to investigate. I didn't have much time to do so this time because there were more pressing matters at least from my point of view. Naruto was not pleased knowing that Kuratsuchi had something related to the Shodai Hokage. It was like this was another Danzo issue once more. How dangerous is this? I don't believe there is any danger to it. Kabuto said calmly. I could be wrong, but I am almost certain. She only received the hand, which makes it less likely that you'll see her using Mokutan or anything compared to it. It is likely that this was done due to the qualities of the Shodai's cells. Then we have a problem with whoever did the operation to her. And, that bothers me. We could have someone who could create clones soon. When it is all just smoke, you must quickly pour water before it becomes flames. Unfortunately, we have nothing to go on currently. And we have other issues that must deal with. Naruto said before pausing. We may require your unique set of skills. Kabuto's smile widened slightly. That would be giving me some freedom. Would that be safe? I don't think certain Uzumaki will be pleased with seeing me roam around freely. I'm certain you are jumping in joy on the inside, so don't ask me nonsense, Naruto responded in a flat tone. What of your other mission? Kabuto didn't hide his excitement. He could have been satisfied with just looking at Madara's body, but he could not lay claim to having done anything to the infamous Uchiha. Naruto was different. The emperor had his power and he was truly proud of his hard-earned prowess. But if he could add something to it it could add value into his worth. He was always conscious over the fact that these people could think of disposing him at any day. Perhaps it was paranoia but thinking about it didn't kill him. I was able to look at the perfect specimen and managed to gather some valuable data. I am ready to do the operation at any moment now. The data I have now is sufficient to achieve the perfect result that would see you replicate the Shodai's Jutsu in levels that even Yamato cannot dream Kabuto said. 
Naruto noted Kabuto's confidence, but he wondered how things would go if the former spy planned to slip in something that would either kill him or give him an edge that could see him try to manipulate him. It would be disastrous for him to be manipulated by this insignificant insect. A horrendous death was better than being a puppet of such a lowly human. How safe will this be? As far as I am concerned, Hashirama's cells are powerful enough to kill a host. Danzo had an imperfect version of this but he had to always remain on guard because the cells could take over his body. Danzo was just weak. Kabuto said a bit coldly. You are not weak, and you are Uzumaki. It is said that the Uzumaki are distant cousins of the Senju. Perhaps by extension, we could say they have relations with the Uchiha as well. Nagato was able to wield the Rinnegan and use its powers but I have hypothetically concluded that any other normal person would not be able to wield both those eyes. Was? Kabuto's smile slipped for a moment when he realized he had said something that the Emperor hadn't admitted to him. Of course, he could get out of this, but the fact that he had just exposed himself by a slip was troubling. Luckily for him, the Emperor didn't press on the matter. Nagato was a special case but, it is indeed true that our blood makes some things possible for us. Then, when do you want to begin? I need to go to the island to collect a couple of things. Once I have done so, I will return here. I doubt you'd want to do it at the island. Here it is secure for you and I won't be able to go anywhere until you have recovered. Go to the island, but just to be safe, you will work with Karen. She must understand what you are doing. If she is satisfied with what you have, then we can begin. Naruto answered. Of course, he could always tell if Kabuto had negative intentions towards him using the Kurama senses, and he would do so, but this ability was something he wanted to keep hidden for as long as possible. It was simple to allow people to think he could not sense their intentions, no matter how well hidden. She is familiar with the work, so she should catch on quickly. Kabuto responded. May I leave? You may, but know that if we come to decide that you will be better suited to gather information for us, you will be expected to do so. Once I have moved from this village, you will barred from entering unless it is deemed convenient. Later. You seem to be far away. Haku said as he entered Naruto's office. That is something to say considering that you are usually lost in your thoughts. Perhaps the difference now was that he was aware of the things around him. Naruto glanced at Haku before staring back at the ceiling with unblinking eyes. There are issues that make me pause to think. Kabuto returned and he had some news. There is more he is going to tell me afterward. I will decide if I should snap his neck or permit his continued existence. Haku had never been the one to decide on who should live and who should die. It was better to try talking to people before deciding on what must be done. Naruto's usual approach at times was simply pulling the trigger. He would have considered the cons before, but there were things that could not be justified and seen by rational thinking. Yet, Kabuto was one person that Haku was uncomfortable with. He would not have been bothered to even think about the man had Naruto just killed him when he was caught or at least allowed himself to be caught when he knew there was no more escape for him. What do you think he is going to tell you? That he has been in communication with Zetsu and probably met him during his absence. No, I am certain that he at least met with him the moment he left this village. What gives me clues is the fact that he confirmed that Zetsu was not behind Kuratsuchi, but he does not know who did it. He could only come to that conclusion if he had communication with Zetsu. He did just confirm that Nagato was dead something that he would not know unless he had a hand in it. I could also feel that he was hiding something from me. And, you didn't press because. I'm certain he is waiting for the right moment for himself at least. He is ready to begin the operation. Once it has happened, I may be out for a couple of days while my body recovers and adjusts to the changes. Haku frowned slightly. This is not exactly the best time to be taking yourself out. You have said that Madara has returned to this world. Should he decide to attack while you are unable to do anything, we will be in trouble. This village will be at risk. Not to mention, the Kage and other leaders will be coming here soon. It cannot be that they come here, and you are unable to see them because you are out of commission. Things will not come to that. Naruto was quick to say a bit loudly. In a subdued tone, he added. At least I hope so. Since when do you hope? 
Hope is illogical when you have facts that say otherwise. Don't be like that, Haku. The situation forces me to take this risk, if it is a risk. We are at a position where we must be willing to gamble because if we do not go that far, we will lose everything. I am also permitted to abandon logic for once, am I not? You are abandoning it at the wrong time. Haku said with a slight shake of his head. But, this has already been decided what happens now. You will be acting as emperor while I am out of commission. No one will tell you what to do. Yoshino will support and help you if there be a need. Naori will provide you whatever you need. I wonder if things will go so well. Haku said in a bitter tone. I am aware of the clan politics. Not many will be happy to hear about this and I might be sabotaged. You will be fine. Naruto said in a dismissive tone. If anything happens, deal with it as you would see it fit. If it is any member of the Uzumaki troubling you, report it to Yoshino as you won't be empowered to do anything against them. Or you can speak to Karen. I thought you stripped her of her authority. I did, but that is in the Empire. Within the Uzumaki Empire, she has more of a say than I do the Emperor smiled and asked. Would you believe that? That is irrelevant. Yoshino is the clan head but if you wanted, you could direct him to do certain things. The two of you literally wrote the current clan laws. There have to be certain loopholes that you can exploit. Haku said. What do you want me to do? Just be ready to perform a duty expected of the emperor and I won't complain when I return to assume my duties. What was Kuratsuchi's response to our invitation? Contempt. Haku hadn't wished to state it so plainly but there was no shaking it. But she doesn't have a choice. She will come and she will sit with us. I assume it will be then that she will start issuing her fake apologies to the other Kages. Suna and Kanoha are making life difficult for her and the earth daimyo continues to stifle the economic life out of the village. A slow death, huh? Naruto couldn't help but smile at this. The high and mighty were slowly falling. Naruto wouldn't have a problem if the situation didn't change for the foreseeable future. If she remained stubborn and refused to apologize, it would only bring about Iwa's slow demise. In that situation, she would no doubt try to invade small nations close to her for her survival, but then, the Empire would have a justifiable reason to murder her and then invade the Earth Country. He was conscious over the fact that Kuratsuchi would blame him for everything, but her thoughts were irrelevant at this time she was going to die soon anyway. Well, unless certain conditions change. Innocent people will be suffering as a result, is it really worth something to celebrate? Haku asked. You don't know me for my kindness, Haku. Stop trying to expect something you will not see. Of course, you only show kindness when it is convenient. Haku said bitterly. I was informed Noroi brought in Nagato's body. What are you going to do about it? Nothing as of now. He will only be blind if we return him now. Besides, should we succeed in defeating Madara, we will get the Rinnegan. Maybe I could wield those eyes, just to experience their power and maybe I could use them to bring back Nagato to the living. That is not necessary for Nagato because his soul is bound to this world. What is needed is simply to revive his body. You just want to experience the power of the Rinnegan. Is there something wrong with that? What if you like it too much that you think it is no longer worth reviving Nagato? Naruto smiled. Nothing could be ruled out when it came to power. With how he thought, he could logically conclude it best for him to keep the Dejitsu. Naruto was not going to go that far nevertheless. Perhaps it would be safer if he didn't even try anything. You bring up something interesting. But, none of that will happen. Of course, we still need to navigate through Madara before we even talk about the Rinnegan. I am confident things will work out for the best. Regardless of how powerful he can be, he is still just a man. A mere mortal, and sometimes power alone doesn't win you battles. You have displayed that often. Haku said with sarcasm. I don't only fight by muscles, but I use my head when I fight. I would certainly take needless hits in battle if I was not smart enough. Naruto said with a slight shake of his head. Should we contact the priestess of the land of demons? I'm curious about the future. I have always been certain about tomorrow, 
but things have shown me that I have no such power to predict events to occur. The priestess is said to possess unique eyes that enable her to see into the future. Her death predictions have been thus far accurate. We should not. Haku said. It will only cast uncertainties. Let us navigate through this situation. Let us survive Madara and deal with whoever is plotting with Kuratsuchi, then you can be free to do as you please. It shall be as you say, then. Kanahagakur. Gara had to stop to gather a couple of thoughts that were aroused by what he saw the moment he stepped into what was the Hokage's office, formerly, Tsunade's office, or at least it seemed to be her former place. The Godain was still present but just not sitting behind her desk. Rather, she was sitting on the couch, reading a scroll while Kakashi sat behind the desk. The Jonin looked tired, but still busy at work. Gara could sympathize. The work was too much when it was still new. It didn't mean it got less with the days you occupied the mantlight just became easier as you adjust to the load. I didn't think you were going to discharge your duties at this time. Gara said to Tsunade before sitting in front of the Hokage's desk. Tsunade glanced at the Kazakage with a curious gaze before staring back at the scroll she held with both hands. There is no better time than this. Nothing has been solved yet. That is precisely why this is the best time. It is a lot better to be part of the negotiations of an alliance than just inherit it. If you are part of something, you know the hard work that happened to achieve it and you will work tirelessly to protect it. Gara nodded and stared at Kakashi. His eyes seemed to say he disagreed with Tsunade's thinking. Of course, it could be that the call of duty to the village was something he could not reject. If not him, who would hold the position for the foreseeable future? Suna didn't have to worry about looking for a new Kage, not now and certainly not any time soon not unless disaster strikes. Hopefully, nothing of such occurs. Then I guess I will be working with you from now on. I had a successful time working with the fifth, and I hope we will continue to have such a relationship. That is my hope as well. Kakashi said. Suna is the only other great nation that Kanoha can truly call an ally. We have our issues with Iwagakure and the Cloud. We don't all get along. As long as people remain unique and of different values and opinions, we can't always get along. Of course, it doesn't mean we must fight. We must still find way to work together even when we disagree. The wars of the past have been the result of power hunger and the inability to work with others. But I believe we have agreed to go to Yuzushiogakure because we want to change that. Tsunade glanced at Gara once more. It was possible for Suna to have a more comfortable relationship with the Empire than they currently enjoyed with the Hidden Leaf. Naruto's relationship with Temari was key to this, but still knowing Naruto, nothing was certain. Yet, it did remain a possibility. I heard the Emperor was at your village. Gara eyed Tsunade for a second. There was something in her tone that he found curious, but he could understand her worries. He was, but it was for something personal. He hadn't come to discuss anything regarding the hidden sand. Surely you took the opportunity to try to get him to stand on common ground with you before the meeting with other Kages. It would be beneficial to Suna that way. Does it bother you that we can have better relations with the Empire than you? Gara's tone was flat when he asked the question. Maybe a little. Tsunade admitted. You have always been our one true ally since I assumed power. I truly don't want that to change. It is not likely to change. We will of course grow less dependent of you, but our friendship is something that I cannot forsake. I cannot forget what you have done for us simply because there is something good out there. Gara said with a slight shake of his head. How did it go then? Did he show any indication of how things might go during the meeting with other Kages? We also want to be prepared. Kakashi asked curiously. I would think you people would be the one to know him better by now. Gara said before pausing for a couple of seconds. Naruto is rational and he isn't going to change his approach to such relations simply because he is involved with my sister. It may be logical to have better relations with me but that does not mean it will transfer to Suna as well. As he has stated, becoming friends with Suna does not benefit him in any way. That exactly sounds like him. Jiraiya suddenly said as he appeared on the window. The toad sage sat there and looked outside before continuing. He can be cold and rational. 
it is sometimes scary just how he can distance himself from all the emotional attachments and reason. It should be his weakness, but he is smart enough to accommodate his feelings and learn from mistakes. That is because he has never been highly arrogant despite his understanding of things. Certainly, he looks at things in ways we do not. But he also brings himself down to a level where he can speak for all to understand. Kakashi said in thought. I still find it difficult to deal with him despite my understanding of him. That is because he will never allow you to read him. I think he enjoys keeping that air of mystery. Jiraiya said a bit bitterly. It was of course a sore spot for him that he could never read Naruto despite spending more than two years together. It is nevertheless a good opportunity that we have been presented with. Through the history of the great nations, there has never been a nation that has been able to make us all stop to listen. For the first time, we head into a summit knowing that it is not our voice that can change all things. Of course, if all Kages stood together, we would destroy the empire, but we are not in that position. By design, of course. Jiraiya couldn't help but add. I have to agree with Jiraiya-sama on that note. But this does help our cause for a better shinobi world for future generations. Indeed. Tsunade said with a small nod. But how do we go about that with the current challenges we face? We don't even know what message awaits us in Yuzushio. Anything can change depending on how the Empire decides to treat Kumo and Stone. We don't know. Gara said. That is part of the reason I came here. I have come here so we can look at possibilities and to let you know of my position in matters relating to the Empire. I would rather not surprise you in the summit after what we have been through together. I hope that is not about where you take a similar stance with the Mizukage, but I am only hoping. Naruto will have problems with us, and you don't want to get involved. The words came out of Tsunade's mouth a bit more bitterly than intended. It is not that I don't want to get involved. You are an ally, if anything comes, I will defend you. Suna will always have the Leafs back. Jiraiya stared, trying to wonder where the Kazakage was going with this. He then smiled. As long as it is reasonable and the Leaf stays within lane, you will not be picking sides. Sides? Gara asked curiously. For a man who preaches peace I did not think you would utter such words in such a manner, Jiraiya-sama. But then again, this points to the hypocrisy in your stance. Perhaps Naruto was right to say you have failed because of this attitude. You always put your village above all things, at times without regard about your peace. You are talking about sides when I am talking about what is right. In some sense, you are equating right with picking a side of a friend. If you are wrong, you are wrong. The defenseless must not be defended, they must be shown the right way. Of course, the same stance will be put with the emperor. How pathetic was he that he had to be called a hypocrite by someone so young and then lectured about ideals that have carried him this far. Jiraiya had never felt wounded but he could not say that the Kazakage was false or being disrespectful. This has always been the way Suna operated. But, given how closely related they were to Narudathir was a possibility of things turning nasty between them and the empire. Moral lines could be blurred. As it was often the case with Shinobi. Gara was saying if such a moment came, he was going to tell them they were wrong and would not fight with them. But most likely would not fight with the other side as well. I have made mistake. We all mistakes that is not an excuse to say I did wrong because others have made mistakes. But, in my generation, we always had to follow the village, regardless of its actions. Kanoha has a past that I am not proud of but despite my ideals, I still stand for it. Someone in your position should not say that. The village will always take the direction of its leader. I lead Suna by my ideals and what I believe is best for it. From what I know, you had opportunity to become Hokage long ago, but you refused. The village could have followed your ideals then. Things could have been different now. I was never suitable for that role. Gara smiled. Not out of happiness but the tiny smile just formed on his lips. I was just a child when I became Kazakage. Between a child and a man with war experience, loved by his village, who was suitable to become Kage. From what I have heard, Kakashi failed as a jonin sensei for Naruto's team. Should we not say someone who couldn't lead three genins should not be anywhere near Hokage mantle? 
Kakashi felt a pang in his chest and I smiled. I am still here, you know. I was just trying to make a point. That is not my reflection of you. Gara said in a quiet yet firm tone. No offense taken. Kakashi said. Tsunade wanted to laugh at Jiraiya, but she felt pity for him. More than anyone, she knew his regrets, his failures, and the heavy burden he carried. Maybe he still blamed himself for Minato's death. No question he had loved Minato as if he were his own child. His death had been a huge blow to the San Nin. Still, his ideals had been something Tsunade never encouraged. It was almost laughable seeing him getting lectured by Gara. The Kazakage hit home mercilessly. They were sitting together over drinks, as they usually did when they had to talk. You still bitter about what Gara said? A little he could have been gentle. Jiraiya said before taking a sip of his sake. But, that would not have been like him. It did feel like I was dealing with Naruto, minus that amused look he would give just to throw you off. Not that what he said was not true Tsunade said firmly. Jiraiya refused to engage those firm words. In fact, he changed the subject. I was able to get into AIM this time around. And, it was a little easy. They have opened the village. But I sense there is something big going to happen soon. What makes you say that? It is just a gut feeling. There is no time to be miserable and look back at past blunders. There have been strange movements from members of the Akatsuki over the past days. They are no longer to the Empire or to Amage Kure. They are all S rank shinobi, both Itachi and Orochimaru are former members. Tsunade frowned. What do you think will happen? I don't know, Haim. I don't know. There also is the Empire's worrying movements around IWA, but more specifically, it's Tsuchikich. You think they want to kill her? Jiraiya shook his head. Remember, she disappeared during the war. Anoki accused Naruto of having done something because he had been fighting her. Naruto didn't show anything, but it seems that he had expected her dead. There is possibly someone who took her away, helped her return to full health. The Empire most likely doesn't know who, hence their movements. Could it be someone dangerous? They likely think so. We will ask when we go to Yuzushio. In light of what you have said, it would not be best for you to leave this village. I am taking Guy, Kakashi, and Shikamaru with me. If there is danger lurking, you'll need to stay behind. I was afraid you might say that. Jiraiya said. Why Shikamaru? He can get along with Naruto. Naruto had never allowed impatience to stir up the emotions in him, but as he sat, waiting for Kabuto and Karen to finish what they were doing, impatience and chaos ran within him. The tapping of his fingers on the throne echoed through the hall. The atmosphere around displayed none of the chaos going within nevertheless. He had learned to control the emotions within that even when alone, he kept the locks on the masks. After a couple of minutes it had felt like hours to him Karen emerged into the throne room with Kabuto. The tapping stopped and he miraculously managed to keep his left eye on Kabuto and the right eye on Karen, waiting for the latter to share her good news. You can stop turning and tossing, all is well. There will be no surprises from his side. Karen said to the emperor with an amused look on her face as if she could sense his impatience. I don't complain if it is you having some fun at my expense. The emperor said calmly. Then we can proceed, if you have no objections he then paused. I really should be careful with trusting you, though. The wife is the one who cooks poisonous food for the husband. If he is bad. Or, just unwanted anymore and there is no other way to separate from him. Maybe we don't have issues do we? Karen smiled innocently. Well, if you think we are all fine, you should not worry. That makes me uncomfortable. Naruto said. He then stood up. I have prepared. We can move. You did everything on your side, yes? Karen nodded. I just need to move the things Kabuto brought and then we can begin. I still want to supervise and see this process. I still find this kind of work interesting. And, maybe I can use it for future developments. I hope we are not going have issues of you kidnapping prisoners to conduct experiments on them. You'd burn everything to the ground. Karen responded with a blank stare. 
This untrustworthy snake wants to talk to you about something he doesn't want me to know or at least wants to talk to you alone. While I finish prepping the room, you can talk to him. She added before turning away from the emperor. Naruto sat again once more and stared at Kabuto. He had suspected that Kabuto would come back to him to bleed what he was hiding. Naori was listening in on the conversation. It would be good if he could kick out the man, but he decided against it. The contents of the conversation were something that eluded him but he would certainly have to make a decision that would have some consequences. He settled in a relaxed posture, head rested on the palm of his left hand. He stared with an expressionless mask before speaking. Say your next words carefully but be blunt as you can be. I would not like if you wasted my time going around in cycles to say simple words. Kabuto knew this was dangerous, but as expected, the emperor seemed to have been waiting for him. It didn't take away the danger. It just reinforced his thought that he was dealing with a very dangerous person. And, if he was not careful, he would die a very horrible death. No, after everything, these people could just let me suffer for the rest of his life, killing all hope of escape and freedom. There was no other way to say things. He would have to just say it. Madara the real Madara is back from the dead. As you already know, Nagato is dead. Predictably, things had come to this point. It was ridiculous that after all the planning measures taken Madara had still come from the dead. Certain things you truly could not avoid despite best laid plans. This was still something he'd have liked to avoid nevertheless. Well, over the past days, he had come to accept this to be true. Kabuto was only confirming it. And, now they had to take steps to mitigate the problem and deal with it ruthlessly, if possible. We had come to realize as much when Nagato disappeared. Zetsu had always been there, lurking. Though, it never came to us that anyone would be able to get behind Nagato, Naruto said calmly. How have you come to know this? Kabuto did not hesitate to respond, even though he was saying something treasonous. I helped Zetsu restrain Nagato once he got behind him. And, I then helped him revive Madara. I see. Naruto paused. What does Zetsu know about the inner workings of this village? A few things, but not things that you keep to yourself. But he knows enough to make you think he has someone in the inside. Kabuto said. The emperor closed his eyes for a moment. This was dangerous. He didn't need treacherous people close to him. Of course, whoever it was could not possibly be a shinobi of his village. It had to be someone who was a civilian. That was something Yoshino would have to solve. He was not going to bother himself with it. This was Yoshino's village, after all. As long as he doesn't know the finer details then Madara will continue no, begin with what Abito failed to do. Yes Kabuto said. You are taking this as I expected. If I had thought you would have me killed, I would have chosen to stay by Madara's side. Kabuto was making one fundamental mistake, but Naruto was not going to correct it. Kabuto would learn for himself through experience. Why did you return? There are not a lot of options there. And, there is an end of things with them. I chose a path that will allow me to continue living if we survive this, but I can make sure we do survive. Naruto smiled. Of course, you would say that. Your survival hinges on that after all. Once this is done, you will tell me everything so I know what I can about Madara. You must have learned a great deal of detail about both Madara and Zetsu. I want to know all of it all of it. I had no intentions of keeping it to myself. At least that was the decision I took when I decided to come here. I have no intentions of trying anything against the Empire. Of course, now I have tested what the seal does, then I know how to act based on that knowledge. Willful? Naruto asked with a smile. That is just a technicality that can be changed at any time. We brand it on people depending on personality and character. Willful works for you, but of course I was never going to tell you that not unless you tried something that would have made you uncomfortable. It was rather skillful of the emperor to say all that without actually giving him a straight answer on what the seal would actually do to him if he crossed the line. There were clues but there was nothing concrete. Madara's hideout. The state of affairs were beyond what Madara had thought for the shinobi world. He'd never thought things would come to this point. The great nations were to always dominate, 
but to see the once peaceful clan of the Uzumaki dominating was ridiculous. Mito wouldn't believe it. Neither would Hashirama. That idiot would probably laugh it off. Thinking of his former friend it would be nice if he too was alive in this generation, just so he could have someone he could call an equal. Someone to challenge him. Someone he could dance with. But maybe this Naruto could give him a good lap. Just maybe. Madara didn't have much hope for this generation. Still, the fact that Abito had been beaten and killed was something else. To be quite honest, he had been left surprised that Naruto had planned it all at such a young age. Zetsu had done well in filling in the blanks. But he still needed to see more of this world. It was certainly different from his time. He could not say there were no wars. There was a war weeks ago. Nothing had fundamentally changed. There were winners and losers. As it had always been. Do you have the locations of all Bijou? The Sanbai is missing. I don't know if it has a Jinchuriki or not. The Kyubi is in Naruto at least half of it. I can find the Sanbai. I think it is somewhere around Yuzushio. The Sanbai again. He had used it to lure Abido into his trap. And, now he would have to look for it again. The others? The first is within the fifth Kazakage and the second is in Kumo. We may have to act quickly because as things are happening, she will most likely be going to Yuzushio and it will be difficult if she goes there. Even for you, it would not be simple. There are barriers made precisely to counter to Jitsus. Madara could only smile. This only made him wish he could go to Yuzushio. But, there needed to be some work done before that. And, of course he wouldn't have the time to chase after all the Jinchuriki. What of the group Abito had gathered? How useful can they be? They are strong enough to gather the Bijou and I have also called them to gather. It should work in our favor, but once word gets out that you are back from the dead, the other nations should stand up and try to take action. Naruto is the only one who knows about the plan as he has never told the other Kages. Well, with how things went, he probably thought things would not come to this point and he could just bury the plan along with him. With Akatsuki members. Kisame grinned seeing the zombie duo. Seeing these people always brought up a couple of good memories. Naturally, it was not the same without Itachi around. He'd been fond of the Uchiha since they got to know each other. He'd gone out his way. Kisame wondered if he'd go out the same way. But, he wanted to fight the emperor before he could do so. He would have tried that before but the situation was never right. Besides, there was nothing to gain then. Now, there was something to gain. You're still alive. Kisame said to the zombie duo. I haven't seen you in a couple of years thought you were perhaps dead by now. Killed by who? Haydn demanded. Thought maybe your god got tired of worthless sacrifices and decided to kill you instead. Kisame offered with a shrug. Before Haydn could explode to say something, Kisame turned to Sasori in Deidara. I'm surprised you two came here. Are we not members of the Akatsuki? You made movements during the war. The emperor was prepared to use you. Thought you had a working relationship with the man. Sasori suppressed the urge to roll his eyes. He'd always known to the emperor Akatsuki members were nothing more than expandable tools. They were nothing and he could turn on them when it was convenient. That was for passing time. But, we are smart enough to see how things are going and where they will eventually end. The empire has been building prisons. From what I hear, they are probably complete. You can't see because the place is covered by a thick mist. Or, maybe there is a barrier just like in Yuzushio. We still can't tell the exact location of the village despite having flown there a couple of times to look for it. Sasori said calmly. Regardless, those prisons are probably going to be used for us if they don't need the bounty on our heads. You seem to have been thinking about this for a while. Kakuzu noted. Nothing wrong with it. What does Zetsu want, Hn? Deidara asked. The plant was the one who requested they meet. And, there was still no sign of him. He hadn't said much. Probably to give us missions to hunt down Jinchuriki. Kisame said in thought. He already knew Madara was back. As someone who'd known about the plan, Zetsu has informed him about the changes to occur. 
Kabuto breathed a sigh of relief as he stepped out of the operating room along with Karen. They stepped into the crystal-like throne room locked in another space. He had never come here before and he hadn't even known that such a space existed. Karen had never said a thing about it. No one had spoken to had said anything. The Empire surely had many secrets. No, Yuzushio was just riddled with many spaces that held curious things that needed to be tested. The tiredness he felt suddenly disappeared when three people appeared in front of him, right in the throne room. He became uncomfortable seeing them. He hadn't expected this to happen. No, Naruto had given him the impression that nothing would happen. Certainly, the Emperor had said as much on the operation room and Karen had said there was nothing to worry about. Indeed, he had calculated things right as Karen had confirmed. The Emperor was a rational being. He would have considered the benefits of his alliance and besides, the seal ensured that he could never betray the Empire. From what he could also tell, the Emperor had suspected something when he departed and yet still allowed him to leave without even anyone surveying things. He must have been confident that he would come back with the truth. If these people wanted to do something to him, he could not escape from this space. There was no way out. Perhaps the Emperor had also foreseen this turn of events. I heard what you said to His Majesty. Naori said in a stern tone. Having heard it, it would be a mistake on my part to simply let you continue to live. As His Majesty's guard, I would have failed my duty. Is he going to be happy with you? I'm certain he didn't give you the order Kabuto said with confidence. He was certain that he now had a better understanding of the man occupying the throne of the Uzumaki Empire. The smile on the Uzumaki made Kabuto uncomfortable. The little smile he had displayed quickly vanished as he began to fear what could happen next. Naruto is truly a cruel person. Karen said as she stepped into the throne room. What you decided was on the Emperor's call certainly, he didn't give the order for you to be killed and would like for you to continue. But he never shared these thoughts with those people. And, a little miscalculation you made was you think these people will follow along with Naruto's thoughts. He probably knew that they would have different ideas but let it be that way. She shook her head. Take me away, Naoki. Naori, you can also leave I'd like to have a private chat with Kabuto. Naori merely nodded and departed along with the others. Don't be on guard. Nothing is going to happen to you. But I must apologize for His Majesty's deception if you want to call it that anyway. The truth is if we want, we could kill you and His Majesty would still not he surprised it happened. He gave you his face but omitted the other side. Which is you Kabuto finished. I was informed you are more like him in thought. What is going to happen to me? Yoshino smiled. Who informed you, Kabuto? I know it was not Karen then who did.